Spooked it's spooked by the live. Ah, it is. It is indeed spooky month. It spooked me again. <laughs> Don't I worry. will say that it's actually kind of a shame that we have so much to talk to because we needed to discuss that electricity is our the real life hard magic system, but we can't. We have to talk about rings of power. Damn it. So. Um, we have a lot to go through. There is so much that happens, and a lot of it is very funny. A lot of it is <laughs> it's it's tragedy, it's drama, it's goofery, it's nonsense. Um, I hated almost all of it except the parts where I laughed. But <laughs> you know what? <laughs> if you haven't seen the episodes, boy, you're missing out. This is some this is something else, man. These last two episodes in particular. I mean, even on the rings of power scale, yeah. they are something impressive. What a oh, scale boy. that is. Mm -hmm. oh, Concentrated boy. garbage. I think uh I think we can can we safely say that uh especially with these last two episodes, season two is worse than season one? Mm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes we can. Uh, yes. Yes. Indeed, I'm thinking we can. I'm thinking yeah. we can. It was close. Yeah. It was, it was close, close for a bit. Yeah, for a Before bit. Before episode I, seven, I was I unsure yeah. after seven. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I if what's funny about that is I can tell because as a, as opposed to being more lethargic about Rings of Power, these last two episodes made me laugh a lot and made me angry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you made me feel it things. Made you feel something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I felt it, something. It's probably fair to say that these last two episodes made me feel the most emotions out of the whole of Rings of Power. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> True. I love yeah. the idea that the makers are like, oh, really? And you're like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> At oh, last, that you, you know what it means to hate. <laughs> That's funny. I like it. It's appropriately, I like the <laughs> thumbnail picture because it's appropriately goofy for what yeah. happens in these two episodes. It, oh, it yeah. really does encapsulate just the nonsense that happens. <laughs> I've, it's weird um, on what Freaky said. Like, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to some scenes talking about them. Like, uh, yeah, because yeah. some of them I are just am, so I, funny. I was excited after I saw episode 7 for this three, man. Now, <laughs> we should go ahead and get started because we might be yep, here a long yep, time. Yep. There's not a even, lot to talk about. No, so, no intros no, no, whatsoever, no, no, no. just get going. Without mm -hmm. any further ado, Without any further ado, let us begin with P. Rings of Power Season 2, Episode 7, Doomed to Die. Which you might think, as I did when we were loading this up, uh, when Random and I were watching it, I said, oh, we're going back to Pilar Gear. Because we have to talk, like, the men's story is going to be a part of this, because obviously the title, Nine for the Mortal Men, Doomed to Die, as we all know. So I was like, oh, hey, well, this will, we'll finally go back and see what's going on with the Southlanders and the Wild Men and all that stuff. Um... Because, of course, that's what you would think with that title. So we'll see if I was wrong. It's uh, um, interesting that you thought that, Rags. I had the total opposite thought. I was like, this is just going to be entirely about Eregion. Fair enough. Um, I just, uh, it just made me think of the Rings of Men. So I was just like, well, that's probably what it is, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey! It's okay. Eregion is okay. Did you know that Eregion's okay? Everything is hunky-dory. Oh, sick. The episode the episode opens and it's calm and peaceful. There are birds chirping. Oh, we see so old Brimby nice. out on the out on the balcony. He's drinking yes. his mithril tea. I can only assume he steeped it in, <laughs> mm, steeped delicious it in some moon tea. runes. No, to it's give the it that little, it's little the bit of tea. <laughs> no, no, it's moon rune tea. Yeah, um, sure. but he's oh, he's having a good time. VLC's uh, he's good drinking stuff. tea, <laughs> and then for the for the first time. In kind of the entire show, we actually get a little uh, a little montage of the ring making process. Uh, God forbid, this is kind of something. Oh, this is kind of something <laughs> that we had mentioned was oddly absent from a show called Rings of Power that is so mm. focused around the forging and the construction of these rings. We have this set, the forge. We're here all the time. It's such a central part of the plot, but we never really see anything to do with the ring making process it all sort of happens off screen but we saw some finally, metal like liquid metal running down yeah, the a little bit or whatever we see <laughs> some yeah we see a little bit of molding we see a little yeah. toolage you know uh, we even see brimby uh, he's taken out some uh, some of that little mithril they call it powder but he's taken mithril mm. pebbles <laughs> out of that container mm. that anatar that, gave him that, that he said he got from like narvi mithril would seen well, you're no expert, and Brimby <laughs> I've is. I've seen the other Mithril in the show. <laughs> this is different. It's been processed. Yeah, it's different. Um, yeah. It's different when you get, when it's different when it's like raw. Back. <laughs> Have you ever seen a natural banana? They don't look oh. anything like the stuff you get at the store. Mithril's the same way. <laughs> yeah, okay, um, yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, we 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 get some uh, some actual ring forging that's ha- taking place here. And instantly, I have many questions. Right now, obviously, uh, I'm not going to bury the lead here. It's not the right expression, but we'll, we'll stick with it. Uh, this is obviously an illusion. This isn't really happening because where we laugh, left off from the last episode, the last time we mm-hmm. saw Brimby and Eregion, Eregion mm-hmm. was being sieged by orcs somehow. Um, yeah. And uh, currently, he got uh, illusor- he loserified by uh, Anatar to to go back into the forge and make these nine rings and boy he sure has to hurry boy he's he sure does have to hurry he has to basically make nine rings before the city falls from the siege Mm -hmm. um and also i believe in season one uh it was very clearly stated that in order to make rings of power you not only need mithril and you not only need the greatest of elven smiths it seems but you also need specifically Gold and silver from Valinor. Yeah, um, you need super pure gold and silver. Yes, no, the best of that. gold and the best of silver. Um, yeah. We covered however, this last time. They have a big warehouse of the daggers well, that they just found on screen. They're know. making this for men. Men are shit. Like, <laughs> we well, they gave they it could use the stinky ore for <laughs> yeah, that. They didn't, have it, <laughs> they didn't have it for the dwarves either. <clears throat> the dwarves, they never mentioned this. Yeah, with the dwarves dwarves shit. It's just like a they just kind of forgot like the, the orcs in the sunlight burning thing. You know, it, it doesn't matter anymore. So, lacking our Arm and Argentum from Valinor, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, he, is, he must be making some really good progress inside this illusion. And we'll kind of get into some of the more illusion-related stuff later, because uh, the more we learn about the illusion and what Brimby reports about it, the more questions kind of pop up. Yeah. Um, but it seems that already, right here at the beginning of the episodes, he has essentially made... Yeah, nine yeah. ring templates already he's got the bands yeah. pretty much finished yep um he, he has made base. some incredible progress yeah, all when by we cut himself. away from him last time he was he was told to do to, to make rings and now we're back and he's yeah he's here doing the bands pretty seemingly. pretty crazy progress he's a fast boy yeah he's seemingly within boy. five minutes as has been the case pretty much every time it, <laughs> it's more complicated than that as we find out soon but yeah do you like mm-hmm. how there's the they Take full advantage of the whole, like, between episodes, you don't know how much time has passed, but simultaneously make it so that, like, the beginning of this one and the end of the last one are linked, you know, yeah. completely, yeah, like, tightly. You know, what, maybe, like, five minutes, yeah, five, ten minutes, Todd. Well, there is a line later that kind of hints us in that some amount of time has passed, but they, they're not specific whatsoever, uh, of course. It can't be long enough. That's that's the no, only no thing. Yeah. He just he bulk made like these rings it. like a, in a flash. He's just like boom, boom, yeah, boom, 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 boom. He made he's tea. cranking them out. Like, well, right. Oh, Brimby's yeah, cranking. Like, like either either way, there's problems. If it's been <clears throat> like several days, the city should have already fallen. If it's been like five minutes, then he shouldn't be done whatsoever. I think, so I think we're absolutely <laughs> not meant to conclude that it's been days. It's it's the same night for sure. It's. It, it, it's, it's complicated, I think. It's more complicated, it's really yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah. But we'll we'll get there. Yeah, we, we will get into it because there's a good thing that Brimby says later that kind of will prompt our conversation onto that. Mm-hmm. So hold mm-hmm. that thought. Mm-hmm. We will yeah. definitely get into it. Um, now, while he's doing his work, uh, Brimby's got his tools and he notices that he's got, uh, he's got Feanor's hammer. Feanor's famous hammer, as we all know, one of my favorite characters. In I know that power. guy. <laughs> yeah, Feanor is really cool, and I like hammers. Hammers are really great. Yeah. Um, now, uh, he notices that one of the little bitty, one of the little gems in Feanor's hammer is missing because it's oh. kind of bejeweled uh, in little rubies and sapphires and whatnot. But one of the one of the rubies on on, on one of the little sockets is missing. That's not good. You don't want to lose a, a ruby on Feanor's famous hammer. It's not mm-hmm. the same without it. Or when you display it, you know which side's going to be facing outwards. So he looks around for it. Where is this? Where is this ruby? I got to find it, obviously. Correct response to realizing you've dropped a ruby is to look around for it. Um, <laughs> and while he's looking around, he sees this little mousey. A little mouse. He's back. I, I think he was in the previous episode, right? A little mouse mm-hmm, mm-hmm. crawling around. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was yeah. eating some metal scraps in the corner. All right, there he goes. The little mouse is yeah. back. I hope he's doing A-OK. He seems to be doing all right. He looks healthy and happy. Uh, he's in the famous <laughs> forge, Keller and Worst Forge. It's quite a place to be. Um, mm-hmm. It's pretty odd. Now, when he when when he gets around after looking for this for this ruby, he's he he's got a mirror set up on the desk, and he sees his true reflection for just a moment 
in the <laughs> mirror. He's all bedraggled and haggardly. He's got a dirty face. He's a bit scuffed up. It's not like what we see in the illusion where he's cleaned and groomed and everything's all nice. He's like, oh, <laughs> shit. What the fuck is this? That's not right. And it sounded, kind of spooks him a bit that he, that he, that he sees this, this weird version of, uh, of himself in this mirror. That's kind of so, spooky. I, don't they, didn't they get this backwards? Shouldn't he be surprised he's not dirty and that should tip him off because he's been working all the time? I mean, I again, he's, he's, he wouldn't he's bloodied that as dirty. well, right? Yeah, yeah. He's. It's not just that he's dirty; it's also that he's bloody. He's physically not in a good way. But again, that it's, it's, it's difficult to discuss that until we have the reveal yeah, as to what's yeah, actually going on. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's also just for the audience, you know. To well, notice the, the thing is, is that while this while this was happening, the whole time I was like, yeah, but like the illusion can't help him if like something hits the tower and then it falls. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's also true. Oh, yeah. That's an and interesting, to, uh, yeah. that's an interesting hypothesis, that Stringy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hypothesis. Yeah, I am. It's like, I was... a, it's like a small or weak thesis as opposed to a hyperthesis, which is like energetic and it, it's bigger. I um... thought it was amusing because I started to think about Sauron making this illusion is like a pipe that's bursting in different locations and he keeps putting his finger on it. It's like, eh. yeah. There's like mirrors. <laughs> Fuck! I, I forgot mirrors. Uh, <laughs> like, ah, it's like everywhere. Yeah. Actually, he just doesn't have the processing power to create an actual convincing illusion. It's the, it keeps bugging out occasionally. It's like a Star Wars Outlaws thing almost. It's like you look at a corner and then oh shit, something's jumped from place Oops. to place. Caliber yeah. walks How through the floor and he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> My reflection in the mirror. Mm. Why am I ugly? I don't know. Um. So. This is kind of weird, but he doesn't get long to really think about it because Anatar walks in to interrupt him, and they have a chat. And then when, when he turns, he looks to he looks to look at Anatar, and then he looks back at his reflection, and he's back to what he believes is normal. Things are hunky dory and a okay. Boy, yeah, that yeah. was really weird. Uh, they have a chat. Anatar asks if he's a bit overwhelmed, but you know, Brimby says he's felt this real clarity. <clears throat> clarity. Sorry, I didn't say the word clarity clearly. <laughs> um, over the last few weeks, he's felt this incredible clarity that he hadn't really felt before because, you know, he feels like his mind was slipping. He was forgetting things. He couldn't even remember Miradania's name. His tools are getting misplaced, allegedly. Um, but he, he feels, you know, kind of at peace. He's focused. He's in the zone, so to speak, and he feels pretty good. So this means that he thinks that he has been in this tower working without leaving for a few weeks. Weeks, apparently. Yeah. Hmm. As of this the end does of the last not episode. work. <laughs> now, obviously, we don't know the full nature of Sauron's illusory uh, potency and capabilities. However, that is uh, that needs to be a very complex, complicated, and well thought out illusion if you want someone to believe that they've been there for weeks without sort of breaking their chain of consciousness or having them notice things are awry um only or we only can see create a pocket dimension and manipulate time which would be you know a bit bigger sort than of, just an illusion you'd, <laughs> you'd have to really mess around with brimby's mind to make him think that oh I haven't shat in the last few weeks. Have I slept? <laughs> Has nobody sent a message? No one's knocked on the door. Dora, I've been in here alone. Underestimate the work Sauron put into this. Okay. Do I have yeah. Dookie in my pants right now? Hmm. And then Sauron comes in. He's like, "No, you've already Dookied several times." <laughs> oh, you're right. And I then he did. looks down. Oh my god! <laughs> There's Dookie everywhere. I I have taken <laughs> the greatest of elven shits. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm known for two things. Oh, oh no. please don't, Anatar, don't tell anyone, please. Don't make any rings you want. Don't tell them I pooped myself. Please, don't tell the Valar about this. No, don't, don't tell the Valar. <laughs> Anatar's like, oh, Brimby, they, they know. They know. And the Valar never forget. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess what? Uh, what? what? Brimby says that he needs a few more days to finish the rings. Yeah. No. Or loser. All right. So, no more days. still work to go. They're not finished no yet. We need, we need a few more days worth of work. Please remember that. It will come. It'll be. It will be important later. Oh, important. Mm. All right. He needs a few more days to finish the rings. But boy, mm. he's it's been, been in here for. He's been in here for what he believes is weeks, and he says he needs a few mm. more days. 
Um, now, remember, Brimby doesn't know he's in illusion, uh, in an illusion, so he thinks that it's real world days that he will need, not like weird, ambiguous illusion days. So that kind of plays into something we'll talk about later. Um, now, Anatar says he's uh, he has so enjoyed their time together when they're, when they're, when they're having this chat, Aww. and honestly, I, I don't really know. Anatar's always come across as overly stoic, kind of dour. He's kind of a He's kind of a downer. He sucks. You know, he's boring. He's confrontational. He's not made any attempt to be friendly. You're just saying that because he's lame. Mm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's a bit all over the place, I feel, because he's like overly nice sometimes as well to the elves. Yeah. And shit. When like after Caliber Boris yelled at them, he's like super insanely overly nice to them after that. So he's, he's they've just, done that. Uh, Throughout all this season, the whole like I am such yeah. an angelic being, but oh, I'm evil. But no, I'm yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, very evil. Yeah. Like when he was when he was Halbrand before he turned into Anatar, there was there was a lot more of that because I think he says like, "Are you my friend?" And like you can kind mm -hmm. of buy that there is a little bit of a friendship there. But since he's turned into Anatar, not really. He's he's gone all in on um like I am a higher being. And and we have we have work to do, kind of thing. This is like a relationship of convenience yeah, or of practicality, I guess. Yeah. All right. What has happened? Uh, is he are you okay? Are you all right? Has he timed out? I think, I think he might he's have. in oh, some no. different simulation being run by Anatar at the moment. The candle the hasn't burned centimeter. down even a centimeter since he last spoke. Oh my god. <laughs> Has he pooped himself? <laughs> he's made the biggest dookie. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Supreme Dookie. Uh oh. <laughs> no. Run it away. <laughs> run it away. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just said my internet took just took the greatest of elven shits. Yo, <laughs> it's Dookie time. The Valar got him. Damn. Well, I suppose we'll have to take over for him. That poor fella. He's gonna. Oh boy. The thing with his internet going down is it could be as much as a day or five minutes. You have no idea. <laughs> oh no. I guess it makes me feel better about my shit internet. At least it's working. <laughs> well, someone else started. <laughs> Sorry. There's always someone <laughs> Mark the days, I shall have fiber eventually. It'll oh. be a great day. Um all right, well <laughs> where were we? What was happening next? Poor poor that was That was the end of the bit in the forge. Anatar's mm. now yeah. gonna leave him because he said I need a few more days. He's just looking yeah. around at the annihilation as Sauron does. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Annihilation. I will say, this is the beginning of uh, the feeling for me, certainly in this episode and next episode as well, of just, I have no idea what the progression of events are. None whatsoever. <laughs> I see a Region they basically mostly annihilated, and I'm like, are we at the end of a battle? What happened? Well, it gets annihilated with fireballs all the way through the end of the <laughs> last episode, so... Yeah. One, of, one, of them, one of them activated by Hellrod. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's one of my favorite payoffs of the entire show. It's He's so, so angry about his horse that he really likes. <laughs> it's yeah. so unnecessary. It's oh. <laughs> great stuff. Then he says, "Die, mm. Glug." He's not Glug, but you know. <laughs> oh, hey, we're back. Yeah, Rex. Oh, he lives. He arrived right. precisely when you meant to. That's right. I meant to come back. In fact, I definitely meant to leave. My internet just had a poopy poopy for a little bit. It had a, a little poopy poopy, but. You know what, we're back. Um, I don't know where I cut out, but essentially, after the little chat, um, Anatar's like, you keep it up, man. Good job. Yeah. You, you, I'm going to go outside. You nailed it. Let's see what's and going so on leaves. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'll, I'll go outside, and you keep working on those rings, buddy old chumbo pal. And then we see reality. And reality is, holy shit, fuck balls. It's bad, man. Oregion's being sieged by orcs still. Um, 
you have a bunch. What I thought was really amusing was that you still had random elf civilians wandering around yep. in the little <laughs> square in front of the forge, going ah, ah. Oh yeah, ah. they've been running around <laughs> there for days. <laughs> they just they just run around out in the open, panicking. Ah, oh no! Yeah, it's like no one has yet didn't... turned up to tell them about the super secret tunnels that have existed in their city for the oh. entire time, which they could all have used to evacuate by now, but they no, haven't. They because run Gadriel hasn't first. told them that yet. You have to run well, around for a while. There's a ritualistic unlock for those tunnels. You have to go to like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all over the, the oh, place to a, and stand Omega and Ladriel chance. and the dwarves know about it, apparently. Well, yeah, it's completely unclear who does know about it, because it, it, <laughs> it's, it's suggested later that Celebrimbor might know, like it's not unclear. Uh, mm. so, sorry, it, it's not clear. If Anatar knew about it, though, I just think that would be a very amusing conversation, because the, um, the, the guards would be like, should, what, what should we do? Should we get the civilians out through the tunnel? He's like, tunnel? What mm. tunnel? That, that yeah. changes things. <laughs> Like that we, we are getting, we are getting yeah. ahead, ahead of ourselves though a bit here. Not me. I didn't say anything. Well, Don't let me in with these guys. Us. Don't let me in with these guys. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, crazy. Rags. Everyone with you, Rags. I'm goal oriented. I'm focused. <laughs> I'm driven. This <laughs> I've got I'm glug oriented. <laughs> yeah, glug is great. Not, what? Not, not, no. Whoa. He he's he will talk about it. <laughs> Okay. It's nice and ominous. Okay. I believe you should have vlog like this. Now, uh, Anatar. <laughs> he's no Waldrig. He is but no Waldrig. Who is? Yeah, nobody's claiming Waldrig. that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Anatar. I'm just saying he's no Waldrig. He is no Waldrig. Yeah, nobody's claiming true. that. Yep. No, um, just like which I never even implied. I didn't imply you implied it. Oh my God, I implied that Anatar sees this like <laughs> random elf soldier. I implied it by saying it, and then he says, "Hey, you elf soldier, I need you to gather your finest troops because I, Anatar, I am the Lord of Eregion, and I'm gonna lead the defense." Um, and obviously, they say that's ridiculous. Why would we believe you? That's stupid. Why would you be the Lord of Eregion? <laughs> yeah, what they should be saying is, "Wait, who are you again? What? What? Who are you? You came from where?" What do you mean? Who, He's cast a spell. Anything that seems okay. a bit weird about how any of that could work, he cast a spell. Yeah. All right. Well, that solves oh, well. that. I'm, I'm glad we saw. We <laughs> I've been to writing school, and uh, writing school tells you that oh. the uh, answer is always right in front of you, but you're too stupid to see it. And that if you an went to school, name every school. That, that fucking captain man looks so fucking goofy, and I've Elm seen this in. That's because okay. oh, the armor doesn't help. Yeah. Um, but it's like now, facial expression and shit like that. You just look, it doesn't look like an elf at all in any scene he's in. He's very funny. A lot of the elves don't yeah. look like elves. No. Uh, yes. For, reason, for reasons uh, Terms of Service won't let me elaborate on. Now, <laughs> did you know? Did you know that no. I am confused? Because one, obviously, I have no idea why they are trusting Anatar. He just showed up one day recently and uh, like no one knows who he is or where he came from. No one knows him. It's, it's it, really it knows, weird. Whatever. It was mostly mm -hmm. done on screen. Like yeah, I was about to oh, say, it's like, it feels like they just went around the whole city and they're like, this is Anatar, the Lord of Gifts. If he tells you something, just do it. Yeah. So, well, I, we had that scene when he said he's in charge, basically, and everyone well, just went, oh, okay, yeah. Remember we when did, he was yeah. like, he was nice with the girl that was supposed to, I think we talked about it, that's supposed to represent yeah. how he's nice to everyone. They all love him. Yeah. Yeah, he's like the I, bestest of the best. I won't reveal what happens later because I don't want to skip ahead, but we do have reason <laughs> to believe that he has spoken or, you know, he's had chats with the guards. Let's put it that way. Mm. It's so, implied. Yeah, I, I, th I don't think that works either, but I guess that's why they're not immediately <laughs> like, wait, who the hell are you? But yeah, it all happened uh, off screen. We have to lean on that. Naturally. Um, Naturally. I also have many questions regarding the city is under an incredible siege. Fire, yes. smoke, ruin, death. Oh no, it, this is madness. It's terrible. And no one, not a single elf in all of Eregion has gone into the forge to look for Celebrimbor. <laughs> no, the, the, he's, Anatar said he needs to be left alone. And what Anatar Literally, says is rule. The newest guy to join this whole kingdom is... is yeah. The one that <laughs> told us not to, so we're not gonna... God, where's that one character that's like, I don't give a shit who you are. I'm going to go speak yeah. to the Lord. Thank <laughs> you very much. is like a thousand years old, and he's been the Lord of Eregion for the, to the point where, as we learn later, he says he built this city on rock and roll. Rock, rock and roll. roll. Oh, <laughs> <actually>. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but uh, but I guess like I I guess he doesn't have any friends or colleagues or people who care about him or just general mm -hmm. people who are like we should go get the guy in charge of the city because we're being attacked by an army of orcs. But remember, but he was, he was really happened. mean to them, and that's the reason. When they were yeah, all yeah, forging yeah. the rings, and he got mildly impatient, and mm. that's enough to sever all the bonds of trust and friendship between them. Mm. For thousands then, of they, years, they've known this person. But <laughs> for then, you, <laughs> then a new guy comes hand. around, and new guy comes around, like, he, he's gone, he's completely mad, I can't, I have to heal him. <laughs> It's like, They're using oh, okay. the same shorthand that they use for the dwarves, because in Eregion it's like uh, Medania represents all of the other elves, whereas in Khazad Doom it's that Navi does. And if either of those two characters change their mind about something, it represents the will of the people. And oh. you just don't question it. You know, Friggy, the Navi, he's played by the same actor who played the guy in Hot Fuzz, who's like, my perfect Sunday begins on a nice, you know, he's the, that, oh, that, way. that, that <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, I never would have guessed, but I was like, oh, okay. That's funny. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> nice. Um, so, anyway, Anatar goes to this guard and he says, hey, I'm leading the defense. Gather your finest troops. I'm in charge. Um, now, Meridania, she's around here, and she senses that something, something's up here. Something's going on. Anatar tells her that Brimby's mine. It's gone. He's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. He's crazy. <laughs> He's crazy nuts. So, Anatar says that now, without him, they're alone. But Meridania says no, and she grabs his hand and says they aren't alone. Oh, because women are strangely attracted to evil men. It's very, <laughs> it's very that's odd, true. but that seems to be what the writers are leading true. me to. Do. I'm not it's... sure what they mean by this, but it's kind of unusual. It is the most catastrophic information you could ever have from, from Avatar. It, truly, if you trust him, uh, the idea that you don't go, okay, I am going to go see Kelebrimbo now. Like, after you said yeah, that, I'm... I think it's time. He's like, no, no. You're like, no, 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 no. I, I think so. I actually, personally, I think so. <laughs> I want to go see just... Kelebrimbo, the greatest of Elven Smiths, who I feel like just like last week was totally okay and normal. And then you showed up and things went to actual shit. Could you imagine so how I'm funny go... it would be? Like, it's she walks like, in, hello. and she's like... Because Anna, Anna Tell got, like, full coverage over whenever anybody may or may not enter that room. Because if you just walk Apparently? in and be like... Apparently? Kelebrimbo, like, why haven't you shown yourself? You're the Lord of Eregion. Like, it's it, we're under siege. She'd be like... Whoa. I'm making rains. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Look outside. It's a lovely day. Oh, my God. I've been drinking my tea every morning. It's been wonderful. Hmm, so maybe it's part sure. of the illusion that he can't see anyone else in there, so he just ignores them. I mixed it with Mithril. That's it's got what I was the thinking. Of the Valar in it. <laughs> and I was just starting to realize like how boring Sauron's yeah. control over Eregion is, because every everything that doesn't make sense doesn't have a clever answer. It just has a "fuck you, he mm. did it" answer. I, th yeah, I think it is. It. We are just meant to believe that he just locked Celebrimbor in the tower, and no <clears> one questions it. I genuinely think that's it. Yeah, and even hey, if someone would have gone in, supposed to believe, yeah. Down. Well, also, because, in one door, if you say so. I was just thinking, you could have had that scene. I, I think it would have improved it just by a sliver if she's like, no, I gotta go see him, and she comes in, and and he is portrayed the way that Anatar says he is, and then we we see that it's a full illusion for her as well as Kelebrimbo, right? Well, that could have been interesting, yeah. Yeah, they could have done that, because it would fit with... I say it fits with the rules that they've set up. The rules they've set up are fucking insane, but uh, yeah, he does appear to have some control over Madania, so yeah, they could do something with that. Oh well. Yeah. Um <laughs> Well, um, so I yeah, I guess there's this like implying this closeness and romance between her and him because they talked a couple times. Um and Anatar says, you know what, M Meridania, you've been really great and you're awesome, and you'll get your reward. You'll be rewarded for it. You'll get what you um, fucking deserve. So that <laughs> means says, you'll die. He says he says you have shown your quality. Uh, uh, yeah. Again, stealing fucking lines. Oh. Well that whole everything that they say in that scene, it's yep. like three lines back to back. It's it's yep. we are alone from Thayer and not alone. And then mm -hmm. um yeah, you've shown your quality. They really have cranked up the stealing, haven't they? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's fucking constant sometimes, like every single line in, in the We conversation. have not yet begun to steal! How much would it suck <laughs> if Fools. someone who was a fan of this and hadn't even seen Lord of the Rings was saying, like, all oh, those lines are really good, and the writer's like, do you like any other lines? <laughs> any, any no. Of them? And they're like, not really. All the other ones were <laughs> awful. It's like, no. Balrog is I mean, so they, don't, they don't really that? fit at all. Like, they're, they're just shoved in. Like, uh... No, it feels like a list, and they have to check it off, and... Yeah. You go to this episode and they're like, guys, we have like five of these left. You gotta get them in. <laughs> like, mm. go, 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 go. 
Just Every time there's a possibility there. of just cramming one in there, they just shove it in without thinking of like how it will fit to the rest of the conversation or anything. Speaking yeah. of um, stealing lines, chat just said that Metal just plagiarized from Never Knows Best because he said you get what you fucking deserve. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not... <laughs> We're going to have to censor that in post. I'm sorry, everybody, that you had to listen to Metal say those things. Yeah. We'll say, I'll metal do it again, though, be, entirely. Metal opposed. will be disciplined. It will never happen again. Oh, I no. Not again. Of frame of pause and our Down in the dungeon you go. See what you've done, chat. <laughs> That's another four weeks of Rings of Power listen, for me. Chat. Consequences have actions, okay? <laughs> Speaking of actions and consequences, let's talk about both of those things. Because... Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, we realize that, wait, a, what's going on? We, all of the catapults have stopped firing on our beautiful, <gasps> our, our mm. well, it could use some touch-up work on their wonderful city. Um, what's going on? It's weird that they just kind of stopped. Normally, that means something. In fact, it does mean something here as well. Um, yep. They noticed that all of the, all right, I'm just going to describe to you what happens. <laughs> Please do. So, all of the siege engines <laughs> stop shooting at Eregion, and they start rotating Ugh. over away from the city. Like, that's mm -hmm. weird. Does this mean, like, another army is showing up, and they're just trying to hit the army showing up? Uh, are these the reinforcements from Linden that are here? Have the dwarves arrived? Are the eagles coming? I don't know, man. Maybe it's ants. Who knows? I, I, I don't Maybe know. Maybe they're it's, trying to swat down a doing? fly, you know? True. They are very <laughs> annoying. Have you ever tried to siege a city where you got a fly buzzing around your mm, face mm. you're like get away from me go bug someone else please or like a horse fly when you're at the pool uh, fuck oh, no. off with that oh Jesus no Christ. hey none of those things happen something even cooler happens <laughs> um so they they turn all their catapults and they catapults they sh yeah they're, they're like trebuchets, 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 trebuchets. whatever no, um, no, not whatever. I, I, yeah, it whatever. I don't give no. a shit. All right. <laughs> boo, things. boo him. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't care. I've seen what you cheer at. <laughs> what do you mean, you? <laughs> so they start shooting their cachets at. They start. They turn them all, and they they start pelting a nearby mountain with their little <laughs> with their little rocks. Right. Mm. And so what they do is they hit the mountainside with their little rocks and it knocks off like the entire side of the mountain and it <laughs> slides off and crashes oh. down into the river that Oregion has built around that's been protecting it. And it, and it, it dams up the river. Um, Almost pretty so much instantly. instantly. So there's several in, fucking things that. wrong with this. <laughs> it is so, so full. So, the, <laughs> This, Before we get on to yes. I was just going to say, I was so confused in this scene because I had no, not even a million years I thought that would be what would happen because it's not, yeah. it's so not possible to do it this way that I, yep. I thought something else must be happening. I was like, Well, yeah, that's oh. why I started off by saying like, oh, the Linden army is here, yeah. or the ants have shown up, or the dwarves mm -hmm. or some other force showed up, or the Numenorean something, like, because you don't, obvi obviously no one could have ever even foreseen this happening because... <laughs> It yeah. makes n this is not. Oh, we, we didn't know the, the fucking orcs are the best the engineers in in Lerf. Uh. I just no. how fast is that water flowing down that river that it can be blocked and and dried up that quickly? They mm -hmm. shot. Well, well just, just right. random the, rubble makes a uh, perfect dam, don't you know? The river is not <laughs> yeah, very fast moving with no cracks in it at all. Can you, yeah. yeah, can you see how I think, I think above it? Can you see how childish this, this a, shot is, as in like yeah. what they're trying to translate to us. Really? It's really funny. Of them. It's, the it's really funny range. because I was watching the episode. This appears, and I hit stop. Message more like, "What the fuck is this shit? What is this childish <laughs> fucking bullshit?" And then five minutes later, I don't know, a couple of minutes later, holy shit! I just watched the rest. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's, this it's, is also. It's, um, it's a good time to show the difference between the season one Oregion and season two Oregion. I uh, what? That yeah. season two Oregion just has walls now. <clears throat> Uh, yes, and there's also a mountain that appeared, you know, conveniently for them to fire at. Well, yeah, I did link it, but it's walls... not showing up. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. like it's it. The whole th I I cannot get over that they God like actually just dammed up the uh the the river, <laughs> and, it, and and it's like it dries up instantly, and and there's no gaps, and none of the water will just flow above it, which is what like... would inevitably happen. The smallest defense that I could possibly give for it, which I think is, prob pr I'm probably being a, a bit too charitable because I'm comparing it to the volcano in season one, which I think is a lot worse. 
is that given the insane way that this mountain appears to be constructed and given that these catapults appears to appear to be like intercontinental uh, ballistic catapults um you could probably if you dumped enough rocks into the river block the water for a period of time but how long it's going to last is a different question and the riverbed is not going to be traversable anytime no, soon what, what they no. actually needed was they needed to hire some beavers to build a dam for them <laughs> Hell yeah. hey beavers go Get to work. All I right. just believed uh, it way more if we just had Waldrig turning up at the top of the mountain and turning a key to turn the yes. river off. Like, that would have made more turn sense. Turn the river off. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just yeah. cram an entire Lord, river with key. some random rocks. I've seen Clarkson's farm when he tries and fails Dude. to build a little dam. Like, stuff just goes through the gaps. You can't dam a river by knocking a mountain onto it. It well, feels as though it this way before. Over it. Eventually, it will go over it because the yeah. water it, keeps It will go through it immediately because you're not going to make a perfect No way. It's yeah. not going to be perfect, random rubble. Absolutely. But even if we <laughs> Actual... assume it fell perfectly to where it actually blocked the whole thing, the water would just eventually go over it. And they want us to believe yeah. it fell like Tetris blocks. Back. Yeah, yes, if you, an, a modern yeah, dam has to allow water through. What are you talking it, about? It can't be like Tetris blocks. If it fell perfectly, they'd all disappear. Uh, and then they'd be no. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Like, like Tetris basically, blocks, not the slow... same as Tetris blocks. Oh, it's it could like slow down the flow a bit, but it, there would still be there would still still be a lot of water it going be through. Be the it absolutely mm. wouldn't be. If you no, fuck no. if you did it like like a science experiment, and you because it is in a valley, because like you say with the image we got on screen now, that there is a mountain. It shows like a science experiment. So it, it is like a valley, which means <laughs> that if you have a an area that you need uh, that is the width of the river, and then you drop a block that perfectly blocks the river, it is going to stop the water. It's just not going to stop it forever, because the yeah. water is obviously going to keep going so it's gonna build up and then go over it yeah it yeah, that, goes over. yeah that, that's why i that's why i'm saying that this given what we see if the catapults on the mountain work in the way that they seem to which is insane and if adar knew about this and was that accurate then the the the, the blocking of the river i think is possible everything that happens afterwards and how long it blocks it for is insane. But that's the it truism. Lower... If you accept it works in the insane way that it's shown working, then it works. It's just <laughs> tautological. Well, what, for something like that, yeah. I would let them get away with it more so if it were like they cast a spell to evaporate the water temporarily or yeah. something. I'd be like, oh, pff, all right, I guess. But like th this has physics that they're lying about. A lot of them. <laughs> there is, um, around where I live, there's a number of lakes. And every, like, a uh, suburban area that I live is lots of lakes. Sometimes I have to drain these lakes, essentially completely empty, in order to do, like, maintenance with drainage and things of that nature. And when they've drained these lakes before, you can go down, you can just walk down in these lakes. And it is, you, you will sink down to your knees yeah. in mud, because they've been mm -hmm. underwater for so long. You cannot walk across it. It no, is absolutely no. unfit for uh, traversal. It, it, you just can't do it. They would have to be dry for ages. Magic though. Um, to or be incredibly, or be like incredibly stony at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, if you have like incredibly stony, like sandy, you know, bottoms, then possibly yes. But mm -hmm. Maybe, th this yeah. is just mud. <laughs> but there is no way you're walking. You you will take a step in there and go. And then mm -hmm. you'll just be you'll just be stuck in the mud. You you just won't be able to do it. It's it's absolute nonsense. The person who wrote this doesn't know what a river is. They oh, don't know what the effect of water on land is. Something else to mention as well is that this was evidently Adar's plan because he <laughs> he deliberately mm -hmm. like blocked out the sun. We saw like a shot of it earlier. He blocked out the sun by nuking the city. Um, and then he was like, right, it's time. we got to send the troops in. So then he fires at the little bit of rock that falls perfectly because he knew that was going to happen somehow. Um, well, so you're, what you you're failing to realize, he, he set this boats. up years ago. See this? This little Rube Goldberg machine of big rock and <laughs> tiny rock. He knew this <laughs> yeah, would happen. Yeah, so stupid. He was up there fucking chiseling. <laughs> he was like, I'm going to make this work. I, don't, I just like the idea of there just being a little group of orc surveyors that went out into yeah. the woods in the last couple of days <laughs> mm -hmm. to, and then they found this, they were like, Dude, bro, you're never gonna believe this, we don't need to build any boats we can just use the trebuchets and hit this little rock I just thought they, they did build trebuchets with infinite range yeah, <laughs> yeah. they did they, they did this I'm like, okay Adar, you need to hit this one first and then you have to hit like a couple of other places and then he hits the first one and everything just explodes and they're like, holy shit! Mm. <laughs> I actually think I don't, I don't even shot. know why they bothered like, uh, yeah. 
this shot actually enhances the embarrassment of this whole fight too, because can you see the, the spit of land that is going to represent almost all the orc army versus Eregion that's enormous? Yeah. yeah. Like, first of all, where are your forces? I know that your lord <laughs> is away and Sauron might be sabotaging it, whatever, but you guys must have some basic defenses. Like, you wouldn't have this well, much about... But secondly, where's the evacuation? You can clearly get out from the back. No. So it's really stupid no. <laughs> because... it, it <laughs> No. They, apparently they haven't done anything all night. Just let themselves get pelted by all yeah. these fireballs. Yep. Or because, multiple because, nights, possibly. Or multiple nights. Months. <laughs> you have all these watchtowers along these walls, and no one is shooting back. Like, I, you can't tell me that they weapons. won't do any... Well, they don't yeah. have siege weapons of their own. I'm just... My mind goes back to Minas Tirith. But they don't yeah. have to. They have bows. They're fucking elves. They can shoot across the mountains or whatever. Okay, it's, <laughs> I think it's back. so bad that they could like get their little paddle boats from the back of a region, go across yeah. the river, and then go all the way around, just hit the orcs from behind at this point, and it would fuck yeah, them up. Yeah. I mean, uh, the I mean, problem with that, something, right? Like, well, right now they're just losing, and in exchange for nothing. Exactly. This will become sort of apparent as we progress, but it seems like there's about thirty elves. Total, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Of yeah. Regeon, the town of a region is that one square that's bad. Yeah, that's that's, yeah. yeah. The square and one of section of wall. Yeah. I think exactly. they've got, they probably got like a they got like a dozen soldiers in a region that seems to be, yeah. So, a, a good parallel will be between this and b both Helm's Deep and Minas Tirith in the Lord of the Rings, mm. where. Those walls are stacked shoulder to shoulder with people who yeah. are, are shooting arrows. Yep. There's a particular like desperation when it comes to the Minas Tirith defense. Every mm. soldier is running around doing stuff. It's busy. There's a sense of panic in the air, but everyone's doing stuff. They're shooting arrows. They're running around. They're bringing stuff here and there. It's just it's packed. That wall is packed with people shooting arrows. And here there's like, like a like. Uh, is there a dozen guys uh, on the in the entire city? There is yeah. a shockingly low amount of elf defenders. It's actually really uncanny. Yeah, when you when we go into the city, you have like tons of these guards. They just run around in circles and do nothing. It's like, what are you so, guys doing? Get to the fucking walls. I was about to say, like, it almost feels cheap. It's like, but it's not cheap at all. It's really yeah, expensive, it's actually. Very expensive. It's one this set show... with 12 guys on it. Like, the, literally, the defender, the defending forces for Eregion, it's 12 guys. And it's not even implied in the background that there are more elsewhere. It's just the same same guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's not like an issue of, oh, they only have, like, 12 guys, and they constantly move them around to give the illusion that there's a lot more than there really is. Like, they probably do with, like... Stormtroopers in the original trilogy and stuff of that nature. You don't know it's actually the same guys are moved around, repurposed in scenes. It seems to be that in the most expensive show ever made, they just super cheaped out on the the combatants of the the the, the battle episodes, which is not what you want to do. Um, but it, it it will continue to be a factor going forwards. The the lack of scale and understanding of the sizes of the forces involved. Oh, with yeah. these yeah, uh, it's with so these annoying battle, with this battle here. Wasn't there an episode of season one where we were laughing at how like obviously they had cut and pasted? I think it was the villages in the Watchtower, is, and like loads yes, of people were wearing like the same yeah, clothes yeah. and repeated. Mm. That was funny because of how <laughs> cheap it seemed at the time. But at least they tried. Like they did something. <laughs> <laughs> There's more people in that little watchtower than there are defenders of Eregion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Possibly the most important elven city in the entirety of the world. But mm. <laughs> we got to progress, though. This is madness. This is actually mad. We we've we have now successfully delved into the land of nonsense. Adam's yeah. plan this makes was nuts. no sense. Is... This is this is nuts. This is something that a crazy person would would say that we should do. It's one of those things. God knows where... how they shot the three miles to the mountain with their catapults. Who knows? How does it work? I don't know, man. It just does. And the fact I that guess. it clears out in like a second or two, it's just boom, done. Yeah. Yeah. What um, is it just, it's it's just, again, they just start to overcomplicate things. Like, all you had to do here is you have a big fucking wall, you have orcs running towards it, and you have people shoot bows at them, and then it's somebody get up and they start fighting. That's, that's all you just need have here. The fight. Have the fight be concentrated onto the bridge. There's yes. a single bridge leading to that could be fun. a region. Yeah. It would be fun if, like, this is the only way in and out. Everything is focused on this gate, this bridge. You know, it's not this massive, expansive area that you yeah. have to worry about. It's just this part of the wall, this bridge. Um, 
and, and that would be neat. You'd, you'd be able to establish the stakes, the area, the zones. It'd be a lot easier to fill that wall with you elves. You could see how many forces there are. Yep. And it would be a really cool visual to see that bridge packed with like this endless column of orcs just ready to march in. And, yeah, like, and while this is happening, you up. can you could show the orcs starting to build like little boats or rafts to get across there and maybe mount the, the wall from, from their little boats or whatever. Like, yeah, it's... they had a perfect opportunity yeah. to do a thing from the Lord of the Rings in Osgiliath where they come across mm, on yeah. the boats. That would they're, They yeah, have a yeah. reason to actually do something similar to Lord of the Rings and they said, fuck it, we're draining the river. Draining I mean, the river. They, they could have done it at night when they started sieging the city anyway because they would need to travel at night because they melt in the sunlight. Right. Yeah, they could have sent multiple be forces way and multiple it. areas and, you know, yeah. just, just to keep everyone on their toes. But no, they went with this. And this is definitely one of those things, because there must have been at least one person who realized how retarded this was. They were like, yeah, 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 people won't care. It'll be fine. And audiences don't mind this stuff. <laughs> I, I I'm actually shocked how... On the wall when those I'm actually happen. shocked how, how little... I say a little. The bridge is not a factor at all, actually. You just see it's, it in the it's background. Totally it's nothing like it's, happening on that bridge. No. It's, it's in the background. It's just a CGI background. The bridge. That, that's it. It's never used yeah. by anyone. I feel like if you did ask a writer about this, they'd be like, oh, whatever. Yeah, okay, it doesn't, about, it doesn't work perfectly with real life. I guarantee say, you they'd say it's fantasy. The specific tactics are. Yeah, it yeah. They'd say it's fantasy. Is. It's about the characters and, and the story and, and the, the feelings of the emotions and the betrayals. It's not, it doesn't matter what the tactics of the armies are. No one cares and about they would, that. And they would soften it. They'd be like, yeah, dams don't quite work like that. Like they are, it's a bit different, I guess. But obviously, no, slightly. Well, what are we supposed to do? Use well, like magic? Oh wait, we didn't do magic they, in this universe. Didn't they try to claim that the volcano, the volcanoes, do work like that? <laughs> I've seen I, people I on Twitter remember, claim that. I oh, vaguely remember there was an article things. where they did. Yeah. Oh fuck. That, <laughs> that's actually crazy. Wow. All right. Yeah. I, okay. I figured they would just say no. It's magic volcano that is actually less harmful, even though it creates an entire landscape forever. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, so we have, uh, Arondir arrives. What we, I think of it's, of course he does. Arondir shows up. He is, Arondir has arrived. They he set this was up. on his way. They did set this they up set this because up, if yeah. you remember, yeah. Yeah, there were those it, it two disgruntled it. orcs who wanted to leave and not fight, but then they saw an elf and instantly they can't help it. They just have to kill the elf. And so they attack Arondir. And Arondir kills them, and then one of them has like all the battle plans mm. and everything on them. It's oh, uh, this the random beginning dirty of episode... cloth under his armor. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, let me grab that. <laughs> the beginning of episode six is so funny. They just show so this, well and it's like, well, well, there we are. And then Arondir mm. doesn't appear until now. <laughs> well, that's understandable, given he's been running from Pelagia to Eregion, which is quite <laughs> possibly the longest journey time any character has undertaken true, in yeah. the entire show, and he somehow made it on foot. Well, he got in his car between well, scenes. You, the the <laughs> yeah. orcs, the orcs did it, and they fucking pushed trebuchets. <laughs> yeah, that's so the they don't need to think about it even for a second. They're like, no, 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 it's fine. Don't worry about it. They they made the trebuchets while they were here, actually, from the trees. Uh, oh. I mean, that's possible, but we didn't have any indication that they did that. And the longer they're there building fucking siege weapons and surveying the mountains, the more yeah, would have taken the them at least a few days wow. to build that shit. <laughs> Just nitpicking. That's all I'm hearing. It's not about Hell the tactics, yeah. about the characters and their yeah, journey and, the and their growth. It's about the themes. The themes are the most important. Part. The retardation themes. we made along the way. Hey, um, what? when An what? Arondir <laughs> arrives, he sees that the river is already a lot lower. Is is almost yeah. fucking dried up. Man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, almost yeah. gone. <laughs> like, it's that's interesting how quickly that happened. <laughs> yeah, uh, it mm -hmm. would probably take a, an insanely long time, and then you still wouldn't no. be able to cross it for what is. Uh, a month plus. It's or funny. That oh yeah, that's right. You would never be able to because it would always have water in it because the mm -hmm. water has to go yeah. somewhere. It would be funny yeah. if an elf just went to go check the dam. Be like, can we break it if we if we can? <laughs> right, that break saves us no. completely. It's impossible. <laughs> the the, but, the elves aren't as good as engineers as the orcs are. It's impossible. Uh, Although while we're at, at like breaking things. Isn't it weird that Eregion doesn't have any kind of siege material, even though yes, they have, like... It's it is absurd. weird, because even they though they mentioned have... earlier, we gotta go attack Mordor. Sauron yeah. or Adar is back. We gotta get an army and go attack him. 
We yeah. don't need to build any c defensive equipment for our cities. Well, does though. anything get created in Aragon? Is it like famous for something? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that's where I was going. I would actually expect mm. there to be like some crazy contraptions uh, here famous and there as well. Amazing episodes of Rings of Power. <laughs> yeah, like a giant I just laser. Remembered, like back in yeah. back in episode eight, season one, the accident Calibrimbor accidentally makes a makes a bomb basically when he's trying to make the rings with all the. Pressure. Oh yeah. <laughs> so he can absolutely create essentially an explosive. Yeah. I, obviously, yeah, he's yeah. not going to because he's a crazy person now. But someone else probably could. This, these are the greatest smiths. They they do know they're smithing. Yeah. But no, we got they got nothing. They have like a shit ton of yeah. towers, but they have like no contraptions whatsoever. In his defense, they should have some Very us. very busy at the moment. You know, like he's not exactly oh. got a huge amount of time on his hands, and he's the only person amongst them who knows how to work with alloys. So like they're mm -hmm. going to have a really <laughs> difficult job he's making been anything more the complicated. Secret. Yeah. Yeah. Well, knowledge, knowledge, the forbidden knowledge. Of he, he stole this arcane knowledge from the dwarves. That was one <laughs> <Yeah>. of the. <laughs> <secrets>. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. they changed the whole the whole city and built walls around it since episode uh, since season one. So maybe they. Didn't have the time to make siege weapons yet. They built an entire mountain next to the you fucking know, city. An entire <laughs> mountain. You know, uh, yeah. last episode, if it was, that we speculated that uh, Sauron must have like teleported to and from Khazadum to talk to uh, the yeah. king, and then we were like, maybe he can teleport to just steal Mithril. Why not? I was just thinking to myself, like, why didn't he? Can he? And if he not, did he just stroll to Khazadum? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's just a, make that's a funny himself. Bit. He could just make himself look like a dwarf, like whoever. Exactly. And just take it, yeah. <laughs> I remember, but, while he was gone, I guess no one went to check on... And you can't... Nope. Or just yeah, yeah. And you can't make the argument that, like, well, he, he wanted the undescribed next material to be a part of it, because he did he did go to Casa Doom, but he did negotiate for the Mithril. Yeah. It was yeah. a waste yeah. of time no, if that, he was just going to do it anyway. Just a that was just a trick the fucking audience. It was just a waste of fucking time. Well, <laughs> it was just plan B. It means that what he ended up doing, which we'll get to in a minute, is w that was his plan B, because he originally Maybe. did want Mithril. But like, okay. Yeah. But what difference that makes, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There's, there's like, so yeah. many things, like, again, could easily have stolen it. And it could have been interesting, because he could have dressed up as anybody, and that could have caused some problems yeah. for the dwarves in an interesting way. They really yeah. did not use the basic power that Sauron has as this sort of, like... What he's yep. known for as a deceiver until literally yep. like the last scene he gets in this when, fucking when show. Fucking I fucking lost, lost my it. mind when he started doing. Uh, we'll get there, yeah. but yeah. man, I got yeah, really Yeah, so angry. we confirmed that he can do it, and he does it when it's fucking no fucking point of yeah, doing there's it. Yeah, no point. Point. <laughs> fuck with the Galadriel. <laughs> the thing I've said like since I was thinking about it since episode one is like, oh, he's probably gonna do all these weird transformations, and then he doesn't do it all. And so, mm -hmm. Piece of shit. Well. Uh -huh. We'll see about that. You know, there's still time. There's yeah. still time. Don't you worry, little <laughs> okay. metal. Okay. We will see little the metal. cool Miss Daddy. I am Sauron canonically death. little, so that's fine. That's true. That's true. That chair dwarfs you. Yeah, yeah, Shelly is dwarves, a big boy. Speaking of dwarves, <laughs> um, back in the Forge in Eregion, Brimby sees the mouse again. Wait, we saw him. I saw a little mousey earlier, and I saw him Wait, again. I guess he's yeah. hanging around. I, that's kind of... I guess it's normal to. Hmm. All right, he's seeing the mouse again, but it makes him a little suspicious. Yeah. Rimby's getting a little. He's getting a little susserino yeah, like, about what what's going point? on here. He thinks that's kind of weird. I thought I saw that mouse crawl across the floor and and do that. You know, be a mouse. So, mm -hmm. what he does. This is really. This is really an interesting example of something that seems smart but kind of doesn't work when you think about it mildly. Yeah, immediately. So, what he does is. He goes to one of the candles and he makes a marking with some charcoal or whatever. He makes a little marking near the top of the candle, right? Because as all of you know, candles burn downwards. They don't last mm -hmm. forever. You have to... Rather quickly, you know, actually. What if they're magic? They, they certainly can. They mm -hmm. certainly can. These are... They, these are... Well, I suppose that's a, that is an option. It, it, actually, if you discovered it was a magic candle, that might give you more concern. Uh, than <laughs> yeah. just normal, average, everyday, secular elven candles. What, what you don't realize is he's actually just... Bored and he's giving the candle a mustache. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, like you would um, you would notice a candle not burning down like within an hour. Yeah, because he's they like burn really fucking quick. You know, he's like he Brimby plays a lot of Deadlock, and he's like, oh, you're one of the little creeps. Look at you go. Now, the issue is if he is there is there's an element to illusions, right? Where you can say, all right, if you don't really like concentrate on something, if your mind just kind of has it going on in the background, you don't really notice it. So the parallels would be to the real world, things like your breathing and blinking. 
Like you, when, when you want to move around, you don't really consciously think that much about the steps you take. These are, uh, th these are such normal, average, you know, everyday processes. We just don't think about them. Except now that I've mentioned it. Ha ha! Yes. Now, uh. if he is consciously focused enough on the passage of time to where he's testing the candles, is there not a part of his mind that's also like, wait, I haven't changed these candles in weeks. Yeah. 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 Like I, I said, you would notice that within an hour that it's not burning down. Once you're at the point of testing specific things in the illusion, one wonders if that in and of itself, like instantly, it will like uh, it. Yeah. Does that break the illusion, or is it just there's nothing well, so, the illusion could do? It's done. It's it, over. To be absolutely clear, the writers are trying to come up with ways to justify. Cause you know, at this point, you're like, oh, he's gonna figure it out. I see. But he should have figured yeah. this out fucking ages ago with all kinds of. of it's kind of embarrassing. I mean, we've well, talked about every really... episode, all the things that have given it away, but this is what's giving it away, apparently. It's Maybe the he has kind some... of awkward thing about Keller Brimbor is he's really, really stupid, uh, which <laughs> makes it clearly the tragedy that they're trying to construct for him, of how he was a great guy who got tricked. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, yeah it doesn't he really didn't get hit, tricked. Yeah. I mean, he... It, it, he he was really, really silly for somebody. It was who just a fucking retard. Wise. Well, and the and actor is easily manipulated against the current. Absolutely, the actor he is, is. He's pulling his. He's whole doing the season. best he can. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's, he's a. As we'll see later, he's, he's a fine. really good actor. He yeah. just really unfortunately good. is a character in Rings well, I, of I Power. I would really like to see him play a real Calibrum boy in a yeah. real. Hell yeah! Story. Yeah, I want to see him play Glug. <laughs> I, I I don't think it really fits as Kelebrimbor, but you know, as, say any other role, any other role, yes. <laughs> I like him I want, a lot. I, I know, want to see really the great. story. He would be perfect as Glug, I think. <laughs> I, well, I was gonna say I like him as an actor. I I don't, I'm not sure 100 yeah. percent if he would fit what we know to be Kelebrimbor from the source. No, uh, he may not be the one to really. cast, but um, yeah, I think a lot of people have come to be like, yeah, he he, he at least put in his job. He he did his job well. Even the man it's earns his job. paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. absolutely. He carries some of these goofy scenes. He would, um, he would fit as well as like some like random human lord somewhere, you know, cool. like whatever. Hey, remember when I said speaking of dwarves? Oh, this oh, no. time I mean it. Back at Kaza Doom. Oh my goodness, we're back, baby. We're back with the dwarf plot. Thank God we're out of Eregion. That place is a real downer. Um, no, back at Kaza Doom. We see the Western Gate door, and we zoom in, and King Durin and Narvi, they're having a chat. Uh, they've received a missive, a message, a scroll, some parchment, some writer runies from a messenger from Eregion. Um, Eregion is under siege. Now, oh, no. King Durin tells Narvi that he needs the mine taken back right now. Because oh, which one? There's tons. <laughs> no, the you know the there's one, only one the mine. mine. Oh, they, the mine. Oh, okay. This is the big, the big. My one. bad. <laughs> this is the Idiot. big score, right? He tells Narvi, "Listen, every hour that we delay getting this mine back, it costs them unthinkable wealth. Time and that's is money. A, that's a lot. Time is money, and mines are money too. If they're full <laughs> of good, cool stuff like mithril. Um, now I hate this." Uh, Apparently, they haven't taken the mines back already, even though the, no. literally there it's are two, two people. people. Two people. You're in, and, yeah. you're in Indiza, and they've got one's got an axe, one's got a pick axe, and that's it. That's the only thing army stopping. Of bats, look, look, it's, it's, it's doing in Batman, right? Batman. Batman. <laughs> God. Um, I was going to never mind. Don't, you know what? Don't even, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. I'm, I'm hey. not worried at all. Don't, hey. Don't. There is actually something that I like in this scene. Uh. There's something I like in this scene. Um, while King Durin is up against Narvi, and he's like, listen, every hour that we fucking die, don't die, unthinkable, we'll th oh. <laughs> oh as he's up in his face, Racism. up in Narvi's face. Like, listen, we gotta get that mine open, because I want money, damn it. I want money. Narvi is like, he's kind of shrinking back just a little Rick? bit. <laughs> huh? <laughs> he's always been Rick. I just thought I'm that was the, the black speech of Mortor. That's oh. what I thought it was. Narvi, we're going on an adventure, Narvi. <laughs> but the thing I really like about this scene no, is a little, there's a little detail. When he's pointing at Narvi, Narvi's like, oh shit. Like, and then he kind of subtly like looks and he sees the ring on King Durin's hand. And he's like, I mean, oh, okay. And I'm like, oh, it's okay, hard to like miss. That. It's quite massive. Uh, I like it. 
It's mm. a little something. Listen, uh, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. Not, it's, it's give not the bad. show a little bit, okay? <laughs> no, no. the show does not bit. deserve anything from me. <laughs> God damn it! I'm gonna say that's neutral. Like it's fine. Y'all are just fine. a bunch of haters. <laughs> I think it's the best part of the scene. <laughs> I mean, yes, <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> Another I'm, win I'm for Rags. Oh, what? Running out of running out running why, out of room on the whiteboard over we, here. Why are you treating it like a, a win for you? It's a win for the show, isn't it? Yeah. Boy, this is a win for me because I was why right again. Good, good that you provided the show its crown, Rags. All right, yeah, now yeah. Yeah. Point down at the mine shaft. Big praise for bringing some power here from down, Rags. Down at the mine shaft, we see Duran and Disa and Boy. What mine shaft? Moving right along. The the mine shaft. Right. The this is the aforementioned mine shaft. Yeah, yeah. Rags. <laughs> Rags, we need to ask why what what is King Durin trying to do? He's trying to mine the shaft. Why? Ooh. Because he wants to get money because he's greedy. Big money. Well, no, because money isn't they in get... the mine. What's what's in the mine? Mithril is mithril. in the mine. And he, Which he and, oh, you're right. Money through trade. But exactly. What do you want to do with the mithril? He wants to make weapons and armor to sell at exorbitant prices to the elves. Which means that he thinks that he can go into the mine, extract the materials, turn them into weapons, get yep. to Eregion, and sell them to the elves <laughs> who are already under siege. Yes. <laughs> Random that Listen, siege and, will and, last and years. Also, okay, it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and and he has also banned it. But you know, just never imagine mind they, that. Suc they, they succeed with all the mithril, they start mining it, they, they do, all, do all the weapons, then they go to Regio and just find ruins. We brought the weapon! They oh. ruins and skeletons, <laughs> oh. just loads of skeletons. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he could, I, I don't know at this point. Like, maybe he wants to sell them to the orcs. I genuinely don't know. Yeah, that on both them, sides. <laughs> we were watching this. I told Random that um, King Durin went to the, the fallout school of capitalism, <laughs> where it doesn't matter oh, if yeah. everyone's <laughs> dead. You, can, you, you, you just, like, like, money just, like, springs No, right. you make even something. more money if everyone's dead. <laughs> they're they're gonna build dies. the midfield nukes and nuke all of Middle-earth. <laughs> <laughs> the best capitalists just kill all of their customers. Don't you know? Oh. Um, but yeah, Duran and Dusa are out the mine. They're at the, the mine, mine shaft. The mine shaft. Mm -hmm. And they've got their axe. She's got her pick. And boy, they're ready to rumble. And by that, I mean, it seems that they're ready to kill anyone who tries yeah. to get into yeah. the mine. That's the craziest That's part. It looks scary. like they're actually willing to fight them, possibly to the death, which is like, when the hell yeah. did we get here? What is happening? They, I mean, they, they didn't have... build a barrier. They didn't build no. up any, like, They don't wall have or... a plan at all. They just stand no. there. <laughs> it's just they probably all surprised them themselves, like, we're there. still here. Never, they yeah. never came back. Disa could Deesa just, also... like, scream at the cave and, yeah. and bring it down, like, and she doesn't. <laughs> nah. she, she forgets about her fucking singing powers. Yeah, which makes way more sense. Like... <laughs> they don't even yeah. try. The what we were talking yeah. about is like Navi seems like the first person during the fall should be talking to about yep. switching sides. Absolutely. And then it, he takes so long <laughs> that he does it for him. I <laughs> I don't think he need. I don't think you need to talk to Narvi about switching sides because when Narvi shows up, he does. That's my point. Mm, is that lucky. he took yeah. so fucking long that Navi was just like, I was just gonna do it anyway. At this point, you guys are. Yeah. Just, yeah. Narvi <laughs> shows up lucky. with a bunch of miners and weapons. And it looks like there's going to be a fight, and I Ooh. guess we're supposed to assume Duran and Diza are going to kill their fellow countrymen. Yeah. And that was the plan, and yeah. they're willing to do that. They're going, to, they're ready to spill dwarf blood, to 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 show the King Duran that he's a bad guy. Um, but no, uh, Narvi says, you know what? We're going to stand with you because I saw that King Duran is a crazy psycho, and he's a greedy retard because mm -hmm. that crazy thing. So we're with you. Took a little bit longer and, than uh, uh, I should have though. That's fine. Yeah, it did take well, a while. In his defense, they did throw great. bats at him, so... There, there was some I mean, scary bats. He should probably say immediately we're with you, because, you know, he doesn't want bats in his face. It's absolutely fucking I don't want bats in my face. That we are supposed to yeah. think that, like, the, the miners that came down, that was just the whole of the mine, yeah. and that was the whole of the team, and that these two... Yeah. It's like, how could you possibly... Cause of doom, man. What the fuck? <laughs> they do the thing again where, like, they, oh, we only have our main characters and a couple of miners that just fucking go down here. Like, you could have done this, you could have done, like, a whole episode about this, basically, where Prince Durin goes around, it's like, hey, aren't you fucked off with the uh, king going kind of nuts and just taxing everything 100%? And, like, yeah, that sucks. Like, hey, we're gonna protect the mine so he doesn't go down there and kill us all because there's possibly something evil down there. And just grab all these people, you know? Just that, that, that are pissed off with the king for taxing them and whatever. But we don't even know what the 
populist things right now. We have no fucking mm. idea. They're just True. going on with their lives currently. We've as got far as we no know. clue what is happening with the general populace of anywhere. Nope. What do the Aragonites think of what's happening? We don't know. What do the dwarves think about the weird political situation? We don't know. What do the Numenorians think about all the madness that's happening on over there? We don't know. No what do the Pelagalorians Pelag over in the Southlands the think? The we, we don't know, man. It's just a couple characters and what they think for reasons that are certainly stupid. Yeah, hey, that's irrelevant. Um, so Narvi says that the ring has corrupted the king. Oh no. And Narvi also tells Durin, hey, there's an elf at the door, but we're going to have to bring him qu in quietly because he's been banished from all dwarven lands. No, he wasn't. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, sure, sure he, he was that one he, time. He was, but then he just stayed a while. Anyway. Yeah, so yeah, he, but... the, he, he got banished. Navi is referencing the line that Durin said to Elrond when he was like, if the elf should forfeit, I can't, I'm not doing the fucking accent, but if the elf yeah. should forfeit, then Howard. he will be banished from all dwarven lands. Um, yeah. That doesn't happen because everyone forgets. And then at the end of the season, um, the king, it's, it's implied, but not stated, banishes him. Which oh, means that Navi's okay. referring to the first banishment, uh -huh. but that's not actually why he got banished. Mm. Oh. Yeah, that's still wow. that's, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> um, so my issue with this is that uh, this is no time to be cryptic. Yes, um, Aregion no. is under siege. Elrond is here to <laughs> ask you so for help. Long. Also, we're like essentially plotting a revolution against the king here right now. Mm -hmm. Um, we need to like we, time we need to be is snappy. of the fucking essence. <laughs> we need to be snappy Jesus. here. Um, oh. They should be in a huge rush. Now, Elrond is waiting, not like... I, I don't know. I, they said they have to bring him in quietly, but Elrond is in Durin's house. Yeah. I mean, they skipped that part, obviously. And Durin has to go back to his house where Elrond is. Mm -hmm. And they have, like, this emotional meeting, and it's sweet and everything. Oh, my good old friend Elrond. And Elrond's like, he oh, Durin, you old sassafras sprout he, you. And, he says, um, you've got some sand coming here. But what the fuck does that mean? Oh, that means that he's Mountains. Uh, similar to a fluid, but much more gritty. Oh, he should have said, uh, right. <laughs> like have said you've, got some, you've got some rocks. Yeah, you've got some stones coming here. It's obvious. Yeah. Uh, have you come here to give me the meat and give it to me raw? Oh. <laughs> oh. Hey, uh, Elrond uh, is like, what's up with you? And Durin says, oh, I'm about to overthrow my father. How about you? And Elrond says, oh, things have been really bad for me. Our Eregion's under siege, and we're going to be defeated without your help. Thousands of lives and Celebrimbor are at hazard. We need you, Durin. We need your help. You're our only hope. And like that then, game of one-upsmanships they play. Like, yeah, well, I, I'm about to with my dad, but that's nothing compared to the story I've got yeah, to tell. Everyone's <laughs> going to die. It's like, oh, fine. Can we overthrow your dad now. later? <laughs> it's, uh, I'll do it. I'll help you. I mean, you could do it real quick, though. You could just, like, that's put him true in jail, too. take his ring. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good question, because when Elrond asks him if you'll help him save all the elves at Eregion, um, Durin says... Nothing, because the scene cuts away. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> boy, boy, I guess we'll have to wait and you'll have to tune in next week. It's the first it actually... time this happened in the series. Yeah, this is new. <laughs> Did you know yeah. that you don't have to write like half the show if every time something's about to happen that's interesting, you just cut away? <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, right? <laughs> Elrond, last we saw him, was at Lindon, right? Yes. Yes, he yes. teleported Indeed. here. He was so, in between Lindon and... He was like, uh, no, Gilgalad, do not send to, the well, armies or whatever. But, are you asking like where he went and how he got there, Molo? I'm mainly wondering because where we next see him, where's yeah. everyone mm -hmm. else right now? So the Elrond here have, is where he wearing his head, I guess. So so he must have left probably presumably with possibly slightly ahead of the rest of the army. The army then yeah. waited for Elrond to go and do his diplomacy in Khazab Doom. Which means he went he, around the orc army and around Eregion to do it. That's crazy. I, I, I guess which, they fucking repaired the bridge on the way or not? Uh, no, they went for the evil hills and killed yeah, the whites. Gone around, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. But either but, way... But he, he, could have, he could have, like, rolled ahead of the army. The army would take longer to get I just feel like when you well, got... I, uh, the the army was ready to leave. I think, I don't... Uh, the army was ready to go. Mm -hmm. You know the orc army I assume sieging the army was outside the door. Eregion? I feel like... If you prep the elf army such that they were a little sneaky, 
They could probably annihilate from behind. Oh, oh of course. Yes. But that is almost what they try to do, isn't it? I mean, I'm assuming the Elf Army does actually come at them from behind because they can't actually be yeah. attacking them from the front because they're facing the city, and then that charge only fails well, I because, meant like... oh, conveniently, we've got a Galadriel in a box, and so we can't possibly... <laughs> what if you sent in, like, 50, it's a dick in a box. 50 ninja elves, dick in a box. and they all go real um, quiet, they wait till night, and they start just fucking throat-slitting all from yeah. behind. Boom, 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 boom. Do something like that, and, yeah. and get a Galadriel out early, you know? Get in there yeah. and sneak her out, and then just be like, "All right." When people start to realize, just go all out and get them. Yeah, that would have been if fun too. If that river too. was still there, they could have pulled a George Washington and murdered them in their sleep on Christmas. Ooh, <laughs> but that would be fun. Sorry, metal. Uh, that was a long time ago. Don't worry about it. Hey, metal. guess what? I metal. thought that the I don't Elf even know Army what this means. Like... <laughs> I don't think there were Germans in fucking the U.S., dude. Wrong. There were. You're still wrong. Learn your history. So loser. Pretty sure I'm also older. Maybe you should I'm read so less right now. <laughs> and pick up a real history book. I think there were more gravity. Germans on the American side than the fucking British side in that war. Oh, interesting <laughs> that you think that. Anyway, yeah. now let's see. Where are Mom! we? Oh, hey, no, no, it's where we're friends now. The next World War, you'll be on the winning side for once. Oh, the mercenaries. I see. So, I see. <laughs> um, Adar and the orcs oh, are going ah. to march across the drained river and charge mindlessly at the walls of Eregion. This is the plan. <laughs> like, none of them have shields. They don't They're... have any, like, like siege, like, protecting, like, sheds that you'd walk underneath. They don't yeah. have, they don't do the uruk High thing where they march with their shields in, like, a phalanx box tortuga for formation, testudo formation, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, they just, they just... As, as as random said, they ungabunga across the river <laughs> in order to attack the wall. It's, uh... they, have, they have one siege weapon, which we, we will see that shortly, but they basically, their, their attack plan is to break down the wall with this one siege weapon. And until that happens, orcs are just going to go, 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 and just slam themselves into the wall and die. That is the attack plan. Adar does not care about the orcs. You, nope. you can't tell me that he does. It almost works because the it's elves like, are equivalently stupid, and having seen this one siege weapon coming very slowly toward them, they don't immediately start shooting just at that. They uh, they oh, just waste all their time. They have to yeah. be told aim at the siege weapon when it's right next to the balls. Whereas if they'd started doing that from the beginning, they, they might have. So quite small, obvious. though, they might not have even noticed it because how small and shitty. <laughs> they also they also cheated like it is very fuck. shitty. Like, do you understand how long it would take for them to move that? Dumbass siege weapon, especially with how Rags oh, described yeah, it. Oh, in the mud. Possible. You're not getting I mean, yeah, it. Yeah. But... Able to at all. It, it, <laughs> should, it should not be possible. Look how far mm, they've gotten no it already. Way. That's insane. Yeah. They do have What's this little like, plank things they put in front of the thing, but that would not really work that well. So I can only assume that, like, it's a good thing we cut away because what happens when the orcs get to the wall? They'll just. Like, well, what they, now? They, they're like NPCs in <laughs> the video game that you're not supposed to see. They just stand next to yeah. going, arr, arr, it just, They just clump arr. up at the bottom of the wall because... Swinging their arms around. Like, hanging see, at it like fucking Monty Python. Like, you don't see <laughs> yeah. a bunch of... You don't see a bunch of orcs carrying ladders, a whole bunch of ladders, like 30 ladders ready to go, mm -hmm. and all the orcs are carrying them. You, of course, we have the iconic scene from the from the Helm's Deep battle where the uh, the Urukai are, have grabbed onto the ladders and they get lifted up all together oh, yeah. onto the wall, oh, and it's yeah. like, holy shit, this is happening, boy. Mm -hmm. You know how many there are with... in this battle? How many ladders? I think I saw three or so. Three. There are I four. Think two. There, there's there's like two in a log, and they're pathetic. I think there's one at first. Yeah, they are pathetic. Yeah, they get, they get one up. And then there's a log later, and then the, the first one falls down, and it comes back up. Oh, okay. And isn't it's that all in the background pathetic. as well? Because the show doesn't understand the significance of getting a ladder up against this wall when you've got so few elven defenders and such a huge orc army that if one ladder yeah. goes up, Helm's Deep understands this point. Yeah. Once the uruk are up, that's incredibly significant. So all the camera's focus is on the raising of the ladders. Whereas here, yeah. it always happens in the background. Yeah, you could be forgiven for having this shit. Yeah, I think you see an orc climb up in the background and hit yep. someone, and that's the extent Please. of it. And the rest of it's oh, focused some... on the now redundant siege weapon, which, why is it attacking the wall when there's a gate, presumably, on the other side of a bridge, which mm -hmm. you could have sent it to instead? There, there is a few scenes when there are orcs, are orcs up on the ladder. Yeah, on there's the definitely walls, orcs. Like they're, they're fighting and shit. You're and you also see the, um, yeah. uh, the, the bridge thing. There is like a drawbridge at the end of it that they have pulled up. So you yeah, can't they, actually get across. Oh. They've managed. They're they, smart enough to pull up their drawbridge. So yeah, we'll be, yeah. Oh, good exactly. on them. 
like the orcs wouldn't have been able to get through the bridge with the drawbridge using that fucking insane contraption that they've thrown together but you aim one of your mountain destroying trebuchets at the gate yeah right yes. there that, there you can see that the drawbridge gate yeah they could have destroyed up. that with the, hole um, there. Yeah. They, they would yeah. absolutely be able to knock down the fucking entire wall with the the trebuchets because they're insanely powerful and can destroy and with mountains, the rubble apparently. you could probably fucking <laughs> yeah. climb the rubble up into the yep. city then as well oh yeah absolutely yeah. it's so stupid <laughs> Man, if only they had some fiery contraptions they throw and shoot at, <laughs> set things on fire to use. That would be. No, no, hmm, we we be can't really do that until our own forces are on the yep. battlefield, Metal. We need to wait. Oh, <laughs> okay. We can only use those if we get to hit our own people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, from from the scene that I've uh, that that Mahler's actually posted here for us, um, if you could put it on screen, it's just like a little little reminder about what the elves are looking at here. This is like a, this is like an elf's wet dream. This is the kind mm -hmm. of thing that they the fantasize fucking... about. We're being gallery. sieged by all of these like unarmored, unshielded orc ungabungas that are just running at us, and I just get free reign to shoot as many as I can. This isn't this is an elf sweat, an elf sweat fantasy, wet dream, fantasy dream. He comes at the thought, but Adar is portrayed as he really want, he really likes his orcs. He loves them so much, and he wants to protect them, and there's clearly he knows that there's a sentiment kind of going around about hey does does, does it are really care for us orcs because mm. you know like i feel like we could just leave and not do this fight we can just hang out in mordor but he seems pretty insistent that sauron's definitely in that city and we have to wage this siege on the city to stop sauron and his tactics are not to ensure that every orc has a shield no one goes into battle without a shield um, or we have to build these big, you know, machines that protect us or these structures yeah. that we can wheel up that, that, that protect. No, it's just run across and die in droves. No strategy whatsoever. And we're not counting the mountain thing as strategy. That's stupid. <laughs> but interesting. I guess Adar is dumb too, but we knew that. There is um, these uh, contraptions that uh, were quite common during the just that you could hide behind and just like wheel up. And if they can wheel up the fucking big, uh, you know, yeah. machine thing over there, they can definitely build some of these and just hide behind. Because generally people don't want to die. Generally. Mm -hmm. Or get shot. Well, I think that Rags, hurts. what's crazy is in this shot, I think there's one guy with a shield there. It's a small one, but oh, there you we go. See that. Oh, oh we, yeah, a few of them have like shield. tiny shields, yeah. We, we see that prop <laughs> a lot. If you notice, we actually see that shield <laughs> quite a bit. It, it shows up, we can get to it kind of later because we notice it in the next episode in particular. There is a lot of props that we see copied and pasted, and we see oh, yeah. a lot of um, that shield in particular. It, it gets reused. We see it pop up every once in a while. Um, and it's all, it, but it is a really shitty shield, even. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, uh, the, they're able to somehow drag this, this little war machine across. Again, they've got no trolls, no beast of burden, nothing. They're just physically pulling it, pushing it. It's very silly. Um, the elves yeah. don't train arrows down on it. It doesn't look like there's any like protection built in for uh, any of the people mm. so yeah, yeah not great yeah, just, um, just compare how the elven archers hidden here act to like compare to helm's deep when they're all in sync like shooting super yeah. fast and like super accurate and shit yeah. and they all they, they just seem like goobers well they no, even remember point, when they even like highlight it because you've got like the elves are like go 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 they're firing at will which is what you would do because there's mm -hmm. fucking hundreds of thousands we're meant to believe of orcs running at you and then you've got the commander guy that we mentioned earlier and he says <laughs> uh, like loose arrows or something to try and almost suggest <laughs> yeah. that there is some kind of organization here it's like what do you mean we're already doing that like yeah, keep doing what you're doing guys you're doing yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> well when um whenever the, the Uruk high with all their shields started going up the ramp to helm's deep all of the archers got told to shoot at them and so they were shooting into the into their yeah. sides that were unprotected mm -hmm. uh so like oh there's a thing here's a logical response to it and we see that happen and it makes our brain go oh yeah that makes sense to be clear um i think it's absolutely fair to compare it to helm's deep but i will say helm's deep is it's a tough one because helm's deep is one of the greatest battles if not the greatest battle in mm -hmm. cinematic history so the thing is possibly that's not great. entirely true but at the same time like there's really no reason why this show with all of the money that's at their disposal mm -hmm. Is yeah. in a position to essentially be trying to accomplish the same feats. Yeah, it's television, better. sure, but they've got a lot of money. Like oh, this episode, I wouldn't be surprised if it costs like a hundred million dollars. Yeah, you know, yeah. So and, and, and we see like thirty elves, elves, and they're all um, kind of shit. Yeah, I mean, they don't even well, get the basics down. Like, it's just, it's just shit. The of, well, I mean, the basics, of course, when you talk about something like Helm's Deep, is okay. 
what is the objective of either side in very plain and clear terms? Where are they? What is it that they need to do right now? And if that fails, what is it that they need to do after that? And then oh, let's start earlier. Let me know that. how many forces each side actually has, because yeah, I have course. no idea. Comparing the size of them, because we're told that this force is big, but there's a difference between that and seeing all of the Urukai marching towards Helm's Deep. And yeah. it's so expansive that you can't even see where it ends. There, yeah. There's one line in one, I don't remember what episode, but he says he has multiple or like more than one legion, but we don't yeah. know how many well, that's exactly. That's just show people, showing people yeah. is yeah. way more effective, just show yeah. the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, they don't mention numbers. We get one reference, I think, in a, either this episode or the next one. I think it's in this episode. Um, and we'll get there and we'll discuss it when we get there because uh, weird. it's weird. Um, like, the, so, in, I was just going to say as well, the push and pull of uh, battle and the surprises, because like everything's so prepped in Helm's Deep, the, um, like the writer's mm -hmm. new, we've set up everything for the explosive, that's going to be a huge deal, but then we've also got the surprise skill sets, so to speak, from like Gimli, Aragorn, and Legolas that tip the yeah. balance slightly here and there that make you, it really defines, that's one of the things I found most impressive about Helm's Deep is how they... Um, they keep playing with your sense of hope and despair. You go up and down yeah. and up yeah. and down mm -hmm. and up and down. It's very careful balance. It's like a song. While they do this... that with the orcs as well. Because the, mm -hmm. they come in with the ladders in... I think the ladders go up in like the first minute of the battle. And the first thing that they do, the very first thing that the uruks do offensively, is they whip out their like repeater crossbows and start popping yeah. the elm. Like that's like... Wh did they prepare for that? No, they can't have done. Mm -hmm. So it's immediately they're on the back foot and then the ladders come up. And something that they do so fucking well in like all of the battle scenes in the Lord of the Rings films and the Hobbit films, which they don't do at all in this fucking episode, is big the big wide sort of massive sh showing establishing shots yeah. showing like the whole yeah. battle so that you can see clearly um, what is actually happening, but also when something changes, why has it changed and how has it actually changed? Because yeah. in Helm's Deep, yeah. Yeah, like in Helm's Deep, you've obviously got the bomb with the explosion. That's a big wide shot that shows what's happened. You've got the uh, Uruk going up in formation with the uh, with the battering ram. You've got Gandalf arriving. Um, all of that, you see big wide shots to show you exactly what is happening, so that you can properly understand it. When they're falling yeah. back to the keep, it's the same thing. Whereas in this episode, it's just uh, the unga bunga at the walls until the episode is over. That's that's it. <laughs> Pretty much. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they can't do establishing shots because if they did establishing shots, then it would be even more apparent than it already is that none of the staging actually makes any sense. It's like if, if you're you're constraining yourself with the establishment shot to say that things like, well, Gil Galad can't just teleport randomly into a scene on a horse uh, and say this is where yeah. things have to be. <laughs> like, well, but you weren't there. That's the problem. I think they're trying to unask questions by not showing us exactly what's going on in the wide shots so they can yeah. get away with doing the random staging. But that completely misses the point that actually, yes, your battle should be dictated by the same sorts of rules that your entire show should be dictated by. Like that's your rules dictate your staging and not the other way around. But they don't grasp that point. Also, like this being a TV show, I think was was it Fringy said that like possible budget of like a hundred million dollars. Like I just that, wonder this episode yeah, that, could have been well, like way more expensive than all the other ones. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. on average, season two I think is about fifty eight million dollars an episode, and this Man, episode obviously would have been most of it. It's it's insane. Um, but like in terms yeah. of time, like yeah, it's a TV show and it's one episode of a TV show, so you think, well, okay, they don't have as long as the two towers had. I haven't got my stopwatch out, but I can pretty much guarantee you that this battle is longer than the Helm's Deep battle. Yep. Yeah, of course. And three we, Godzilla yeah. minus ones. Well, because big. Back... What, what I mean is, big chunks <laughs> of this episode are not the bat showing the battle, but if you just take the battle sequences, I'm pretty sure it's going to be longer. If we I think back to the long night, yeah. where the biggest selling point of the long night, according to the people who made it, was that it's it's going to be longer <laughs> than Helm's Deep, which is not. Yeah. Yeah. That's just not what you want to hear. Like longer. That's. Me, yeah, it's but. Better. Yeah, yeah, longer, no. because they cut away, and when we're back, it's nighttime. It's like, oh, great, yeah. this is longer now. Good job. It's also cringe, <laughs> yeah. too, because, like, Helm's Deep, it's not like anyone said, you know what, the one thing I would have liked about Helm's Deep, it should have been longer. It's like, well, it's... No, it was perfect. It's just long as it is. <laughs> it's because it was fucking yeah, awesome. It's super yeah. fucking yeah. solid. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I also want to highlight the scene at uh, 1530, where the archers just stand there doing fuck all the while the uh, orcs are charging. If nice. you can shoot that. Oh, I've already, yeah, there's several shots of that, actually, yeah. They're just doing nothing, huh? Yeah. They're just watching. Yeah. They're just told, guys, <laughs> just stand there. Just We're not 100% yep. sure what we want to do with you just yet. 
Worth Mass. mentioning here as well, because you've just shown it on the screen. Dude. Why is Medania here? I have no idea. I was about to you mention that You can see the orcs. They're just, yeah, exactly. Oh, they're you, just see, you see the orcs charging, and they're just standing there doing fuck all for, <laughs> <laughs> for like a minute. Wait, hang on. So they have like they have like, they have like this little canister, or what it is? Is that supposed to be like fiery stuff or whatever? Yes, yeah, to they help can them have fire arrows, presumably. I guess that's I, for I, I th because like this more looks like a like yeah I, I, I was thinking like oil stuff that they pour on orcs or whatever but yeah they I guess they prepared that. this and then they were like oh they didn't bring any ladders I guess we don't need this uh, it takes like two days to prepare <laughs> not in, when you're in a time loop or something you know? oh man it's so bad they would have been told like yeah the battle hasn't started yet they're like oh okay, yeah exactly. cool. <laughs> oh okay yeah. I mean I they thought it would the because there was like all these orcs but you know it's fine. They're on a different set. It's cool. Aww. They haven't there composited a bunch the of these, yet. but like you can see, you can tell they filmed it all out of sequence, and they just haven't added the things back together. Because Gil Gallard shows up with a weird like anchor weapon at some point, which he never is shown picking up. I don't think. I, uh... um, and like you wonder whether they, they, there was a bit of a battle in it which they cut out where he gets it, and then that, that that would have made more sense. But they didn't show that thing, so then he just turns up randomly with something he's never been shown having. And here they're not shooting, even though before they were shooting, because this was mm -hmm. filmed first, and they didn't realize yet that they were supposed to be shooting at this point in the fight. It's just it's such like a basic mess. It's not even like a complicated mess. Everything about it is wrong. Yeah, the the editor fucked up here. They they should have been like the first scene when the orcs are like marching across the or starting marching the, um... across the fucking thing. I don't know if it's a different editor for this episode, but the editor fucked this episode hard. Like, oh, it was yeah. bad enough already, <laughs> but I was so confused with the There's a lot of passage of events. Edits. Couldn't track anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah and a, a lot of scenes just don't match together at all. Like, the edits don't feel natural whatsoever. Hmm. Boy, oh boy. Anyway. Good stuff. Hey! Um, you know I just like Miradania? I do. She's great. Miranda, yeah. Miranda's on the wall, just <laughs> looking at the orcs during the siege. Um, I don't All know why right. she's up here. Actually, that I was do. Be my question: Why is she there? What? Oh, why I'll, is she we'll just wandering around? We'll find out why soon. They're setting it up. It's a lot of setup. The um, whole season <laughs> set this up. It's setting up. When, the guy that when... edited this episode is the guy that edited episode four, but apart from that, he didn't do any of the series. <laughs> well, uh. Um, I assume episode four was a lot easier to edit because there was nothing happening in it or something. Yes. <laughs> episode four is the one where Isildur and um, Arendir go and save Theo from the tree. It might oh, be the like, yeah, worst episode nothing in the... Nothing happens. Yeah, nothing yeah. happens in that episode. Um, anyway, I, we, we've been talking about like there's a siege, an active battle happening. She's just wandering around on the actually mostly empty battlements here on <laughs> yeah. the wall. Because mm -hmm. there's no like elven defenders, there's only like a dozen it's in the whole a city. Setup. It's, it's, it's great setup. It's great. She's our um, POV oddly, for... she is a black she is a blacksmith, but yeah. you know. Uh she's white. Uh but the archers aren't <laughs> shooting in this scene at all. Uh in fact the captain is telling them to hold fast, no clue why. He no. then says that they have to stop the machine when it shows up. So not sure why I mean, they were not ordered not to it. shoot. That's even worse. <laughs> yeah, he says no, like, the, fast. This the scenes are out of order. This should have been before the the fucking orcs arrived, even. But they had it fucked up. Do you think the elves know what that thing is, or are they just like, what the hell is? They they, they call what? it a ravager, so they yeah. apparently know. Oh, yeah, I don't know what it is though. That machine confuses the, the fuck out of me. No, I have no, no they, idea they, what they, it's supposed they, to do. The elf lady calls it a ravager. Yeah, she does. She have a ravager. Yeah, she does. Oh. So, oh, okay. That's even worse because I thought that because this machine is stupid. We'll get into what it does. It's super there. retarded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually a retarded design. Now, to be fair, they are orcs, but even then, I even feel like then. this is in, even then. I feel like orcs would know. I mean, better. did did you did you see the trebuchets? You know. <laughs> well, it, it it's not even necessarily that it's that they're orcs. It's like the because maybe they built this wacky, wonderful contraption. They're like, eh, we'll just see if it works. But like you say, if Medania and the other elves know what it is and they're afraid of it, then that means that it is supposed to work. Mm -hmm. there, there's a reason to fear it. And I don't know what that reason is. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, Ravagers. They're really bad. Boy, they they're ravage all kinds of things. I don't want to yeah. get ravaged. Uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, in the scene, the, the elves are just standing. The, the elves are just standing there. They're all just standing there. No clue what's going on with the CGI or the editing. It's bizarre when you look at the scene and you just see all of these elves standing there calmly, 
-hmm. like they're just out on a normal patrol looking around as in the background this legion of orcs is like right there running at them very strange uh, and again so right. little it else is, it could be an oh yeah there's very few it's so uh, few. i think it might be an editing fuck up as you mentioned um um so we go back in the tower now we've been outside for long enough go back in the tower anatar he's checking on brimby um <laughs> now brimby's sitting on the floor and he's like wait 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 and anatar's like what and he says look 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 at that look, look at that mouse wait just a second see see that mouse over there he's like a pattern every once in a while he comes out exactly the same and then he goes back and also the embers on the fire they're not burning down and look at this candle i marked it and yeah. it's not burning lower brimby do, do you guys know uh, do you guys know where know. they stole that from by the way uh, so what from uh the mouse thing like the how Matrix. Kind of acts. The Matrix, no surely, it's yeah the truman show really I don't remember. I haven't seen that movie in way too like long. Like how specifically how Kilbin Bor acts with that. So, just to be clear, the people who wrote this don't know what movies are. So <laughs> they, uh, I don't think that you guys are referencing the deja vu from Matrix. Are you? Yeah. 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 Deja vu. Yes. I, I I got Truman Show vibes from that, but yeah. Interesting. Maybe they did, but I I yeah maybe they did. Um, Brimby realizes he has, uh, Anatar's like, yo, we, you, we've got to make the rings, you know, you got to finish these up because you really should hurry. A lot's counting on you. You said you had a few days to go. So, eh, chop, chop. And Brimby's like, no, no, I don't need to hurry. It turns out I have all the time in the world because I'm stuck in this weird, like, timeless time loop. And Anatar <laughs> basically fesses up instantly that he's responsible. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, he did this to give Brimby the peace of mind that he sought and that he thought that Brimby would like it. But Brimby says, no, I don't like it. I'm very <laughs> upset that you've like trapped me in this time prison. <laughs> Crazy. Um, like, I know. <laughs> fucking super jail. Actually, it's not like super jail at all. Um, he says, no emissary of the Valar would do this. Who the fuck are you? That's what he says. He says, who the fuck are you? Right in the show. He does. It's the first time we see an elf swear. Uh, sometimes they say Denk Ferrick, though. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Anatar says that I'm the one I'm the one who keeps the sun balanced above your head and I'm giving you a chance to prove your worth. I want the nine. <laughs> so Anatar is getting a little he's 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 having a fit. He's throwing a bit of a fit. And Brimby's mm -hmm. like, no, liar. Um, liar. And he grabs <laughs> Feanor's hammer and he turns around and he throws it at Anatar. In, 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 in this passionate rage and but it bursts it goes through the window <gasps> and then the sounds of the siege come through the window all the noises of the explosions Which and the cries no of anguish it makes sense hey, yeah. it totally makes sense <laughs> he's it's been magic. outside it's not like he was no. on the balcony before oh wait <laughs> that was yeah. that was different he thought he was content and whatever he was he was okay he was he bought into the illusion on the balcony but now he's super suspect and now anatar says this is like a weird thing that i'm doing to you you're you're bewitched Actually, I don't think it does make sense. I'm just trying to. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, obviously, uh, he distresses, and in this scene, um, it, I Brimby, whoever the actor is, you are doing such a great job selling this and the terrible distress and the anguish that he feels at being like, "Holy shit! I've been lied to. I've been caught in an illusion. The city is under siege. I've been trapped here." Uh, the even it is a really weird part. The entire. The entire forge is basically busted. It yeah. Some debris. Yep. Like, no How do you not bump into things? Destroyed. I don't understand <laughs> this at all. Forge. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. No. Charles Edwards, I guess someone said the name is. If that's, that's the name, name of the. Yeah. You are right. doing a really good job. I hope you get a really good job after this where you can shine as a cool character. I'd love to see you in a good show. Um, <laughs> so. Use that paycheck and buy some more Moon Rune tea and enjoy it. <laughs> mm. So, oh. uh, yeah, we have. I have a lot of questions. I think we all had a lot of questions when we watched <laughs> yes. this. The point of an illusion is that you are kind of like he's tricked into thinking he's making the rings in peace and quiet and contentment, and he can focus and life's just grand and dandy, when really it's chaotic and terrible. And that would be fine to a degree, 
if everything in the forge actually was physically in the real world as it seemed to be. Because if you put up an illusion of there not being a wall, and then you walk into it, but there is actually a wall there, you will physically be unable to do that. This is where mm -hmm. a lot of like illusions break in shows and games and stuff. You, you find the edges of it, or you find the parts where it doesn't quite comport with reality. Um, but this is a huge deal. How could he have made the rings without like all of the forge stuff? Did he not even use yeah. that part of the workshop? Is is that what we're supposed to believe? Is that also happening? Only... Insanely lucky that it didn't, get, it didn't get hit by the falling debris at any time. Yeah. <laughs> well, not only that, but the idea of him throwing the hammer and breaking the window in isolation would be neat because it would be like like popping a bubble, mm -hmm. right? If he wasn't trapped... outside twice before this. Yeah, yeah. You're in isolation. The idea of sort of like breaking the barrier of the illusion yeah. and reality starts to come in. That is fine, and I like that. Unfortunately, we have a shit ton of other information and the rest of the scenes that make that not work. I'm not if sure, um, obviously, as... I'm not sure I think it works in isolation either, though, because why would that burst the bubble? I think it's because the illusion is, like, around the the tower itself, or that's supposed to it, be, like, the limits of if, what if the illusion is made to be. be. Yeah, if he never left this room and it like breaks part of it, and that sort of yeah, but we're talking about in isolation. Yeah, kind of we know thing. he's on the balcony. That, but we're yeah. like, if if in isolation, but then again, we don't know. Well, but but it's, so it, to me, it, it sounds like you're saying it would be neat if the rules reflected how it could work like that, which it doesn't. Yes, that's yeah. That yeah I mean, that's, that's all of it, though, right? Like technically. The hammer going through the window, breaking the illusion, is something that would make sense if the limits of the illusion were the tower itself. I mean, it would be better, at least. But we see him, yeah, as you said, he's on the balcony, and also and I think what's really important he, he is... in the previous it's episode the, as well. It's, it's the fact that, like, the forge has been destroyed by rubble because, like, a catapult shot has hit the tower and has destroyed mm. part of it. That didn't break the illusion. The crushing <laughs> debris rattling the, the stone floor, obviously, luckily, not hitting Celebrimbor, and obviously... Sauron couldn't have known that the tower would not get hit by stuff, so now there are all these obstacles in the illusion that yeah. don't look like they're obstacles. So if he ever wandered over there, he would trip over the things and be like, how come I'm tripping over this invisible stuff here where the forge should be? I am so, the only I'm way... also annoyed that they, they put in, he put in a fucking mouse there for no reason whatsoever on an obvious loop. Well, yeah. Uh, well, I think the mouse was already there, and he was just his spell was looping what was already there. But he, him not accounting oh, for that, simply, yeah, that's, I think is insane. And I him think not that's accounting a flaw. for Celebrimbo like, looking in the mirror. Sauron should be smart enough to know that Celebrimbo might notice over weeks that candles aren't burning. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, e obvious. even e e looking in the mirror would be the easier example because, like that, noticing a ca it requires that you notice it, whereas looking in the mirror is something that could just happen by accident. Mm. And he, the, 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 candle's the mirror is a big fuck completely up. fucking retarded. Yeah, like the only reason why Celebrimbor should have been able to break out of this illusion is if Sauron was ca uncharacteristically careless. Oh, well, you could do the thing of control. Sauron actually has something to deal with that's incredibly high pressure somewhere else, and then we notice yeah. that the illusion itself is is just maybe oh, not that's... flickering but loosening. Yeah, it's interesting because yeah. that's literally what I said to Random when we were watching it. I was like, wouldn't it be interesting if, because he had to focus his concentration elsewhere, elements of the illusion were kind of breaking down a bit? But when Anatar was here, present in the forge, it held up like super good. Yeah. And, you know, Celebrimbor yeah. does, they pay lip service to that idea because Celebrimbor does later speculate that maybe that was why Sauron was distracted by the battle. But that's all we get. It's just a vague reference. That's to, the thing that I did, distracted by. It's like no, you have to actually like you have to stress yeah. him power level. You can't just stress him visually. You can't just have it be like like maybe. Well, that's uh, bad. Could, what they could have done. I'm talking about what they could have done again. What they probably fucking should have done is had him maybe generate like a force field around the forge, and that when it gets hit, that makes him makes his magic weaken, which then affects the illusion that's going on inside the forge. Um, because people outside might have noticed if yeah, like, they would have noticed rockets some smashed into it. It's like, what that's the hell's going thing. on up there? How would they trying, not have seen I'm trying to it was a good forge room. <laughs> we made that a, that's a solid tower we made, boys. Yeah, like, how, how were no elves concerned for him when they saw that his rooftop had fucking caved in? They'd be like, oh. Because he was mean. He was mean. He's, 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 he's a capitalist he's a slave driver. He's, so, yeah. he's, he's just nutty. That's what he is. Because he's nutty. Yeah. That's right. No, no elf. 
Not a single elf in the whole city checked it's, on It's not of sound mind, so fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, the, the only way that I think that this works is, like, a, a, some people have suggested that this is an illusion, and that's it. It's just, it's all inside Celebrimbor's mind, but it cannot be that simple, because... Uh, well, for one, he's he's physically made the rings, and you can't do that yeah. in a dream. Um, and two, <laughs> he believes that an amount of time has actually passed. So, and he's using a forge that is unusable; it's inoperable. You can't make rings mm. using well, using what he thinks is mithril, which we'll get yeah. to in a sec. But also using a broken forge. Um, so the only way it has been remade. This... <laughs> um, it has. The only way that I think this works is if Sauron has placed Celebrimbo into a pocket dimension where time flows differently. Yeah. It's using yep. like Inception dream level rules. Yeah, we're um, at the point of magic where it's like, you know what, you just took him literally to a different dimension temporarily. Yes. You just brought him back. Yeah, yeah and which, like, I, which increases his power level quite substantially. <laughs> yeah, like if he can do that, if the writers just say straight up, he, well, actually fuck the, what the writers say, this means that he can do that and him not doing this earlier yeah. is insane because he could have, mm -hmm. when he first appeared as Anatar, he could have said like, Okay, so I have this power. I'd like you to willingly enter this illusion because then it re removes it removes time, the, the constraints of time. You can totally chill out. You can relaxingly make these rings over a period of time because then you get rid of the deception angle. Um, that's that's the only way that I think that this works. But I don't know how much of that interpretation comes from the writers being completely unable to convey the passage of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, he could he could just trap Galadriel in the pocket dimension or anyone else who doesn't like. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the the question that comes up. It's like, oh, you have these incredible. We're just like a whole thing with Sauron in this show, anyway. He just gets more and more and more yep. powers. Remember to the power a, to, a to destroy. I don't even bridges. know what he wants the rings for. I don't know what he wants the rings for. Remember he the has power like his... to wake up the Barrow Whites. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. E an evil wand where he goes like, some ghosts here, something over there, there, some lightning on this bridge. Yeah. Just, I think we said it last. Episode, it was like, just make a fucking army of Barrow Whites. Just throw the weapons away. Like, you just no, they're, lim they're limited <laughs> to the one location. They can't. You can't do that. Oh, the show doesn't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, go, go. He can teleport over the pocket dimension, then teleport them back yeah. to a different pocket oh, dimension. Fuck. It'd be great. You got me. <laughs> that, never mind. <laughs> well, the other... the other question as well about the rings, which is, unless I've missed something in, in previous episodes, um, so Sauron says, you know, fine, I'll go and make the nine myself when Celebrimbor refuses. Sauron tries to make the nine, but can't do it because only Celebrimbor knows how. Then we get to this episode, and you can only make them with Sauron's own blood. And Celebrimbor has been making them. If Sauron needs to know the secret to making the ring, he must already know what that secret is because he knows his blood will suffice. But if he still needs to learn something from Celebrimbor, he can just watch him make one, and then he knows everything he that's needs been, to know so that everything can end, right? It's been so very confusing even... for the past few episodes. I don't know how Sauron hasn't learned everything he needs to know. I don't understand. Well, the, the thing is, I think they just tripped over themselves because they went with the whole point of uh, oh we need to make them safer for men which i don't even know why sauron buys into that like he gives a shit if they're, they're safe or not i think he'd want to pretend yeah but now it's like the whole thing that he can't do it them himself anymore even though he was there for the for the last ones they made so i think um this is you're talking about when medania puts it on and goes to the unseen world yeah. Um, yeah, because they're trying to make their own rings. And the yeah, only so, the only reason I'm, they fail is because, oh, we're trying to make them safer for men, which he doesn't really care about. So I'm pretty sure what we're supposed to take from that is that Sauron did that deliberately, which I think is insane, but that's what I think the show is, is telling us. Match, I, have, I have no idea. Yeah, like if no Sauron idea. was capable of just completing them, and he could have done with his own blood too. He could have just tricked everybody. Yeah. 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 No reason not to. I I don't know if he necessarily could have done it because or at least I don't know if the show thinks that he necessarily could have done it, because basically he's given, he's turned his blood into Mithril. He's, uh, Celebrimbor has crafted the rings using goo, which I, <laughs> I don't even know how you do that. Well, um, I thought it was, but, it was literally blood and that he just saw it as uh, gravel yes. or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but right. like blood, blood doesn't have the same properties as no, Mithril. No, yeah, you're right. Um, can. Which is How do you know it's Sauron blood? element but i mean here. again like i just don't know why when, when he when he's like oh it's dangerous me making him we need you Celebrimbor. is like was that true or was he lying i, I think that's supposed has to, to be, be true. true yeah it has to be true because if it's not true and if he can make them himself he has no business staying around here he gains nothing like yeah. why would you stick around to invite an attack you know is coming 
which will reveal that you were Sauron and you were in charge of Eregion when all the rings were made, meaning that any ring that comes out of Eregion forevermore uh. will be suspect because Sauron might have made it, rather than, if he knows how to make them himself, pissing off, doing it in private, and then turning up in various different realms of Middle-earth, appearing as another another kind of gift giver and giving people rings that nobody knows are corrupted. So I, I don't see what he would gain in any sense from lying about that. I think it's supposed to be that he... Celebrimbor can make the rings using Mithril, as in, like, he, he is capable of doing it. But then Sauron, because he couldn't get the Mithril, uh, as we saw in the previous episode, he was like, okay, well, do it with my blood anyway. And I'm guessing what that will lead to is, is the, the fact that they literally contain a part of Sauron is what is going to make the Rings for Men particularly evil. Mm. Um, but how uh... Celebrimbor crafted the Rings for Men using the same... Yeah, processes because in in with the with the rings for elves he used gold or silver from valinor yep. uh, he used mithril and he used gems that contained the essence of valinor the rings for men he's made using whatever metal he has whatever lying around and <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, but he's apparently used the same process so yeah. i don't and, and i don't know how under, he do that. he's also I under a time constraint rain. he's also under a time constraint that he himself inflicted on on uh, oregon because he went to mordor and made the fucking orcs come here because oh, that's they a whole the timeline mm -hmm. for everything in this show because they mm -hmm. figured that they couldn't have it span over thousands of years, so they're like, yep. shit, yeah, that would be like in the month. Have to cram yeah, everything like month. together. <laughs> that's a whole other question, which I don't know if we want to do now or when we do episode eight, is why <laughs> on earth would Sauron want Adar to attack Eregion? How does Adar know that Halbrand and Sauron are the same person? And yeah. how, how does Adar know that he's I inside Eregion? How, how does Sauron know he have enough time to create the rings? Well, it'll it did... always be that whatever ends up happening, they'll be like, "Yeah, I mean, he he was counting on that." And it's like, "Yeah, but he couldn't have possibly." <laughs> yeah, he literally can't that have that done like the sequence. Um, of unless he had read the script, happen. he wouldn't be able to know. Exactly. And and even if he did deliberately want it to happen, which I think I think the show wants us to think that Sauron wanted Adar to attack Eregion. Um, oh yeah, of course. It, yes. Well, they they it's a bit hazy because of a line he delivers in episode eight, but I think that the show wants us to believe for now that that's what he wanted. Why has he artificially imposed a time frame upon himself? There is no reason for him to do that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Unless he knows the script. Well, even if he knows the script, like... It, <laughs> it doesn't yeah, matter. If he, if he, if he knew the knows, script, he, he would, he would, he he would triple not do it if he knew the script, because he'd be like, oh shit, he does come here, damn. I mean, he would know he would have exactly enough time, and then the orcs would betray him and all that shit, you know? I guess you're right, yeah, that does work out. But then yeah. he knows that by the end of what happens in episode eight, he'd be like, "Well, that's not ideal." And then if he read, uh, yeah, the full script all the way up to the Galadriel's Lord of the Rings, beyond this power. Oh, no. you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he does say he doesn't see all ends or something like that, doesn't he? Um, gosh, we've we discussed so much, so much is, and it's hard to believe that with all that we've talked about, there's still so much more to go. This <laughs> we have ba we have yet we've barely well, begun to episode. There are so many questions and even better answers to those questions Yo, as we move forward. Better answer. We, we'll also um, say that Celebrimbor's reaction should have been like four episodes ago, but yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I said I, I do like the visual of the vial full of blood. Yeah. I don't know. There's something oddly grim about that that I kind of like. I guess I the, the goo. Uh, the goo. Yeah. The the black yeah. pitch, black as pitch blood. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh. When he when he gets the blood on his fingers, uh, Grimby's like, oh shit, what's this? And uh, he reveals, I've learned a lot from you, Brimby, but what I learned the most is that true creation requires sacrifice. And he shows him that he's he's got the black, that he's got his wound on his hand that he cut his, his palm earlier. Because if you cut yourself, you always have to do it on the palm of your hand. It's mm -hmm. a movie rule. You have to do it. There's, I don't make the rules. That's just what you have to do. Okay. It's ritualistic. That's a pretty cool and... moment, I will say, where uh, Brimby says, you know, you, you are, and he says, yes, I am him, and he's like, you, you are Waldrig, and it's the big reveal <laughs> happens, and, yeah. yeah, it goes by many names, and, but that's the main one. And then Anatar Ooh. says, welcome to Mordor, that's right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, Brimby essentially discovers here, he's like, oh, you're a baddie, and he asks, are you he? And Anatar says, I have many names. And Brimby asks, is one of them Sauron? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't say that. It's just, it's just, uh, Brimby leaves the tower. 
because I guess Anatar allows him to leave the tower. Brimby is out. He yeah. has left the front door. Yeah. He has gone down the tower and he has Why left the, fuck the tower. Why does he do that? No, there's no fucking... <laughs> by letting him leave, the Sauron is a fucking idiot, I swear, in this episode, possibly what? more than any other, because by letting... Celebrimbor is vital to his plan. If Celebrimbor yep. leaves the tower, he's just introducing an infinite number of variables. Mm -hmm. Um... One he of those variables. Immediately. <laughs> yes, one of those variables gets uh, catapulted into him about five seconds after <laughs> he leaves the tower. So, uh... <laughs> Mad if he, just dies there. he could he could yeah, keep yeah. him in the tower and he doesn't is the point because he can again he can trap yeah. him in a pocket dimension. He can freeze him. He can immobilize him. He can make him dribbling wreck on the floor. He can do yeah. whatever he wants. He could I mean, physically obvious... just grab him, but he yeah, he, he's he's obviously physically stronger than Calibrimbo would be. So he could just grab him and like shackle him to the table. Yeah. And like he, uh, he does certain things after Celebrimbor has left the tower, but none of that would have been necessary if he hadn't yeah. let him leave the tower. So it's just to fuck with him more. That's the only reason. It, he's fucking with him at a massive risk, basically. Yeah. 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 Yes. He oh. does have terrible luck with catapults, does Celebrimbor? Is it like Boy, three times? Really <laughs> it's almost like, oh no! It's so funny. <laughs> he gets heated so hard. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, the moment, the moment that he gets out of there, <laughs> he, he essentially gets uh, area of affected by a catapult explosion, and he Damn like it. flings and flips off of the staircase, and he lands on the ground. Um, <laughs> a lot is riding on Brimbor being alive, so it's yeah. like whoops, good if thing he, he didn't actually die. dies. If that catapult hits like a, a couple of inches closer to him, like, what does yeah, well, Sauron do? Does he just walk? Well, out just and the stone hits stuff? his head, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he loses. That it's that because, like mm -hmm. you said, all of this relies on the idea that Sauron cannot create or cannot finish the rings himself. He needs yeah. Celebrimbor. Otherwise, he would just finish them himself. Yeah, he just, like, and he finds not his only corpse and kicks it like, come on, no, come on, do oh, something. <laughs> Just oh, oh fuck oh bugger. <laughs> well, boss. Oh, wait, no, 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 because he, he could just do the um the alien Romulus thing and just inject the vial of black goo into him, and then he'd recover <laughs> and he'd be fine. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's it's really incredible. The a rare Keller Brimbor action scene that I definitely appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> do you think the actor enjoyed that? Or I mean, they probably used a stunt guy. Were they? No, they. He was yeah. like, no, no, no. I'm I am Keller Brimbor. This is, the only, it's the, it's the only <laughs> fucking... reason he, he agreed to do the show. It's like, I'll do the show if I get to do a couple of flips. It's like, okay, Flip fine, me, baby. Flip, Flip me, baby. baby, one more time. Do you think maybe the actor was like, hey, I want, this is going to sound really dumb, but I want to get hit by two catapults because I really enjoy getting, you know, doing flips. <laughs> it's yeah, really man. fun. <laughs> it actually is super <laughs> fun. <laughs> There's also they a stone to... that like bounces off him, I just noticed. Like, it looks to hit this, like, back of his uh, arm somewhere. Oh, it's just his spine. As long as his hands are fine, it's, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure his hands will be A-OK -okay by the end of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like now, the stone um, a lot. He, he flips down after his incredible action sequence, and he's a bit in a bit of in a, a, a daze of sorts. Uh, he's a little bit addled and out of it. And he notices, oh, no, our Regions, there's death and destruction here. This is terrible. Oh, no, there's a dog, and there's an elf, and they're, one of them's dead. The dog isn't, thankfully. And he's like, this is madness. Oh, my goodness. This is awful. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, and there's like, an, uh, we, we pan to him kind of going up. We, we pan by up to the walls, right? And there's like one orc on the walls, I think, in this shot. Yeah. And it's really pathetic. There's, an, there, there's a, cat, a ladder. Sorry. There's a ladder and there's like two orcs in the entirety of the whole scene. It's not like a conga line at the ladder. It's just <laughs> one orc kind of gets up there, that. and another orc is like already up there. There's like two of them in this massive fight. It is actually pathetic to watch oh, yeah. this. It is legitimately mm -hmm. sad. Th there's All a panning shot funny. later that's pr particularly funny. <laughs> yeah. Pay no attention to the Helm's Deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scene. It is a lie. Yeah, yeah just, it, just slightly better. Um, uh, Brimby goes up to the walls for some reason. I don't actually know why. Oh, wait, I do. It's because Miradani is there and the writers want something to happen. Mm -hmm. So she's Miradani the only person is, he knows. Miradani is still on the wall, bizarrely. No clue why the soldiers are like, listen, 
I I don't even know why you're up here. You need to get down. You could get an yeah. arrow to the face at any second. Yeah. You need to not be up here. Let uh, let us do our thing. And now Celebrimbor's up here, and he finds Miradania, and he's like, holy crapola, there's orcs nearby, but there's only two of them. Don't worry about it. Let's have a chat right here on the battlements in clear view of the assaulting orc army. Yeah. Um, and there's... Yeah? Uh, and I was just going to mention, there's also people running around the fountain when Celebrimbor leaves. They're, so still they're still out there. Yeah, panicking. they're still fucking rounding around that damn fountain. They've got nothing better to do than just panic, <laughs> just general panic out in the set that they are going to get their money's worth out of, damn They've it. They've been circling that fountain like 600 times at this point. <laughs> they built that set. They are going to use it. By the way, that whole conversation, that stupid fucking log is in the background and there's no orcs climbing it. They just had that <laughs> yeah. one guy come it's up and there. be like, bah! <laughs> well, a they, also, they also showed us earlier, and we will see again, uh, that some of the orcs have bows, and some of the orcs oh, are yeah. pretty good with bows. But the, this whole dialogue scene just happens, and neither of them, n no character involved in this, acts like they are in danger at all. This, they're completely fucking open, and yeah, they're yeah. standing there for a long ass time next. To <laughs> oh, it's very good. Um, now Celebrimbor finds the Miradania, and he's like, "Holy crap, Miradania, it's you! Um, I have been tricked." I have been played for a fool. They played me like a damn fiddle. And by they, I mean, you know, this guy. Um, I, I was deceived. We've all been deceived. He forced me to make the rings. He mentions the ruby on the hammer and, and, and the mouse. And, yeah, why? And, and, <laughs> and Rimby is supposed to come across as a crazy person here. Um, yeah. So that everyone can be like, oh, you're crazy nuts. So, Keller Brimbor, did you get he out doesn't... of your... Did you get out of your, your room again? Let's take you back to bed. That's what they're trying to do here. Um, and obviously, intentionally. obviously, Celebrimbor is pretty distraught here, but like, come on, man, you should know that you're talk you talking about a mouse and the hammer and the ruby <laughs> and that you were tricked and you like, come on, man, you what's annoying across as a what has person. been done to him. And he even acknowledges he's deceived us all, but then proceeds to say shit that kind of matches Anatar's story. Yeah. It's kind of boring. Like, uh, he, I feel he like should, he should be smarter smart than enough. this, but yeah. He has been completely retarded the entire fucking series, yeah. though, so it's, it's in character. <laughs> um, so, uh, down below, we see that orcs... Now, this is what the machine does. Remember that war machine we talked about? This is great. <laughs> you guys are going to love this. This will revolutionize siege warfare. No one's ever thought of this before. <laughs> so, there are orcs that are hammering in, like, manually. They're hammering in these little metal spikes into the walls of the city, like, between the blocks i would assume but who knows they, they're hammering these little bitty spikes into the straight spikes like a pitten or something into the in, into the wall the, the bottom of the elf wall of the city and the or they're attached to evil chains and you can tell they're <laughs> evil chains because they have spikes on them and now, they're rusty they're yeah that's right they're rusty and spiky very bad now those spikes are connected to the war machine and what the war machine essentially does is think of it as like a reverse crossbow, kind of, where it like fires backwards and the tension pulls on the chains that have the spikes in the wall. And that's supposed to like make like pull the wall down. Yeah. We don't we don't see this until way later, though, but it, it would not work that way. And even the way it works in the show, it would be completely fucking useless and take forever to bring yeah. down the wall, which it does. <laughs> and from what yeah. we see, it looks like it takes them about six to seven hours to set this thing up. Because this is like yeah. relatively early morning. We're at maybe 11 o'clock, something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, later on, a, you know, a lot of stuff happens between now and when we actually see it fire, yeah. which means it basically <laughs> takes all day to set up. It's insane. It's it's really it funny. It, it, take, it takes several hours to get them the last bit into the wall. And apparently yeah. it's the thinnest part of the wall. Yes. Which yeah. I'm just like, oh, was that was that unlucky for you that they put it there? Or did they I know this? I have no clue how Adar <laughs> knows that this is the thinnest part of the wall. I have, I actually have no clue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know why there is a thinnest part of the wall. And if there it is doesn't a thinnest look like part the of the wall, I don't, I, just, I, don't, I don't know why they're standing on it. Like, I, I, <laughs> oh, I, can, I can explain why there's a thinnest part of the wall. You know, old man Findel's wine emporium was slightly too close to where they were supposed to build the wall. So, and they refused <laughs> to move 
So they just had to build around him. Mm. Maybe if there's some yeah. there's some reason for the foundation or where the river is or whatever, and so that's technically the. They thinnest, watched Lord of uh, the Rings, and then they were like, "We did the same as them." Yep. And you're like, "No, yeah, you yeah, didn't." Yeah. They're like, "Yeah, we Pretty did. Much. We did the same thing." It's like, "No, you didn't." They don't. They they don't have an explained reason for why they wouldn't yeah, be a part of the wall at all. <laughs> in Helm's Deep, they Saruman exploits a necessary structural weakness. Yeah. That, that the defenders could not have seen coming. Well, and isn't whereas here it's the information uh, it's, also it's from Green Worm Tongue as well, right? The, Yes. Yeah, yeah. He he knows because you know he knows about fucking Rowan, but and um, you know that there is a good reason for why there would be a thin part of, or like a weak point of the wall there in Hempstead because the water needs to get out of the fucking fortress. Yeah, like to be honest, it 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 would have it would have been a rip off if there had been a little sewer coming out of the bottom and they took a little bomb <laughs> in and then they ran at it with a torch. It'd be like you're just doing the two towers again. That would have been better than this. Well, you know, yes, a lot of. Oh, a lot of wooden parts to this whole structure, you know? A lot of a lot of burnable parts, mm -hmm. you might even say. Oh, uh, mm. If only well, the elves had, like, a, a feature in which Wait. they could blanket people in flame. Mm. If they had mm. a little tank full of petrol. Oh, well. Yeah. Saying. Probably not. Are we crazy? Um, elves hate <laughs> fire because it burns trees. Yeah, and they like trees. They uh, sure do. Mm -hmm. Now... Anatar, is, he just shows up on the battlements here. He shows up. <laughs> it feels very much he's... like my prisoners escaped. I just want to see what he does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, hey. yeah, shaking him. Yeah. Rimby has tells the guards, talking crazy to... or something. Well, luckily he has. He's been saying some loopy Ooh. things. Yep. Brimby tells Little all the guards, booster. you have to arrest Anatar. He has blood black as pitch. And obviously, he's Sauron on... can use illusions, so he shows that the blood on his hand is red. Yep, which, which I thought knows. was so fucking stupid. I was like, he's been illusioning <laughs> you forever. What do you think he's gonna do? Yeah, he holds was... his hand up and it's purple. <laughs> like, Wait a minute, like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. He's standing. Uh, Sorry, wrong color. Why he didn't hold his hand up and have there just be no wound? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, because he's, he holds it up and and there's a there's a red wound on his hand. It's like the normal reaction to that would yeah. be like, what are you doing? Blood magic? What's going yeah. on? But he he says his blood is black as pitch. Uh, so he has to show the blood, apparently. And, uh, Black yeah. as pitch. Yeah. Black as pitch on the street. Obviously, right. since Saren can use illusions, he just shows the blood's red. Everyone's like, oh my goodness. They think that Brimby is mad. Mm -hmm. And Miradania says, Brimby, we need we need to get you back inside where it's safe, okay? We need, we need to go ahead and take <laughs> uh, you back inside here. We need to take your pills. <laughs> and then Brimby says, get your hands off of me. And Anatar uses telekinesis to make <laughs> Brimby spaz out and with his arm fling her off the battlements down to the orcs below where they kill poor Miradania. And she's out of the story now. And that's it for her. That's yeah. it for her. She's done. All that they were setting up with her, that's it. She's, do she's done. Gone. And if you think that they'll mention her again, remember Valandil. No. Who? Uh, <laughs> who is a good question because the show fucking forgot about him. Oh, so we will too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, you really were, <laughs> didn't forget, didn't you? <laughs> See? <laughs> See? It, it works. They do. Um, oh, fuck. Um, I mean, Waldrig got killed and they never, they didn't even mention it either. Oh, one does not simply aligned. forget Waldrig. <laughs> no, we don't. We certainly don't. We're the number yeah. one internet Waldrig fan club. Waldrig. We never Waldrig. forget Waldrig. 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 Given what Adar does, given what Adar does with the, like the bodies of his fallen soldiers later in this episode, you would think he would have a pretty spectacular funeral for Waldrig. Yeah, he would show great reverence yeah. for Waldrig, who he clearly held in high esteem because he was like his right hand man, essentially. He, he was Waldrig the man who was... made Mordor. Like, he, was the, he is statues. the man who made Mordor. That's correct. He created yeah, that... Mordor. There's several statues of him in Mordor, obviously. You know, I believe we have that. we have slaves working on it right now. I believe that yeah. you were correct. That's true. That's canon. Mm -hmm. And I think I think actually Frodo and Sam pass a few in the Lord of the Rings. You just don't know that's him at the time. <laughs> but if you look close, you will see multiple statues to Waldrick. There's, there's, there's a lot of orna ornaments of on the Baradur to Waldrick, obviously. You know, oh, there is the scene in Return of the King where they find that the head of the statue, which has a crown of flowers on it, and that could be Waldrick. Oh, that it could be. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> oh, where it's got like the barbed wire on it, doesn't it? It has something. No, 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 uh, sorry. No, I'm they, they replaced the head with, yeah. the, with the eye, and there's a head lying like in the bio yeah, tree next to Yeah, it. it's got the flowers on it, and Sam's yeah. like, hey, look, he's got a crown after all. Yeah. 
But we can't talk about the Lord of the Rings. We have to talk about Rings of Power. Yeah, we can't talk oh, about we, good things. That's right. We gotta focus. Anyway, Miradani is fucking dead. And she actually mm -hmm. has a really terrible death. Um, she falls she's really down. Death. And she she <laughs> barely survives the landing, and she's looking up, and an orc's <laughs> like, "Oh, look, an elf woman!" and instantly mm. kills her with his axe. What a terrible way to die. Yeah. I think so we have a reference they, for they planned that to be even more gra like much more graphic, and by much more I mean just graphic at all in the first place. Apparently, they did plan on showing like her be pr pretty much cut in half, but they were oh. told that would be a bit too like graphic for the Rings of Power. Also, like Man. why? I know it she's be... like she's a nothing uh, character, but like does she deserve that? I mean, does she deserve anything? Is a question. No, she doesn't deserve that. It's weird that like the show. Like I still I don't like it when characters get treated that way. Where they kind of get played up and bigged up, and we we see them do stuff, and then they're just like, almost, like, kind of semi unceremoniously just like killed. Like Waldrig just get just gets killed, Meridani just gets killed, Valandal just gets killed, <laughs> and mm -hmm. that's that. And they're never mentioned again. Their impact is mm -hmm. over in the story. And I'm like, well, shit, these aren't even like good characters. But I'm like, come on, that just isn't fair. There's it's that part of my brain where I'm like, man, come on. Yeah, like the entire point of Medania, it essentially at this point is to die, so that we understand that Sauron is really evil, um, and to I guess inflict emotional pain on Celebrimbor yeah. because he's the only she's the only person that he seems to care about, really. But he never, I don't think he ever mentions her ever after this, does he? Uh, he doesn't, and he also nope. did not mention her in season one. Okay, nope. well, if if her death like spurred any of his decisions going forward, that would at least be something. He talks about Meridania or whatever, but no, she's just done. She, she's mm -hmm. Valandild. We don't talk about them anymore. They're out of the yep. story. Eyes forward to the future. You have your back to the past. We also have a reference here for what happens to an elf when they fall, they fall from a somewhat great height. Very good point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you certainly yeah. do. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know what you pointed out. <laughs> uh, that's that's so silly. I, yeah. It's pretty intuitive. You know, quote, what quote unquote, to her. great yeah. height. <laughs> you can survive that kind of fall, but you're essentially dead. Mm -hmm. uh, but she doesn't have enough um, main character energy to revive her after a fall like that. Like true. she's not like somebody else. We could be. We could be yeah. mentioning. Mm -hmm. Anatar tells Brimby that all of this can end, and I assume he's speaking like in like in his mind as an illusion. Uh, he says, "Brimby, you finish the nine, and he'll spare the city." And Brimby doesn't He's... ask why Anatar is attacking or not saving the city if he needs the Nine Rings completed now. You <laughs> should not have the city be under siege, period, because you need me to make the rings. But I guess, obviously, Brimby's kind of traumatized by what he's seen, and everyone thinks he's crazy, and he just got out of this illusion he's been trapped in, and he's learned that this guy is Sauron in disguise, but... He... <laughs> He also says this right in front of the elves that can hear him. Yeah, I, I, I think it's part of the illusion. I think he's. No. Really doing it. You don't think Obviously. so? Obviously. I mean, is is Caleb Rimbo speaking also part of the illusion? Sure. What is what does he say? I don't remember exactly what he says. Uh, fuck. I um, guess we can see in the subtitles. <laughs> I don't think it. That could also be chalked up to him being crazy or. Maybe the the guards just think he's nuts anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but I think that Anatar talking to him is is part of this uh, part of an illusion, and it really no. doesn't matter. Even if Krimbor <clears throat> says anything, it's part of the illusion that they're just standing there looking over the wall. Should have again, he the has talking in this head thing that they do later. He has an amount of control over the guards. Again, just sliding that in, so I think it's acceptable for them to say it you know with their mouths rather than with their minds yeah so. and it's more personal yeah. for him to say it with his mouth like a conversation because he is he... trying to convince him that i will make this end if you make the rings and i'll create a perfect lasting piece so I'd like anyway to point out that when she falls yes. none of the elves make any effort to shoot the orcs around her no, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, well, you're the, the battle yeah, has been paused we are now having scenes where things pe people talk yeah. Not, not even not even that, just the fact that they don't care about her. They clearly acknowledge she's fallen, and then they just, like, well, <laughs> it's too late for her. That's all right. Yeah. Know that yeah. There's a ladder her. up against the wall that no orcs are using about 10 feet away from where she's fallen, so True. they could yeah. actually have saved her. Which Shut is all crazy. Orcs, run for the ladder. Think of the sheer amount of heroics that we get in Helm's Deep, all these different decisions from all these different characters in different moments that are, like, high stress, and, you know, that's probably not going to work, but they do it anyway to save their friends. This is, mm. like... No, nah, she's dead. <laughs> like, don't risk it, boys. Okay. <laughs> it's it's yeah. fine. 
I mean, she coughs up blood. She's obviously she's a goner, you know. Well, it's nothing I kind of made this observation on other shows, but just I could just picture the orcs being like, "Oh, we're gonna get her. We're, we're gonna we're get. <laughs> They're not coming. You're not gonna. Okay. You're not gonna wow. Do no, all right. <laughs> oh, woman killer. Also, um, just uh, looking back on you know Sauron having black goop blood. We've seen him bleed before. Did he use an illusion every time he bled before? Yes. When he was but in front of Galadriel and everything? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Yes. For, for Anything that doesn't make sense, it was Sauron all along. He wormed his way inside her mind. Uh, what about mm. all the other among, among other things? Fine. <laughs> he wormed his way inside of everyone's minds. Mm. Everyone, among, even ours. Among other that, well, yeah, that's, got that, the audience. That's necessary for this episode to take place, so... Hmm. <laughs> uh, now, they are going to take Celebrimbor away because he's crazy and he murdered that girl, I guess. That's what they see. Um, however... Well, no, they, they're they going to take him away to make the rooms, it sounds like. I, I yeah, mean, to like the Snow tower, I suppose. They're going to take him back to I, the tower. I what I mean is like, yes, we will confine you so that you can continue your work. To the forge, <laughs> not your house. Yep. <laughs> the broken <laughs> forge. Also, not taking you to the house or to the hospital because you're clearly beaten up or anything. We're just going to take you right back to the forge where you belong. I was like when... really confused by this part in particular of like, they're taking him away and then you see that the elves are coming. And so it's like, oh, so he's like, not going to do what Sauron says, right? Because now the cavalry is <laughs> here. So, like, why would he help him? He doesn't need to. Well. Good question. <laughs> I wish I had the answers for you, but I don't. I just don't. I, Good question. I, I, I got time. nothing. It's as though Celebrimbor read the script and knew that they were going to lose. <laughs> like, he knew that Elrond and Gilgalad and everybody was going to lose. Uh... So they hear horns in the distance. Oh my goodness. The army from Linden has arrived. Ooh. We have Yay. what is probably the only thing approaching an establishing shot of an army, really. But it's just a single line of cavalry in the front because it's shot from ground level. So it's not actually that impressive. Um, uh, the same, it's, same it's, with the orcs. It's Linden weird. Is... Something I uh, saw it... as well in the behind the scenes for this is that they only had about 20 or 30 real horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so vast, in the vast, vast majority of this isn't real. Yeah, mm -hmm. in this shot, it actually looks way more than in a little bit later when they actually do that charge. Because when they do a charge, it's significantly less people. Uh, uh, so little that I was actually under the assumption, oh, so he actually sent people to Mordor already, so he only has like a fraction of his army. But I guess this this is the army. This is all of the elves have. This I is meant think. to be, yeah, this is meant to be the Linden army, but the reason why, at least I think it is, but, but the reason why I think it's hard to understand exactly what's happened is because the writers did that fucking uh, technique that they've learned in episode five, where Elrond says to Gilgalad, um, Galadriel was right in the Mother of All, Mother of All Surprises. Um, we, <laughs> we can't go to Mordor. We need to go to Eregion now. And uh -huh. then Gilgalad replies... That will not be possible. I think Sauron's behind everything, and then the scene ends. And it's like that doesn't. What does that yeah. mean? Yeah, what he actually is bullshit for the yeah. audience. What That's he why I was thinking. Said, oh, there's already people on their way to Mordor. They don't have yeah. enough people to beat the orcs because no yeah. way the orcs have enough to beat normal <laughs> elven armies. <laughs> they right? should not be. They would, <laughs> they would be shit compared to them. But um, we we don't see the other elven commander here. The other lady who's completely fucking retarded. Uh, so she could be commanding the armies going to Mordor, I guess. Possibly. Possibly, yes, but if they have this many horses and they have, the, they have, I guess, another army that has gone to Mordor, how many elves are in Linden? I mean, I Galadriel, just... Galadriel is the commander of the Northern Armies, multiple. Yep. So they, they would have a fuck ton. <laughs> I imagine if that's the, that's the case. I mean, I, I guess do like so, the idea yeah. they arrive at Mordor, there's just no one there except one guy carving a Waldrick statue, mm -hmm. just like, oh, hey. <laughs> <The Waldrick statue. laughs> it, it's Glug's wife and their yeah. yes. son. <laughs> Who are you? And who's that? Oh, that's Waldrig. Oh, man, let me tell you. Boy, what a guy. You know he made this place? He's crazy. We're here to oh, conquer you. Oh, just like, have to skip oh, this one. Well, oh, right. well, not much you can do well, about that. If, if it's all the same to you, I'd like to finish my statue. <laughs> do you guys destroy statues? I, I, I guess you're in charge. <laughs> that would be mean if you did. Oh, Philistines. Shoot. Um... Yeah, so the horses are here. The cavalry from Lindon, their armor is way better than the than the 
uh, Eregion armor. I think. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I think. It is. It is better. It is absolutely better. Yeah. It's they easily better. Really... It's not even close. I need a comparison I mean, image to, yeah. to tell. G Gil Galad's helmet looks kind of shit, but it's better, sure. Yeah. Um. So, we see Elrond here. There's the Asian elf girl from episode four. Oh, Gil Galad is here with his sword that doesn't fit in the scabbard. <laughs> Elrond, the, the, the we general compliment... of the elves, leading the charge. <laughs> we, all, we always compliment we're right in. It is good, uh, as that girl was just mentioned by Rags. That is a good setup. They're existing. It's going to be a great yeah, payoff later. Existing. In a scene, so oh, she can be in another there. scene later. It's a great, just, yep. wow. They, their setups in this are so awesome. I love them. Uh, why is Eldon leading the charge? With... Uh, well, because he's uh, important. Because he's a politician. He's yeah, yeah. teleported as well, hasn't he? Right, because we last like him. He, he's teleported from Kazadum back to wherever the elves were to get mm -hmm. fully armored up to go on his horse. Meanwhile, Adar has teleported from the pretty much the front of the line, at least the line on the river where he's sort of marshalling the siege weapons. Mm -hmm. And now he's all the way back here with caged Galadriel, <laughs> so he can interrupt <laughs> the cavalry <laughs> charge. Like, uh, Which, if people just don't they wheel her up real fucking quick. <laughs> But, I mean, I don't even know why they would expect that to work. Why, no, why, yeah, it why wouldn't would they all stop? Why would they stop? There's well, no it realized, they wouldn't, they wouldn't it realized, be able to with that fucking close. They wouldn't be able to, for one, but even if they can, it relies entirely on Elrond leading the charge and Elrond yep. wanting to stop. Mm -hmm. Why would yeah. either of those things happen? Yeah. Especially, oh, and why remember, would, like, why the last conversation... Know. Yeah, Adar shouldn't know, but like the last conversation that they had was like, I, I will prioritize defeating Sauron over everything, even your life. And the fact that yeah. he doesn't means that he's, it, it's not necessarily uh, see, a contradiction, but it's... That's, that's good writing, you see. <laughs> it's pretending to be good writing. <laughs> Even uh, though it's like overriding this broader battle that's about way more people than just Elrond. But like yeah. they could have, they could have fixed this. But they, I, I have a cynical theory as to why they, why they didn't. Is when, um, when they discovered the army in episode four, what they should have done is split up um, the four elves that aren't Galadriel. Yes. A couple of them go to Khazad Doom to be like, there's an army of elves. Eregion is fucked, and uh, the other two go to Linden. The reason yeah. why they didn't do that is because they needed two uh, emotional payoffs to happen, and they <laughs> both, both and they needed them. Elrond to be at both of, of them. The whole yeah. scene of Galadriel be, to, staying behind is stupid anyway. It's like, I'll I mean, save yeah, well, time. Now, like, now we you, know. No, you don't have to. They don't know you're here. Now we <laughs> so know why it happened, why because couldn't... this was insane. <laughs> the, the elves should have fucking wiped through all the orcs here, but they're not allowed oh, fuck to. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And Where the fact that Gil Galad and... just allows this, that he's not like, no, fucking battle. keep going. What the fuck mm. are you doing, guys? He should be the one in command. Should they would have had a better chance be. of saving her had they continued the charge. Yeah. Yeah, mm. probably. Yep. And yeah, he should, he should know that there's absolutely no chance he can get her out of there because they're fucking orcs. <laughs> also, <laughs> in the uh, scene just before the she jumps and stays behind, the, the, there's the scene where they establish that the ring which Elrond is currently wearing can heal people of their mortal wounds because, you know, the elf yep. gets like hit by the arrow and he's obviously dying, but the ring can heal it. So it doesn't particularly matter if she gets injured in this charge because they can mm -hmm. just come back and heal her afterwards. Well, and it's also yes. just a worthy set. Sorry, Galadriel, but the, the fate of Eregion is a little more important and the fate of thousands yeah. of elven lives. Because I, I was thinking about this, too. Also, you're a bitch. He, he must have read the script, uh, Adar, because he knew they'd stop. Look yeah. at him. He's not, he like, just stands uh, there, like, not out only, in front. <laughs> not only oh, is he so casual it about it, but the orcs aren't prepared for the charge, even it, as a it, contingency. It would, it would no, it would be so funny if he, if he was if he was like smiling smugly and then they just kept coming. Oh, oh, shit. Him. oh my god! <laughs> yeah, he stands like a few feet in front of them as well. He would just be ridden down instantly. Oh fuck! <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, all the other orcs they don't they don't uh, do the thing where you put your spears into the ground ready to hit the horses. Mm -hmm. to they just they're casual. They're like, nah, they won't do yeah. it. Yeah, it's it costs you nothing to prepare for them possibly doing it. Why does Adar hate the orcs so much? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's also the obvious, like, stupid thing with the fucking lighting in this dumb Yeah, this lighting is dumb. Like, this yeah. doesn't make any sense at all. Why would it look like this? Because the yeah. orcs, are, orcs are evil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, like, there's Duh. no reason why it would look like this. Because they're well, evil. It's evil because... is darkness. It's because if they had them in sunlight, then we'd be questioning why they don't... Ma oh, wait, no, because they do oh. that. We, we see the sun <laughs> behind them. There's, there's a shot earlier, we see the sun straight behind them. Yeah, the right. You know, yeah, this felt like a, um, a dollar store cinematic shot. It reminds me of the one that everyone went wild over in uh, Ahsoka Episode 5 in Game of Thrones finale. You know, the famous ones where 
It's a shot where you're just like, God, that's lame, and then everyone goes, Oh my god, it's so fucking because because you probably you probably yeah. don't know what it means, but this is what I mean. And then they like, they take like ten paragraphs to explain the most obvious interpretation of what this would mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's so tiring. Orcs are the bad guys, so they're light and shadow. Yep, yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. Except why amazing. would it look like this? But yeah, I mean, this the, the mechanics like behind that. it are just nonsense. There's nothing to it here. They're once again trying to steal something from Lord of the Rings without understanding how it worked. Well, there is, you, you say mechanics, there are none. There is no explanation <laughs> for why there would be a cloud of darkness above the orcs. It's, it's purely visuals to represent symbolism, yeah. but there's no, th there is no why. It just is. It, you know, if Sauron was in charge of the armor, then maybe, but not when Adar is. It doesn't have any fucking magical powers. Yeah, like if because again, in, I think it's extended only in um, Return of the King. They have the line about like he is he's blocked out the sun so that the yeah. orcs can cross. That's not in this. No, no, it's not. There's no explanation for this, and it's just bullshit. Well, and they also don't do it um, like this in Lord of the Rings, where it's like a fucking mm -hmm. jigsaw piece <laughs> line that goes all yeah. around the actual people. <laughs> just moves like uh, overhead, like all the all the fucking time. Uh. I, uh, did you guys? I forgot. Did one of you mention Elrond's really rousing uh, battle speech before they no. charge? No, no. Wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> wait, did he say anything? All right, let me. Yeah. He, he oh said, yeah. Let me. Of course he did. He said let, one word. Let, no, he said four. Okay. Um, Elrond uh. says, "Death to our foes." Ah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. There's not quite. There's uh, also not some... quite charge of the light brigade, but you know what? You take what you can get. <laughs> Yeah, there's also some funny shots with the elves earlier like when they look really goofy on the horses and yeah, but uh, yeah, there's mm. a lot of goof here. You can tell a lot of the CGI stuff and a lot of copy pasted mm. orc stuff, and it's just really you can uh, just yeah. tell that there aren't actually that many people who showed up on set, and I, yeah, yeah it, I'm, <laughs> like it really feels like that's become something of a crutch now. Now that it's possible to not have to have all of the extras, now nobody wants to do it. Um, Remember, but, like, you can tell. it shows every time. Do you guys the, the, remember when uh, I think uh, Mullen Fringy we watched it? Um, do you remember when we watched A Bridge Too Far, and it was yeah. like insanely impressive? All oh, the yeah. like they had entire yeah. like battalions yeah. of people that they used for the film that to jump out so of planes to parachute. Mm. They had like legit tanks and yeah. all of the costumes, all the outfits for both sides. They had all of the gear and equipment. It, it, and it was like, holy shit, the scale. No, of everything you see is fucking real, and it's, yeah, it's it was, fucking good. That was very much the sense of it. It's like, the scale is enormous, and you know that there was no... They had to actually, like, recreate that scale, because yeah. they didn't have any ability to do it, you know, artificially. Mm -hmm. That, that's so, why all the German tanks are wrong in that movie, but, you know, there weren't yeah, well, any, like, f f functioning versions of the German tanks at the time, so they couldn't actually use them. <laughs> Well, again, it feels like uh, Lord of the Rings, the original trilogy, was kind of at that good crossroads where the technology was in a place where it could amplify, uh, but there was still a need um, that compelled, like, really good uh, practical mm -hmm. like effects, uh, costume sets, yeah. uh, extras, and, and compared to, yeah, now where it's like, well, yeah, I guess you only needed, like, 20 horses and then you could just have the rest of them be CG, but, like... I, I think what's annoying is it's there's not actually a problem with that. The problem is that you can tell. You can just tell that there's oh, not yeah. that many horses there. Yeah, like e even you can go back further and be like, well, like you say, in the Lord of the Rings, you very obviously had quite a lot of people on set representing each army. Or or even if you didn't, it was filmed in such a way that it implied that there that there were a lot of people there. But then yeah, for the wider yeah, shot, yeah. you 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 use visual effects to to magnify it or amplify it even. But uh, then for like the Hobbit movies, that's not the case at all. Anytime you uh -huh. see a large army, they're copy and paste of the same person. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, looked, it looked really uh, in the Battle of the Five Armies. That yes. was like, man, you like, mm. you are not the, real. I mean, yeah, the, the yeah, like, what do you want? Movie. Do you want the scale or do you want like the realness to it? If you're not willing to be both, you only got to pick one. I guess now we have examples of either of the extremes. <laughs> yeah. This one is just like small and shitty, and Battle of Five Armies is like big and shitty, <laughs> which I think I prefer. I do prefer, but like yeah. we could, you, with all the money you're throwing at this, like come on, guys, you can't get, you can't get a bunch of people and yeah. <laughs> like outfits and stuff. Like come on. Uh, um, at least they all yeah, like, way better it, than that. Well, at least they it, made them different heights. 
at least in yeah. something I will say is at least in the Battle of the Five Armies, you can clearly tell what is going on, even though you can um, tell what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> even even though a lot of like the battle sequences yeah, are just true. absurd, it is you it can. is it is very clear what is actually happening. Whereas in this battle sequence in Rings of Power, you have no fucking clue what is happening. That's nope. true. You actually have no clue what's happening here. Um, you don't the the stakes where people go, where they're from, how many are left, no clue. But we're approaching a line that helps to kind of explain it a little bit. Uh, it surely won't raise many more questions. Well, that's one Sam Estrin saying, uh, to play devil's advocate, what would give stylized lighting that may not have proper IRL mechanics in a movie a pass while this would be a fail? There's a direct connection to Lord of the Rings. They use lighting a lot, but they tell us why these sort of circumstances take place, and then it'll be a matter of how you manipulate light in a set that doesn't go to, like, fantasy points of view. Uh, two examples just off the top of my head would be Gandalf using his magic as a source of light, which mm -hmm. can create a huge yeah. contrast between, like, the armies of good and bad. That's one of the simplest mm -hmm. and easiest oh, ways yeah. to translate, and it's it's completely justified mechanically. And, this and is... you have the shots at Helm's Deep at the end, when you have the sun coming up, so you have uh, the light coming, coming down with the horses as they're charging. You have yep. the elves who are sort of naturally lighter, they are illuminated. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. the show can't do that because like th that's canonically yeah the reason why they they seem almost luminescent in in Lorien in the Lord of the Rings is because they are elves and they have the light of the Valar inside them. But obviously, if that were the case in this show, then the entire plot point about getting the rings would break because that's <laughs> the entire reason they need them is they don't have the light within them, so they can't make them illuminated. If they got rid of that, then this actual shot we're seeing on the screen right now would make sense because the elves would be carrying the light with them. But since we yeah. can't have that, yeah. fuck it. It would be a glow like around them rather than, you know... Elrond is wearing one of the rings. I mean, you could theoretically use that yeah, to try yeah, and convey course. some diegetic reason for light going with yeah, them, yeah. but they haven't done that. Um, well, you can't do that because they don't want to reveal that yet. <laughs> Someone said as a, as a follow-up, I think this show's just so bad they pick it apart everything. Like... You mean like we've done for um, yeah, seven the years? Yeah, show is so bad that we are picking <laughs> yeah. apart everything. Isn't That's like a whole thing. Picking apart everything? Isn't that weird that we can do that? I mean, that? If, the we... show, if the show had lots of good qualities and we'd be able to pick those out and praise them, even if they were really small. But yeah, I don't know. Like this, said, this shot is stupid. Forget, and we, it's we, ha we have Sorry. replaced some of the acting in here. You know, it's not all 100% yeah. negative. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And uh, it was as was referenced at the beginning. You know, this this sinks below season one. You're like, well, why? It's like, well, there were characters we actually Shit liked like in season one, somewhat, and uh, would have praised against the grain. I would say. I think mm -hmm. so. And season and two you know, has all... successfully been able to basically ruin all of them. Yeah, yeah. And and I all mean... the small things, you know, would just add up over time. You know. The... Is there the any, we have the shit it gets. <laughs> is there any <laughs> other choice here? But like the best character in Rings of Power at this point is Navi. Is Glug. there anyone else in contention? <laughs> Glug. Glug, I guess. Yeah. Glug and Navi. Is that Glug, it? Narvi. Glug is dead though. No, he isn't. Okay. Um, it wouldn't matter if they're dead <laughs> by the end of the season or whatever. Right. If anything, that helps them out, stay you know? good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would if be they... Waldry then. Yeah. If, yeah, Waldry. That's a good point. Because if they Waldry. die before they get ruined, then yeah. Yeah, Waldrick yeah, is pretty top tier. Ten solid. Yeah, I'll get a hot toy of Waldrick. Waldrick is ironically top tier, I think. Yeah. If, would you get a Would you get a Waldrick Funko Pop? Of course. Yes. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah. All I'm the merch. My, we'll yeah. get We'll get makeshift to make a vinyl for him. <laughs> <laughs> Waldrick plushie. <laughs> Waldrick. Waldrick. Uh, uh, we, we'll get a We'll get them to make a legally distinct Waldrick uh, character. We could call it. They it don't have the rights to Waldrick, surely. <laughs> we can have well, the name. Yeah, well, actually, actually, if we would depict him, it's kind of like Winnie the Pooh, right? Winnie the Pooh is public domain, but the specific <laughs> like Disney depiction of Winnie the Pooh you can't use. So with Waldrick, even the Waldrick might not be copyrighted specifically or whatever, which I think he technically is because he's Lord of the Rings stuff. Uh, but... well, hold on, that would that would work if Waldrick was written by Tolkien. That doesn't work if Waldrick was written by the writers of Rings of Power. Whatever, we'll make oh, a scraggly oh. old hobo called Waldrick. <laughs> what are they gonna know? <laughs> Waldrug. 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 Wal We'll just combine them. We'll make wall wall glug, and we'll just wall glug, yeah. Yeah. together. It's half and half. <laughs> it's like but we're, by the way, unironically, just to be clear, everyone, this isn't a joke. I think Wall Dragon, Glug, and Narvi are the best characters in Rings of Power. I don't yeah. know who else would. I yeah. think that 
I think that's actually the case. Everyone sucks. I, I mean, um, Val Valandil would have been top of my list until they ruined him in order to kill him. But yeah, the the thing is, the longer we spend with any character, the worse they get. Like that, they've demonstrated that in season two on multiple occasions. Yeah. Uh, so oh, the elves charge. Adar reveals Dick in a box, and they they ch they're charging, but they stop within like twenty feet of the orc line. All the horses. Doesn't make sense. We've talked about it, and so we have a negotiation scene. Oh my uh, gosh, that just, just is some crazy whiplash. That, can you just can you just pause for a chat at twenty four twenty five? There's a really funny orc helmet right there. Okay. Oh, the one right behind him. Uh, the one he's like you, you'll you'll see. I I you might have seen it already, but but like orc orcs can do really like stupid shit, but this is stupid even for orcs. Twenty four, twenty five. Uh oh, fuck. No, uh, twenty five, forty, fifty four. It was another pause. I All of those numbers were different. <laughs> twenty twenty five, fifty four. Twenty four, seven, eight, nine. Uh, yeah, twenty five, fifty four. I think I got a. You talk about this guy. Uh, yeah. Where to see this? What is what? <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's retarded even for orcs. Let's How does well, he the, see? the poor actor. He he's having, <laughs> you can tell he's tilting his head back to see. Yeah, because he can't. Exactly. It Why would you do that? It doesn't fit that well. It well, first off, it's very protective, so that's a reason. <laughs> sure. You also need to see. <laughs> but <laughs> you can you can see where he's walking, just uh, not. Uh, kinda. Yeah, he can look down at his feet if he wants to lift his head up to see, you know. That that's kind of <laughs> like a poor man's important. version of what they would what they did with Bolg in the Hobbit, where he has like metal yeah, plates that have been hammered into him. There there were those trolls as well with like, you know, the they are eyes taken out or whatever. Yeah. Like I feel like all the it. characters in this show should have metal plates just like bolted <laughs> their head because something's <laughs> clearly damaged their skull. Little botomies. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's continue our lobotomy with this negotiation scene. Yes. Adar right. that, and Elrond, yeah? What? That to me what? was like a dodgeball edit, where it's like seemingly an impossibility, yet here we are. You know, the two <laughs> armies clash, mm -hmm. and then just hard cut to, oh. Oh, yeah. You know. Want some tea? And Adar's This would camp. never happen. Yeah, they, yeah we, we never learn what is going on outside of the tent, because what could be going on outside? Like, the siege is still going on. That hasn't nope. stopped. That's insane. Um, which means that you've got the, the elven army is just standing here five feet from the yep. orc army, and they're just waiting. They um, fucked their whole advantage with the horses in an epic charge yep. to negotiate for Galadriel. It's fucking yeah. ridiculous. And, mm -hmm. You know, in, ed, in any somewhat sane universe, they're, they're all fucking dead. They're never leaving that tent. No. But, it's... Yeah. It, it's it's so nonsense. Like, like, did they never? They never considered this that they could have someone you care about, and you're gonna have to just fucking go, guys. You don't care about mm -hmm. Adar and Elrond for every second. You don't attack this orc army that's ravaging mm -hmm. Iragiod. Like, t many more elves than one are dying. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's insane. Fuck Unbelievable, and it's not addressed that way at all. They they do it as though the audience agrees. Like of course, and like, oh, of course, we need Galadriel to is more important than anyone. Yeah. She is uh, once, more important once than again. Everything is her Except fucking. Drag. Hmm. Uh, basically, you've got Elrond and his knife wielding friend from episode <laughs> four or whatever. Um, he's like his second. He's like his right hand guy. Yeah. Um, you have Adar. Adar's got Glug. Uh, because you know Glug, who, let's go. who I I wish that. I could have a friend like Glug. None of you even come close to comparing. Sorry. I wouldn't dare to compare there. myself to Glug. Yeah, that's that's a high bar. Nah. Uh, maybe one day. And you just got Galadriel, and she's kind of tied up in the back. And there's a bunch of orcs, and it's just, uh, you know, that's what's going on. So Adar tells Elrond, reveal the ring. And Elrond's like, ha, huh, you must be stupid if you think I brought it here. <laughs> Which is true. Elrond, surely, El Adar would be mm -hmm. stupid to think that Elrond would be stupid enough to bring it here. I wish to accept it. Very retarded, but it's not that retarded. Very the, true. The great arc Fringy went on when we were watching this, he immediately <laughs> reacted like, that'd be fucking ridiculous if we bring the... Yeah, okay, yeah, he hasn't. Good, good. <laughs> and then it's like... <laughs> and then... <laughs> I guess we'll get to it. Well, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Because that would actually be insanely stupid yeah. for him to bring. He points it out here. himself. He, yeah, that it he would doesn't have it. Yeah. yeah. 
So it is. It is Adar a thing says, of like, hey, no, what if he's lying? <laughs> what, what, what do we do? You could. You like, maybe? no, he wouldn't actually bring That's it. That's Elrond. Would be stupid. That would no be. Truther. That would be insulting well, to also, search him for well, the ring. Uh, it, he it has kept, been searched. Yeah, it gets the worse. Don't find he's, been it. he's been mildly searched for weapons. <laughs> mildly searched. He's been yeah. get that elf first. naked. <laughs> let's they don't go. take his neck. <laughs> yeah, let's see that elf's dick. Yeah, they oh, all he had dead. was a ring, but he told us it's not the one we were looking for, so we're good. <laughs> Adar <laughs> says decorative. that Sauron <laughs> is their shared foe, and he's like, "Yo, give me the ring, and we can we can kill we can kill him. I can use the ring." Yeah, well, I will kill. I will kill Sauron. All you have to do is give me your ring of power, and I'll go kill Sauron. I mean, what's yeah? That what? Who would say no to a deal like that? Yeah. I'm just gonna burn Ad down your city as well. But you know. yeah, it, well, it, ignore it, that. Edar <laughs> says that. Well, we'll think. Edar says that every elf inside of Eregion belongs to Sauron's influence. <clears> that <throat> the city is in darkness. Um, Edar says, uh, Celebrimbor welcomed Sauron in. I'm not sure how he knows that, though. He knows everything <laughs> else. I'm I not mean, sure how Edar knows anything, really. He can't. Yeah. There's like three or four big yeah. things that he can't know, but he just does. Mm. Did Galadriel tell him off screen in a bit to mm. shield herself from accountability? Well, remember, she, she, she does know. give away information pretty handily. Uh, <laughs> she's very. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. Edar's yeah. not even hot yet. <laughs> so. <laughs> we go to um we go nowhere. We're here. Edar says that Brimby welcomes Sauron in. Don't know how he knows that. Um and he says, You can't save Celebrimbor, but you can save Galadriel and leave Sauron to me. Basically, he wants the ring while he's besieging Eregion, and he totally wants to defeat Sauron. Just give me the ring of power, and I will spare Galadriel if you give me that ring. Otherwise, I'll fucking cut off her head and I'll put it on a stick, and it'll be great. And I'll wave it around and I'll say um, bunga bunga, look, bunga bunga. Look at Bull me. Bull I hate, whoa, we hate women. Um, but to be fair, Galadriel is not making a great case for the fairer sex. So <laughs> Adar says that yo, you're the mo someone was someone famous was your mom. I forget who. I don't know. Um, but Melian of the Melian, Valor. Yes. Melian. Who was not Melian, of the Valor? Melian. But never mind. Melon was your mom, and boy, if you're <laughs> as wise as Melon was, you will agree to this deal. Uh, and he says that Elrond cannot possibly be Adar in combat, which seems wild to me because I was under the impression that the elves could crush the orcs without really oh, yeah. much effort at all. Absolutely. Because the show leads me to believe that because of yeah, elves Adar's being special, like this massive. Miniboss. I mean, given how we see the elves inside the region, they seem kind of shit, to be honest. <laughs> I guess, but you would think that the story of. The elves being a very strong presence in Middle Earth to the point where they're watching over all of the men, and they've been yeah. here for like a gajillion years, and they have these massive, insane cities, and they live forever. You'd think that there'd be a, there'd be a crap load of elves, and every elf is worth like fifty orcs in terms of skill and kill potential. That there's no way the orcs have like made enough of themselves through whatever process. I don't want to think about Glug. You don't think that <laughs> Glug has fucked enough orc bitches? To mm -hmm. where they have enough like sheer manpower in order to take on the elves. If the show is leading me to believe otherwise, it's failed spectacularly. I just assume the the elves would mop up the orcs. Absolutely, they should. No. <laughs> in any Elrond, universe, yes, they have big Elrond, boy armies. Elrond asks uh, asks Adar if he's willing to to kill all of the to get all these orcs killed uh to besiege a region and the orcs are like oh as a, as a, as a, as a, start murmuring they're with discontent yeah. a little bit everyone should background. think that would be normal for them to do but <laughs> yeah they've done that a Gal few times they have done it a few times galag is <laughs> even giving adar a little little uh oh, they, stairs, like they've uh, been doing it for so long it's uh, gotten cringe yeah. like i get <laughs> it they're gonna be a big payoff that relates to them not trusting adar okay yeah yep. they just want to live a peaceful life but i don't hey. i don't know why they're doing that here because it's again they're treating it like this is the revelation where glug realizes oh shit <laughs> Maybe he's maybe he's Bug not. Maybe he doesn't another... value our lives. Like, have you not been paying attention to the last two days of Unga <laughs> Bunga had like the wall? six revelations. <laughs> all right, but Glug's an orc, so you know, takes a while to change his mind. He's set in his ways. He really wants to kill elves. Um. So yeah, Adar's like, give me the ring, and I'll save Galadriel. Aaron says, no, I no, I can't give you the ring. But before you kill Galadriel, will you let me say farewell? And Adar allows it for some reason. 
Yeah, that will not be allowed. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. also just doesn't stab him to death right there. Yeah. <laughs> so if you stab her right on the spot, he'll be like, I will kill her literally right now if you don't give me the ring. And then I'll obviously I'll kill all of you. Teeth for once. And he's like, I want to say goodbye. And it's like, mm -hmm. I don't care. No, yeah, and he obviously the mo removes the fucking brooch or whatever from his uh, cloak. Oh, everyone can see exactly what happened. Yep. <laughs> it's not hidden <laughs> it's at all. It's so fucking dumb. <laughs> Like, yeah, Elrond has, has flatly refused to negotiate at all. He's not going to budge. He's not doing what Adar wants. Mm -hmm. There is no reason for Adar to let uh, Elrond go and speak to Galadriel. He should kill all three of them right now. Yeah, yeah, he should just kill all of them, yeah. And the, the idea that to... he's honorable is insane, given what he has just done to Eregion and what he did to mm -hmm. the Southlands in Season 1. And what he does said not he'll do with that. Galadriel as well, sticking her head in a pike and waving it yes. around like a like a fucking mm -hmm. victory thing. And because he lets them go, obviously Elrond is allowed to go all the way back to the army, and therefore by killing loads more of Adar's children, Elrond's buddy is allowed to ride all the way to Khazad Dum, and only by mm -hmm. a pure contrivance of fuck does not come back with an actual army which could win oh, the day. Fuck, sorry, so for all this. all like Adar knows, he's just put himself in a massively disadvantageous position kill them all here go kill the other elves problem solved get back on with killing sauron letting them go is madness yeah he has what? no reason to do so whatsoever and well and elrond agreeing to this negotiation is insane because like elrond yeah. is apparently like a really important military commander as is galadriel yeah, like, like i said before in any sane universe he should know there's no living in this tent yeah what That's happens ridiculous. if he goes out to meet Gugalad and now not only has he got Galadriel in a cage, he's got Elrond in a cage and whatever the other guy's name was <laughs> in a cage. Just keep all of them. Why don't they negotiate? Yeah, they should be negotiating on the spot where they've well, got then... a dick in a box there and everything. Yeah. If no, they're then they, could just, they could just go down a production line. Hey, Galad hey Gilgalad, you want to negotiate for Elrond and Gilgalad? <laughs> <laughs> Would be really awkward if he kissed Galadriel through the fucking cage. Well, Gil <laughs> well Gilgalad is like, oh, I'll go negotiate with Adar for Gilgalad and Elrond. Okay, I'll go negotiate. And then he goes in and yeah. It's this conga line. And he's like, shit, I got captured. Someone call Kirden. We need help. <laughs> Who? No, he's... We, we don't talk about him He's anymore. not in this show. No, he, he's what? gone. He's, wearing, he's, he's built... been wearing a ring of power this whole time. He's not he's like... Yeah, we don't, we don't need him. He's got really good at building boats now, though. He's, like, amazing at it. Oh, yeah. Rings of power. He's just fucking around with, with fish somewhere, you know? And he's like, ooh, we have... <laughs> Guys, we have got to continue. No joking, yes. no fun. All right, this is serious business. Okay, we I'm have sorry. a job to do. I apologize. <laughs> so yeah, as as was mentioned, Gladriel and Elrond kiss, and he like sleeps slips her a brooch panel off of his cloak and hands it to her, and it's actually a secret lockpick. Um, so Elrond's commander tells him that the orcs outnumber them ten to one in front uh, of the orcs. <laughs> yep. He just speaks is, in like plain quote unquote English in in front of them. Yeah, which is like good job. You've you've told the orcs around them that they now outnumber you ten to one, and now that's knowledge that they've kind of gained or been tipped to. Mm -hmm. Good job, idiot. Uh, right. I don't know why we're speaking English at all. We should be speaking Cinderin. Rags. <laughs> yeah, rags. You missed something. What? Um. <laughs> the really you just. It's possibly you know the most controversial thing that happened in the entire <laughs> season. You just went over oh, it three ways. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was waiting for the uh, meme to end, listen, but it just didn't. Yeah, just I thought you were going. joking. I, I didn't. I, I, I legitimately <laughs> passed over that because I think when I was watching, I just like rolled my You've eyes. You processed the troll, but I see. I, understand. <laughs> I think I legit. I think that's unironically what's happened. I've just sort of like processed the, it. Nothing shocks me anymore with this show. <laughs> that's what we've got to. They destroyed a mountain. Like, what do you want me to? Like, I, I don't know, man. Uh, Galadriel and Elrond kiss. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Cringe. It's, 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 uh, it's like, it's, it's actually Elrond embarrassing. Is, uh, it's, it's as cheap and manipulative as everything else in the show because, yeah. like, the, because... the, the writers absolutely know that the in audience will have this implicit understanding that these two characters hooking up is not something that is going to happen. Yeah. Because, like, yes, the show hasn't said that he's or she's his she's his mother in law is how it is, right? In the future, yeah, yeah. 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 Emphasis on in law. <clears throat> yeah. So, like, at this point, that's not the case. And to be honest, if they were in a fully romantic relationship, I like given what Rings of Power has shown us, that's not a problem because there's no reason why that couldn't happen. Um, but they're leaning heavily on the fact that the audience knows that that shouldn't happen to distract us while he gives her the key. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. though there's a room full of orcs looking at them and the orcs wouldn't give two shits that they've just kissed each other. The, this one looking gross. straight at them from yeah. the correct angle to see it. No. The elves would think it's as gross as we do. <laughs> it's like, ugh. 
but like Ugh. I have seen people try and say that this is like a platonic tragic goodbye kind of kiss and I'm just thinking that like if I kissed someone no. like that my wife I... would divorce me <laughs> would you would you kiss me like that would I kiss you like I uh, well I mean if my wife wasn't looking I guess <laughs> okay fair enough I won't tell we, anyone we can it'll lie be our her. little secret it'll be our little secret there's a room in this pumpkin for two <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess what? That happened. Galadriel and Elrond kiss is boy. Yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, you know, a hawk could have done the same thing. You know, we didn't. No. Need, we didn't. Oh, okay. Oh, we need a ship to be happy. He could have kissed her on the point. forehead, like yeah, that, like that, the Frodo and Sam moment. Yeah, yeah, like I kissed yeah. the homies. Like I kissed the homies. I get to kiss the homies yeah. good night on the on the bottle on the on the bottom. What? She also seems reasonably into it, and she doesn't know what he's planning. I don't think so. Like she what seems she to be to like just for... completely taking it as a kiss. But like I know we only got the one scene in season one where she was complaining about the fact her husband is dead. But she seems to have gotten over him pretty quickly. Well, yeah. well, I mean, a gem like her, gosh. Mm. Um. All right. So basically, yeah, Elrond. Um, Elrond says to his commander when his commander says they outnumber us ten to one. He's like, hey. I know something that Adar doesn't know, and it's that uh, the dwarves are going to help us. And there, and so I have so many questions. Like how? So Elrond knows that there's another army that is supposed to show up and help them. Elrond has apparently not shared this information with his second in command. Do any of the elves know? Were were the orcs? Were were they going to charge in on all their horses before the dwarves arrived? Were they not going to make so. like a combined effort? I, I mm. guess. Um, Alron hasn't told anyone. I don't know how this is news. Surely the, el the elves should know that this has happened. This is a is a really big part of the battle plan that another army is going to arrive and help us save the day. But I guess not. Okay. Was, if, if he did he what we speculated before. on earlier, that he rode up with the army and then the army waited for two days for him to go to Casa Doom and then come back. Then he comes back, like, all right, let's go. And no one asks him, are they are they helping? <laughs> like that just that conversation doesn't happen. He, he until... just refuses to tell anyone anything. Yeah. <laughs> the secret. Uh, maybe well, that's what brings that, that Galadriel they... and Elrond together. It's like their refusal to tell people other people important <laughs> information that they yep. should know. So also them being outnumbered ten to one, the elves. That's just another thing. It's like I just don't Crazy. believe this is their full army. I just don't believe yeah, you. There's this is no nuts. way. Where did all these orcs come from? The elves have been here for ages. How all of a sudden are there ten times the amount of orcs as elves here? They, they fuck a lot, okay? I guess. <laughs> oh my god. But I fuck a lot, and there's only one of me. <laughs> You're not an entire race. Doing nope. it wrong. <laughs> You're doing, You're it, doing wrong. it wrong, yeah. But it feels so right. Hey, guess what? Let's go to Khazad Doom to talk to the dwarves. I just Isn't say, by cool? the way, the, the visual of Elrond picking up his horse and be like, right, I'm heading out of this orc encampment. You know, it, it mm -hmm. just feels so it's, like, it's... man. Okay. Insane. There's also a sound effect there that doesn't fit at all when he hands him his uh, helmet. Like, it sounds, it doesn't sound like that the helmet would make that noise whatsoever. Uh, oh, nitpick. Yeah, minor thing. Well, this guy just yeah, stays behind alone, helmet. apparently. It, it annoyed a... me. <laughs> His, his his other guy with the two swords, he just stays here for now, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, he's just like, I mean, oh, uh, I guess I'll the leave. Orcs, the orcs not killing them and letting them go, like, it, it, it's one problem, but it gets worse and worse because we see that the orcs literally, like, follow Elrond yeah. back to the army and they let him get there. Yeah. And then they let him be like, right, it's battle time now, go, yeah. go, go. And then, <laughs> you can tell they really yeah, want to eat yeah. them, but they're like, ugh, we're not allowed yeah, like, like, oh, yeah. to but like, yeah, who it cares? relies entirely on this whole honor concept, which yeah. I just don't believe exists. Orcs are very honorable. So silly. Honorable yeah. orcs. Very, very. <laughs> Adult orcs are honorable. <laughs> <laughs> we must leave the Eregion battle and return to Khazad Doom. Oh. Durin is giving a speech to a bunch of like random dwarves here. Um, he says warriors of Khazad Doom. Basically, none of them look like warriors. Yeah. Um, the speech claims that the elves cannot beat the orcs alone, and they need the dwarves' help. He says they need to fight to show that true dro that dwarven loyalty is stronger than anything. And it's like a neat little speech. Boy, he's trying. Uh, and yeah. and while he's giving the speech, Brimby, they show that he's back at the forge. He's handcuffed and he's making rings. His Anatars watching over him. 
Um, now, I'm very confused, though, because while the speech is being happening, it like pans out and it shows like all of the dwarves in Khazad Doom listening to Durin give this speech mm -hmm. on this random little balcony area. Mm -hmm. um, how how does the king not know about this? Is everyone now <laughs> on Durin's side? Has there been like a legit revolution <laughs> brewing against the king that's now begun? Sure. I guess. They're doing yeah. the thing with Navi. The, the, Navi changed his mind and now so everybody the people. else did. That's yeah. all. He, yeah. He's like the um, the head of the guild or something, so everyone follows him. Well, they even tell yeah. us, don't they? You know, the last scene when you had uh, Jiren and Elrond together, and he says, "I'm I'm about to overthrow my father," which you would think would be an incredibly dramatic scene. So naturally, that's all happening off screen while he's giving <laughs> his speech, as though it's already happened. Except, of course, it hasn't already happened. Yeah, all yeah. the interesting work that that Prince Durin has to do to. Uh to gather some troops and to convince people. That's just off screen. Just don't it worry about it. Yeah, oh God, fuck. Yeah, I hadn't even considered that. That's, that's even worse because the, the time frame wise, he has about a day to do this. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, and he's going to rally an Like, even if the army was like all on his side and, and good to go, then yep. are you doing that in a day? I don't fucking know. And then that's why you should have done it. Again. He he also talks about dwarven loyalty, like loyalty to the elves. You fucking hated them two episodes ago. <laughs> no, yeah, well, this is why you should have done this when they were blockading the mines. This is where you should have had all the people together already. And now you know about Elrond, and then you can get those people, put them in some they, armor, and march to Erekion. And, and they should have shown screen. a like the the general unrest should have been brewing exactly. as for the king's greediness, mm -hmm. and it just it it think this is one of this might be the most poorly paced show I've ever seen it's in terms of how bad, quickly yeah. some things happen and how other things are dragged out forever. Yeah. And how a lot of scenes happen where nothing happens and then boom, 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 shit's happened off screen. Now we're ready to go. It is a mess. Yeah. Absolute and then when, mess. when things happen on screen, they just fall in front of the, the people they need to fall in front of so we can continue the story. Well, or if things just happen to happen so the, we can do more things. That's it's really jarring. Like now that we've seven. seen all eight episodes, I was thinking, what what actually happens in like, for example, the Numenor story in season two? It's like, well, Farazon he takes over. Okay, that yeah. that's basically it. <laughs> all of that happened within one episode, and then they mm -hmm. were just treading water for the next like three or four episodes that Numenor appears in. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm guessing no one's watching Galadriel because it's not very subtle nope. about how well, she's breaking out of bed. Should have just killed her on the spot. Technically, they yeah. are because we see a bunch of corpses. I, next I know, to her, but. I, uh, well, they're blind. Are, but they're blind, they're blind, death and Maybe they were dead already, actually. <laughs> they just killed themselves. <laughs> yeah, may as well. <laughs> she started, like, telling her about her childhood, and they were like, oh, God, no, I'm not listening to this. <laughs> um, I was bullied. Yeah. Elrond's allowed to leave with his commander. He's on his horse, leaving the orc camp. But, like, the, then we get, like, it's, it's like whiplash. One, in one scene, he's just, like being allowed to leave on his horse calmly from the orc camp, and the next time we see him, he's like, he's surrounded by orcs <laughs> mid-fight in the river, and he's fighting randomly, and his, and his horse <laughs> transforms into a CGI monstrosity for a second and, like, kicks an orc 30 feet away. And I'm like, how did we get here? Did we not, did you not go back and make, like, an organized charge against the, the not. against the, the, the orcs besieging the city on the open ground? Because now, the, like the elf, the elf cavalry is charging into the woods, and I'm like, "What's going on? Mm -hmm. What's happening? This is nonsense. <laughs> I have no clue what's going on here. Yeah. It's just yep. random fighting that's happening." They cockblocked uh, us with the with the big charge, and now we're just straight in there. We don't even get another yeah, one. Yeah, just random random skirmishes, like random duels between yeah. people. Uh, and and the siege was apparently on pause for that entire fucking time. <laughs> yeah. It'll be really just... bad in particularly like the next episode where we have like an endless field of one on one battles. And you're wondering, how did the elf like all the way in the back get there? Mm -hmm. And how is there still like an orc all the way over here? It is non. There's no battle lines. It's just a series of little duels and fights that are just constantly and perpetually happening. And their plan seems to be, we need to get in front of the attacking orcs, because he says get to the wall. But if you've got the advantageous position behind them, and then you've split their attention, so the orcs are divided between attacking the wall and defending a rearguard action against an elvish cavalry, that would be way more advantageous than trying to go around them to fight them from the front where they can focus all of their attention back on you again. 
But I don't even know that they do manage that because the fighting then takes place, as you say, all over the place as one-on-one battles. So mm. I don't I think I'd be really interested to be in the writer's room and just say, like, how did you imagine this battle going? Give me like a bird's eye view of what you thought this looked like. Because I'm really interested to see if you thought anything at all, what did you think? Honestly, I'm just interested to see what I would fucking paint up if I would do it yeah, right no. now. <laughs> I, it's, it's metal. It's funny that you say that because I literally did that live for my video. I oh, tried shit. To draw out from memory. I'll, I'll get you the image now. Hold on. That's you, funny. You gotta show, oh, oh. You show the, the, the horsey jumping in the air and kicking the. Uh... I'm, I mentioned it, but it's worth looking at if Mahler can pull it, it up. It was shortly on screen, I think. Yeah. Was it? It oh, was. It's so funny. Sure. Yeah, I, I, you I should mean, put that on repeat for a little bit. Yeah, you should. You should um, <laughs> remind me, it, where is it? It's right a little bit before in. this. It's the it's very just, first thing that you right, see. Yeah, yeah. It, it the, the, the first fighting scene. It, yeah, it cuts back to Elrond from Casa Doom, and then he says, yeah. "Like, come on, let's go," and then the horse does the thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just before this, I think. It's it's or it's, it's it? like the first thing when you cut back. It's like said, run the Casa Doom scene ends. It's it's not when they're in the forest. It's yeah, it's before, before they this. go in. Just before they go in. Yeah, so if you go from he yeah, also don't yeah, right here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 it's beautiful. It, it made me laugh out loud. It was so silly. Oh, yeah. Why did they do oh. this? A lot, of, so... a lot of things made me laugh out loud in this Where, this, where did they do this again? Beric did yes, the same the thing with Nord. time as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Once <laughs> enough, but they thought it was so good they repeated it. I'm learning a lesson they, they about where the animation not to stand in relation to a horse. <laughs> oh my god, th th you've drawn the show as a giant bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. That's, that's, that's kind of Brimble's big dookie little right there. Ride. Who is that on the left? That's, yeah, the, that's that? a horse. I can't draw horses. Oh, that's... <laughs> that <laughs> that a is horse. a horse? <laughs> it is now. So we, did, we, I, we need I, to play Gothic Foam with you, buddy. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why, is Kele, why is Celebrimbor's for a Japinus? This is big yeah, dingus. Why? Well, obviously. Oh. That makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> it is part of the wall. Man, I don't know, I don't know what this is. It's great. Mountain. Oh, it is part of the yeah. wall. <laughs> it's just oh, good like that you put Gligg's house in there. Or Gilgis. Oh, I like how you got like the little, the little stink stage. lines for the, the fires <laughs> in Aragion. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. like I was trying to work out the, the location of the forest and the size of the orc's army because we know that the forest kind of runs around the river, I yeah. guess. And we know that when the horses arrive, they're on the other side of the forest. But how big the forest is, we don't know. Nope. And then the, the two is, lines sorry. in the bottom left, that's where they stop the charge, I guess. And then they go through the forest. That's the best I've got. We get like an overhead shot when they shoot at the mountains, but I don't think it matches the battle later on at all. What? That is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they fucked it up. That's yeah, crazy, because yeah. I think there's like only forest in that uh, overhead shot. There's no like planes at all. Oh, yeah. God. What a... What a show. This, if, what a if show. If you showed me this and said this was the actual storyboard that the writers used to make the story, I'd be like, <laughs> I would yeah, 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 I makes think sense. so. This makes sense. This is about, yeah, yeah this, 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 it all adds up. But again, like, you just, uh, you compare this to Helm's Deep. Like, I, I worked out, we spent 25 minutes at Helm's Deep learning about it, seeing it from the inside and out, all the different angles and all the rest of it, so that when the battle starts, we understand what's actually happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we don't need to do it, like, during the, what are you highlighting there? <laughs> Elf lady. Oh yeah, that's my daddy. Miranda, no. She's been she's been ravaged right next to oh, the ravager. No. Uh, that's she what it's for. Up. That's big sad. She didn't right stand there. a chance. It would be funny if they they had like realistic mud, and so when she fell, it just went. <laughs> And she sunk <laughs> down, and there was like a, just a, a Miradania profile hole <laughs> where she sunk all the way down. You see, like the moving cartoon. around in a few yeah. bubbles. It's like when one wild E. Coyote, when he falls really far and he, he hits the ground, and it's just a hole shaped like him. <laughs> oh, stop laughing. We have to talk about Rings of yeah, Power. I'm sorry. God okay. So, um,. Uh, let's see. Well, what happens next? Um, 
Some oh yeah, fighting. there's a little mini boss fight. Elrond has a little mini boss fight with an orc because the orc oh, yeah. kills his horse, it, like cuts his horse's throat, and then he licks the knife. Because it licks it like a really like... What? Yeah. yeah, it licks it like a really hard. It licks it like yeah. he would cut himself yeah. if that knife was <laughs> sharp. But then he gets even more blood taste, which is good. He loves it, that it, blood. Yeah. Oh yeah, combat orc blood, blood and horse blood, blood together. Wow, they mm. think. Yeah. Mm. I don't like him. I sure he be, he gets prebucheted. Boy. <laughs> Boy, does he. They have a little mini fight here. Elrond stabs him and then, like, pushes him onto the catapult. And, <laughs> yeah. and then <laughs> Elrond launches the catapult with his one <laughs> orc in it, sending a Hot shotgun wall. of rocks and the <laughs> orc's body into the city. I into the don't wall. understand oh. how <laughs> things like this happen when they make it. It's like, you just portrayed Elrond helping the siege of Eregion. <laughs> Why? No. Are you stupid? Like, yeah, look at him. You know, he's getting revenge for his horse. Which I'd say, do you think your <sighs> horse would be happy that you've contributed to the destruction of Eregion? <laughs> I love the puppet I hitting know. the wall. But also, are we supposed to be happy because they did spend time trying to make the orc seem human and tragic? Like, are we supposed oh, yeah. to laugh when they get uh, killed, or are we supposed he's the, to be he's one of the evil ones. when they get killed? He's, he's, he's a bad one. Yeah, yeah, bad. yeah, he killed the horse, so he's an evil one. In particular, about what you're meant to think about Adar, as will become very clear in episode 8, what you are, like, that they actually didn't make up their minds on what you're supposed to think. Or they don't understand that there's a contradiction. Yeah, uh, I, th I, th I think it's that they don't understand the contradiction, because... Yeah. Um, he seems to be going in a direction, and the, the show, the dialogue at least, treats it as if he's going in a direction. But the visuals, uh, we got in episode three when Damrod shows up having killed his messenger, and he's just like, oh, all right. Like, he, he should be distraught at that. And then his battle strategy, which isn't dialogue, but it's, you know, the visuals of the show tell us this, that goes directly against what I think they're trying to do with Adar. Mm. Yeah, I would think but, he had, like, uh, some tactic that, you know, minimizes. The, uh, the casualties on the orc side and not just walk against the wall and see what happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> run run into the mud, my fellow uh, orcs. It's so uh, the, bad. Yeah, the, mm. the fight with the orc is also really fucking stupid. Oh. Like, Elrond forgets he exists for a bit, and instead of, like, the, the orc gets behind him, and instead of killing Elrond, he just takes his helmet and fucks with him a bit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? So I think there was a bit of a continuity issue there. I think he grabs his shoulder, and in the next scene, he just has the thing in his hand. I think I remember that. I need to double check that. But I thought, yeah, he I, like, yeah. I thought it looked weird. That's what I remember. Yeah, he just grabs towards the helmet, and then he has it in his hand the next scene. Mm. Uh, like the next cut. Maybe yeah. just some more flume editing, because it looked mm. weird. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's so uh, also, don't really give a shit about this horse scene. It's not like we've seen him <laughs> do things with his horse. Did they forget the, the Numenorians are the one ones horse. with the psychic bond? Yeah, it's not like it's Beric. Like Beric, we yeah. Beric's a Chad. This is just some random horse. Which is yeah, I, it's weird. Like I said, the pacing thing. We have this little mini fight because the orc killed his horse. You and this... when you think about all the all the things that we need to see and never did and happened off screen, and you're like, <clears throat> what? Yeah. You see as well, yeah, they're like, in the middle of this fucking fight to the death, and there's like five different orcs just running around right next to him. <laughs> yep, they got just things ignoring to him. That's hey, insane. They got places to be, okay. man. What are you guys they doing? They got places to be. They're busy. That, Look, your friend is about grab? to get trebuchet. <laughs> no, they all hate that guy. He's a dick. <laughs> the, the orcs reaction there to Elrond's hit before he stabs yeah. him, it does not line up at all. Like he is really holding, mad, yeah. he's holding a knife, which I don't I even know if he's holding a knife in that shot, but he is holding a knife in his left hand. So he, I guess he cut him, but he doesn't connect. So it's just bad, badly yeah. filmed or badly choreographed or both. They have he to like awkwardly move past the, them yeah, in a way that's like, whoop, happens. don't want to get in the way of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, sorry. You guys doing your friend? Don't want to intervene, you know? <laughs> We like fair fights here, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're also, man, I'm, we like I'm really it. happy. We like it to be fair. <laughs> I'm really happy to see the the big commander fighting man Elrond and his epic fights because we don't have any other soldiers to use. They're, they hey, are they are commanders. We got oh. We're in like serious shake, trouble yeah. for stuff like that, like Gilgalad and this. then guys on team from that other episode. That's basically yeah. It. Yeah, you should check just before this when he grabs the fucking helmet as well. It's really fucking silly. Guys, we we can't because we got oh. a, we got a roll, man. We got a lot of stuff <laughs> to talk about. Rags. I know, with no fun allowed here. The orcs oh. are sieging a region. They've got three ladders now. 
Yay. And, upgrades. <laughs> well, boy, things are really escalating, I guess. Now they have now the, all three of them. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned before, they show the war machine here. Um, that you, you spike the wall and you pull the spikes out, and that's supposed to bring down the wall. It, oh, it's wait. stupid. You, you and I can show believe the that up on the wall, though. Fucking hell. Isn't the, this the, the same the... thing? Like, this is evidence of more editing fuckery. We saw this one was up the whole time. Yep. And now in the mm -hmm. future, we are seeing it being placed. It yeah, got, well, that, it, that's why it, I said it got not... knocked down and then placed again. So okay. it's the same ladder. Yeah. It was like a tree. Even though we don't see any, we don't see anybody pushing ladders away, which you think would be because you know you do. I think in, I think in real life, someone checked me about. I think I heard of this. They had special, like like they had like <laughs> sticks essentially, long sticks <laughs> no, to push the ladders away because you can't actually just push ladders away. Yes. You can't reach far enough away. Yeah. So you'd have to use a stick, and you'd you just use the stick, and you'd push the ladder from the top. Far yeah, enough back like, that it actually flips back. It's why in two it's towers a as well, the ladders little, like, have on grapples the on them. Yeah, so, like, they got the ladders yeah, go yes. up, and then they, yeah. yeah, attach to the ball so they can't be kicked away as easily. I can even hear the sounds they play when they attach to Boing. the walls. Oh, uh, so good. Oh. They, yeah. they, and they like bounce a little bit with mm -hmm. a little, you know, the power oh, sound And even design. at Venus Tirith, they do that thing. Yeah. But yeah, Molo, Mol check at thirty six. So I think you know when they, when that's thirty six, thirty six about there. Um, or am I looking for? It's pretty. Oh, the two elves yes, on the yes, tower? On the wall. Like, like the, the orc there in the middle, he's like fighting nothing. Or uh, like the, chor the choreography there is so fucking garbage. <laughs> Wait, yeah, what the, the hell? Yeah. The center right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. He has we his mentioned... t-shirt during the three <laughs> Hang on, I'll get a good shot of it. We mentioned the guys <laughs> yeah, yeah. on the left and the guys on the right, All but right. we completely blanked Everyone, on the guy in the middle. Got, we gotta do this one at a time. Let's do seizure orc first. All right? <laughs> So, seizure orc first. <laughs> Where <I> think he... <laughs> he's just what? randomly like, like the the elf the elf that we're supposed to like kick him or like shove him with the bow, but he misses completely. <laughs> so he just fucking. <laughs> they, I think you can make out they've his second attack is. I think they're supposed you're supposed to believe there's an arrow going into him in the second hit. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he, yeah, he doesn't yeah. he doesn't shoot anything. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah, look look at the elf. Yeah, look yeah, at yeah. The elf. yeah. Oh god, that's so yeah, weird. Man. But yeah. they he's, don't he's... actually animate it! That's your <laughs> one job! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can see it there. That's it's funny. so bad. It's so that's bad. So that's, bad. That's, why we had to, yeah, that's why I had look. to say we have to talk about this. Oh, <laughs> it's, I'm glad you guys caught that one, because Random and I, we, oh. we were looking at a different nonsense. Well, All right. No, hold on, Rex. Two. There's three of them, because you mentioned the guys by the door, okay, and I mentioned yeah. the guys on the right. Neither of us yeah, yeah, yeah. the seizure orc <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> the <seizure>. <laughs> 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 So, <laughs> I can't believe he had a seizure. He was so yeah. excited to sieging a Region, and then he has a seizure once he puts up to the wall. But we're not done. I'm doing a, done. wait, I'm doing frame by frame. I think they you, they did put the arrow in. It's just really, really hard to see. Oh, they oh, might they? have, yeah. But the, the first attack, he just doesn't is, hit him at No, the first attack is a ghost. Just, yeah. We've watched it so many times that it's... Let's see. Yeah, okay, okay, I, I get it. The, the, yeah, the, the first the attack shins. is supposed to be the bow, but I don't think it connects yeah, yeah. at all. No. Yeah. And then he shoots very weakly from the bow. Like, he doesn't do it that. He doesn't draw the draw. string back yeah. at all, yeah. yeah. I like, you can do it like trying. that, but it's going to be really weak. Well, and now it's just, if you look at that one orchid isolation, it looks hilarious. Because it just yeah. looks they like yeah. you. <laughs> they, they don't change the bowstring either. You can see the bowstring just stays in the middle. No, like, it, it goes it back a, a little it goes bit. Back a bit. Just, that's just because his little. finger. That's just because his finger of doing the motion kind of flicks it just a little bit. But that's all. But if you pause by frame, you can see it going back a little bit. Yeah, yeah just yeah. a little bit, just because his yeah. finger hitting it. But that's all. Not enough. Yeah. But not not yeah. enough. Like this is this that, sucks. That arrow would not penetrate him whatsoever. It would just armor doesn't off. armor doesn't work in this. I mean, even without armor, <laughs> we just bounce off. <laughs> um. So, at the tower there, with the doorway, you notice that there are two elves fighting a single orc. Yep. Notice that one of them kind of has the orc pinned to the wall, and the second orc on the right, like, ha clearly has a sword and thinks about what he's going to do, gets confused, <laughs> and him. then decides to kick him instead. <laughs> yeah, like, stabbing him was the <laughs> obvious choice, Zud. <laughs> yeah. And now they're going to have a... And then they both go to follow the orc into <laughs> yeah, the Yeah, they help the orc by doing that. Because yeah, now was... he, they have to go single file. 
You could have just killed them, but yeah, very, very bad. Very, very bad. And then you have very slow choreography of the elf and the orc fighting on the left. It's yeah. the, yeah. the oddly left, right, enough left, the best right. part. It's just slow. It's not like it's not good, but if it was quick, it'd be like, okay, you you, you wouldn't even notice it. But technically, I think it's the best part of this, which is kind of sad because mm. the rest is a mess. This sucks. By the way, while and, the, and like, it's so this, empty. There's still orcs just swarming in from the back, allegedly. Yeah. Like, yeah. but there's probably like 17 lines of well, orcs wall, just in front of the wall. The wall here is, <laughs> is in all... such a bad state that we should see orcs piling in on the tree trunks oh, yeah. and the ladders. I mean, there's also the orc like right in front of the guy who does the weak shot. He just like, kind of like stands there and does nothing while he's shooting his yeah. friend. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, oh, I'm he so has, groggy. He has oh, to I can't wait do for his cue. Yeah. <laughs> he's so slow, too. Uh good stuff. Anyway, really good, really good fighting. Uh, I really love it. This will definitely stand the test of time. Oh, it IGN won't. seven out of ten. The release seven out of ten. Seven, yeah. Interesting. Seven out of ten from IGN. Interesting. I IGN yeah. gave this a ten out of ten. Of course they uh, did. Well, they gave remember this it's a triple A. Yes, yeah, they, they gave this episode a ten out of ten. Oh my god. Uh, or triple A even. Do you, do you, yeah? Do you know what they gave the first episode of the penguin? Oh, like a five, I think. Five. I think, yeah, yeah, five. Yeah. <laughs> Really. To yeah. Totally accurate, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so that was a fun detour. Cool. And um, uh, so yeah, we we get a little cut to nighttime here. The fighting has been going on all day. I suppose. I guess the twelve orcs have, or the twelve <laughs> elves are still a okay. They're they're fine. <laughs> they're just infinitely in those cool. loops. They're just going. Brip, yeah. Brip, yeah. Brip, brip, brip. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the cut is so funny. Instantly fucking night. What, what? Yep. <laughs> Not enough important the, um, things happened in the rest of the day. <laughs> no, nothing. Has the Ravager uh, fired once the, the yet? Ravage, the Ravager fired once. Yeah, it it once. Does. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. that's this is where we kind of learn what it does, and it's so stupid, but that's, what, that, it, yeah. that's what it is. Does that mean there's yeah. not like a 12-hour timer, though? Because yes. like, it fires once during daylight, and then it's like being reset for the night time. <sighs> like, we, want we, us saw, to we saw them... We saw them said it before the fucking, you know, mm. conversation in the tent and everything. And then they like hammer in hammer it in the final bit and then put it out. So it it was like there for fucking hours before they did anything. Yeah. Oh. Then someone didn't destroy it or set it on fire like or in, anything. Nope. In real time in the there. episode, it's something like twenty minutes. Uh if if you're gonna map it onto reality, you, it, it's hours. It's gotta be hours because it's mm -hmm. nearly nighttime. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so and it just yeah. sits there doing fuck all. What a weird like I said, this inch is on, on pause because it's, it has yeah. to be because of this. But all because remember, those they, spikes are manually hammered in. If yeah. they yanked it out, then the spikes would just go flip. They'd slip out, yeah. The yeah, spikes yeah would they would just right go out. straight but out again. It would do they, nothing. I'm not kidding about the, um, the, wall? the ladders and logs, it, they, though. It wouldn't. The whole fucking army could have gotten up by nighttime if they all went up the ladders. Yes, it's like I mean, it's paused. Like nothing has happened since now and then. Allowed, They've been yeah. swarming in to the wall for God knows how long, but they're not swarmed in yet. It's just you. You should yeah, win, like but you, you you told me you outnumbered them goes up. ten to one. Like you should just mm -hmm. zerk rush this easy if that's Lies the case. To us. Oh, yes. Yeah, they especially are. considering what happens next. What they tell us. What Gluck tells uh, um, the guy, the, the well, other man. Uh, yeah, Glug tells Adar all the things that they didn't show us actually happening that could be happening could be cool to see. That Belt. Elrond has destroyed five trebuchets off screen. Oh, how many <laughs> oh, of those are there? Yeah. I don't, I don't know I, what this means. I, is, yeah, this, is this he's very bad? He's destroyed think, five of them. How many have we seen in total in like one shot? I think we we saw three in the four at least. I don't know. But uh, yeah. I uh, guess. The white, oh, there's whatever. a wide shot. Uh, it's, in, it's in the previous episode. I'll check. I think it's about ten, but I'll check now. Oh, okay, yeah. Um. Anyway, Glug says many Uruk are dying, and Glug asks for orders. And when Adar says that they have to take the city at any cost, Glug tells him that. But Adar, I thought that you loved us. Mm -hmm. How come you're sending us to die in this stupid, silly Ungabunga attack? <laughs> and then Adar says, I do <laughs> love the orc so much. So much that I can't allow you to become Sauron's slaves. Mm -hmm. By the way, I checked. There's no word for love in fucking black speech. Oh, well. Oh, I imagine that. Now. <laughs> also, um, there's no... I'm just the word so glug. Cringe. Not that everyone isn't already <laughs> retarded anyway. Like, Ada, can you tell what the writers are doing to you? <laughs> like, can you see? Yep. 
the the constant reference, like the fact that um, Glug just said, "Let's retreat." How is that not like a what retreat? What do you mean retreat? We're like we're three quarters into winning. Why would we? Yeah, that's what are you talking about? <laughs> mm -hmm. We cut away from them swarming the wall. There's orcs on the wall. Swarming. We have the Ravager in place, so we're clearly I mean, winning, the right? Retarded, but... <laughs> and then and then we cut to nighttime. Well, that's oh, the thing. They're holding out better than we thought. We should retreat. It's like no. <laughs> It is like having a bunch of five-year-olds try to break into someone's house, but the thing is, they're not being stopped, so eventually they might actually win. Like, it's just yeah, gonna yeah. happen. If they hit the glass windows with, like, some rocks they found, and it's actually starting to crack. You're like, oh, yeah. they might get if in, you yeah. want us to believe that, you know, the elves are actually holding out very well, better than they thought, how would you show us them having some very successful defense mechanisms in place and yeah, figuring shit just... out? But so we just see them... Ship. Running around at headless chickens and do like weird choreography. Headless chickens would do better. Yeah. They would do better. That's true. But you know what I mean, right? Is that we don't see them actually doing anything impressive that leads us to believe, like, oh, they're actually doing a gr good job. It's and just like both sides are completely retarded. Like the orc should be like slightly retarded. But... <laughs> yeah, it's just chaos. Then we cut away. It's like, oh, I think we're losing. It's like, sure, yeah, if you say right. so. Yeah. Um, I checked the uh, catapults or trebuchets. Hmm. I guess. There is no clear shot because why would there be? Uh, best I can do is there's at least eight. Okay. Mm. Like at, at a minimum, there's eight. Look, it doesn't matter if they destroyed all. If he said they they killed ten of us, we'd just be like, oh, yeah, they just restock the trebuchets. That they make. Yeah, them I, I just thought there was only like three in one shot ever, but yeah, if there's that many, then that's fine. It'll be fine. They they'll make them there on the spot. In fact, they probably respawn. Oh, yeah. Like just over time. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> trebuchets fuck Everyone also. Everyone does. So. <laughs> Baby. Now, trebuchet, trebuchet, trebuchet logistics, we could just <laughs> throw that on the pile of things we don't understand and we don't know what the stakes are or what makes sense. And yep. The, the, the. Yep. Adar is, Adar is, he's, he's like, go, don't worry, Glug, I'm not going to let you become Sauron's slaves. Uh, instead, I'm just going to have you all die needlessly in this fucking invasion. Um, now, Adar goes to his tent and, oh no, Galadriel has escaped. <laughs> Whoa. Damn it. Oh. Apparently, the two random orc <laughs> guards weren't enough to stop her. And Adar um, says that she's still in the camp. They have to find her. She killed them both without making any fucking noise. I could. That's the least unbelievable thing about <laughs> this. What? They, she should have been dead. He should have just killed it. her. He should have just yeah. killed her. Like, why yes. Why keep her alive? What is the actual reason that he kept well, her alive? Well, just in case the Elven army we'll decide to attack again, you know, they'll pull her out in the box. <laughs> just put her in front. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> should have just kept, 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 you just kept, keep her in the box. Use her as a shield. They should have kept her in the, the fucking box. box. Yeah. Just keep her in yeah. the box. Just yeah, strap her to the vacuum rampling and use her as a shield. Um, Galadriel has taken this brown orc robe and she's skulking around, sneaking <laughs> through the camp. Oh, it's pot. Uh, <laughs> and I, now, she gets volunteered to gather up an orc body uh, as the orcs are burning their bodies on the world's shittiest funeral pyres. They um, should both see and smell her fucking instantly. <laughs> no, because all of the other stuff The thing happening. is, they do see orc. her, and it's terrible. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they don't react. <laughs> hey, Adar, guess what? Adar is Adar looking right at her. Yeah, he's yeah. looking right at her when she's... <laughs> Adar is here, and he like, gives a little eulogy for all the fallen orcs. So I guess he does care for them, and he Aww. even sheds a tear for the, the killed orcs. Uh, which, whatever. again, makes me question his insane battle plans that will obviously get a lot of orcs killed. Um, as Galadriel decides to kind of leave the orc funeral, randomly, it seems some orcs just sort of follow her, like it's really bad taste to leave a funeral. We gotta go get that orc who walked away. Yeah. Um, they, one of them says, wow, you've got really pretty hair, which is a really creepy <laughs> thing. To, out of place. <laughs> if you ever, this is just a little bit of life advice. If you just randomly see a woman on the street and you say, wow, you have pretty hair, that is a, that my friend is called a gamble. Especially when yeah, you look like an orc. Don't women love it when you like go, you're pretty. And you stroke you're them. Pretty. You're pretty. You've got lovely stroke hair. <laughs> I like how you smell. <laughs> yeah. I can smell <sighs> <laughs> um, so, um, they're about to attack her. I'm sure Galadriel will have no problem, uh, destroying all of these orcs here, I guess, or whatever. But <laughs> luckily she doesn't have to, because she is saved! Deus ex Aaron here. Deus ex Aaron here. 
What have you been doing all this time? <laughs> He's been sneaking around looking for the right time to strike, and that time is now. He Can I just tell you that a run deer is becoming like my 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 favorite. Just when he shows up, because he just shows up, does a thing, and then the, he's gone to another. The half showing an hour. up of him, he's he's a character that I think has two of the greatest. Like by just presenting him in a location is one of the most shocking <laughs> holes you could ever. Like wait, what? Because obviously this one is just so he did nothing this yeah, whole time. He was just waiting. He was just the whole time. he was just running from fucking Pel Pelagia to uh, to Eregion. <laughs> Takes I mean, a while. He, he, there's a scene where he arrives here like a while ago in the episode. Oh yeah, that's true. And he's yeah, just yeah. been fucking around <laughs> yeah, this whole time. Yeah. He could have joined Elrond in the fucking Elrond forces. It makes me think no. yeah. there were scenes of him like cutting through some orcs, moving through the forest, and they like didn't make it to the final like, cut. And so the editor, fighting footage. Mm -hmm. the editor assassinated mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Oh, you say I think he gets assassinated later in this scene, but for a different reason, which we'll get to. Oh, oh don't we'll worry. To I'm not saying it's just boy. the one time. <laughs> yeah, it's assassinated yeah. many times. This is, the, this is the this is the assassination, <laughs> pre assassination, and then post assassination. <laughs> yeah. So, uh -huh. um, the uh, uh, Arondir uh, saves Galadriel just in the nick of time, and they have a chat. Galadriel and Arondir have a chat out in the bushes. So they they escape and everything. Now she tells Arondir that Sauron is in the city of Eregion, and there's a secret passage into the city. We need to go kill him. Arondir does not react to this insane <laughs> news that Sauron is alive. That's not that shocking. That's whatever. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, right, yes. Yeah, uh, oh, Satan's right. in Eregion. Because <laughs> uh. from Arondir's perspective, Sauron was killed like two gajillion years ago, and he's been dead ever since. Yes. All right, moving on. Yeah, there's now, nothing. He's, well, well, he's like, eh, yeah. Yeah. there's a few more things here, right? So he he basically says, "I will suicide charge fucking well, Adar." Why he hasn't to. done this? What? Yeah, that's what we're getting to. Oh, okay. yeah. No, 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 it's all right. Uh, but he says he can't join her to kill Sauron again. He doesn't react to that. Um, mm -hmm. it, 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 which this reminded me of how Durin and King Durin had no reaction to when Anatar showed up at Khazadum and said, "Yeah, Eregion's a." Uh, uh, gonna be like under siege. We're about to be sieged by an army of orcs, and they just don't like question that in any way. Very similar vibes. Um, Narondir says he is here to kill Adar, and when Galadriel says it'll cost him his life to do so, like he can't just snipe him in the fucking forehead with his insane <laughs> marksman <laughs> sniper accuracy. I was she so says confused that, yeah. with that. That he's so close. He's right there. Yeah. Just kill him. Yeah, just, just him, do yeah. it. Just do and it. Let's win the fight without just him. Do the orcs don't yeah, do shit. Shoot him. And then we could go. And that is but... sort of the payoff they've been angling for anyway, given the only person... Well, he's one of two people who have a strong motive to want to kill Adar. And actually, yes. I, I unwisely person. left episode 8 running, so I got to the bit afterwards, like, whether they talk with the cast, or, like, they interview them and give them really terribly easy questions to answer. But mm -hmm. apparently, the plan was originally for Adar to die a lot earlier than he ends up dying. And it was Simon yeah. Tolkien's suggestion that he be kept around because he was important. The showrunners didn't think he was sufficiently important, but some guy that was supposed to be advising them said he was, so they kept him. So I wouldn't be entirely mm. like surprised if he was meant to be killed by um, fucking Aaron Deer in this scene or like another scene around this time, but they didn't do that because some idiot told them not to. Cool. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. He's so important. Was, also, if he's if he believes he will die, like from the suicide killing Ada, but he doesn't give a fuck, why hasn't he done this earlier? What uh, you've been doing all day. Um, why can't mm -hmm. again? He, Arondir is insane with a bow. He's like a, a mega yeah, yeah. John Wick sniper yeah. with a bow. Just shoot him in the head from the bushes here. Be and done run. with it and let's go. We got to save yeah. Aragion and kill Sauron. Which would oh, be a God. great part of saving the region, just killing a doll right here yeah. with a yes. to the yes. face. Assassinating yeah. easy win. GG. <laughs> would be amazing, especially with a, a weird, like, quasi mutiny that's kind of been brewing for the last yeah. 37 episodes yeah. that hasn't really <laughs> amounted to anything. Um, Give it time, but God. Girls, but instead of doing that here. As well, it's like, no, we don't have enough main characters. You can't die here. And so, like, that he accepts that as a given. That's a problem with the show. That's kind of like a meta issue she's highlighting, which is the elves do not have enough heroes, which is why they keep giving hero moments to irrelevant people later. <laughs> Random <laughs> elf number seven. Um, I got, I got yeah, one more. I got one more for you. Yeah, do it. 
So, uh, if Arondia's plan this whole time was even doing a YOLO charge into Adar, why the fuck did you want to bring Theo? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Good point. Good point. I didn't even yeah. think about that. He offered to be like, "Hey, you could come yeah. with me to suicide charge Adar." <laughs> but now which he's all be, of a sudden. Which would uh, be which would be interesting because Theo also really, really wants to kill Adar because you know yeah. a Bronwyn and their shared connection. The mm -hmm. idea of those two pairing up in order to assassinate. Adar would be an interesting plot line this show could have taken. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, Aronda is a very skilled boy and Theo is a retarded child, so... It, you when, you put like him in a tree and says, no, watch, he, he's watch the, as I kill. Yeah. He's the Lord of Pelagia now, I guess, so he's busy. Mm -hmm. Lucky yeah, for him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah... I just don't, I just don't believe ahead. that Adar would want to... Uh, that, that Arendir would even want to do this. because, uh, Like, for, forgetting the whole suicide charge side of it, like... The reason why he's here is that he told the trees that he was going to like clear out the forest. Yep. Uh, which so he's I guess gonna find a way to get rid of the orcs or put them oh, back we in the forest. We forgot about the ants, man. They're done. We're okay, okay. They will never come up again. I don't uh, think they will actually uh, come up in season. I think three, they will. But... I think we get a yeah. hook for them in episode eight. But, oh, you're yeah, right with Kevin. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, That's true, true. True, we do. But, like the idea that ev uh, everything has been taken from Aaron Deer, like I mean, I guess arguably Bronwyn and the happy life that they had prior to the se prior to the start of season one that we never saw or that we saw for like five minutes uh he has Theo I mean he wants to I guess be some kind of father figure to Theo but no he's just willing to die in, yeah, in the lost revenge everything, according to him like he's they're trying to say <laughs> that Adar now, Arendir now is in the same position that Galadriel was in at the beginning of season one after she lost her brother which is not at all the case if Theo was my son, I'd want to kill myself too. To be <laughs> oh, fair. sure. No, I just kill Theo. Anyway, um, oh. as that, yeah, as as amazing as it would be to assassinate Adar, and that would be amazing for the elves at Eregion, they're like, no, we have to leave. It's a Rondir and Galadriel. They could pretty easily kill Adar. Yes, I think. you'd kill the entire or camp probably. Yeah, you'd think so. <laughs> it's just, it's it's insane. Only if the fucking writers allow them to. So it always yeah, no, works. Some bullshit would happen. I'm sure. But she convinces Arandir not to kill Adar. Instead, come back with me, and we're going to go sneak into the city and kill Sauron together. Yes. Mother of the Northern Armies, everyone. Uh, we missed something very small uh, briefly. So his, um, his home, Beleriand, got destroyed by Morgoth. Yeah. And he's like, Adar took everything from me. Like, what? Mm. Ripperoo. He was everything new he took. Apparently. Yeah, it's all the, just the, the current stuff. Everything <laughs> in the also... last year or so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he also has a home in Mirkwood somewhere, but fuck that. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, when she's we like, what do you have? Mirkwood. He's like, I don't even know. They didn't give me much uh, that I talk I about. took it so. all the way off screen between seasons. I don't know what I've got left. <laughs> so, um, uh, da, 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 so they go run off to do their thing. We believe because it cuts into off. the going tunnel. back to Kaza Doom. Yeah, that's right. The dwarf army has assembled. It Whoa. doesn't actually look like it's that many. It looks like a no, looks... hundred guys. Well, they are quite small, <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> yeah, it could be <laughs> thousands. Kind of racist, but <laughs> really fair. they're very um, broad, though. So you know they make up for it. Yeah, big boys. Yeah. That's the army of Kaza Doom. Yeah, they, they assembled a hundred guys. It's really, it's it's really not. That impressive. I mean, it's very far away. It could be like a bit more than that. It's but the glow of the torches is so big. <laughs> it's very big torches. <laughs> Maybe all that's right. that's Fair actually enough. ten torches all in a big pile. I don't all see right. any. <laughs> I don't see any twiddly whiddlies. This gets a one out of ten. Oh, yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, you gotta have your twiddly whiddlies. I want my twiddlies whittled. What? Oh, we'll <laughs> whittle some twiddles in just a Ooh. second. Yeah, but... <laughs> um. Uh, <laughs> now before now Durin's got his arm around and everything and I'm just glad the guy has another outfit but before Durin can go out with the army Narvi shows up and boy he's all bloodied his whittled has clearly been twiddled and he says oh oh my god oh King Durin has killed my men he cut through them like stalks of wheat all of them that's pretty annoying <laughs> um yeah boy apparently King Durin uh, who grabbed an axe and he's gone and killed a whole bunch of dwarf-like soldiers. This goes well beyond assassination. In the mine. This is just... Mm -hmm. This yeah, is madness. Just... This is actually insane. This is nonsense. Killing his this own is dwarves is just... Nah. Nah. 
He's crazy, That's though. That's crazy. The ring. He's, nah, nah, he's, he's, nah, he's wearing the ring. The ring. Nah. The ring. I don't think you, Mahler, the ring justifies nah. anything. What? Literally yeah. anything. Nah. It's a completely different character. Nah. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine, because of the ring. Nah. Um, I don't know how the ring has given him insane combat <laughs> abilities against um, all of the soldiers. It's a ring, Rags. I, I guess it's a ring, so there you yeah. go. We he solved could, that he issue. He could push really hard. He's yeah. kind of like a Jedi now. Ooh. Yeah. So apparently, King Durin. Oh, oh, I, I just, I, ooh, I'm about. To, I almost said the sentence, and I just was like, "Wow, this is the thing." King Durin's gonna go dig and get the Balrog. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, he is. Off he goes. Yep. Uh, Let's go. I don't see what the problem is. The dialogue <laughs> is almost literally that. It's like makes sense with me. Um, Durin asks uh, Narvi about Disa. Uh, but they don't know where uh, they don't know about where she is. And Narvi says that he left Disa where the king was uh, as he was killing everybody. That's like, all right. I guess Disa said, "Go get my, go get Durin, my husband, and he'll get come me back." Husband. And hey, That's a very, husband. Wow, very accurate. Uh, I like, yeah. I like that That's one. what she sounds like. Well, D Disa, yeah, no, I'm saying I agree. It's, not, it's Ooh, a yeah. job. The, the stone singing was pretty accurate as well. That was oh, better. No, well, no, 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 that no, was not, inaccurate because it was yeah. it was inaccurate, but it was way better than the show. But yeah, of course. I, that's, I appreciate you. Um, you yeah. do need the your sort so, of light on gravy metaphors, though. You need to throw in some strong gravy. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> King Durin <laughs> gave those gravy. soldiers some strong gravy. <laughs> some strong gravy. Is that a metaphor? Is oh, it just cool. regularly gravy that, giving? Yeah. No, <laughs> he poured gravy on them and it burned them. <laughs> It was really weird, was, and then he stabbed them. Junky and delicious. Is that his ulti? He hot. pulls gravy on things. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like it's, it's like gravy. It's like gravy on the floor for something I don't want to know about. Barrel like of gravy, gravy instead of, uh, instead of <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The gravy master, they call him. Um, <laughs> he's master. not just the king of the mountain. He's king of the gravy ladle. King of the gravy. Uh, Speaking mm. of gravy ladle. Oh no! Um, you, no, you have to wait. You basically, have to wait on, that. on the gravy ladle. You had the gravy ladle. That doesn't happen yet. Oh, you're right. Oh my you god, you're right. That. Yeah, I even I even sent you that picture of it. Oh my god, we're gonna have to discuss what that was. Oh, we we can't we can't get too excited. We're we're not there yet. Oh my I'm, god, I legit right. don't even Actually, know what you're talking about. Yeah, so oh, you will. Oh, <laughs> I'm just you wondering now what no. what other what other gravy ladle are you talking about? Oh, I was just I was just having fun talking about oh. gravy because <laughs> you use a ladle you use a ladle to transport gravy. Um. From the gravy pot to the whatever you're adorning with gravy. Oh, but you're right. You reminded me of the, ooh, I can't wait to get there. That'll be fun. It'll be like the, the orc fight on the wall. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay. So, apparently King Durin's going to go get the Balrog. <laughs> um, and so this means that Narvi says if Durin takes the army to Eregion, then Kaza Doom might not be here when he returns. Sure. Um, All right. Sure. They're just setting up these absolutely insane stakes and just expecting yeah. you to go with it. I, like, sure. I, you need an <laughs> army to stop King Durin from clearly he doesn't. The Balrog. <laughs> yeah, you need you need an army to stop Durin from <laughs> getting the Balrog, and there is like one wall stopping the Balrog. Is, is he just going to get it now? Like what? This is just like earlier in the season where where they go. You know, do we go to Mordor or do we go to Reg Region? It's like. Just check a region, as in, like, just go sort out the Durin thing and then go to war. God, yeah. you should Wrong you should have done so already. It'll, yeah, like, why haven't you already 20, done it? Yeah. Hey, second in minutes. command, can you take like three quarters of this army and go? I'll take, take these guys and beat up I'll the king real quick. Dad. Well, but like, yeah, it Elrond, like Durin's staying back. I'll catch up on a war pig, Elrond like, talked to him about this plan hobby. fucking ages ago. What has he been yeah. doing? Yeah, secretly Speaking making an army. Yeah. Chilling in Kaza Doom. He's like, been baking a pie. Durin staying back. Gravy, I respect made. that, but <laughs> there are other elements to this. Yeah. Durin yeah, staying back to protect Deeser and to like deal with the king. Like that, I get that because that's got to be his priority over helping his friend. But that doesn't mean you call back the entire army, and they don't yep. even mention that as an alternative. Like, well, I mean, he's, all the, he's all the we see of him like he's preparing for the war and like preparing the army and shit. He doesn't seem to. He seems to have forgotten about the king entirely. He holds back the army because he has to show the world what dwarven loyalty is. I don't... Oh, that's that's awkward. I mean, given <laughs> what we get in this scene, it's like, uh, is he going to use the army to fight the Balrog? I don't know. No, they, they need the whole Durin. army to fight King an Durin. To fight King Durin <laughs> yeah. is what I thought. Like, we need I mean, an army to and... stop him before he summons the Balrog. 
That would have been a better ending, by the way, for this, is that Elrond looks to see if there's assistance, and then the Balrog comes in with Durin riding it. It's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. These, like, could just fucking summon... collapse the mine. Like, oh, I summoned the Balrog. Any of them. <laughs> He's riding on the Balrog. Now this is strong gravy! And a whole bunch of fucking mithril. <laughs> mithril cock ring or whatever. All right, no. so back at... Um, Back at the Eregion Forge, Anatar is lording over Elrond as he makes the rings, and they chat, and obviously Ugh. Brimby's very, very upset, mm -hmm. you know. Sad. It's been, what a shit day it's been. Uh, Sauron tells him his boohoo backstory about how Morgoth tortured him. It really is. Oh my god, it's so bad, yeah. And, yeah. and Sauron tries to convince Brimby that actually, you're the author of your own torment. This is all your fault, which is like, fuck off. Like, that's stupid. <laughs> you're dumb. <laughs> um, how long did it take you to come Brim up with that? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Brimby, uh, Brimby tells uh, Anatar, you truly are the great deceiver. You can deceive even yourself. Your gaslighting Anatar, <laughs> Anatar wanders off to leave Brimby to make the rings. He, he fucks off, yeah. What yeah, a great scene. He, he fucks he off. More and... important evil things to do elsewhere, which is yes. very important. This isn't his focus. Yep. Uh, Celebrimbor hears the rings like whispering, and then he takes the rings, and he's like, oh, I'd better destroy you, and he plops him into the forge fire there the little one up top which doesn't seem like it would be hot enough you think and he would know this i guess he thinks so <laughs> i guess he thinks that it will be hot enough to oh. melt the rings when in order to melt well, rings you have to use like a, a special like this is one of the things about forging is you have to have the technology in order to get the heat necessary to like melt certain metals this is why, you know, the meme of, oh, my katana is folded over six billion times. It's like, well, because the <laughs> Japanese at the time didn't have the same technology that they did in, like, Europe it's, in order it's to... It's more that the, the steel with. was of shittier quality as well that they had there rather than... True, weebs get fucked. Ow. Now, <laughs> um, back at the siege, the elves, back on the battlements, you know, the elves, those heroes? Oh, oh what they what... do, this is really cool. Remember, it's nighttime now. It's nighttime now, mm -hmm. all right? So <laughs> one elf throws this, like, bag pot of mm -hmm. napalm, and mm -hmm. then another elf shoots it with a fire arrow, and it, like, shotguns flames onto the orcs below, which is like, okay, that's a strategy. But yeah. <laughs> the elves are actively, like the ones from Elrond's army, they're, <laughs> they're fighting, no there. They're fighting yep. down there. <laughs> like I mentioned before, you can't use these unless your own troops are in the field. Well, they, work otherwise. they did it because it looks more visually striking because it's nighttime. Yeah. That's the yes. only reason. It's so stupid. <laughs> Man, would have been nice if they used that against this Ravager that's completely made out of wood. No! Yeah, the, the, <laughs> there's no. a shot exactly at like 46, 49 when they like basically almost hit an elf in the face with the fucking flaming thing. Also, also how really many of these... Fighters they must turned off, yeah, jeez. They must have hundreds of those things because they've been going for a while into the night and i assume they've just <laughs> been throwing these everywhere yeah. i guess <laughs> i hope they work um so we show the, we show uh killer now takes the ring out of the forge and there's they're not melted because of course not but they're not melted and so because of the lord of the rings movies Keller Brimbor touches the rings mm -hmm. and then is surprised when they are not hot. Yeah. Well, because evil fire is a cult. This is a okay, guy who, in enough. season one, there was the whole plot point. We have to get dwarven help to build an entirely massive magical forge to make these rings. Of course, it's not going to break them if you throw them into a random fucking fire. <laughs> How do you think that's going to work? Yep. Um, so... He decides that he's going to uh, put the. Um, uh, he tries to break his handcuffs. He tries to get out of these handcuffs because oh, he, he needs this. to get out. Because one of his hands uh, in the handcuff, one of the handcuffs is like uh, tied to the table, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's so a master he's get out. surrounded he's by escape. all of his tools and he <laughs> can't get out of a pair of fucking handcuffs. He's useless. Well, yeah. He, he uses a fucking hammer. If yeah, anyone like... should be able to do it, if anyone in, in Rings of Power should be able to escape from this, it's Celebrimbor inside mm -hmm. of his forge. In yep. his own forge. He has yeah. the same mechanical yeah. know-how as fucking Jeremy Clarkson. Well, like, what, what the fuck is this? At the beginning, <laughs> they show him using this particular metal cutting tool to like mm -hmm, cut mm -hmm. metal. 
And then he decides Ouchie. actually rather quickly that he's going to use this metal cutting tool to cut off his own thumb <laughs> so that he can get out of the handcuff. Yeah, not the metal. His thumb. Not the metal chain. <laughs> it's so funny. When I saw this thing, it's like, oh, that's handy that this is here. Also very convenient that they put them here. That's kind of stupid. And that's then he puts his thumb in there. It's like, wait, no, stop. What are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> oh. Like that, so, that device is, it's not I, only that it can cut through metal. It's that it's designed to it's cut designed through metal. It's designed to. It's <laughs> meant to do that. And you, yep. you've got a little bit of time. Like, gee, the, uh, it's, I, what a fucking idiot. So, I mean, anyway. Yeah. I'm, uh, I don't know what else to uh, say. Like, so, what so a wrong. fool. 100% self-inflicted. What a moron. They now, really the other, wanted now, to... Now, Sauron is right about this one. This one's right. your own make. This torment yeah. is... Yeah. It is. Dude, I, I bet you when they uh, when they wrote this, like, oh, he's going to say who's Willis might here, and then he cut off his mm -hmm. thumb. It's going to be so fucking epic. It's, it's like, so no. <gasps> no, it's like, oh, my thieves. So. <laughs> and also, why not just lock the oh, my door? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Any, anyway, um, so yeah, Celebrimbor cuts off his thumb to get out of the handcuffs, and then he ha, he leaves the tower. We still have elves running around the town square. <laughs> panicking. <laughs> we still. It's been it's, several it's days. Been like two days or something. It, it it's been wild. Like, it, do you think this they're is just the, the, do you think this is the jogging route and that's all we're seeing? Yep. They're just like, yeah, this is just, <laughs> it's just their, their like morning routine. I guess they think they get well, paid for this. Oh I was thinking God. that like Anatar was told about the secret tunnel and he was like, uh, no, they don't need to go that way. They can just sort of run around the town square for a couple of days. That's what they are. <laughs> yeah, it's that's, actually that's... funny, but you you don't you don't get to recover from that hilarity. Before once again, the <laughs> moment he leaves his tower, a catapult shot lands right next to him, and he's flung off the ledge. Oh. Once again, seconds after he fucking leaves, he's having a Twice really bad a day. Row. Okay, he's having another a horrible day. Rimbor action scene. <laughs> now, when oh. he wakes up, soldiers are like. They're towering over him, looking down. The shot is like, so funny. It is yeah. funny. It's comedic. All of these soldiers are looking down, and they're like, "Man, he cut off his own thumb. What a crazy guy. Oh, he really so is. Insane. He really is boy. wacky." I guess we're gonna have to put him back in the tower again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they just they, they accepted uh, Anatar so quickly. It's just this goofball but... shit happening in the middle of the war <laughs> that they all accept. It's like, yeah, it's yep. just our lord being nuts. Uh, he's a bit mm -hmm. loompy. Yeah, also, like, like in your tower. We were I dead. didn't catch this the first time, but the the captain here, at least, and presumably the other six elves, it's the same guy that was on the wall earlier. So they've just mm -hmm. left the wall now to. That was the yep. question. What are they even doing there? You've got I like all six of them. Thousand orcs are sitting in old man people standing there. They're grabbing supplies. Maybe, <laughs> uh, uh, maybe. But there's seven no, of them. Didn't... There were only twelve of them. Twelve of them to begin with. Uh, one of them got shot, which means there's what three of them left? Four of them left. <laughs> the something, like that? something like that. Yeah, three or four on the walls, defending the yep. entire city. Mm, obviously. <laughs> However, it's love... not. It's not that impressive considering the orcs can only come up like one an hour. But still, <laughs> yeah. like man. Oh. They have like someone on ladder duty to stab the one orc oh. that comes up there every hour. Yeah. They have also, a little timer, just... a little egg timer that goes off yeah. every, you know, 55 minutes or so. I was like, oh, be ready for it. He's here yeah, he comes. He's oh, I got him. All right. Next <laughs> shift. Next yeah. shift. Oh, uh, 10 out of 10. Great how, and how they just accepted uh, Anatar so, so quickly. But as yeah. soon as uh, Kilabrimbo comes, I was like, no, I'm the Lord. It's like, no, he's the Lord now. Oh, no, you're I'm crazy. Wait. Why, why would we listen to you? You were doing like shitty commands. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. The... These soldiers show up to bring him back to the forge again after he's cut off <laughs> his finger. And luckily, Galadriel arrives. And Yay. I don't know where Arondir is. If he's Is he in this scene? Is Arondir in this scene? He's I think he shows scene. up shortly no, after okay. some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's quickly yeah. there later, I think. He's, he's, he like, actually goes to defend the city yeah, now. Yeah, he actually goes yeah. to help the city. <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> Rare Arondir <laughs> W. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she says, release Celebrimbor. He is the lord of Eregion. And they obey her, because she's great, and she's famous. My um, lady. My lady. Brimby tells her that he thought that she was an illusion, that Anna... Well, that, no, that's what, just another... what Brimby should have said is, what the? why the fuck did you tell me it was Sauron? <laughs> yeah, that's what he should be <laughs> saying. Yeah, he was like, you! <laughs> you <laughs> did this! This is all your fault, <laughs> you, you You did this. 
So it, 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 this, the scene does get like points for baby steps because this is the first time that Galadriel apologizes. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that she apologizes for the wrong thing. The writers don't <laughs> yes. understand that the reason all of this happened is because she hid his identity. Uh, she apologizes for not being strong enough and for, um, I, she didn't say this, but for implicitly not realizing that he was Sauron and bringing him to the city and putting everyone in danger. That's not, that's not the main problem here, but yeah. that's what she apologizes mm -hmm. for. Yeah, you Everything would have been you. fixed if he just fucking told him who he was. Uh, yep. Yes, but Celebrimbor she... doesn't know because the writers don't know. Mm -hmm. Yep, what a shame. She should be facing the repercussions of her decisions. Eregion is burning. Celebrimbor is... We can call this a low point in his life. Yeah. Uh, and this is all his <laughs> fault. This is... Or, sorry, this is all her fault. This is all her fault. None of this had to happen. She was too prideful to tell him that Halbrand is Sauron. Here we are. And the show lets her get away with it once mm -hmm. again. She gets off scot-free. Only of the course. mildest of criticism that she levies at herself for this. Yes. Celebrimbor does not waggle his finger at her. Not the nope. one he took off, the one that's attached to his hand. <clears throat> he waggles his finger at her and be like, you did this. This is your fault. These mm -hmm. deaths are on your conscience. They yeah, should no, be. He... But we all know she'll get away with it. Yeah, Celebrimbor also well. says um, nine more rings made to enslave the world of men that he knowingly made, knowing they had the fucking goo in it, being corrupt, and what they would be used for in the future. Which makes no fucking I sense I guess he at all. thought that it would, that Regan would be unbesieged? That was, that was the leverage, and I guess... I mean, first of I all, think... why? Why, like, it's mm -hmm. Sauron. Why the fuck would he trust that they would keep his word, yeah? But secondly, yeah. Sauron's goal is obviously to enslave the whole world, so this is just a huge step forward with how powerful... He's already got the dwarves, you know this now. He likely mm -hmm. has the elves, you know this now. So... No, at best, he should be, quote-unquote, working on them, but not actually working yeah. on them. Yeah, yeah, like the Iron Little... Man suit. I was about to say the same thing, yeah, exactly. Yo. I either that or just <laughs> refuse. <clears throat> Remember Iron, Iron Man? Well, don't. Yeah, we have a... to talk about Rings of Power. Uh, balls. Yeah. Now, um, Brimby says that uh, I've, I've made these nine rings. I was tricked by him. Here, take these, save whoever you can, yeah. and use the old dwarf tunnel and escape. And please, don't give it to anyone immediately. Yeah, no, <laughs> don't, don't give it to anyone. <laughs> yeah. Brimby says For a that... second there, I thought I wasn't going to mention that, but, you know, just, I felt like I needed to. You did hatch him. <laughs> you wouldn't do that, but just in case the thought pops into your head, just like, maybe <laughs> ignore that thought. And maybe tell well, the little also, voices to go away. They, they, hear, they hear Sauron yelling up in the tower, and lucky for them, he doesn't just immediately run out and like, catch them there. That shit yeah. is so yeah. stupid. Yeah, right. How is... <laughs> is he just uh, not aware this has happened? This is the most interesting event in this fucking know. place right now. He runs around the fucking tower looking for them there, like, why the Big fuck mad. would he be there? Why would he... He should jump out and do superhero landing. <laughs> jump out yes. of the tower. I also like... I like the idea, though, that he, he just walks back in and he just sees, like, a severed thumb on the table and just goes, mm. ah! Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit! Oh, 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 uh, uh, <laughs> he actually oh, cut his uh, thumb off. <laughs> he, he throws up into the forge and it goes. <laughs> it like wiggles and he's like, yeah. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> but, and then the little the little mouse comes in and takes it and he's like, oh, oh man! <laughs> so really, like Celebrimbor, he, he the winning strategy would be he cut it off, but then just hold on to it, and then when when Sauron comes back, just go like, yeah, look at it. I don't know, why didn't he hold on to it? I mean, yeah. I'd want to hang on to my thumb. I, I would want to hang on to it myself. Yeah. Can he magic it, magic it back on? I, I he, don't know. Ooh, I don't know with, about that. I just with, he the ring of come, power. Come three, four, Keep well, it's, let's just be clear. That's mine, goddammit. Yeah, it belongs to me. It's my thumb. Wear it around his neck, maybe? If I ever have to have like an uh, appendix, wear it around his neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my lucky. I carry thumb. this with me every day to remind myself of that really stupid decision I made like, and never to do that again. Yeah, I'm gonna change for with, the better actually. because of it. Yeah, that was just that. He even, shows the, I, the bones in a little pouch. Even I know that reference. Um, he, hey, something interesting yeah, here, like, timing-wise, is that yeah. I had. Had Celebrimbor not escaped exactly when he did, then Galadriel would have ran into the forge looking for Celebrimbor and faced mm -hmm. down Sauron now. Yep. Which would have completely changed what ends up happening. 
I almost think that they up to a point that would have been better, not necessarily for them to have the confrontation, but it, it's weird that, you know, you've had more than an episode at this point of Celebrimbor trying to escape the confines of his illusion, or you've had an episode of that. He's been trying to escape, he escapes once, they put him back into the tower, that's a bad thing. He escapes again, it's a bad thing that before Galadriel shows up, they seemingly are about to put him back in his tower again. And the resolution for the entire thing is, right, I am going to go back into my tower. And it's just like, <laughs> that's not quite as satisfying as no. if you'd had Galadriel go in to try and rescue him from the tower, and he says, no, it's too late for me, take the rings and flee. And then you don't have the weird, pointless, I'm going to get out of my tower, oh no, shit, I'm not, I'm going to waste some time instead. Yeah. He could I have mean, just left with her instead of doing the useless thing he does instead. The, yeah. There's bits of that that I, I do genuinely think that I like, and I think that the reason why I like it is because I'm comparing it to how they um, how they handled Galadriel, because uh, like this scene is basically the Galadriel and Celebrimbor both realizing that they each made, they each fucked up. Like it wasn't just that Sauron mind controlled them, they both allowed themselves to be corrupted and to be misled uh, because um... they each wanted something from Sauron. They both acknowledge that they are not blameless here, but then what happened in Galadriel's case is after the fact she immediately lied to everyone and tried to conceal everything, and had she yeah. gotten her way, she would have concealed it completely. Um, whereas as soon as Celebrimbor comes to this realization, he immediately accepts what he did and selflessly goes back into the tower rather than selfishly um, trying to cover everything up so that people don't tell her off or tell, tell yeah, him like, off. Like, like I think uh, Celebrimbor does that, but I think Galadriel is just fucking coping. Oh, that, yeah, well, no, that, that's, that's what I'm the saying. That's being made, right? Is that Celebrimbor kind of, like, for as stupid as he was for this to have even happened in the first place, when the truth is undeniable, he actually, like, goes out of his way to make it right and not to save his own skin. Mm -hmm. Whereas yes. Galadriel, the reason why she didn't t say anything was because she was trying to cover her ass, right? I mean, that's yeah. what was happening yeah. in season one. She was right? explicit she was, about she that. She was really pissed off about yeah, the idea that she was responsible for helping Sauron. And so, mm -hmm. and so this is the consequence of that, but there's no reckoning for her, right? Because again, it's the whole thing narratively, right? You can tell with Keller Brimble, it's the end, even if you don't know the story, you know, it's over, but Galadriel, you, you know, on the flip side, no, it's absolutely not over for her. She will remain in positions of power, uh, yeah. long-term because the show consistently fails to recognize her mistakes. Yes. Like, if, if Celebrimbor reacted here in sort of an analogous way to how Galadriel reacted at the end of season one, then Celebrimbor would say, we have to destroy the forge, no one can ever know. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> Pretty much. Which would be funny, but yeah, still. <laughs> and then if he That's said, you know what, the, 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 the elf lady smith who got thrown over the wall... Everybody thinks that was Sauron, but that was me. I did it. <laughs> no, witnesses, no one must know. I did it, <laughs> and, I, and I do she it knows again. Too much. He pulls out a sword and then starts stabbing all the guys around him, doing flip flops. <laughs> he screams, as <laughs> He flips around him. Um, like his amazing. his plan here, because we don't see this in this scene because we cut away to more fighting. But his plan here is to go into. Uh, to go back into the forge to basically buy time for Galadriel to escape through the Dwarven Tunnel with the rings. Um, how how dumb is that? <laughs> On because the scale of what? I, like, well, because what basically On his, the, scale his, of rings the, of power. the concept isn't dumb. What he does in the specific thing when he actually gets up there is pretty dumb. Sure. Well, basically, what I'm saying is that like he knows at this point that he is going to go up there and it, he is not going to come back out. Um, he is going to let himself basically get tortured to get death. Like catapult if he comes. Well, out all that, him. yeah. <laughs> he can hide from the catapult. He's gonna <laughs> fall over again. <laughs> like, ah. like he's he's gonna go up there and allow Sauron to basically torture him, but he will not reveal where the rings are. Um, I'm either do it. Does he do? Either either through like um, y well. By going in there, he is taking a huge risk because Sauron can extract information from inside of his brain, and he should know this. Like Sauron can, Galadriel knows this as well. Mm. They can fuck. She, he can fuck around with their brains, which means that even if Sauron were not, uh, we're just going to like torture him in a mundane way, you know, tickle him until he can't take it anymore or something. Like that's a risk. But the fact that this is Sauron who can enter his mind and just be like, oh, okay, so Galadriel has the rings. Cool. Yeah. No. Going, he, he should. The... He should probably kill himself at this point. Is kind of what I'm saying. 
if he's accepting that he's going to go back into the tower yeah, and die. Yeah, your god meme. I, I mean, mean either doing... that or go with Galadriel. Or that, yeah, yes. Because he's doing the whole, like, my city, I must rebel. You're like, you don't have to. <laughs> you really don't have to. Yeah, you really let's, don't have to. Let's, on, let's just go. go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, did it, did it tell Galadriel that the, the rings have the goo in them? That they're evil and corrupted? Uh, he told her that the rings were there, that were going to corrupt the race of men, but he didn't tell her, like, how mm. or why. Yeah. I made them with Sauron's blood. That's <laughs> that, really Don't bad. you think that should prompt the question of like, well, you made them with blood? And he's like, well, I, it didn't look like blood because he tricked me. And she's like, I didn't oh, know at the time. Did you? It was maybe, really weird. I was in Inception. Were you tricked with the dwarven ones? He was like, yeah, kind of. She's like, were you tricked with the elven ones? And he's like, <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Well, no, definitely not. No, no. No, definitely. I mean, like, at least most, mostly, yes. They were mostly done when I was tricked. No. We need. Well, we we can't talk about this. We gotta do stuff. We we're oh, a ray gun's burning, and I don't want to get hit by another catapult. Please, I don't want to be out here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm two for two. It's good old grandma uh. inside. <laughs> I, I will say as well, we we didn't um, mention it, but the Sauron no is very funny. Yeah, no. it's really funny. Ah. <laughs> and he, he just stays up there. He doesn't go out immediately <laughs> because you know he keeps looking. Yep. It might be in that little box. He might have left it in the little box on the table. He has to look at that little box on the table. Yeah, the fuck would he? <laughs> that would be a. Uh, that would be that. <laughs> that would be a gamble to leave him in there. Mm -hmm. Like he'll never check there. That's the. He'll never spot. check this box. <laughs> um. Uh, let's see. So back outside in the battle, Elrond and some soldiers. They go towards the war machine. They still haven't made it there, and all of this fighting all day. <laughs> The war machine haven't barely made a dent in the fucking wall. Uh, it's amazing it's done anything with how stupid its design is. I have no yeah. idea what the... Like, this is why you have someone that you can talk to about, like, siege equipment and battles and stuff to be like, hey, yes. we want to do, like, an orc version of something that was real and effective because that would be cool and believable and, and immersive to think that the mm -hmm. world is real. But instead they were like, what if we made up our own stupid thing? And then they just did. <laughs> but that was cheaper, so there you go. Nice. Yeah. Well, they, also, have they only have one of them. Like, if they had, like, a line of ten of them, yeah. then they would be... Uh, I mean, they'd be just as ineffective, but at least they'd be ineffective. Yeah, on it would be there. hilarious if they all got used, yeah. so they just... Every time they, the, the arms flung back, the spikes <laughs> just came out and, like, hit random orcs. Like, ow! Yeah. Ah! I hate, ah! it wouldn't... I hate this image of... All of the, the cowardly elves oh, yeah, sitting yeah. here planning while all of their friends are dying in front of them. Oh, I was, I was about to point that out as well. It's just really weird the way this even plays out because it looks like they're about to ambush someone. It makes no sense. Like, this is, Go! This is what you see... This is what you see... No, what? The referencing saving Pirate Ryan with the fucking mud yep. wall. Yep. I know, I know it's stupid. I just, because this is what you would see, like, soldiers today hide behind and just take mm -hmm. shots and go back into hiding, you know what I mean? I don't know about you guys. But here you already have, like, people fucking fighting over there while they're like, ooh, like what are we gonna do How now? How are you not the, the compelled? put machine guns up on the wall. Like, wouldn't everyone here just be compelled to be like, I gotta go fucking help? I don't even, yeah, like, exactly. if Elrond's like, all right, well, they will not take this wall, this thing. You're like, I don't care, Elrond, the fucking Bob is over there fighting that <laughs> orc, like, let's go! <laughs> from taking the wall if Bob ain't dead. I just like, like <laughs> oh, the Bob lack of consideration is so fucking annoying, especially yeah. with how the complete opposite happens in a moment for the editing, especially. <laughs> like, I think that just, they're trying to imply a degree of strategy without actually putting in the episode. not how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right. Remember we how they were strategizing like, yeah. in Lord of the Rings while fighting? Remember that? Yep. Well, yeah. a, a lot of it is the idea of, like, well, what's going on, right? So, like, when Captain Miller is, is figuring out what they need to do on Omaha Beach, it's like, well, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, he's got to figure that out because they can't I do mean, anything. Well, and they're taking they cover. <laughs> yeah, there's right. also barbed wire in the cover. way they can't yeah, go forward. Exactly. <laughs> and, and they actually need to reorganize their plan because the plan, yeah. everybody was scattered. So it's like, okay, so they Disaster, need a plan. Yeah. They're in a position to make a plan, and they can't do anything until they make this plan. Yeah, like they, like they physically can't move forward. There's barbed wire in the way here. There's, there's fucking nothing. In this case, it's like you guys can help right now. You, you yeah. are well, and the primary concern right is that war machine. Just fight toward it while helping your man. Yeah. That's all you got to do. That's yeah. the simplest plan. Yeah, it's, it's really <laughs> easy. There's a bunch of them yeah. close to it anyway. Oh, like, it's so it's, bad. Can, it's, oh, it's, yeah, it's, exactly. The fact it's, that it's, it's all. Go ahead. 
I, I was going to say the fact that this war machine, still, the Rav Ravager, still exists is ridiculous because Elrond here seems to believe that this elf lady can blow it up with one, one arrow. One arrow. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't even know they what compels have... him to believe that there's something to explode there anyway. <laughs> they like, shouldn't no... be. They absolutely should not be. Yeah. Not a single time have they tried to shoot an, an arrow at it in That's this true, entire battle. That's true, you wouldn't it, have thought it, it, one it, arrow would blow it up. That's why nobody's tried it. It's kind of genius in a way. What's amazing yeah. is that... Oh, shit. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess we'll, we'll talk about what happens real quick because like, I was really confused when I first watched it. Um, well, there's so... one thing I want to mention before that. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, her... We see her quiver with two arrows in it uh, in the previous scene, and then in the next scene, her quiver is gone, and it, she doesn't have any arrows. Oh, Damn. so okay. at uh, at uh, fifty four uh, forty nine, she doesn't have a quiver anymore. Yeah, I can. You know, I just I just believe you. <laughs> no, he's right. <laughs> so I yeah, was like, it's gone <laughs> because I was confused because the way she takes out takes it out at the end, I, I thought she took one from her chest that got shot into her. <laughs> yeah, but no, wait, she let, it. another but arrow just let Rag summarize it. I think try to do yeah, the yeah, thing, I guess because this shit's so good. Yeah, let, just to be just to set the the scene, <laughs> this funny. incredible Hurry. scene of what happens. All right, this is amazing. This <laughs> this was actually I think the part that made me laugh the hardest. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's, good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So in the Elrond and some soldiers, they hide behind this little mud wall here, and, and they're going to plan to get the war machine and destroy it. His plan is to have the Asian elf lady uh, to, to torch Arrow the machine to death. <laughs> she does, you know? She's going to shoot it, and it's going to go on fire or explode or something. But right before she's about to do that, she gets randomly boromir from like, <laughs> all of these different angles by arrows. From the front, from so the back, like, one comes from above. It yep. happens so suddenly that she just gets hit by all of these arrows. Right as she's supposed to do the plan thing. Boy, it made me laugh it. so it's hard. It's so funny. On repeat, uh, you gotta show it. It's just one wait. hour, two hours, three hours. <laughs> do, do, yeah. do, do, do. What, one is from one is from the fucking walls on elf shelter in the fucking yeah, show. One, one, one of the orcs is like in, in the clouds. He's on the who's well, the feels like a bunch of orcs just from agree. Mario. Like, let's let's target this person specifically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They all just turned around like, like, like this one elf. elf in particular. Yeah, <laughs> it's so fucking <laughs> oh, <no>. bizarre. Because <laughs> they all like <laughs> <laughs> and again, like the fact that the orcs can do this is what makes things like the earlier scene where they were just standing around on the wall for twenty minutes just even more ridiculous. Because the the orcs, when they need to, can just immediately delete you. Well, that's why yeah. I don't think it was the orcs who did it. The orcs are not accurate enough. The arrows aren't coming from the right direction. The only <laughs> explanation is that the elf shot her they're because they're racist. racist. The elves are because racist. Because they, <laughs> they hate women. They hate women and Asians. They're like, well, everything um, that has gone wrong recently has been because of Galadriel. So we need to get rid of all the women. <laughs> <laughs> interesting um if oh, only shit. by the way we can talk about it now it happens uh it's happened already it will continue to happen armor is fucking worthless absolutely um, you get stabbed through it shot with it through arrows it's just it's worthless it's just a uniform to let everyone know what side you're on once again armor doesn't mean shit i hate it it's awful if only what she the, had some of that quality stories... King Durin mithril armor, maybe she would have lived. <laughs> what if more stories actually try to take advantage of that, of of having characters get saved by their armor in yeah. you know yeah. ways that just make sense? Well, it's G it's Game an of Thrones element that you don't... in the earlier season and then the right, 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 right. just fucking forgot. <laughs> it is a sort of unique element to like fantasy and historical battles and engagements where you are like covered in all of this armor and you have to get through the cracks or it will deflect arrows or it will deflect like getting into melee. Because um, nowadays that's just not how war is fought. So you have this really cool opportunity to actually play into one of the mm -hmm. most well-known and noteworthy aspects of old warfare which is wearing armor and having it actually work. That's why people wore it in real life, because it yeah. shit worked. <laughs> but they never knew. But yeah, well, it's, nobody, it's a, just a nobody's uniform. Nobody's wearing their helmets either, because it's more cinematic if they're not wearing their helmets. Yeah, you know? We need to one. see the actor's face. Yeah. You gotta see uh, the actor's faces. Yeah, this yeah, actress annoying. is... I, got it, I had to see her face, because... I, I do know. find this really funny that they think that... Like, what's the point of making it so that it's a named elf that had, like, what? Five lines of dialogue, maybe? Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. That. Fringer, you not are way right. overestimating her. Oh, so the only, the only things that this character says in this entire series is, they'll breach the wall soon, Commander, won't they? And mm -hmm. what are they? 
Oh, I was gonna yeah. say. Oh, you forgot. Line. I, was, I you was forgot one. Line. You forgot one line. I forgot one. Oh. Yeah, oh? yeah, because because yeah, you know, because Elron asks like, "How many torch arrows do you have left?" And she says, "Enough uh, to yes. get the job done." And yeah, I almost right. my fucking mind with like, "No, I want a fucking number, you dumb cunt." I mean, she has two arrows <laughs> in the quiver, so it's one or two. Okay, so three <laughs> lines. I was gonna guess two, but then I thought it's got to be more than two. <laughs> so, yeah, it's three. I just find it funny. What's the point? Why even bother pretending like this is a real payoff? Especially when you make it so comical of just her getting hit by like four arrows in the span of three seconds as if a whole bunch of walks <laughs> singled her out. As if it's so one funny. arrow? As if getting hit by one arrow wouldn't already... Like, that would be enough if she got hit by one arrow and then she's like, oh, I've been shot by an arrow. Normally one's yeah, enough to do the trick for like a lot of four. characters. But the fact mm -hmm. it's so over... Ironically, the overkill doesn't manage to do it. But like, it's... Like yeah. the overkill with all of these arrows hitting her. It's like what? It's well, it feels like you need to like, explain like what. Why does it work with Boromir? Why is it particularly potent that it's like three arrows to bring him down? It's like well, he's a human being, and mm -hmm. as a human being, you can understand the idea that a, a human being getting hit with three arrows is uh, a lot. But the notion that he's so determined to save Merry and Pippin that he's gonna mm -hmm. like fight through getting shot twice is like god damn. Look at that man! Yeah. Look at also, him go. Elrond's reaction—I don't know, man. man. Doesn't seem very, you know. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh I mean, he's just sort of sitting there this waiting. Like, like, what my reaction was. So I don't know who Why's she he is. No, well, I was well, just well, well, my <laughs> reaction because my reaction was my laughing reaction was at laughing. the top of yeah. my lungs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was not. Like... Well, I, I, to be fair, part of why I was laughing so much is because I had no idea who she was, and I was like, "What the fuck? Why do yeah. I care? Who is she? Oh, yeah. yeah, why is she getting this moment with Barmy? You don't sit there thinking, what was his name again?' With this woman, <laughs> exactly. it's just like, why? Yeah, what? Seven why? Words of dialogue. Yeah, it's it's just absurd. I don't even know why they would bother. Like, what's the point? Why pretend you didn't make her a character? Nobody would care. There's basically no difference between her and some Randy. She, yeah, she could have been in. If you want to do this sort of like, payoff, quote unquote, this well, heroic death been at the end of, of the season, she should have been seasons. in more scenes. She should have had more lines. Yeah. There's, there's a reason yeah. to have her around in a lot of scenes. Wait, but you she... hyper focus on Galadriel, on Galadriel and Elrond Galadriel all the time. Yeah. We've got no one else. Yep. Well, was if they had, part, was she not part of the Elven Avengers? And yeah, the, and the that other doesn't episode? count though. Yeah. She's, she's, yeah, she's no, I'm just asking. I was, I was, I'm just asking. That's the thing. She oh, I know. I know. She said, "What are they?" I'm just actually yeah. not remember. <laughs> I'm just unsure because that, she doesn't say anything. I think that if you weren't paying much attention to the show, you'd be like, "Who? What? Who are you?" Um, and she's it would be like your fault, really, because she, you know, she barely said anything. Like, if the series had focused or given a little bit more time to that group of characters traveling across Middle-earth, and it was uh, yeah. a, a, like a, a team-up buddy type plotline or something, then you could actually have sort of, you know, built the characters and then come to understand them. Because one of them dies in that episode. One of them we don't see again because he was the map guy. The other two is Asian Elf and the Dagger Man who has gone to get the dwarves. Um, yeah, those yeah, two yeah. characters are both like involved it. in uh, dramatic payoffs in this episode that would mean a lot more if we actually understood who they were. Because, like you say, they are, they, I mean, I know their names because I've, well, I'm me, I guess. Because you're insane. I'm insane, yeah. <laughs> you can you're can't mad. tell what's happened to my wig, but, yeah. <laughs> Wait, your wig? My wig. That's my a Anatar wig? wig. Yeah, my Anatar yeah, that's wig. Not your, that's not really your hair? That's your. No. I thought that was your real hair. You grew it out for the show, and you <laughs> dyed it. I thought no, you were a real fan. No, it's a terrible wig. I got it, I just, it's to look like Anatar. <laughs> <sighs> I Frank, thought you gotta get better at recognizing fake hair from real hair. Jeez. Can't damn. you tell by the giant forehead? Oh, damn. I'm not used to <laughs> this kind of. Uh, truly, this is a. I'm Sauron not used to this me. level of. Truly, Sauron deceived me. <laughs> you liar! You All liar! Right, so, oh, just to emphasize the, the earlier point, though, we are, I think, about 15 hours into Rings of Power in terms of like across the entirety of season one Christ. and now penultimate <laughs> episode of this oh. season. And we are at this point saying this character has absolutely no establishment versus Boromir, who in about an hour has <laughs> had that. so much more. It's, it's insane, isn't it? It's so insane. Oh. So Boromir in The Lord of the Rings is on screen for 27 minutes. <laughs> and and, Damn, and really? In, it's only 27 in, minutes. In Fellowship of the Ring, it is 23 minutes, because obviously he's in the others. Uh, yeah. For, oh, yeah. Briefly. God. So 23 Jesus minutes Christ. with Boromir, they managed to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this character, because again, I worked out all the screen times because I'm insane. Uh, this character is on screen for 13 minutes, which is about half. 
of Boromir. Well spent. Mm. That long? <laughs> well, <laughs> 13 minutes. Because well, she's on screen during all like the fighting and shit, so yeah. Uh, oh, with, with the Barrow okay. Whites and all the rest of it. So Dude. it doesn't... It, it's not like one-to-one, -one, but even so, it's, it's time character. that they could have used. No. Yeah, it's just... she's. Well, present. but same rules for Boromir, right? Well, exactly, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Man. <laughs> but they make use of all the the minor things uh, that happen, like when, w w like his, um, like what you know, well, like, like the conversation with Aragorn. You every know, scene, like, while the, I mean, every, every, yeah, every yeah, single yeah. scene. He's always he's always doing something. <laughs> what he says or what his actions are, what he prioritizes, his little every backs scene. and forth, and you know. yeah, just the way he like or, gives a look or like you know, capture everything. Battering. Yeah, slowly but surely. Boromir yes, like yes there's like facial character. expression when someone else says something, like the, there's I always mean, something. There is nothing wrong with Boromir in terms of like writing. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, he as a character. So, yeah, he's... He's so good. Um, mm -hmm. uh, one thing I just now, want to mention here quickly is that, because uh, yeah. Platoon mentioned it earlier, Elrond is currently carrying Galadriel's ring, although the show hasn't revealed that yet. Mm -hmm. So far he could have rescued his horse and he also could have rescued uh, oh Elf yeah, he could have. Yep. Uh, well, he doesn't. Obviously, he well, still doesn't, he doesn't trust the ring wanna, yet. Quote unquote. Fine. He doesn't want to use it yet. Fine, but like uh, he doesn't even consider it, and he doesn't oh, even no. try. Like his horse, he didn't isn't responsible for the fall of Aragion like Galadriel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like the, the horse, the horse, he could have absolutely blameless. healed, but he doesn't no want to fuck his horse. So you know, it's <laughs> well, we don't know that. They might be related. You know, elves are weird. Hey, guess what? She's what? not actually dead. Great. Wow. She's, she's been shot by many arrows, but she has not yet fallen. She heroically pulls out one last arrow. Ugh, and then she lights it on a nearby fire that's just like next to her randomly. <laughs> oh, lucky. <laughs> oh, can and we then... just get it confirmed? Did she pull it out of her or is it out of a quiver? It's, it's, out a, of it's a quiver. quiver. It's a oh, we see it in a oh. quiver earlier, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I thought it. I thought, I thought she pulled out one of the arrows from herself. Yeah. That's oh, what I thought as well, but I, I, I checked again. She, she leans forward checked. and there's an arrow in there that she pulls out, yeah. Yeah, it's like a... Because well, it looks like she kind of jerks it out of herself. Like, I think the idea is that it's like a bit more special because it's a torch something? arrow, they call it. So it's like embedded in fluids, I don't know. No, I, I, oh, I just yeah, think yeah. she exerts herself and it looks a bit weird. Okay. Oh yeah, or that. Okay, yeah. You know what? Works both for me. It's kind of funny. I've seen like an equal 50 50 of, of interpretations from it just because it, it's the way she does it. I guess it would hurt no matter yeah. what, right? Because she's just yeah, it's, covered oh, yeah. Anyway. yeah, it's the quiver. Yeah. It's uh, quivering with I'm, excitement. I'm glad they're able to convey all this information really well. But she does, <laughs> mm -hmm. she does like <clears throat> pull it out yeah. of it like in this <laughs> absurd way. I just rewind yeah. just to make sure. <laughs> but anyway, she stumbles, she stands up, she, she, is it knocks or notches? Knocks. Notches. Knock. Like, knock. Knocks even. Knocks an arrow. She puts the arrow on the string bow, and <laughs> then she pulls it back, and she takes aim, and then, oh, she lets the arrow go heroically. Oh. One final, one yeah. final heroic arrow, and... Oh boy, this is great. She lets that little fiery arrow go and like Even four different orcs like <laughs> look at it to the orcs Why? staring at this one random arrow flying <laughs> through the air. Why? And then it and then this arrow lands in this this uh, what I could only describe as purely random explosive pot and then <laughs> it blows up. And it sends orcs flying. Oh my goodness gracious, and it blows up in this massive explosion. I thought at first it was the war machine, but it is isn't. It, it's is the it terrible not? editing. No, it's not because it, it the the wool ripping machine is still active and functional later in the episode. What is yeah, this orc looking at? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, why? <laughs> why? But like, how? Yeah, then, Wouldn't the arrow be shot from behind where he is right now? No, he knew to look. But, no, but he's, he's not looking at the it. Left of because he's ahead of the arrow right now. So he'd be looking away I mean, from he, it. He, he could be standing like to the left. Also, isn't he looking the she... wrong direction? Uh, I'm so confused. Okay, I, hang on, you, you guys need to fucking uh, the, yeah, catch me up here. Work. What did they blow up then? I thought they blew up a thing. So and what I it, oh, again to it's, clear it's, the thing or something. It's shitty editing because they talk about de destroying the um, the Ravager, the Ex retarded yeah. war machine. Uh, but then she gets her arrow and shoots it at like a box of nitroglycerin that was not. <laughs> it was something else. Um, Four. Which I guess means that the orcs, separate, you know, t separate to the stuff with the Ravager, they were also preparing like explosives to try and get through the wall somewhere else. And she but fires never... an arrow at that. Never mentioned, never seen, but it just exists. Yeah. Um, because later in the episode, the um, the wall ripping machine is still very much not exploded. 
Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. That's why I was that, confused. That's all we've got. But like, I I totally misread it because I because of the mm -hmm. shitty editing. Like in my video, I I make that mistake. I say that she blows up the wall ripping machine, which is not the yeah. case. Because the, the this fucking episode is just so vague with how it how it communicates things, and it directly leads you to believe that one thing is happening, and then it is actually like, well, no, that didn't happen. It's your job to edit this, Man, you know, for yourself in real time. Like, the, you're completely right. Look dead. at this shot. It's like, what? What is being blown up here? It's like, I don't know. It's yeah. something. Yeah, I thought this was I, the revenge. Said, it can only There's be described as random. Wood. Yeah. No, well, the other one says one reasonable. arrow from you may change the course, and she, and she says I've got enough it's... arrows to finish the job. What in their mind is the job? What do they think? Was it was it at? Ravager one, I and they know. bring out Ravager two later? They have a. They the have only a log other at the wall there, and it seems like there's a log like is that a log? It. Yeah. Well, hold is on. It the only... Is it the ladder making machine? That <laughs> the only other explanation <laughs> that I've got is that that device there with the kind of like plank of covery shit on the top, that is the Ravager, which was right next to the barrel of dynamite, mm -hmm. uh, which blew up, but it did not destroy the Ravager. That's the only other explanation. That's oh. what I was thinking the whole time. That least. explosion does that never set off. <laughs> Look at this. That's a weird payoff to be like, yeah, you, you hit your shot you and it exploded, it. but it just didn't do <laughs> anything. Didn't do anything, yeah. I, I because they got some orcs. Holy the explosion yeah, just keeps getting explosion. bigger is what I like about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think this is a whole other thing that they just cut out of the rest of the episode. It must oh, be, because God. why would you why would you keep your fucking boxes of petrol next to your wool whipping machine if you're not using them? You do it random, Ooh. random. They are orcs. <laughs> they are very stupid. Known to be as that... intelligent as elves in this show, so it doesn't really matter, right? <laughs> have you seen what the war machine does? I have seen what the war machine does. <laughs> have you seen what the trebuchets do? That's, the, that's why it's so oh easy God. to write orcs, because you can always just excuse anything by saying, now they are orcs. Well, no, because the th uh, we can't even do that because they're not consistently retarded. Like, they come up with some insane <laughs> siege weapons that don't do jack shit, but then they can also destroy, you know, decapitate a mountain using a catapult. Um, yeah, and then when they need to, for some reason, yeah. And then when they need to, like one shot them. this elf, they all just immediately snapshot this elf and no scoper. Just because mm -hmm. they don't one shot her, they many shot her. Well, okay, <laughs> yeah. One shot they is over, they overkill her, yeah. What hey, did they shoot overkill. in that? What was in that bucket? Seriously, nitroglycerin. Um, there, yeah, there is actually Explody nothing stuff. that makes sense, right? Like because oil wouldn't no. do that. So Sauron's it's blood. blood. It's whatever they're using to ignite their arrows. Is all I've. Uh, why, uh, it's it, it's it's tantamount to a hole. Like it doesn't actually. There's nothing dynamite. There's nothing reasonable wine. that would be in there. Well, unless Sauron's it is blood. It, unless it is an explosive. Like I said, that this was just something that was cut from the scene, and they were trying to blow up the wall. What would they have that would do this? I don't uh, orc juice. I don't know because it's, it's, if it, it's, it's a very wine, small amount of juice it anyway. If it were, ships, we know stuff like that. If it was Saruman's gravel yes, yes. and two towers, it's, no, <laughs> but it's not. It's Numenorean wine. It's, it's Numenorean a secret chemical wine. that Waldreg the White. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Numenorean wine. Well, uh, we can only speculate because the show doesn't fucking tell us. So I'm not sleeping fun. tonight, aren't I? Nope. Uh, oh, you'll sleep like a baby tonight. So <laughs> no, no, in the morning. We're still, we're still technically on One of the time. Things... We're not actually over. We are on time. Are we? By on... Compar yeah, I mean, Round about. about four and a half hours. So oh, we're yeah. on time to finish. We might not be, though, because we or... haven't gotten Damrod yet. So <laughs> Don't worry, he won't take long. Now. <laughs> oh, you're sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, she makes the shot, blows up the whatever it is. And then, as she's sitting there, kind of wibbly wobbly with the seventeen arrows sticking out of her, um, they charge and they don't go to like help her. No, she's dead. No. Fuck her. This is the she's attitude dead, they've had before. Dagarano, uh, they yeah, charge. Like, yeah, it's such a, such a weird place. It was like, ah, oh, charge now. It's like they're all fighting already. I don't know why you're doing. Yeah, it charge didn't make a difference. Charge and yeah, it's command. pretending that they have structure and strategy yeah. again. It's the there's, same uh, again. there's also a weird <laughs> cut that fifty six fourteen where Aaron is way too far away from the orcy skills. That's uh, fine. That's yeah. yeah that's that's fine. The, the important George, part is George. that she gets shot by another arrow, and it's this one very is funny. just enough. She loses her last health point and she dies. It's, oh no! It's one. almost like the show said she's dead, but I mean, let's shoot her again. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're having fun here, okay? Let's let's give her another one. That guy was like, "Just um, fucking die! What the hell?" So, 
Adar is watching all this happen, and he says, Glug, send him in. Ooh. Glug says, but Adar, they'll kill Ox as well. But Adar says, send him in. Yeah. I assume they're talking about Damrod here. Glug Damn, will remember bro. this. I, for, I couldn't, I couldn't talking remember about his... I couldn't rest send him in. <laughs> send him in Waldrick. <laughs> <laughs> he comes in wearing like the Witch King's outfit. He's like, let's yeah, fucking yeah. go. You bet well, your ass. That's, that's, that's going to be an edit in my video now. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I couldn't remember Damrod's name. I accidentally called him Dank Butt. But... Uh, <laughs> Oh, so, <laughs> Arandir is actually, uh, he's hes on top of the battlements, just standing on top of it, completely not using any cover yep. or anything. And he's just <laughs> shooting arrows at people. He's just shooting arrows, yeah. you know, like he does. Um, and they notice that the orcs are clearing a path for Damrod to come in. And mm -hmm. they see the tree shake a little bit. And, oh my goodness, Damrod's a coming. Holy shit, mm -hmm. this is going to be crazy what happens next. Uh, but we have to, we have a commercial break in the forge up above. <laughs> uh -huh. Remember when we heard Anatar go, oh, I'm mad. I can't find the rings. I'm angry. <laughs> oh, well, you. Anatar is looking for the rings. Brimby says that he won't find them here. Although, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel like he should have lied, but. I figure if you're like, he'll probably figure out that they're not here. But like, you know, just why even why even talk about the rings? You could talk about anything else. Just stall, buy time, mm -hmm. do something. No. And also, um, yeah, all the all the guards are here, which is like, man, like I, I talked about earlier, like guards don't don't even bother. This is Sauron for fuck's sake. Don't yep. even try. Don't even don't bother. even. Y'all, you guys need to stay on the wall and shoot arrows at things. Um, don't even bother coming up here. You're wasting your lives. Um, You're telling me that trying here. to arrest Satan won't work? <laughs> yeah, he, he won't come quietly. Uh, Maybe he will, and he's spooky. It's such a predictable moment, and then it just makes you wonder, like, again, why is everyone so stupid? Why is it? Ugh, sucks. Nothing surprising. They just yeah. auto lose. It's, and you're like, oh, there you go. For me, it was like, oh, he's definitely not going to be captured here, but I didn't expect him to do what he does here. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't know this was in his power set, but apparently yeah. it is. I'm sure uh, it'll disappear whenever surround... it'll be useful to him later. Oh, yeah. oh, oh surely. What? Why would that be? Yeah, no. mm -hmm. The guards surround Anatar to arrest him, and he makes the he like mind controls the soldiers, and they stab each other right through the armor. Uh, that's something Sauron could do. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. Put that on the list of his increasingly powerful power level stuff. This has been the biggest hit to uh, Aregion's defenses all day. Eight soldiers <laughs> being killed. Yeah. <laughs> Rags, it doesn't matter. They weren't doing anything anyway. <laughs> yeah, true. They are just wandering yeah. around. Um, I was also, I, I need to just mention this. I can't take credit for this joke, but someone shared it with me. And it's like, how did Sauron do this? And he just goes, ah, too much mithril in your blood. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> <Blood. laughs> too much myth. And then he's like, "Wait, uh, why is there myth in y'all's blood?" He's looking around, <laughs> around each other. I, I, I don't know how that got there. Do, do I have that? Is that good? Is that bad? Do do you guys go to Casa Doom. <laughs> Did he give it to you? He won't give it to me. There's so much slide of the Valar in your blood. <laughs> he licked every rock in Casa Doom. <laughs> so. We cut back down to the battle below, and Damrod, he goes into the fray, and he's just killing indiscriminately. He's biting off heads. He's stepping on people. He's mm. picking them up and throwing them. He's just having a great time. Uh, he even throws his club at the wall. He, he picks up some orcs to act as, like, a shield for him. <laughs> yes, instead of them. Help. <laughs> uh, I don't know why, like, why Why wouldn't you just be like, hey, can I have a shield? Because they'll shoot arrows yeah. at me. And Adar could be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure. Because remember how the orcs in Lord of the Rings, they were, like, armored, and they had big clubs. Oh, and they were, don't remind you know? me, dude. Mm. I'll be honest with you, man. When when they were, like, make room for him, and it's, it's, it's damn rod, I was like, that's, that's fine. We can take him. Yeah, just shoot yeah. him. Yeah. I was surprised it was only him. I thought he had like a whole tribe of trolls. He's gonna oh, fucking fuck roll him. in there. No, it's like, oh, it's just a tribe of trolls. That's actually, us. we can't that's afford yeah. more than one We're troll. We only have a billion. <laughs> We're that's that's us. That's our job. Oh, okay. But yeah, Damrod should be a magnet for arrows. He should be focus oh, yeah. fired by all of the elves. He's and the only fire. one out there. Fire, fire, fire! Fuck him up. He's um, a he's a being. He's you also have the fucking. Fire. 
Yeah, fire yeah you had the, you had the fiery exploded things you could just throw at him, but nope. No, yeah, out of yeah, his little um, his little shorts on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, burn his loincloth off. Let's see how big that dick is. Wait, no. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Stop, 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 stop. So what? now I'm uh, now I'm still convinced they did blow up the Ravager because there's fire on it now. That's. Oh, well, it was what Random it, said, right? A, yeah, that, that's irrelevant fire metal. That sucks because that's like her payoff is uh, that she actually yeah, did blow it up, yeah. but it didn't do anything. You're cr well, that's so Dam lame. Damrod picks it up in a sec, and then he starts like pile driving it yeah. into the wall to punch yeah. a hole. And yeah. yes, I, I think you're right. Then they just kept their tanks of explosives right next to the Ravager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, yeah, we have the anything. answer. It's that it didn't do the job. It the just did, so my initial mm -hmm. thought was correct. Damn it! Yes. I hate that I was. <laughs> so like the, the Damrod's basic realization is that the machine was backwards, and he just like if you fire it into the wall, <laughs> that might actually work. Yeah. <laughs> you're just using it as like standard battery. Well, then, you, I mean, I know we've said it, but it's just like, well, then what the fuck did they aim all the catapults at the fucking thing? Trebuchet. Yeah. Yeah. Trebuchets <laughs> well, are a kind of catapult. Catapult's accurate. When right, Damrod throws Don't bring out definitions just... like that when it literally exists. Nope. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> this nope. is not a war you could win. Yep. Trebuchets are catapults. No, they're not. No. Yeah, they Trebuchets are. are catapults. Categorically not. But, you know, they are catapults, but they are nope. specifically catapults with a counterweight. They are a form of catapult. Nope. Catapult is yeah. a specific thing. I nope. think you're wrong. You are no. wrong. But we no. have to move on. We don't want to have Gogur wallow in his wrongness. We can't put that kind of attention on him. <laughs> Look, we have, to, we have to talk about Damrod. So, Damrod randomly spots Elrond in this massive fight that's happening. And he really wants to get Elrond. So, okay. Mm -hmm. um, now... Elrond goes to the war machine and he tries to chop the rope that's holding like the tension for the the arms. Like I said, it's like a reverse crossbow sort of. Um, and um, he he's got his elf sword and he's whacking away at this. He's just whacking and whacking and hacking that rope and he just can't get through. He can't. In fact, he it sparks fly off the rope as he hits it with his sword. That's what's in the show. I'm j I just report the news. <laughs> so he just can't cut this rope. He could just fray it a little bit. I was and mostly just, lost at this point. <laughs> like, I didn't even know what he was attacking exactly because yeah. of the explosion. Well, he's, he's, trying to, he's trying to disable the Ravager, which means that what ends up happening when it, it kind of reverse fires and hits Damrod in the gut. That was just completely by accident. That yeah. was just a lucky, happy little accident. But it's the yep. kind of injury that... For a second, there, I was like, "Wait, is he done? <laughs> is that I mean, is that would, the epic hurt, but, yeah. adventure of Damrod? He comes in, throws some orcs, and then gets hit in the belly, and he's like, oh, ow.' Um, I, yeah. Also, I, I don't like. Well, I don't like. It's worth mentioning how the Damrod, the troll who's just been like indiscriminately walking, walking through people and squashing them and throwing them around, he walks up to Elrond and backhands him instead of ripping his head off. Yeah, he just like chucks him a bit, a little, yeah. little to the side, yeah. like something that probably wouldn't even really phase just a normal person. He just like off you go, go over there. Okay, thanks for being so soft on Elrond, Damrod. Yeah. <laughs> but when Damrod goes to whack Elrond away, he steps closer to the war machine, and the frayed rope gets weak <laughs> and it snaps, and then the the arm like flings open and it hits him. And it really hurts Damrod. Dam's like, Damrod's like, oh, God, right in the troll balls. Oh, fuck. Ow, that hurt a lot. <laughs> yeah. But then, did you, what? Uh, did you mention how strong the rope is, by the way? I, like, stepped away for a second. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, like, sparks yeah, came okay. off of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, yeah. actually okay. funny. It was hilarious yep. to see <laughs> the sparks come off the rope. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's mithril-infused rope. Who Ooh. knows? Yes, of course. There is a thought. Um, Damrod pulls the machine. He grabs it. And then he pulls the machine back and he starts like crashing it back and forth like into the it. wall. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it then like a massive crack goes up the entire wall, even though the wall is composed of many smaller blocks of stone. Don't think about it. Um, <laughs> but then Gil Gallad arrives. Remember Gil yeah, Gallad, the king? Of yeah. the He's like, da 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 well, da 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 Fuck, have you been, boy? <laughs> yeah. He's been fighting. He's been fighting elsewhere in this massive nonsense battle, but he it's shows up just in time. 
<laughs> he hooks Damrod's leg with what well, well, with a with a hook. He just has this <laughs> massive hook yeah. for some reason. He just yeah. has one. Um, <laughs> it's his favorite then, weapon. I... Yeah, he 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 hooks this hook on Damrod's leg, and it like trips him. And, <laughs> Which absolutely shouldn't, but fine. <laughs> and then, uh, then uh, Arondir jumps on him. Yeah, and he's then still here. Elrond <laughs> stabs him, and then uh, hold Damrod's on, hold on, dead. hold on. He he we... jumps on him, and yeah, yeah, fucking he, a... he topples he over from, from the, the fucking twinky little elf jumping on a fucking hill troll. Are you kidding me? <laughs> is Arondir a twink? Huh? He's no. not a twink. Well, every, relative, every elf relative is a to twink. the size of no, they're Rose. not. <laughs> yes, they are. No, I, I, Arondir yes. is not a twink. Every elf is a twink. Gilgalad is a twink. <laughs> a troll's twinks? No. No. Yes. They're like the no, opposite. They're, they're, they're twinks. Like... <laughs> um, can we acknowledge before those events the line from Gilgalad? Is like... Yes, I have it. Okay. This is such a good line. I'm so glad you brought it up. I hate it. Because this line made me laugh. Go back so, to your hill and be what? Okay, so that. what Gilgalad says is go back to your hill and be buried. Which is a Man. terrible line because it leads me to believe that Gil Galad <laughs> wants Damrod to survive this battle and then live a long and healthy life where he can die at home surrounded by loved ones and be buried where he lives. Dude, no, they, you, can't, you, they actually can't write dialogue. No, they it's can't. And, uh, it can't it feels it. to me that Gil Galad's like, I'm going to kill you and then I'm going to take you to your hell and bury you myself. <laughs> like, <laughs> but why? It's, Gil actually, it's so crazy like, that this would have. Many people would have seen this, this line written on this piece of paper, and nobody said, how about we actually either cut this completely or rewrite it significantly? I, I think we should just be thankful this is one of the only occasions when he's not expressing himself metaphorically. No. It's not go he's back to your hill and be buried like a, a mole that I really don't like. It's just go back to your hill and be buried. Well, simple. That's true. It yeah. feels I like they were the actors ad lib it. The equivalent is like if you're in a gunfight, it's like be shot and then be bleed. Shot. You're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can work on it. It's it's a it's a start, I guess. Oh. So and his, his answer, because he's asked, like, where war. he's been or why he's here, and his answer is a king goes wherever the need is greatest, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Which, like, does he just teleport around the battle, like, as need he's arises, and that's why he's he not in needed, here? Yeah. <laughs> there are spawn points the, the ring for need. He's like the he's like the player character in, a like, a, an action game where you just go do objectives wherever they need to be done. That's him. I know he's more like an assist trophy that people just activate when they need him, and then he just appears, and then he oh, can never be used and then him. disappear. Yeah, he's a kill streak reward, like an airstrike kind of thing. Here's this, by the way. He's got a horsey, uh, good old Damrod, and he, he throws he... it. But there's like, I think, real people back there, so it can't hit them. So the person who I guess did the CG just has the horse sort of go over them and disappear into the background, like as though it hit nobody. <laughs> It just slips right oh. in. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> nothing happened. Don't worry about it. Oh yeah, it just yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's Damrod. Well, what an epic what character! A damn yep. shame. He's gone. I'm really glad that they set him up to be this game changer. He, I'm really he... glad that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's all right. Moving on. Orc yeah. sound of he, horn. He laughs when he dies because uh, yeah. he does that. I agree with him. Now. I found it remember, funny too. remember when I mentioned the gravy ladle? Mm. We have to talk about what happens next. This is <laughs> okay. very important. So, back of the orc like side of the river of the mud <laughs> mud path, the, the the orcs sound a horn and they all start charging in. Even mm. more of them charge in. Glug kind of remains behind this time because he's upset at Adar for you know sending in the troll and all the other stuff. I guess. And all of these orcs, they're running out of the camp. They're they're grabbing their swords. They're running forward to finish. You know, they're, they're, they're going to the fight. But one of them is like <laughs> sauteing his roast. Yeah. Oh like, shit. This is like what is going on here? I, I don't love this know. Scene. What is this supposed to be? I am like, like seriously. What is this supposed to be? Because <laughs> you, you it's like an it arm it like it's a roast chicken, but it, when you pause on it, it doesn't look like it's roast chicken. But I don't know what it is. He like it's an arm. On. It's an elf arm. <laughs> he's just like he's got this lovely roast here. And he's like, yeah. oh, time to time to go to battle. And he grabs the spear and runs forward. So, dude. I love what this scene happening? so much. <laughs> like, 
when I, when Rex pointed it out, I was thinking like, is that is he putting like oil on like a weapon to ignite it or something? But like, you're, you're not using a ladle for that. It's <laughs> clearly a ladle. You're spilling yeah. a special sauce on the fucking barbecue. <laughs> on the, on the <laughs> it's just so like, weird. Like, like if this was something stocked up on strong gravy, and that's how <laughs> <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's cracked the recipe for strong gravy, and he didn't want to stop. Oh, oh. god. <laughs> I'm really yeah. glad they put time into this and made this a scene. He just like, wants screen. to grill. <laughs> just wants to have his org barbecue. Exactly. He just wants to grill. If this if this was something Love that happened dude. in the background of a shot, it would be like, oh, that's a bit weird. But they actually put in a shot of this happening. And I don't know why. <laughs> it's very it's strange. Um, it is funny. It brought me joy. And yeah. now we, Let have him to, we have to... Yeah. <laughs> Let him cook, indeed. <laughs> Let him cook. <laughs> he just wants to follow his passions. God, that's right. Chad was reminded me. Just like this. Remember, this is the most expensive <laughs> TV show of all time. Yep. This also, is the funniest this episode why. of this series, as we said. This is oh, funny, absolutely. Yes. It's so funny. Um, so, well, the instructions to the yeah. extra, though, if the, the extra <laughs> wants to get some grasp on what their character's all about, and the instructions just ladle. <laughs> ladle. Like, your job is to ladle. Like, why? Your, your motivation what, what? is that you're striving for three oh. Michelin stars. It's your goal. You <laughs> your whole life. You like, now I'm just imagining him in, you know, like in his restaurant, like going around. I'm just thinking, no, that's that's gonna gonna work. Instead of the bear, and he came Oh, into that's this. kind of funny. Yeah, that, yeah, that anybody it's... can cook, even an orc. That's right. <laughs> he wants to rise great above his orc anyway. you know, Now we want to know about the orc who just wants to run a little restaurant. And he that makes really like good wine orc. recommendations Probably for a good the of plays that he makes. This is the whole idea, like the right? Idea. They have their own society. Like, they don't want to bother anybody. But they I really them. enjoy the idea of a bunch <laughs> of orcs, you know, like front of house, like the maitre d' in a nice suit. <laughs> Welcome, to Modo. What can Welcome, I to you, Welcome to Mordor. Welcome to Mordor. Welcome to Waldrix. Would you like to sit wonderful, inside or out on the patio? It's beautiful. It's just wonderful. It's been brewing. Here you go. I don't know anything about wine. I don't know. They don't brew it. I don't. I don't know. Look, he pours some wine. <laughs> Maybe the like, orange right now. Can I offer you some more d'oeuvres? <laughs> now I gotta tell you that uh that filet mignon is just beautiful. It's amazing. A great red wine sauce. Mwah, beautiful. And where will we find this girl gear? Now I want that show. I want the show about the cooks, <laughs> the orc cooks, striving for oh, three we'll Michelin see stars. With them, when the equivalent of Gordon Ramsay says it's raw, it's like that's a good thing for them. It's like yeah. Ooh, yeah. raw. It's cool. <laughs> Like, they, why do they call you a cook again? It's raw. It's raw. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, the God. orcs are all charging, walking, and Adar is among them. He is now officially yeah. joining the fight. Um, yeah. So great. We see a lot of copy uh, props and everything in this shot. If you freeze it, it's blah, the same stuff we've seen before. A lot of the same helmet. That shield that I mentioned before makes an appearance. Um, a lot of you know, but the sun is rising very naturally. Morning, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which I assume means that the orcs cannot fight anymore because the orcs can't be out in the sun because they like they blister and burn, it burns their skin to have the sun touch it. Yeah, that was only season one. Yeah, it's that funny was, you well, say that, that was that was sort of season one sometimes. It wasn't even, <laughs> they weren't yeah. even consistent with it back there. <laughs> they but, tried to be kind of. <laughs> but I guess that's just like not a thing we even need to begin to worry about. Um, no, not but, when like the, the, the way it's phrased, it's like the, the sun is rising, quick look north, like where the sun famously doesn't rise. But that's no, where they seem to think it does. No, that's where the dwarves are supposed to come from. But the sun is clearly rising from where they're looking. Yeah. That's just the yep. perspective of the camera on the. Does sun. the sun rise Disgusting in the east in Middle Earth? What? It's it's a dwarven sun. It's different. Oh, <laughs> true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, all right. We plug that hole. Um, <laughs> El Elrond is like, oh my gosh, look. The dwarves are coming, and they don't. Instead, it's a single horse on the hill, and the and the horse goes all the way down from the hill on the horizon, <laughs> and he makes it all the way down here. And it's Elrond's commander guy with the knives from earlier. And not Knife only man. does he have knives, he has like an arrow or two sticking out of him. Uh, and while this he's is happening, like, there's an army of orcs charging them. Yep. Yeah, yes. they'll get here when they get here. Uh, yeah, it's the Monty <laughs> Python scape of orcs. 
Yeah. A little bit. The commander said, oh, uh, oh, 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 ah, Durin, re oh, Durin recalled the army, oh, and the Casa Doom gates are shut. Wait, isn't this guy also fine later sometime? He's oh, fine yeah. in episode eight, but he's not, he's nope. not critically wounded here. He's been shot by one arrow, which, I mean. Oh, that doesn't count, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's two playing arrows. it up right now. He's like, ooh. One or two, you know. Yeah. Still a low amount of arrows. <laughs> sure. <laughs> He's not okay five minutes later, if that's what you're getting at. It's a little bit of yeah. time later. Gil yeah. Galad tells the elves to form ranks because the orcs are coming. This shot is using all of these ladders <laughs> to climb up and get on the walls. Nah, fuck that. Yeah. Also, what a weird sword that's to the right of um, Elrond here at the, Ooh, like, the beginning Galad's of the scene. Thing. Yeah, that's Gil Galad's spear, isn't it? That's a spear. No, so, I mean, it's a glaive kind of thing. Yeah, it's like a weird. I, it has a specific kind. name. I don't know what it is. Uh, Sam. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I was referring to. <laughs> All right, that's a Lord of the Rings reference if for the eagle-eyed viewers. Uh, so uh, Gilgalad's an idiot. They should be climbing up these ladders to get onto the walls because they're more defensive, or they need to be forming a choke point in the at the at the at the wall, uh, something. You know? Just climb those fucking ladders. Get back behind the walls, boys. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah do it. Not that so, really smart. Adar tells the orcs to kill all the elves. The elves form ranks, but then they all charge in. And There's how many like, of them are there? It's like 20. I counted. So I think the uh, entire set of extras they have. For... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that must in be like at least a dozen. So including Gilgalad, Elrond, and Arendir, there are 31 elves. Oh, that's 10 more than I thought. Wow. That's 11 yeah, even. That's a big army. And are in, they in still this up next... on the walls at this point? Because like, you would think, no, just shout no. up to the wall and say, hey, that obviously no, no, it, awesome it's great guy, because shoot him. If you look at this shot, like every, all the fighting has stopped everywhere except those oh, guys. Yeah. There's the no one that the disappear. No one's the walls and the ones on the wall are dead. Only corpses, no one's shooting from the walls. It's uh, yeah. all the orcs it's, that made it up there died, and all the elves that were up there died. It's, yeah, they had to yeah, draw yeah. all of them. <laughs> and uh, during this little, I'm not going to call it battle, skirmish, um, I counted 19 elves that die, uh, which means at the end of the episode, you're dealing with maybe 10 left at most. Interesting. But yeah, out it, of the army from Linden. It's just, just funny because I think, I'm pretty sure if, if we look later. When you when I start fighting again, I think there's way more elves and orcs around again. Like they're all all over the place. Now there might be. Yeah. I think uh, we need to double check. But and you you might think it's bad that there's only thirty one elves, but it's actually worse because as you can't really see it super clearly, but when they show the elves charging forward, there is like at least three or so of them that just don't have weapons. <laughs> they're just running forwards they don't have a sword or bow or anything Damn. they're just running forwards and but again it might be hard to see on stream but they're like I'm, convenient I'm, I'm fucking, fucking ladders man that just take you back into your stronghold they're right there Dan. there's no time Re I, okay no time for what? <laughs> there, there's no time <laughs> there's no time <laughs> no time <laughs> you know what I think there's some time just a little bit <laughs> it's no use of time. It's no use. Take this. <laughs> no, it's no use. <laughs> this will end it. By the way, can I point out as well? There's this one singular horse still there from the hiking that's just chilling there. It's like, yeah. hey, he doesn't know what's going on. What's going on? <laughs> he doesn't yeah. like. I want to go home. I don't like, by the way, that uh, Elrond isn't charging with them. I think that's bullshit. Oh, Elrond is just oh, yeah. being oh, a yeah. wimpy yeah. little He's just bitch trying to fix in that the room will come. I, I, like, I, I, I just like don't believe that's what his like, character yeah, would do. Not, he would fight. That's why I'm not he's very focused. Because Durin will come. He will come. So you don't need me. Yeah, don't, he's, don't he's, need he's very focused on Durin's coming. I don't. I want to defend that. Like, I think it's been set up like piss, but I feel like what they're clearly trying to do is. Um, no. Nope. He's, he's completely overwhelmed nope. with. Having been betrayed by nope. his friend, nope. and he thinks that his friend has abandoned him to die. Nope. He would assume the best, which is, uh, I gotta fight with my, my fellas, whether or not Durin's yeah. coming. Whether or not he's late, whether or not he's here right now and I don't see him, whether or not he's not coming at all, I gotta get in there. If Durin yeah. is coming, Durin is coming regardless of what you do, so you would still exactly. go and fight. Mm -hmm. Well, Maybe I don't... he's running away. I, I don't no. think that Elrond thinks that Durin is coming. I think that he's he's telling himself that, but he knows he's that it's not true. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. 
<laughs> but he can do that <laughs> while fighting. He, he, well, he <laughs> believes that fighting, he believes yeah. that they're all going to die because Durin has has not come, basically. But and yeah, he but would I mean, fight. Yeah, rather than being a little bitch. Yeah. Little yes. <laughs> Have a little pouty poo because my friend Durin didn't come through for me again or whatever. I don't oh, know. I, I mean, I'm sure there was a really good reason, but probably. If there was how you got on screen, the most confusing thing that happened in the episode. With, well, we're, we're, uh, we're on there. I assume we'll be on there in a second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if there was I don't more be going around there, healing yeah. people with the ring. If, uh, sorry, I, I was going to say that I think part of the reason why I'm having this interpretation is because I'm assuming that there's more than 31 elves, because that's retarded. In the lore. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> so, if you think about this, like you up it to like Lord of the Rings scale, and you've got like the, la the last stand of like the 1,000 elves against like 5,000 orcs or something, Elrond sitting back and, you know, for like a few minutes and be like, fuck, is my friend left me to die? That would be far more excusable. But here, he's, like you say, he's literally just sitting down like, uh, okay, we're, they're going to die and I'm not going to help. Yeah, percentage wise, he's a big chunk of the Elven army, so yeah. he needs to like help. It, yeah, it looks a, a lot worse, and it's more impactful because there is only thirty one of them. Being a, mo a mopey Molly right now, and that's not mopey Molly. not cool, mm. Elrond. Yeah, 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 yeah. And back. like we said, just get inside of your fortified position, and oh, then yeah. you solve oh, yes. the problem. Right Elrond can They're mope right inside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they need to defend the horse. <laughs> yes, well, that's true. Do. You they can't get the horse inside. Need to the horse, to run. The horse like climbs horse. up the ladder. <laughs> I'm out of here, boy. Yeah, <laughs> him pushing the horse in front of them up the ladder. That would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, just anyway, he's, he's, who knew Elrond's horses would be so heavy? Elrond's moping, and he's like, "Ah, oh, Durin will come. Durin will come." Uh, so um, they all fight. Um, it's just fighting stuff happens. They swing swords and stuff. Yeah. And in a weird way, it the the fight got smaller and bigger at the same time because it looks like there's more elves, but way less orcs now. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it's because we're into real actors instead of CG. But yeah, it's just very um, obvious. In the fight, a Rondir encounters Adar, who Ooh. stabs him. Yep. Adar stabs a Rondir. And Arondir's on the ground, and he's like, oh, fuck, ow, I've been stabbed. And he seems to be quite, quite yeah. wounded. It's not like a little piddly stab. It's like he gets run through with Adar's well, big fuck-off sword. I, th I think the mm -hmm. relevant yes. part is, is not only what the actual injury was, but the way that it was played. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's played <laughs> very dramatically. It's played in a way where you're like, oh, shit, is this the end of Arondir? Which, when you, you think that, you're like, yeah, I mean, that's kind of funny that because Bronwyn <laughs> aren't in the story yeah. anymore. Like they actually didn't know what to do with him anymore because they probably had a big plan for those characters that you know, you know we saw they had to have a course correction for. But like, like the way that it's played, I, it's like, oh shit, he's dead. Like, yeah, I, I, I was, I was to include other than that. Of course, well, yeah. It was. I feel like I don't know if you were gonna say this metal, but like he, mm -hmm. we don't actually see him die like he's still moving around on the ground yeah. and that doesn't oh, him off. Okay. oh and the fact i was like, i was on two minds yeah i was like I'm, on one oh, way i was like oh i'm kind of convinced he's dead but the way you play it. but oh, then we... also they didn't show him like die well, he doesn't die. get yeah he doesn't get finished off and we know that there is a <laughs> ring nearby that can heal people so i was fully expecting in episode eight they're going to heal him with the ring and that'll be one of the yeah, narrative that... beats that they hit that would um, be my amendment. It would it would be either that he's dead or that his significant injury will <clears> be like a, a relevant plot point in episode eight. Yeah. Wrong. Um, one or the other. Uh, yeah, both of which end up being totally wrong. So yeah. wrong that I genuinely do not understand what happened during like yeah. editing or filming. They I don't changed know their happened. mind. Uh, I, I, it could, be, could be a deleted scene. Yeah, or edited out the, the things, yeah. yeah. Also, Rundia dodged a point blank arrow, doesn't he? Um, what do you mean? He... I don't that think he point blank. Doesn't he? No, I think Aaron gets also shot by an, by an orc, right? Aaron, no, Aaron Deer dodges an arrow from an orc and then... Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know if that's point blank. I think it's slightly before this. When yeah, the orc there just shoves him for some reason. Like, he pushes his arms away. He doesn't stab him. It really is bizarre. It, it, it really is, like, played so weirdly. It mm -hmm. has to be a deleted scene then, right? Mm -hmm. Of, like, him it's... getting healed. Well, do, do we want to say so. what happens to Aaron Deer in the next he is, episode? He's fine. No. He's totally fine. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm sorry, Rags. You tried. I mean, sorry. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, the, he's I mean, he's absolutely sure fine. It's not mentioned. He doesn't is ruined. He doesn't have a hole in him. He's totally. It's as if this yeah, scene didn't he's happen. Not him. It's it's not like he was injured. That's yeah. The important mm -hmm. part. It's yeah, not this, as like he got stabbed in the chest by Ada. Well, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist here, but I'm gonna because it's a little cheeky. But listen, big whatever wants me to believe that Iron Deer was stabbed with this massive sword, but how come there's no blood on the sword? <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm just saying it doesn't add it, things don't add up. Unless Iron Deer bleeds Mithril, and that is on the sword right now. Yeah, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, very. His blood just happens to be the exact same color of the. What sword. a travesty of a shitty detail that you fucked up. That he just no. stabbed him, and you don't. There's not even blood on the sword. Oh, do you think maybe they didn't add blood to the sword in post because they realized that if they added blood, it would look like the injury was worse, and it would. But it is. But we... no, I, I know, I know. I'm trying <laughs> to jump run through the through with right the well, with First the off, the fact sword, that yeah. you, the fact that you had to say add blood in post instead of just drizzling <laughs> some blood stuff on the sword, <laughs> like in the good old days where you just would do that, yeah. and that would it's mm -hmm. done and it's finished. You have uh, like so much of. Which I notice a whole bunch of these days is thing like blood is added in special effects mm -hmm. on actors' faces and things, yeah, or on and wounds on the body way. instead of just we're gonna make the the outfit a little more ratty and we're gonna sprinkle some red stuff uh, on it and in, boom, that's uh, a wound. In fight it's, scenes it's and really battle scenes, fun. I can I can understand it, especially in something that is as large scale as this, um, because the logistics up. of stopping, uh, yeah, cleaning cleaning it up if you don't get the take. You've obviously got to like the example that I that I go to would be the final fight in the second raid movie. Um, if they if they cock something up there and they're using real blood, <laughs> then you have up there. <laughs> then you have to then you have to clean basically the entire set because you've got blood all over it. Uh, whereas if you do it in CG, then you can you can actually you know, film you about a man named Stanley Kubrick in a film called The Shining. <laughs> 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 there was a little blood on the floor. I, uh, I, Guys, I, the camera I, was in I, I focus. Am, Clean it up. I really am do it missing. Again. I do <laughs> miss like squabs. That's what they are, right? Squibs. Squibs. Yeah, squibs. Oh wait, oh. no, this happened last time because squab is a is a bird. It's they might be. Wait, they might use squabs. They might be in there. No squibs. Yeah, and then yeah. they explode. Oh damn it! This happened last time. Yeah, a squab, yeah. <laughs> a squab is a type of pigeon, apparently. Yeah, a squab. That's right. A squab. Uh, 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 squibs. Um, if a where, squab gets you know, shot, I mean, they'll use a squib on the squab. Oh god, uh, no. Quentin of course, Quentin Tarantino is like one of the... He's still using them. And oh, it's yeah. great. I, lo I, love, I love seeing them. They're like... They're, they're, they're so cool. Like, they have so much impact. And I'm I'm getting a little bit tired because, like, there are so many times when there's CG blood and it's like, yeah, but, like, it's so obviously not real because it's not, like, moving. It's hard to recreate um, it's, it's like, the power of physical yeah. blood. Exactly. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's missing. You used to have no choice. I think that's, I don't know. It feels mm -hmm. like in a sense, the, the, uh, the choices have made it to where a lot of the time, the easier choice will be selected most of the time. Yeah. Really we'll, easy. we'll fix it later. So I don't have to deal with this kind of the mindset. Exactly. I think. Some, some guy in a dungeon yeah. will have to sort that yeah. out for yeah. us. <laughs> you end up relying on the technology. I want I want to have my lunch on time, goddammit. I'm not going to sit there for six hours. <laughs> what do you mean? I thought you meant about what? us right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, it's not lunch time now. Six <laughs> hours would be fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. So, I don't um, lunch. orcs, they, may, they grab the chains on the spikes that are still stuck in the wall from the war machine, and then they just pull the wall down. Mm hmm. Sure. Yeah. Damn Rob they, did they work. They Very, uh, Don't you think before, this yeah. shot was uh, ill ill advised on their part? The whole it's the thinnest part of the wall. It's like, well, it looks yeah. kind of it's normal. The it's the same. Yeah, it looks the more. exact same width. As the I don't think it's the thinnest part of the wall at all, actually. <laughs> it looks regular oh. sized, but all right. Mm -hmm. Unless he means the whole set, like that whole stretch of wall is really <laughs> the entire <laughs> wall is the thinnest part of the wall. <laughs> this is the I thinnest mean, part of the wall. <laughs> I guess if it's very evenly made, that's yeah. It could um, be yeah by like millimeters or technicality. Yeah, too retarded, but... yeah, that's um, the fucking lady is like that's not the thinnest part. It's all like that. He's like yeah, the thinnest part. Yeah, exactly. It's the thinnest <laughs> part. <laughs> so why don't you fucking go back to the forge, Mrs. Whoever you Ms. are, and little leave, corrects people for no reason. 
Why don't you go? Why don't you go frantically panic in the town square with everyone else for a few mm. days? I think, that, I think they all have a collective responsibility to do that. Like they're all on schedule to do that at certain hours. You got to do your time as an elf <laughs> running around. Going, oh, <laughs> this, this is the worst thing ever. <laughs> Listen, they have a panic-based economy. Someone's got to keep the wheels of industry running. Is it like Monsters Inc? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, orcs. Well, they pull down the wall with orc power. I guess they yank it down. Sure. Um, and Adar, uh, as the orcs pour into the city, Adar shows up to Elrond as he's moping. And they have, like, a little mini fight, but not really. Um, and Rumil, uh, Rumil is mentioned here. Um, we have, uh, Adar grabs Elrond, and he says, Have you forgotten your Rumil? Which, I couldn't remember that name. The uh, what? <laughs> or where it was mentioned, but it actually has been mentioned before. Yeah, Rumil was the guy that Kyrdan mentioned in episode two, and he said, would you throw out the verses of Rumil because the poet was a drunk? Kyrdan um, who? What? Oh, yeah, him. Yeah, he's, sorry. He's, he, <laughs> he hasn't been seen for about, like, the last six hours, but, you know, he's he, he's old and wise. Um, oh. Yeah. Beard man. I don't, I don't know if that has any bearing in the law like if uh, i i can't remember if we discussed if we discussed it before but like who was rumil in the in the books i have no idea mm -hmm. um while that is happening what the fuck is going on with this shot of adar uh yeah oh i noticed this too it looks uh, super uh, CG. Uh, uh, yeah. it's really weird mm. <laughs> they fucked what up the effects i think it's Why the do they lighting need an effect I don't, I don't know i don't know if it's that his face is cg it just looks like the lighting has been adjusted to hell and back yeah, they, they fucked up the effect on his face. That's yeah, they like they Ooh, didn't the finish it. This is what it looks but it like. almost it almost looks like a deep fake though. But I think it's the lighting. Yeah, because yeah. surely the effect on his face is not CG. Like that's just prosthetics, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. Everything. So like, but that does look I CG. Mean, they do have it fade into him later. But like, I can't see mm. any reason why it would be here. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Unless well, you think this is a dialogue... shot they didn't have, and then they needed to get it, and he it was like, it can't be in makeup, and they were like, all right, we'll have to CG it. <laughs> Possibly. Well, what does he actually say here? Because it could be that they CG I, his face I to think... make him say something important. Don't he make more in anger or some bullshit. In anger. The, I, I mean, the exact words on this exact shot. Like, because I, I, what I'm trying to say is, like, maybe they filmed him standing there not moving his mouth, and they had to CG his face. <laughs> if it was a really important line that they added. Yeah, there I, we I, go. No I, lines in this show are very important. No. I just know he doesn't kill Elrond for some reason. Uh, <laughs> well, no, it's he got what he wanted, because Elrond is an idiot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. um, also watches yeah, even more people been... dying and reaching out for him too, which annoys me even more, but whatever. Hmm. Like, please uh, help me, yeah, as... Elrond, and he's like, nah, I'm sad. <laughs> as was mentioned before, Elrond does actually have the Ring of Power with him. Adar takes it. Yeah, that's right. He is an actual idiot. Adar takes the ring from standard. him. Adar now has a ring of power. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> the episode ends. So, yeah. and you have to. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, I was going to say what you do with this ring if you're Elrond is you give it to someone else in Linden and then you go to war. Obviously. Um, because mm, there's, yeah. there's a whole bunch of reasons why you might potentially bring the ring with you, but none of them apply to Elrond, because he's not wearing the mm -hmm. ring, he's, he has it yeah. around his neck. Uh, he which would means... not bring it. Like, as a he, character, oh, he would not bring it. Well, the only reason why he might bring it is if he wants to return it to Galadriel, but that doesn't work because he thinks that Galadriel is dead. He, um, he wouldn't want to do that either. Yeah, I mean, he... his whole shtick up until the, the point at which they yeah. part, he, like, he sees the ring healing someone, but up until that point, his entire shtick has been the rings are corrupted and evil and you shouldn't yep. be using them. So like, yep. even if he doesn't think Galadriel's dead, his motive can't be he wants to give it back to her because he doesn't think she should have it to begin with. That is true. If he was, I mean, if he was wearing it, then it could be like, is, he, is it powering him up for the battle or something? But it, it doesn't do that. It's not like no. he's, it's giving him uh, visions of the future so that he can strategize because he's, again, not wearing it. So he doesn't I, want it to do that either, you know. No, he's against. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't had his arc yet. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So, like, why it, it's he's wearing it so that Adar can get it. There's, yes. there's no other. Pretty that much. is the reason. Kind of, yeah, but I, I suspect that the thought process is they had the scene in mind where spoilers Galadriel gets healed by the ring. Oh, 
they had that in mind and so they had to have an excuse for him to have it but they also knew that he wouldn't wear it so they had to have an excuse for him to have it but not be wearing it so he's wearing it like this on the necklace instead i suspect that's the thought process like this happens in order that the later scene can happen you yeah probably yeah because they do they've done that a whole bunch where they've just come up with a payoff and work backwards without explaining anything so that wouldn't <laughs> yep. surprise me usually out of their things yeah it's like they're not really good at writing. What? We have to talk about the end credit music. <laughs> oh god! Oh, the second time they've got like a really fucking weird song in yeah, the end credits. Yep. It's a banger. It's just hilariously out of place. Because <laughs> like that ending right there is meant to be re- like, oh no, like uh, fucking Ada has just won and he's got the ring. Like uh, that is a that is a catastrophic defeat for the elves, and we go into what is basically a heavy metal orchestral song. Yeah. Dude, what which... happened to like these franchises having music that is like actually unacceptable? <laughs> <laughs> like with the acolyte having those pop songs oh. instead of Star Wars music, yeah. and then oh yeah, we got some like, orc metal, baby. Hell orc yeah. Metal. Yeah, I mean, glug, glug, glug. Now, now that Damron is dead, glug, we can glug, play some, some troll, <laughs> some troll <laughs> core. You know, the association <laughs> of like heavy metal and fantasy, sure. But like actually playing like orc heavy metal in the credits yeah. of the show, yeah. Like, cause what are you the, doing? <laughs> it's the song that they wrote for um for Damrod. It's Damrod's theme, which appears earlier in the episode. And when they use it there, it's like okay, it, it works because it works as as like battle music. But then when you hear it on its own after <laughs> that ending, it's like what are, what are we doing? You may as well. well they, they've made a, I think they made a huge total what mistake as well. If we were to accept even the genre, um, I would say like. The audience is not feeling like, whoa, 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 what a move, like, what a crazy yeah. thing. You're yeah. instead sp- supposed to be, from what I gathered, being like, oh no, a Rondi, and then, oh no, Elva, yeah, exactly. oh no, oh no. <laughs> yeah, this really, is really, really weird. <laughs> the episode has just ended essentially halfway through a battle at the lowest point. That is basically what's just happened. Yeah, so why would you be playing orc heavy metal at that it point? Was, exactly. exactly, yeah. That's just you silly. Need, you need that music to pump you up so that you can like get back you on your feet, to be man. Up, though. You meant to be this is second half low point. No, you got to be pumped up to get out of the second half low point. No, we're not there yet. Do you think Ben McCurry's thought process was something like, "Well, fuck it, no one's going to still be watching at this I point. Don't, I can do anything." I don't even know that he chose to put this here. Who the fuck he, knows? I think he did because they, they, there was a someone from I think it was Kotaku on Twitter said. I can't stop thinking the usual thing. I can't stop thinking about the heavy metal song. And yep. he replied saying thanks or something like that. So I, I think it nah. might have been his choice. Maybe. Because I can, he Did obviously it composed new... it with the other artists, but like the idea that it was placed in the credits it still might not have been him. Mm. Oh, I yeah. yeah bad that, for him. That might not have been him, yeah. But <laughs> he didn't know the, the people who did the song, right? Which is... This is a fucking bizarre choice. It's just not at all in line with mm-hmm. what they clearly wanted me to feel. So when I heard this, I thought yeah. it was really funny. I still yeah. think it fits better than the fucking bomb little song though at the end of episode four or whatever it was. Neither is it as good as the pop song. Oh, or like yeah. 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 Like, actually, it's horrendous. That is painful. That's rancid yeah. to hear at the end of Star Wars. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's I never really, really, experienced really the, this pop song at the end of Acolyte. What was what Someone was send the it to him. Send it, it to him. Do it. Oh, it's got to be on YouTube. Can you imagine? Oh, oh God! And was this after? Like, wh- at what point in the acolyte is this? Is it meant to be really dramatic or what? One, this one was in episode seven because they had they had like um they they had two different pop songs I think that they played, um but uh, the one in particular I think was like episode seven. It's called the power of two, isn't it? The song. Oh yeah, that's, that's <laughs> oh it's an original. Like I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's original. Oh, they wrote okay. it for the show. Yep. Oh my god, that's even more cringe. For- <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> and episode seven of the acolyte is the one where it's the flashback and it shows what happened. It's just the, the one where the Jedi do absolutely nothing wrong. Okay. Yeah, well, where, yeah, where you learn that uh, what actually happened and it exonerated them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a very amusing oh meme of... Um... I'm 10 seconds into this and I want to kill myself. Yeah, that's the correct <laughs> feeling. Uh, it's season one, I don't know if you remember. I think it's in season two as well. Maybe not, but when um, the... the uh, She's called Poppy, right? The character who is one of yeah. the, the Harfords, yes. Poppy she sings Proud the fellow. walk-in song. And uh, there's, there's an edit that should be made where it's like... <laughs> Uh, sing the walking song. Go on, give us a warble. Oh. And then she like starts it up, and then just the orc metal song comes out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Poppy, just go for it. <laughs> but, uh, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the comments are episode... off. What? Yeah, that's great. Oh, oh, what? The power of none. <clears throat> that's funny. The power that's of none. Yeah. And this is episode seven. This is the worst episode of Rings of Power. I think. Yes. Oh, I absolutely. Think fucking so. horrible. I'm wondering about episode eight and the nature of what it does wrong, but I think that this episode has the most things wrong with it. I yes. think that this has this is like more concentrated wrong, but episode eight yeah. is so incredibly liberal with how wrong it is in every other conceivable <laughs> respect. It's, it's quite impressive. I almost find episode eight worse just because they are trying to cover so many different bases with no time in which to do it. And every scene there is is just fucked. So yeah. like I don't know, I, I I would almost say eight is worse in a way than seven. I think eight is worse because it's far more consequential. Like seven is terrible. Seven is possibly the worst episode we've had until this point, but it is a battle done unbelievably poorly. Whereas like episode eight is, it's the conclusion of of various stories. Yeah. that Essentially have a massive impact on the entire story of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It's the same as comparing like episode six of season one with the volcano to episode eight of season one. Like one of them is a shitty battle. Uh, and mm-hmm. a volcano, whereas the other one is like a shitty ending to the entire story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say In seven is very- seven is funny and eight is fucking cringe. Yeah, yeah like episode eight definitely makes me more angry. Um, some of the member yeah. berries are like particularly <laughs> egregious. Uh, there's two of them drive me mad. Well, well, before we begin, I'd like to make yes. sure everybody is aware. Ooh. That we currently have a new line of plushies available. Oh, oh my! Oh my. Let's go. As Look well as a hoodie. Look at him go! Ooh, wow! Boy. Boy. What a handsome lad that hoodie is. <laughs> Just in case, because I assume you guys have been watching the Elm Streets or whatever uh, thing you may have spotted this on. By the way, there are two Elm Street EFAP movies out with a third one yeah. happily Those on the way. Those have been a joy to watch. They were yeah. really and, good. Uh, Alien Romulus <laughs> video that came out well, a couple of days ago. So. I've, I've been enjoying the fact that people are already speculating. It's like, I think they'll like the third Elm Street. It's like, hmm, maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> maybe we'll I, shock I, I, you with I, hating I, I it. I can't fucking remember myself. <laughs> I have to see uh, it again. Well, number three was the one that I believe it was either he had a story credit or a writing credit, but Frank Darabon, the director of uh, Shawshank Redemption. Had uh, involvement. So, That's true. Yes. But right. uh, it'll be fun for you guys to see what uh, <laughs> what we end up thinking and feeling about all of them. But you have to bear in mind they were done a year ago, so right. it was uh, for us. It's like oh so yes. Like, we are to explain our thoughts on the films now. It's kind of pointless. <laughs> like, we, we do our best to explain bit. on each one. Yeah, right, that's how yeah. it goes. But yes, uh, as Freaky mentioned, if anyone doesn't know as well, there is an Alien Romulus Unbridled video out. On me channel, oh, where I talk about mm-hmm. how the Alien movie that's new is actually not that great. We did it on EFAP as well. Just not fond of it, you know? Wombo news, well. news and Mason McSilly Willie. That was really funny. I, I liked Wombo yeah. News. That was great. <laughs> I quite like Mason <laughs> McSilly Willie doing the sports. I'll have to do that section yeah. someday. <laughs> Going over all the sport news. Really important. But uh... You also have Jimmy Carter as a reporter. That was quite funny. <laughs> he was, oh, he was Carter, quoted uh, from BigGamerCon.com. Big Game well, that was it, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> He's a very important guy, Jimmy Carter. Yes. Um, He's done 100 recently, didn't he? Yes. Oh, something like that, yeah. He's 100 old. years. Yes, he did. That is, that's an accomplishment right there. 100 years of being alive. This is why he was so passionate. He was, he was very into Alien, you know? He's seen them all. He was there for all of them in the cinema. Not that you need to be a hundred years old to do that, but still. <laughs> well, he would have been. Uh, he would. He would have been president actually when Alien came out because uh, he was seventy-seven. He took time so out of his uh, day. To... Yes, he did. Oh yeah. Mm, I um, wonder. But yes. anyway, yeah. Look at the look at the C-Fab Halloween set. They're great. It you looks them really today, good. Yeah. These are be, very yeah. impressive. You guys should. So check if you want to get multiple of them, bear that in mind. There is a discount for getting the whole set together. Well, yeah, goes... you, the more you get, the more your discount right is. Discount. That's right. 5, 10, 15, and then it jumps to, and 25. Then to 25. Woo! Yeah. And finally, we have a way to keep you warm and cozy whenever we're not around. That's right. That's right. But yeah, link in the description. Check it out. And uh, I suppose... Hoodie's good. 
that's our break over. <laughs> that's what yeah, that was. Now, that was our break. Right. <laughs> no more break. More that's right. break. That break for <laughs> us. Our I'm break. More. I'm breaking. To shill our incredible plushies. They are legit really good. Because the um, Rings of Power just doesn't stop. It keeps going. You're right. It doesn't stop. But it will, actually. But it will. One day <laughs> when we get... Yeah. Because this is episode eight of season two, the finale, Whoa. Shadow and Flame. Oh, I wonder what that could be referring to. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I guess let's find out together. Yeah. Mm. Our episode begins in Casa Doom. Durin and Narvi, they're gonna go. Uh, they're gonna go check out where the king attacked those dwarves. Remember that happened? I he remember. murdered all those dwarf soldiers. Yeah, yeah it was pretty apparently, crazy. Yeah. Now Deez is there and she's tending to one of the wounded soldier guys. And Durin tells Deez, do not come after me. Do not come after me. Why I'm didn't sure you stop the king, Deez? Uh, to that. Hmm? Huh? Well, that she's going to listen and not come after him or, or ultimately hmm. arrive at the most opportune moment to save him. There's also, it just. I'm tired of them relying on us to fill in all the blanks. Like, what happened? What did you do mm -hmm. about all of this? Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you stop him? Because you can never stop him with your fucking singing unscathed? powers. Yeah, you're unharmed, but <laughs> you everyone else evil? got fucking killed or injured. <laughs> Are you Sauron? No, How about you so collapse the fucking possibly, line on top of him? I can't possibly take the king on alone. I have to go and find my bats, but they've all gone away. And no, he kills them she's all. Gone, look, the ground is kill littered all of the with bats. killed bats. The, the floor, <laughs> you, you can't take just, a step without crunching on a dead bat. She could just collapse the mine. No. Uh, there that's are a actually, thousand bats. So well, there's no, two thousand half bats lying around. If she collapses the mine, uh, we know that they think that the king is just going to dig directly down Minecraft style into the Balrog. Just collapse the mine on top of him. No, just to be clear, you you don't you never dig down Minecraft style. That's a, a only a it's fool a bad digs idea. straight down. That's bad. No, no, dig up, stupid. <laughs> any any Minecraft, not even a, any any Minecraft novice can tell you. You only make that mistake once. Uh, mm. Yeah, I haven't played Minecraft enough to know. But wow. yes, I've outed myself wow. as a Minecraft noob. Oh, and then you do it man. again when you're feeling Oof. wild and die. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm a Minecraft lover. I'm a big Minecraft enjoyer. One of these days we'll play Minecraft together and we'll recreate a region and a one to one <laughs> scale in Minecraft. Oh no. <laughs> Fuck yeah. that. And oh then we'll God. relive then we'll then we'll get Which our, our elf one skins one on. Two? And then we'll recreate our favorite moments from the Siege of Eregion battle in season two of Rings of Power. It'll be really cool. And we'll get someone to play Damrod, and he'll be just really fucking big. And then he'll die unceremoniously after Gilgalad hooks his leg. I meant to say about that, um, you know what I said when, when he arrived that I was like, oh, this should be too hard. And when he died, I was like, oh, yeah. You know, that like surprised it, it felt... even me, and I was expecting it. Yeah, you know? it's, it's such a weird feeling of like, that was... Silly. <laughs> All right, then, moving on. They gave interviews about him. Why would you do that? Why would you go out to the press and say, "Yeah, we've got a, we have a cave troll, funnily enough, or a hill troll," and then big him up and say, oh, "He's definitely based on Mike Ehrman Trout, guys." Uh, you will see that when the characters on the sure. screen. And then in the event, fuck it. No, he has a line, and then he dies. Well, and they You'll also. Like Roadrunner Records put out the uh, single, the the song that Bear McCreary wrote for it prior to season one coming out, so they were very clearly hyping this up as a as something big to look forward to. Um, and they had obviously the setup with it in episode three, so it wasn't even just like a little play that comes out during the battle. It was something that the you know the fans should have been waiting for, and it's done in like two minutes, and he goes out honestly like a bitch. <laughs> yep. Like, compare that to the, again, referencing The Hobbit, you've got the, the gigantic war troll with the scythes on its arms. That thing is so much cooler than Damrod. I mean, it's, in, it's insane, but I prefer it to Damrod. <laughs> yeah. Damrod! Is that the same one who has its fucking feet cut off for whatever reason? No, there's, there's two different ones. I'll go oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well. All right. Uh... Oh, right. Rings of Power. King Durin is, he's got this little bitty battering ram and he's hitting that's it against the wall. The first time I've ever seen that. <laughs> it's mining a mining that's not device. Mine. Yeah. Mining, mining ram. ram. It's mining ram. It's a small ravager. 
If it was bigger <laughs> and it had like a, a sharp like metal point and they'd use gravity to help mine, like sure, I could buy that, but Dude, this he's... is just like a little ram and I'm like, Calls it baby stupid. grod. Baby <laughs> grod. <laughs> Gonna grow up someday. Durin, Durin shows up. And um but 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 the thumping of the of this little battering ram on, on the wall, it it wakes up the Balrog. The Balrog has been perturbed by this. We see deep in some cave, like some light. Like he's getting closer. Durin says to to the king, "Take off that ring, or I'll take it off your hand." Um, but you know he won't, though, because he's he just he actually has no spine. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and during the the third, I'll just be like, "I'll zap you with my powers again." Exactly. <laughs> I'll, go, yeah. I'll blast you off the fucking room. <laughs> Um, to be Durin... clear, th th this doesn't wake the Balrog up. The Balrog has been awake since season one, episode. Well, it it. Which one is it? Well, seven. To be seven. fair, one Platoon, seven. Then the Balrog is like us. He's watching this family drama unfold. He's like, Ooh. <laughs> he's got a little. He's got a he's got Ooh, yeah. ear pressed <laughs> to the wonder ceiling. What'll, just listening. Wonder what'll to happen. Will Durin have the balls to do anything this episode? Let's wait and find out. <laughs> but I bring it up because it does mean that the, yeah, the Balrog has been sitting down there awake, but doing fuck all since season one, episode seven. And that is going to sort of recur again, because you would think if anybody survives this encounter, this is going to be incredibly shocking and devastating news, and they're all going to have to move out because it's a massive problem having a Balrog in your basement. What you wouldn't expect them to do is to say, yeah, we've got loads of problems, and never mention it, and just completely forget about it, which is kind of where we're going with this. But um, I guess we'll wait for the final scene to get to there. It could be writing poetry yeah. and stuff. There's stuff to do. Just Balrog poetry. Not many things to do. That's all. <laughs> you're, you're seeding about the leaves in this poetry. Through the fire and flames. He's trying to get his Wi Fi working down there. I want to listen to Spotify. <laughs> He's holding up his phone to the top of the cave. I just love the idea of a dwarven oh, contractor who's like, I just don't, I don't, I don't think you can get signal here. And he's just like, well, I don't see why I can't get. Everyone else can get signal. Why? So what am I too deep? It's like, well, well we got cables. Know. We 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 got cables. We don't we don't have Wi-Fi here. It's all it's all Ethernet. Just you know. And the Balrog's like, we are Ether, Ethernet, like internet. Fiber. Is that because he just doesn't understand it? He just wants it to work. So it's like the cable part. It's not all wireless. It's it's a thing. It, it's fine. We'll we'll set you up. Like, we'll but the we'll wireless run comes we'll from run cables, a line. doesn't it? I don't know. Stand. There's we'll cables run a line in my phone, here. isn't there? Small cables. Why don't you get me some small uh, cables? Kind of. Tell you what. Well, you just let us do our thing. We'll get a cable <laughs> ran down here. We'll drill a hole in the wall. And <laughs> we'll call you. We'll no call time. you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, Durin then tells uh, a story of his childhood with his father about arm wrestling, about how when I was a wee lad and we used to arm wrestle, um, you were really strong and you beat me and you let me think that I could win against you because you've always been stronger than me. And it could have been a fun story. It was very emotional and meaningful if I cared about these characters at this point, but they're mm -hmm. so shittily written, I don't. So that will be a big theme that happens a few times here. Um, Durin begs the king to take off the ring, but the king says that a dwarf should never beg. And he makes one last smack, and the wall collapses. And it opens up the little short tunnel to this huge cave, and there's mithril, mithril everywhere. Ooh, Holy shit, yeah, it's great. everywhere. Oh my god, wow. And then King Durin's like, oh, son, come take a look at all this mithril. It's fucking great. <laughs> um, and boy, it really is incredible. It's, it's legitimately impressive. It's quite a sight. It really is quite a sight. It's yeah, a lot he, of mithril. When it kind of even disappoints prince, me, even... his reaction is so good when it's like, no, 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 no. Du yeah. Durin, the whole point was... <laughs> Uh, like, it, it, it almost feels for a second that his dad is like, see, he told you. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. no, no, yeah. no, 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 this wasn't, that wasn't the point. There's a big monster down here. Yeah, a big scary <laughs> monster. Like, they should be leaving, but they're like, no, 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 it's quite nice to look at. Yeah, so let's have a little chat. <laughs> They'll be leaving shortly, because a, a little flaming light appears, and then, whoa, a fiery whip comes from below. And mm. it it wraps around King Durin's ankle and kind of pulls him off his feet and onto the floor and kind of pulls him closer a little bit. Oh, no. And then the Balrog shows up and it has this tarred rage and it destroys a whole bunch of rocks. <laughs> and it's like, oh, fuck, this cave. 
and it's whipping around the rocks over here, and it smashes the rocks over there, and it gets the rocks down here, and it's very visually impressive, and I'm less like, oh my god, they think I give a shit. <laughs> um, but uh, now, at this point, King Durin takes off the ring, and he tells Durin, no, son, I didn't let you win the arm wrestle. And then he, and all he, I'm just thinking is, dude, you did this. You you went insane. I don't like, even, yeah. but like all you the work this. they have taken to say that he has been completely obliterated character wise to then be like, ah, oh, you see, he overcame mm -hmm. it. And I'm like, no, you can't mm -hmm. have that now. It's too late. Well, be a bit late. Yeah, exactly. It's way too late. It's the way, way too late. In the last They've episode, he took his people. axe to his own people. Yeah, yeah. Like he's yeah. a murderer. He's prepared yeah. to kill for the ring, and then he. I don't. I couldn't quite work out what the incentivizing thing was here. Was it seeing the Balrog or seeing his son get injured? One of the two things, or maybe some combination of both. And then he's but like, Durin oh, just like falls down a little bit. He just sort of flies back a few feet and lands, and it's like not a big deal at all. It was also really funny that he's saying like, "You're really strong, Durin." It's like, no, he's not. He couldn't nope. even stop you, and and he <laughs> understood what it meant to stop you. Like he knew that if he didn't stop you. He knew that the ring was evil. He knew that what you were doing threatened everybody in Kazadoom, including his own yeah. family. Like, he actually, like, he failed here. <laughs> like, he hate, well, unfortunately. And I don't know why Durin was even appealing to his father's, uh, you know, literal physical strength when he should be appealing to his, like, mental fortitude. Uh, because th th this whole discussion about strength is irrelevant if we're talking about, are you going to wear an evil magic ring that turns you into an idiot? Uh, yeah. I... Yeah, like, I don't know, it's, it just rings hollow that, again, a thoroughly assassinated character says, you're a strong person who literally just failed to stop me from yeah. releasing the Balrog. He's only ever failed, as far he, as he, Durin no, the Fourth is concerned. Failing. He keeps failing, but, like, he always, he, he understands with complete clarity that he can't fail. He knows that the ring is evil. But he can't mm. follow through, and it, it's mm. and I think they'd be like, "Yes, yeah, he's got he's got that flaw," and it's like, it's a big one. <laughs> it's, it's, a it's a big... really problematic. Well, I, 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 to me, it's just this whole scene doesn't work because it, it skipped the part where it explains why he's taking the ring off. I just didn't do that part. Yep. I, and, uh, I, I, the yeah, you'd have to interpret that. They were yourself. actually they were trying to emulate in some way, shape, or form Boromir's, you know, like sacrifice. I get that impression that they like, yeah, see. King Durin, you know, he got corrupted by the ring, but he eventually, he overcame it and, you know, came through in the end. But it's not the same. It's also just, just no way yeah. Taking I mean, it the off thing... himself after it drove him to the point of killing his own people, it was like, the kind of power that ring should have over him would be insane yeah, at like, that point. If, oh, yeah. If it was but... that easy, that's very bad on <laughs> yeah, reflection just, of his character. Just the thing it reminds around. me of is what they did with Thorin in the Battle of the Five Armies, but this is... Like, I think that that is one of the worst parts of the Battle of the Five Armies, how they deal with Thorin's dragon sickness and how he just gives yeah. himself an intervention and then he's okay again um, in the space of five minutes. But this is worse because King Durin goes further into madness than Thorin did. And yet, well, and yet, he goes really fast. Um, like, oh, well, and you can't even cite, like, hurting his son being hurt or whatever, because he hurt his son. He threw him across the room. Exactly, he threw him across I, I the think, room. I think it's that he realizes that, that the ring, quote-unquote, lied to him. About the Balrog not being I, I again that's really bad though, because it's yes, like it, it is, but I, everything yeah. up until that point that he was doing that seems to be well, contrary wait. to his previous beliefs and values didn't affect him, but then the Balrog was like, Oh, I see. So mm. there wasn't actually Did riches the ring... for me here. Is that what the ring yeah. Yeah. I thought the ring directed him to the Mithril. I didn't know that the ring made any promises about whether there's a horrifying demon so, there. No. So from what we it, it's kind of vague, but kind of not, because he says this vague thing like twice. Um, mm -hmm. By putting the ring on, you can quote unquote see the mountain, and he says that he can see like every jewel, every tunnel, every everything, everything. Yeah. Um, so I guess it didn't tell him that the Balrog was there. Should it have is an open question, I guess. But he could maybe yeah. consider it to be a betrayal uh, that the ring like, has betrayed him to his to his fate. Yeah, but that's, that's not it, really what they it's, do here. It's open to interpretation. Like he mentions before, uh, or like the, the other Durin mentions to him before, like the, the, there's a massive monster down there, and he and he just kind of ignores him and starts talking about like, oh, it's, we're gonna be so rich. Well, because yeah, what, what they nah, probably could have done here is, like, if he takes the ring off and he just like is fucking furious, he's like, you told me there was treasure down here, not a fucking monster, and he just hurls the <laughs> ring at the Balrog. <laughs> then it would be like, okay, he. 
he hates the ring because it it is it is lied to him about you know he can't get rich by by coming down here because there's a power. <laughs> That's the thing though, right? It's like having it be that he's like, ah, yes, we'll be able to make so much fucking money. It's it's, <laughs> it's like a worth one to have. Then again, with someone like Boromir, where it's like he wanted to save his kingdom. Yeah. Yep, yep. You know, like he had a very like. Oh, the, dude, it was ring, right there. The ring tethered to a like a noble intention. They could have been like this. They could have built yeah, it such that the, um, in fucking gold. Dude. <laughs> the, the, they didn't. They didn't build it right at all. They. Did, it feels like season two isn't even aware of season one. Sometimes in terms of like how they built season oh, one absolutely. is not going in the same direction. But uh, had the kingdom been as we uh, as we reach them in kind of a bad state. Like a low le a low, low time in yeah, there, yeah. Uh, and then he has to, he needs something to build it back up. You know, you can you can make that the argument, but um, we go from them being prosperous to them losing everything in almost like a day to that stupid mirrors thing, and then he gets so overpowered and and, and he does the hundred percent sales tax thing, and, and then he's like, you get that <laughs> shot where he's just in his room with loads of gold, like he <laughs> this is like. Okay, I love like, gold. it's just horribly done. There's zero effort to make it feel anywhere near natural or anything near allegorical, even. Even though it's this crazy fantasy with magic rings, I don't, I don't. The, the idea that the the writers are like, you see how power corrupts, and be like, shut up, whatever. <laughs> what is this? Power corrupts so that you instantly put on a ring and it makes you want money. Like, come on, yeah, I want gold. Get out of here. I, I don't know. I just um like the whole thing, and then you know, I mean the the culmination, right? <laughs> this, like what ends up happening is just so ridiculous. Like, I don't even know. It's hilarious. How we're supposed to take it seriously? Like he, how far have you got rags in saying what's happened? I, I what <laughs> he's discovered the bell. <laughs> I I think the important part is that you guys are like I don't know what you guys are talking about with all this character stuff and everything. I said that the Balrog is here. <laughs> oh my god, the Balrog. <laughs> and I didn't hear like cheering and hollering and shouting. I just like what what gives? It's the Balrog, guys. It's the Balrog. <laughs> Sorry, David. <laughs> 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 what is internet? <laughs> is that That's like great. internet or not? <laughs> what uh, modem for? A, a beautiful Leoin original, and uh, <laughs> this this is the Rings of Power they could have made, and they chose not to. Mm. All right, yeah. Fine. This would have been amazing. I would way prefer to see a show that's just about the Balrog. Oh. He's just moved it, it, like he's. He's he's doing like renovations and stuff, or he, he's sorting out his home in Casadum, and he's like, he's you know he's got like a new TV and he needs help setting it up and mounting it on the wall. Yeah, you just <laughs> get into those. Like, little, I just want to play Rust. Just those little misunderstandings <laughs> with different I wanted, contractors. Oh, dude, I, wanted, I wanted like at Bunnings looking for like supplies and shit with his little shopping cart, just walking past everybody. Hello, good evening. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the morning. <laughs> but he's like, oh, I, he's like, I'd like to watch Clocks as far, but they're like, yeah, well, that you have to get Amazon Prime. He's oh, like, well, I, I have Netflix, I, I so and they're like, yeah, but Netflix, <laughs> is, yeah, that's not the right one. It's like, well, I, what, how many of these fucking streaming services do I have to buy? And the guy is like, just Amazon, that oh, gets you the Clocks as far. Oh, I'm on a budget, shit. And then he, and then he just opens up his computer, opens up Excel, and is like making a spreadsheet to figure out his expenses. <laughs> oh, can I? Do I need? Do I need Xbox Game Pass? <laughs> oh, I really need it. I'm not sure. <laughs> Just give me a sitcom about the Balrog living his day to day. I would much rather watch it than this. What do you mean I need to <laughs> oh, pay for PlayStation Plus? I already pay for internet. <laughs> or, or like, <laughs> this is what I mean. He's like a boomer. They're like, you need PlayStation yeah, Plus. Yeah. He's like, but I have Netflix. Like, no, that's not. That's not even close to the same thing, Mister Balrog. <laughs> like, you, you, you that's well, can games. Can I order it from Amazon? And he's like, well, there are games on Netflix. Why can't I have the games from the Xbox on the Netflix? And they're like, no, yeah. No, it's a different game oh, that, console. I'll, because, I'll, man, yeah. now I like the idea of him like, so PlayStation 5 Pro is... Why, why, <laughs> <laughs> why should I get this? There's no disc drive. <laughs> There's no this world is going to hell. Jeez. <laughs> I don't want you to own anything anymore. <laughs> Why can't Come I on, play my games if the internet problem. goes down? What did I pay for? I bought Concord and they shut us down. <laughs> 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 no, I, 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 I thought it had potential. 
<laughs> Give me Balrog sitcom. I well, need at it. least I have Star Wars Outlaws to look forward to. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um. Dor- yeah, Doran, so... he's about to make his heroic sacrifice. That's right. right. He's about to make his heroic sacrifice. It's Not. Very I can funny. quickly get out of responsibility for all of my terrible crimes against humanity or dwarf anity. Um. Yeah, he takes <laughs> off the ring. And he makes what it, what can only be described as a very silly little jump at the Balrog. <laughs> it's like a Super Mario jump. It looks hilarious. <laughs> the Balrog swings his sword, and it hits yeah. King Durin's axe, and it like explodes. And then we get our opening credits. The yeah. Haven, which yeah. I want. Did King Durin know that if he struck uh, the Balrog sword? With his axe, no. that, that would create a shock. No, wave no, this was all Haven. stupid and pointless. There was never. Any... <laughs> I just think it's really funny because because he definitely he clearly he wouldn't have made the jump. He would have just fallen down. If well, wouldn't Balrog would have hit him. <laughs> that would have been down. hilarious. Yeah, he just looks at him and just falls down. Like, oh, uh, ooh, oh, uh, oh. Just... <laughs> he's falling down. <laughs> just jump. <laughs> 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 like, why? Dude, why the Balrog's you... expression's perfect here. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, like, what? What? Like, what are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? Oh. Okay. It doesn't change anything. I'm just, I'm just I... legit surprised. He's learned from the orcs. He's decided to ungabunga the Balrog, and I don't know yeah. why. <laughs> he could, he could turn around and he could leave. I don't understand. No, yeah. fuck that. You know, like if I mean, there's no reason not to assume. If I'm trying to like draw a cave here quickly, but. If uh, if this is uh, Mr. Balrog, I can here. I can, but from memory. <laughs> and of course, now that the Balrog knows you're here, why would what's stopping him from just bursting through anyway? <laughs> you know, cave in. Yeah. Oh yes, right. A tiny little cave in <laughs> will stop the Balrog. I guess there's a big cave in yeah. because the sword hit Durin's axe and it <laughs> blew up. Tiny flu <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> amazing water. With that is not a flattering <laughs> Balrog. <laughs> I'm just picturing this is where Durin. This is his like trajectory. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that looks like a fat Ahsoka. <laughs> it does. Pretty much, yeah. A chonka. A chonka. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I just, there's no reason to assume this isn't what happened. Like, yeah. That, yeah. That's, what it looks like. That's why this is so funny. It's just it like he really would make the nothing. jump. He would just fall. <laughs> <laughs> Straight down, like, <laughs> like well, all right, that, that just happened. You fucking dwarves are weird. <laughs> Do you want the mithril or not? I don't get it. <laughs> this one just killed itself. Oh, fuck. Look at his little legs. Yeah, they... What is he doing? <laughs> you know, why? Why? Why do you have it? Why did they do it like why this? Would... I don't know. Why would you did you try it to look silly? Like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> I think from the one of those post-show interview things, they actually said they had this scene in mind for ages, and they were really looking forward to doing it. Like they thought this was Holy about as epic crap. as the show could get. They <laughs> thought it would be hot oh, shit, and it was I've, one well, of those they, things. Uh, they knew I've that seen, some people on Twitter would say that this was amazing. I've seen plenty of people yeah. on Twitter saying that this is like the best opening scene in TV Dude, show history. The it's so goofy. Look at his legs. <laughs> 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 Why? Where are his organs? Why? Why? <laughs> yeah. he yeah. I'm gonna get ya. I don't think his legs are that long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just disappointed. We finally got a King Duran action scene, and he's just and he's vaporized in seconds. <laughs> Oh. I mean, yeah, he disappears in like a minute like, before the shockwave hits. No, is he's this, not. Isn't it's, it's like the boogie not... spine thing all over again? <laughs> he's got such a tiny body. <laughs> big, I mean, he's a dwarf. I don't know if that's the scale. <laughs> I don't know if your proportions are accurate. I'll draw that's a little, there, huh, little, little crowd as well. Yeah. <laughs> he's going in the flu. I thought he was gonna like take <laughs> off the crown and then throw it to Durin or something, but oh, he, you, he he kept it and then he. You jumped. know the crown. The crown is gonna show up in season three. It's got to. They're gonna forget that, back. that. They're gonna forget that he jumped it into a Balrog wearing the crown. <laughs> maybe they got a spare, because this one doesn't look really impressive. So maybe they got a bunch of spares. <laughs> 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 oh, so good. <laughs> 
and then he dies. Yep. Uh, pretty much. Also, he, he vaporizes instantly. So also, this is slow motion. Obviously, he's jumping in slow motion. But look, given the speed that the Balrog slams its sword into him in slow motion, that means the Balrog moves like really fucking quickly, insanely fast. Oh, yeah. True. Oh yeah. Yeah, they move. They move in different speeds. It's kind of like you know. with humans when you mostly move in at what we'd call no normal speed, but when you need to get a fly, you're like you know, it's like the mm -hmm. Balrog is like, yeah, get yeah. away, dwarf. <laughs> King Deering is an annoying fly in there. Also, right the ring is still there. there. Yeah. Yeah. But, la so but later, it's no, they I, have I it. Had it. They picked it up. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> did wait? Did Durin not pick it up? I, did he? We don't, I don't think well, we well, seen him pick it up. Right? He did, but it's I don't not know if we saw later. That. I think he leaves well, it, doesn't he? But like, it doesn't ah. mean he, like I would expect maybe like if he was still wearing the ring. And he'd be like, "No, fuck you, Fat Ahsoka. You can't have my mithril." <laughs> and then jumps it. It and then like they lose the ring this explosion, dude. in in a bit too Holy like they, it's, it's an expression of his madness as opposed to like him self sacrificing, well, and that would make more sense than taking it off, then jumping at the Balrog for no reason, and then nobody picking the ring up. Yeah, because I like, think it's, it's just shown on the ground, and then we don't see but, anymore. But if it. the ring was on the ground there, then it's gone because of what just happened in that shot. Nope. I think that was, but it doesn't come up again later. I said my impression <laughs> I'm, was I'm, that they did lose it. I'm pretty sure it does. I'm gonna double check now because it matters no. now. But uh, yeah, there is a ring that looks like it on like the little bowl thing later on. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It comes back. They have it later. Oh, yeah. well, that's good. yeah. It's like in the middle of the of the thing. Yeah, I'm sure. <sighs> Great. You know, with the intro previously on, which is for the whole season, that scene and then the intro credits, we're already 11 minutes into the episode. Record time. Yay! Yeah. Thank God, because, boy, we got stuff that happens. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So, a lot of you have been wondering, how come we haven't seen nori and poppy and no. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. don't you worry my favorite we're characters going to rune, baby oh, yeah. those opening credits those are a thing of the past during <laughs> king Duran exploded the ball rugs here we're in is business it, is it worth uh, just reminding people where these characters were the last time we saw them because it was a few episodes ago now sure go, sure. go ahead so, uh, so we got uh, not gandalf was told by tom bombadil you gotta let your friends die or find a magic stick oh oh beans what shall i do that was when we last saw him Magic stick, um, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, Nori and Poppy and the the stores, they were kind of like, well, I guess we're going to stay and fight because Skeletor and Rasputin are going to be back soon and in greater numbers. Um, we don't see what exactly they do, but they decide to stay in the village and wait and presumably fight them off. That's, uh, that's I can't wait got. to see that fun battle. That would be hilarious. Yeah. All right. So we're in Rune again. Not Gandalf is looking around. He's walking around, and it's, uh, I don't know. He's found the store of village, because he has. Apparently, after it's been like ruined and destroyed by like a bunch of fighting, there's not any stores everywhere, and things seem to be kind of in kind of in ruins. But <laughs> oh well. Um, what do you mean? Ruin, ru ruinins. Sorry, it's it's getting late. <laughs> I think I think your your brain is melting. I think you're right. I've been melting. Melting. I'll be, I will be there. I'll be there very soon. We're be, we're not going to make it long before I start getting loopy. Um, it's a corruption. So, uh, Rasputin is here. The Dark Wizard. We call him Rasputin because that's a good mm. name, and he looks like an evil wizard. And because you know that seems like a fine name to me. Uh, Rasputin, the Dark Wizard, is here. And mm -hmm. he tells not Gandalf that they have met before. Um, and he said, yeah, you said all the wizards should go like west or, or whatever. From or the, so like, he's from referencing their place. time before they were in Middle Earth. So like he's referencing their time together in Valinor, I guess. Um, and the, the, this is uh, the entire scene kind of just made me laugh because of how abrupt it is. Like his, his yeah. entire pitch is... <laughs> Oh, hi, old friend. And he keeps saying old friend, which means I think he probably is going to end up being Saruman. And when oh, they were asked, the interviewer yeah. said, we don't know, which means he probably is. Yeah. And he keeps saying it. But his whole pitch is, oh, yeah, well, you said we should come here, old friend, to, to fight Sauron together, old friend. And he says, well, <laughs> is that a good idea? Like, well, then we can take over 
Like, oh, hang on, that's a bit of rub. So like, I bought your your Hobbit friend's old friend, and like also now I'm gonna throw a guy against a cliff and he'll die, and that proves that I'm good people, old friend. It's just <laughs> the whole thing is just mad. How is this the clever yeah. wizard's opening pitch? I wanted <laughs> well, to you ask, would... like the because what what he appeals to here is he's he's saying that like. I'm going to call him Saruman. Uh, Rasputin and not Gandalf had a life before not Gandalf arrived in a meteor because he's saying that not Gandalf convinced him to leave Valinor and come to Middle Earth. Yeah. That's what they're talking about. That uh, has not even been hinted at yet in the show. Is that drawing from the lore or is that just complete horseshit? Yeah. So the, the, all the wizards are Maya, much like Sauron and like Balrogs as well, I think, were also Maya. So they were together yeah. in Valinor yeah, and they were so usually sort of, they, they were directly related to specific Valar. Um, and so like Gandalf is, is Manwe's kind of pet Maya. Saruman is, um, who's the smith? Aule is the smith. And so was Sauron, I think, yeah, um, yeah. for a time. And so like, then the, the Valar send the wizards to help the men or the free peoples of Middle Earth fight against Sauron once Sauron starts to rise. So this is a, a slightly recontextualizing that and saying that Gandalf or not Gandalf is the one that came up with the idea and told all of the wizards we need to deal with Sauron at some point. Let's go to Middle Earth. Which would be a, like a departure because they actually he's the one who doesn't want to go. I think canonically and um, like Saruman is much more keen to go. And he's the more ambitious of the two, and Gandalf is the one who is almost so meek and mild that he refuses, like, wants to refuse the call, but the, the, like, they insist that he goes because he is the noblest of them, and the, like, he's the wisest. And so Galadriel wants him to be head of the history order, but Saruman is the one mm -hmm. who takes that initially. But like the, yeah. the problem is that if that's the history that we're going with that they've now told us about, then we as the audience have to work out how on earth Gandalf arrives as a meteor in that story. Like, that's after how wizards the travel. Yeah. <laughs> But he he was mind wiped. Like did it? Because what I that's did he die no, yeah, and then respawn? Make, it's like did he die and then respawn? Sense, really. Come back? Uh, something happened in the past that we don't know. <clears throat> He's got to be woken up and he'll remember all of it or something. It's like when you wake up really straight away in the morning and you're like, oh, what was I? What was yesterday? And then you remember and it's totally fine. It makes sense. But that that would mean that he told Rasputin to go to Middle Earth in his sleep. Makes sense. Well, and I think I mean, if they're referencing the conversation that took place in Valinor, then this would be before they are asleep. He loses his memories at some point while he is a meteor. Maybe it's like the concussion from the impact, and that's when he loses his memories. Um, but he would be so awake and alive and having the conversation before leaving Valinor. It's still like insane, because why would the Valar send one of the potentially most evilly powerful creatures in the world and have it so mechanically they lose all their memories? And they can have, like, their entire personalities will be shaped by whoever finds oh. them first. Given Sauron is also a Maya, they are potentially risking mm. creating another one by Why sending an amnesiac meteor. Why not just kill Sauron meteor. themselves? Wait, are you well, saying that, like, the reason why they arrived as meteors is because that's how you leave Valinor? I think, well, I mean, that's, I think the show is going for that. Like, that's how they leave Valinor. They get shot over as fiery rocks for some reason. But then why did... Why did Rasputin think that it was Sauron in the meteor? That's why he sent his little weirdos yeah. to go and pick I him mean, up. <laughs> I don't know is the answer to that one. Um, no idea, and I don't think they knew it, at the time either. It doesn't make any sense. Can't answer that, all whatsoever. questions, okay? And if, <laughs> that, if that's what if that's what happened, then that means that if Rasputin here is telling the truth, then that means that not Gandalf said, "Guys, we should go. Uh, uh, what we should go east." And then everyone else left, and then a couple of thousand years passed, and then Gandalf followed them. About yep. that, yeah, but then he is, like, Rasputin is quite clearly lying to him throughout this entire scene, because he's putting on that. Another evidence for his probable Saruman identity is that he's trying to be very convincing with his rhetoric, and very friendly, and he says, oh no, I only yeah. sent the evil skull people to bring your friends back alive and unharmed. They didn't mean for them to be killed. That was they're a really weird evil, detail, because they're right there. All they have to say is, well, wait, no, you, you told us to kill him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then Gandalf's like, like, what? I feel like in this scene, uh, Rasputin comes a lot across as a hell of a lot more trustworthy and caring than uh, than Tom Bombadil. I mean, yes, but then uh, almost anybody in the I was world say, is. We probably shouldn't scale it that way. <laughs> well, as as in as in like the the choice that he's basically given here is you need to decide if you're going to go with what Tom Bombadil told you, which is in direct opposition to what Res this Rasputin guy is now telling you, and it's like, well, the Rasputin cares about Nori and Poppy, or at least he's claiming to care about Nori and Poppy. 
Whereas Tom Bombadil yes, clearly so did not. Here's the here's the counter argument. Before Gandalf can even figure that out, he fucking murders someone in front of him. It's like, um, <laughs> okay, that's a and thing. then he says he does the Sauron move that Sauron has done twice now, where he goes, "By the way, I'm evil." Yeah. After he has basically successfully convinced someone. Look, guys, if you're <laughs> yeah. evil and you're trying to hide it, don't kill don't someone. Just say like, "Yeah, I'm evil." <laughs> it's not a. Like, it's not a gamble. You're just saying that you're evil to someone. <laughs> like... <sighs> and, like, how quickly the conversation moves from, like, so he kills Skullface, Skeletor, whatever the fuck, mm -hmm. and then the conversation almost immediately, like, well, one of the hobbits scolds him because, you know, then he has the line about <clears throat> pity not defeating Sauron, and the mm -hmm. conversation immediately flips then to Gandalf saying, if you do ki kill Sauron, is that going to be enough for you, or will you be even eviler and control the whole world? And he says, no, yeah, we could be a success control the whole world yeah, together. Yeah, together. That's yeah. not what, what, why are you leading with that? <laughs> we were the galaxy. three seasons left in which we can flesh this shit out. Why you know what are you mean about the, this? It's like a cataclysm, because uh, when he kills that one dude, the others run away as though the dialogue would yeah. be, oh god, the wizard has magical powers. <laughs> 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 So and they were never seen again. <laughs> I don't oh, shit, He'll like kill me next. I'm out of here. But he uh, also, I don't know if this is an editing error or just Rings of Power being Rings of Power. He kills the wrong one. Like he kills the <laughs> skeletal one, the main one. But mm -hmm. uh, the one that had his knife at, at Poppy's throat is he just kind of goes, oh snap, and runs away. Well, oh he, shit. <laughs> he was sassing him. He said, we used to be kings, wizard, or something like that. And the wizard guy's like, oh, you did not just say that. I'm going to get shot. Fucking low life. <laughs> Yeet. Mm hmm. It's oh, it was definitely a Zack also... Snyder moment of he shows the skull mountain that he's like, so, friends? <laughs> friends. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, yeah. <clears throat> they also call good, him... Actually. They also call him Dark Wizard, so he's literally called the Dark Wizard in the show. Well, but he doesn't like that name. name. No, he's not. But, like but it. it's still his name. <laughs> it's still his name. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. They gave him the placeholder name, like, what the fuck? <laughs> because they're yeah. actually, like, relying on the reveal in season three. Yeah, was... The store, uh, At Gundabale. least give him some other name than fuck Dark off. Wizard, like, like Jesus well, Christ. He could have just been Gundabale called Saruman, like, whatever. Oh, you're, the, you're the Dark Wizard. I, yeah, I don't know why they just have this incessant need to, like, cock tease us with, like, oh, can we say this character's name? Well, you have to wait until season it's four. actually it's wasting time do. on shit like that, when you don't do any character or will building a fucking any kind of substance, you waste time on how much time have we spent on Gandalf's name in this season? Uh, uh, lots. Not oh. enough, because we got more to go. I know, there's more to come as well. <laughs> hey. Um, that was that's, what a crazy scene. Um, yeah. It's hard to believe it's not even over yet. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's more but, dumb to come. Yeah, um uh, the Gundabel comes out and says, "Oh, you're the Dark Wizard," and he says, "That's fake news." And <laughs> Poppy, that name. dude, it's, it gets the yeah, point of being like Monty a... Python, where it's like, "You're Dark Wizard." He's like, "No, I'm not." Yes, you are. No, no. I'm not. <laughs> yes, you he are. He should have said, "I." He should have said, "I have many names." <laughs> oh, not you too. <laughs> oh no. And then Gandalf, not Gandalf, is like, "I have no names, I honestly. No name. Can I have one of yours? Oh, cool. Can I have one? Extras? Please share. <laughs> I can. I borrow it until I find my own." Um, so, uh, da, 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 I mean, where to? I mean, uh, oh yeah, he basically Rasputin says that uh, we're gonna succeed Sauron. Um, we're gonna like rule in his place, and shockingly, not Gandalf declines this invitation to do that. And then Rasputin Ray Skywalker is a bunch of boulders and like makes them float yeah. in the air. <laughs> and he's ba his plan here is that he basically he's gonna kill everyone to show how evil Sauron is. <laughs> uh, this is Zack Snyder play again. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't. I don't write this shit, man. Like I you just tell you what happens. All right. You leave me one choice: destroy this random destroy Hobbit it. village for no reason. It is, <laughs> yeah, it it is so. I think this so is you bad. Think about how bad Sauron is. Yeah. It's the, it's it's the worst justification for anything ever. I am. Yeah, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> make you angry by causing suffering to people you love right now, and that will let you know that Sauron is bad because you'll do that more. Like, who so the fuck told you this team, was logic? Right? <laughs> you'll be on my team. <laughs> oh. Fuck. <laughs> so one of the things that's super frustrating about this exchange is that Rasputin has had a lot of time to think about what he's going to say to not Gandalf, what he's mm -hmm. going to tell him to convince him to get what he wants. He needs to have some really convincing answers and phrases 
just like in the chamber, ready to go whenever not Gandalf asks any questions. Mm -hmm. But like we can only spend, story. yeah, like but, but we can only spend like two seconds on any thought before the next thing has to happen. Um, but yeah, he he makes a bunch of boulders float up in the air. And he says, oh, I'll be back when you're ready to join me or your mind clears he's or whatever. Moron, yeah. And then he, yeah. And then he starts dropping boulders everywhere. <laughs> some of the stores get crushed and it's hilarious. It is funny. And then, <laughs> and then, um, not Gandalf. He like makes some of the boulders float so that they don't land on him. Cause he'll save himself, but no one else. Um, and then, um, that's this is that, a funny I mean, one that's... by the way i've got an uh, ab repeat here it's just it, the, the rock almost looks not big enough to make them just disappear <laughs> you know like they're clearly yeah. edited out of the thing it's just like boop they just yeah, disappear into the ground it's very yeah. funny it's very <laughs> funny not episode um, seven had... funny but funny no <laughs> it's amusing though it's fun to see stories it's the little where... things yeah yeah it is the little things <laughs> yeah, it's because it's a store <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, he, that's, yeah, let's go to Numenor. No. Because I'm sick no. of Ruin. Why? It's a silly to. place. We have to, because we have to wrap up the Numenor plot, because it's really good. This, so, um, yeah. this let's scene, go. They, this, this is a good one, though. You gotta admit, this one's pretty good. Um, yeah, they dump back. they dump some bullshit on us in about 30 seconds, and I was like, <laughs> okay, I'll make a note of that and keep, put a pin in that for later. Mm -hmm. expecting that it was going to be explained and it fucking isn't because I, well, I guess they haven't learned by now that that's how it works in rings of power ferrazon has brought all of the leaders of the faithful into the the little palace chamber and he mm -hmm. says that muriel has a secret ally who helped her <laughs> bewitch the sea that she so so that she could survive the trial she wasn't actually super cool she uh, used evil magic or whatever and then he goes to the leader of the faithful we'll call him the pope and he gives the pope this paper and the pope reads it and he's like sauron and now farazon uh, says all the faithful are traitors what's happening i have no uh, idea uh, so just, i wish i could tell you after this one yeah. i was like well i'm out i, I was barely in but i'm so out with new <laughs> yeah. you guys fucking change the rules every scene i don't care anymore oh, farazon can God. just announce that that's the case and it can just uproot the entire like cultural system in place mm. whatever fuck you like, like who uh -huh. sent the letter where did that come from how did they learn it it's and just him who wrote it. Go along with it. I think he just wrote it. Yeah, so it was, yeah, what I just... think happened is in <laughs> episode six, we had uh, when Farazon used the Palantir and he saw Halbrand. Yeah. Because he says in this scene, it's an enemy that has been here once and like fucked in our, he's shed in our soup or whatever he says. <laughs> um, so he <laughs> somehow knows that Halbrand is Sauron. I guess the Palantir told him. Yeah. And, and the yeah. connective tissue there is that Muriel worked with Halbrand. So therefore, Muriel is working with Sauron. He's written it on like a little notice, and he's handing it out like, <laughs> um, "That's why she survived the sea trial." Um, and now all of you guys are um, traitors because Sauron worked with Muriel that one time. But that's Farazon what I think can't... they've done, but that they have not explained that very well at all. And he certainly can't explain that he used the Palantir in order to find out this knowledge. So who knows? How yeah. he explains how he knew any of this, or because that he knows it at all. The first question someone else there should be asking is, wait, who is this? How, how do you know this? Where did you get this information from? So yeah. People should and be like, asking questions of him back. Yeah. And it also means that, why, wild idea I know for a billion dollar show, why not save some time earlier and flesh out things later by skipping the stupid trial by sea demon thing entirely, given that it now goes nowhere? Like, the whole point <laughs> of that was... Oh, she, she's presumed but guilty. It was dramatic she at the time. The trial, so now she's back and she's in charge. Oh no, she's not because a letter says so. Like, fucking, what's the point? Just skip the sea demon and condemn her, and then flesh out something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the, the that's what I meant when I said earlier that like the all of the Numenor stuff ha basically happened in one episode, um, where he took over because of the eagle. He, at that point, he can immediately use the Palantir. He will then, I guess, learn that Halbrand is Sauron, and then it's like, oh, okay, well, the faithful are all traitors. Season done. That's it. Everything that happened in between was just busy work. Yeah. yeah. So Farazon now has like done three horrible things since he's become king. 
There's no way the general public is like, this fucker sucks. We're gonna topple him immediately. Let's get all the soldiers he just fucking <sighs> abolished and just get and them. No, no consequences, no. Because they don't have another army, yeah, as far but, as I and know. Majerbs, though. Majerbs. So, something else uh, is as a result of the show just not explaining itself very well at all is that all of the guys running around that are dressed as guards are supposed to be the king's men, which has been named once, but they've been described as the mm. men of the king, not, mm -hmm. not the mm -hmm. faction called the king's men. Um, and we are expected to believe at this point that they are entirely, they are Farazon's team. They are the guys who are on Team Farazon and they are opposed to the faithful. But those are the same guys who served Muriel five fucking minutes ago. Yeah. So surely at least some of them should be on Team Muriel. But they're not because they're, no, they have to be against the faithful. They're just robots who do what Farazon says. Yeah, because we never get to know what the populace even thinks or what all the other I... characters are that are not main characters because they don't matter. We have we those sort of proxy do. characters it... that decide how they feel. <laughs> it's just that the, the, the main, like the populace of Numenor thinks whatever any particular scene needs them to think. So like that's yeah. why season one, the everyone is like riled up against elven immigrants stealing jobs. And then <laughs> when it's time to go to war, everyone really supports the war. And then when it's time for everyone not to support the war, none of them support the war again. Um, and then it goes into this season, you've got like that small group of the faithful in the church, which I think is the only time the King's Men are references a faction yes. when they are, they come in and attack. Um, and then like, okay, so there, there are divisions within the populace, but then they all get basically murdered and no one gives a shit, so no one cares. But like, is it 50-50? How big are the, the support factions? Mm -hmm, the, it's yeah. like, it's trying to do politics, but it's, it's retarded and it's like, it doesn't know how to do it. Absolutely, yeah. Like something else to mention here is that this uh, high priest is the same guy from he he's he's shown to be like I guess the leader of the faithful other than Muriel I guess um, he's been around for the longest and he's given this document that's like that Muriel's working with Sauron we don't Doesn't... get to we don't get to know what he thinks about that does he does he oh, think yeah. like Farazon you're fucking lying or does he think uh oh okay has Muriel been hiding something from me we have yeah, no like, idea do, do you have do you have any fucking evidence of this was the yeah, Putin would, seen... The church Bro, earlier. Is he in that scene as well? Yeah, he's the guy that was um, like running the ceremony. He's the guy that yeah, tells yeah. Clement this is the oldest shrine in Numenor. It's the same so guy. A guy <laughs> whose who's last interaction with the King's Men was them coming in and essentially enacting a pogrom against his people in which like important members get murdered. And yet he willingly in this scene says, Oh, well, we've been summoned into this room. What can possibly go wrong? <laughs> it's, yep, <laughs> indeed. It's like it's like um the Pike Syndicate guy having KFS come into his office <laughs> and be like, God. Oh, could you do this little job for me? Even though you've massacred <laughs> hundreds of my men up to this point. Even though I've said actively sent death squads to kill you. <laughs> 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 Ignore those. They're they're automatic. I I have to cancel my subscription. Yeah. It's, it's a, a small it's a thing. political I, I, thing. I have to do it. Game. I don't want to do it, but I have to. Also, a small yeah. thing I notice if you look at the the parchment that has like the writings on it that he gives to the faithful guy. It's like a pretty long text, and he looks at it for like half a second. He's like Sauron, as if he like yeah. already understood what the fuck is happening. <laughs> what did the this notes say? Text. <laughs> he so scanned confused. through it. Help he was just me. looking for who the spooky individual was that apparently bewitched uh, the sea monster. The show is terrified of giving me as an audience member information. Like I if hate yeah. that. if only if we knew what that document said. Because I, I when I first watched it, I thought it was a letter that he had been sent by by Sauron, for example, because he talked about wanting to go to Numenor and give them rings or whatever. Yeah. But um, I think it is meant to just be a document that Farazon has, like, written up to say, well, we're all of you guys are traitors now because Muriel worked with Sauron. But if we knew what it said, that would answer so many questions. The reason why we don't know what it says is because the writers don't know. <laughs> Otherwise, he would, f he would read it. Like, why would... I have decided that my political opponent works with Satan. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. It's like, why, why would it's you so think funny. That, that would work? But it does. It, it does it work. Works. Yeah, perfectly. It's so bullshit. <laughs> 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 They're not even trying. Not even remotely. It's so. Yeah. Nobody cares in Numenor. Nobody. It's it's. Uh, Metal mentioned it before. It's like ever since Farazon's been in charge, everything's gone to shit. Yeah, it's all in like horrible. A week. Well, like in, so in maybe two weeks tops. You know the fall of Numenor. At this point, it's just like whatever. You know, like who cares? Yeah, I, I don't care. I cared a little bit at the end of season one. Now I don't. Anyway. It's, already <laughs> like, it's already, it's at already least there's shit. Not, at least there's not a big wave coming. <laughs> <laughs> also, mm. so they kind of um, pay lip service to the idea of—is it Western Numenor or East Numenor? I can't West, remember. West, West Numenor. 
Yeah, which is where Isildur wanted to go. It's where um, Elendil is about to tell Muriel to go, um, or vice versa even. Why do none of the faithful, like the, the old man, the high priest, why don't they just go there? They like, have is that some... your autonomy, that's it's... why. Well, because they seem to depict it as like a, well, depict, they seem to refer to it as like a safe haven away from Farazon, where you can just live free and be faithful, be as faithful as you want to the Valar. Why? Like Farazon's in charge of Numenor, which is the island. So I don't know how it works because they haven't done any world building. It's it's shown to be a safe haven, but also it can't be a safe haven, essentially. Mm. Yeah, it wouldn't really be. It is an unsafe makes sense. haven. Like, you have different lords of Numenor and shit, but, you know, the, the High King still has, you know, massive authority over everything. And they always refer to it as... Because Numenor is the name of the island, not the city, right? Yeah. Probably called Numenor City. <laughs> I, I forget what the, the New Numenor. Are, like the, the capital. There are a few cities on, on New, there. New, New Menor, maybe, but New Numenor, maybe. Um, yeah. he, he says um, New everyone Menor is a, a trader from Western S. Is Western S the name of the city? I, I don't know what that is because they've not used that word before. I think it might just be a different name for New Menor. Either that or it's the Western province. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah, like other names for Numino, one of them is uh, Western S. I thought that was just a girl Western. Our <laughs> <laughs> uh, Menelaus oh. is the name of the capital. Menelaus, I love him. He's no, a cool guy. Our, our, our Menelaus. Oh boy, what a great guy. Um, so, uh, with this scene happens, and Aarian is here. And she sees all this happening, and then Aarian is... She's having I, her, I are we best... the baddies moment. I was about to say the exact yeah, same like, thing. I think <laughs> it powered much earlier. I yeah. think my my note here is Aarian apparently doesn't like leopards eating her face. Yep. <laughs> I can't believe that, like, it actually is the case that she is going to be largely responsible for enabling Numenor's <laughs> downfall. Yeah. Well, yeah. and like, every she, step of the way... Retard, Every step she should have realized, and she just hasn't until the, oh, the writers were like, she, okay, you're allowed to realize <laughs> now. And yeah, like, now when it's too late. Yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. It had to be when it was too late. They couldn't let her do anything that would, oh, you know, prevent her. Whole... dad was, was being executed, like, yeah. two days ago. What the <laughs> Uh, the the extent of her motive that... as well, because they they have that scene when Elendil's in the prison and she's basically says that it's because of the queen and the faithful. Like our family has lost everything, <laughs> which is going to make it very inconvenient when, in about a scene's time, Elendil says to the queen, "Oh yeah, we should go to West Numenor because I've got my other son over there. <laughs> like her brother oh, yeah. is also over there, so she yeah. hasn't lost everything. She's lost one brother." And that was made out to seem like it was everything, like the entire family was basically destroyed by that. But it's not. It's not even half the family. I it's one mother, quite shitty member of the family. It would also include the mother, but we have very limited information on that. We don't actually know when it happened. It may have she happened... drowned because fucking Isildur swam out too far and the sea is always <laughs> right, so it punished him <laughs> vicariously. <laughs> fucking fuck up of a sin. Yeah. It's funny, because the more the show goes on... Just remembering all those little tidbits makes every yeah. new adjustment yeah. and new development funnier. Mm, also, sure except Valandio, no one ever challenged her again on the whole moral things. Like, hey, the queen is blind because she tried to save your brother. She never even reacted to that ever. But and no one there ever... was an entire scene cut because um, I can't remember. Is it Emma Horvath, the actress who plays? Yes. Um, so she said that that they. They, they had cut out a scene where it was between her and Valand. I always get his name wrong. Valandil, the one who dies. Is that right? Yeah. 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 There's an entire scene, apparently, which is now not in the show, between them, which is just a dialogue scene where like, her motive is established, especially with regard to him, because she's lost her brother. She wants somebody to grieve with, but everyone's refusing to do that. And so like, she's been driven away by everyone's refusal to relate to her. And that scene, which seems to me quite important, was just cut mm -hmm. out completely mm -hmm. so now all we have is just this inexplicable bitch who goes around ruining everybody's world for no this reason this inexplicable bitch <laughs> <laughs> i hate my kids aryan yeah. is um yeah she's probably going to get off scot-free for everything she oh, actually sure. worked with a crazy evil guy doing evil things and she was with him 100 percent of the way and then she's like oh well this is just i i can't believe he did this I mean, and she's probably going to stick around and help Muriel, maybe, like to atone for her sins, and then f maybe well, she's not well, going to fix everything because we know what happens. But 
I think well, he's going to be evil again, like, next episode. They start rounding up everybody in the room and basically saying they're under arrest or whatever for being traitors. Uh, Arian slips away out of the palace, and she goes down uh, into the city where we see the opening scene of, scene of the Prince of Egypt where a bunch of guards are going into random houses and dragging people out of their homes and into the streets like the city's getting sacked. Um, yep. Because they're, I guess they're looking for faithful people or looking for, like, it's absolute insanity. It's nuts. And all of these guards yeah. are just, they're all just doing it. They just um, know where the people are as well. They just, it's like, you're, you're definitely faithful. You live here. We, we know this. It's like, Farazon, you didn't even really, I didn't care about you at all, but like, you've lost your fucking mind. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's just <laughs> fucking bonkers. All he had to do was nothing. Yeah. What nope. threat it's were they Muriel really was, to Muriel, him? All these people didn't matter Muriel anyway. Was saying it was, it's cool. Muriel was yeah. like, nah, it's chill if he's in charge. It's all good. It's nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. And if Muriel, he just he was like, okay, everybody. I guess I'll... I get. Do we want to like propose a bill for infrastructure or something? It's like, no. He turns into Psycho Hitler and he starts to round up everyone else in the world in, in, in Numenor and, <laughs> and and make everyone everything he does should make people despise him immensely. And this happens so, so fast right. as well, like in a in a couple of weeks, maybe. <laughs> couple of minutes. It's so fast. <laughs> um. So, yeah, guards are just going around dragging people out of their homes uh, willy-nilly. Um, I guess none of the guards were part of the faithful or believed and in Muriel. Cause none of them have a the soul. Other day, none of them fucking even think for a second yeah. this is wrong. They're all drones. No. It's ridiculous. <laughs> They're all just Guard meat drones. puppets. It's like, do the thing. Yeah. Okay, no, 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 no. My brain is guards... melting. <laughs> no, I understand. <laughs> Where the fuck's so the we're, eagle? We're Come back and save us. Yeah, yeah the eagle, this yeah. is your fault. You said this guy was the winner, I guess, is what you did. And now he's <laughs> and the eagle's like, I did what? Right? No, I, no didn't. I didn't. Lord Bulbasaur <laughs> stole it from you. <laughs> Lord Bulbasaur. <laughs> did you know that you voted for Hitler, eagle? In your vote? <laughs> like, I, I did no such thing. I, thing. I never even cast a vote. I just wanted to turn up and see what was going on. <laughs> so, down oh. in the city... We get the uh, we get a stock sound effect of a jar breaking and the, yep. the most expensive show ever made, and <laughs> Aaron in, Aaron goes to look for Elendil, her father. Uh, he's obviously not very happy with her. Based he looks on her so done. Like, oh, he's again. just got a job. He's got a job waiting tables, cleaning up at <laughs> a bar. You know, he's just making ends meet. Well, yeah, and every time he um, sees her, he's like, "What's the new thing? Are you gonna kill me? Yeah. What have you done? What are you gonna this do to me now? What is it?" So the guards come there to find Elendil, and Ayarian says that there are no faithful here. And the guards are like, oh, we, we still want to look. And she says, well, you're, I'm going to report you to Farazan for insolence, so you should leave. Because it's insolence to double check to make yeah, sure and then there are he no says, political Yeah, I've seen movies here. before. What do you mean? Just shut up. <laughs> that's, that's just stupid. You wouldn't say that Let unless you had something to fucking hide, you idiot. Mm -hmm. Oh, Not no, Mahler, this at all, is Rings of Power. He leaves. Uh, yeah, she's she going says, out of her way to, to rescue her father who like two episodes ago she was happy for him to be fed to a fucking sea monster no, she yeah. cried is, a bit. I mean she wasn't oh, happy about oh, yeah. it but she, she, was 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 she was willing to have it happen unless he yeah. apologized whereas now it's she, just no fuck him I, uh, she was also the reason yeah. it happened <laughs> may I say I love this Scooby Doo shot in the uh yes the yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> Tom and Jerry, but Scooby Doo. Is all they all mess. they needed to have to complete this scene was to have like a hallway with like eight doors, and then <laughs> Elendil yeah. goes in one door, and then the guards <laughs> follow him, and then he comes out another one on the other side, and then the guard goes to a different door, and then they cross over and get in different doors, and oh, it would have been would have been the best episode, but we can't do that because this is a this is a serious show for serious people. Okay, seriously sick of this show. Uh, I'm I'm sick of your whining. We gotta get through the episode, all right? Focus. I will whine We're almost more. there. We're so close to being done. Didn't you see my, so close to being done. Didn't you see my avatar? No. It's crying all the time. No, tears of joy. Tears <laughs> sure. Tears of fear in his current one. Yeah, it's like, yeah, oh that's, God. that's Valandil's ghost behind your chair, and he's like, how come no one mentions me? <laughs> I'm sorry, Valandil. <laughs> and you're you like, who the fuck are you? And he's like, see? <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. So I guess she has authority over like the the little things that all of the guards in the city do and the palace stuff. I guess her position is that high that yep. she has somehow obtained authority mm-hmm. enough to order around the guards and their actions. Um so yeah, I guess none of the guards in the city are part of the faithful. They yep. seem to be a huge faction in the city. They they've these all are been the same... replaced off screen. I guess, because these are the same guards I thought that protected Muriel just like last week, but nope. now they have completely flipped 100%, and now they're just <laughs> like, you know what? We're just going to drag people out of their homes at night and start arresting people, and boy, we just love being evil. We don't have souls or thoughts or opinions on anything. We're just guards. We're guards. Yeah. We're guards. It's, it's funny, the, the guards, do you see this later when they arrive in another place? All these people look like may, way more evil now. And uh, ex- uh, from in, in Pilate, before they yeah. took over, yeah. before Farazan took over, they just look evil. <laughs> they have like evil faces. It's like very funny. Now, if if you were an evil person though, and like you you were going to do effectively Crystal Nact and Numenor, mm. would you make your first priority be going to the queen and the leader no. of the faction you hate, who is apparently yes. working with Satan to arrest her, or would no. you do no. that after you'd gone around smashing pottery for a bit? I mean, Why they have a, they have, a, they have a history. All? They have What's a history the of not going to the biggest person uh, in, well, in Numenor. Well, she's blind. What's she gonna do? <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> Fall matter. Down the stairs. Okay. You don't even have someone guard her, like to make well, sure no one else goes to see her. <laughs> you don't arrest her yet because we have to have a scene where Alindal goes and has a conversation with her, and if she's arrested, mm-hmm. that might be difficult. Mm-hmm. Damn it, that's right. <laughs> that's the thought process of the Rings of Power writers, unironically, I think. Oh, yeah, they would say uh, that as though it's like a, a thing that is smart that they've done this, and you'd be like, no, mm-hmm. you haven't solved the problem. She's not problem. arrested because uh, we have to have a, Alindal has to have a conversation with her. How, 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 did, he get, how did he get to her? Uh, it happens Legs, off screen, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. He, he, off-screen, <laughs> he off-screen his way to her. Yeah. We, we grappling hook. hook. He just... <laughs> oh yeah, Gil Galad, let him borrow his grappling hook. <laughs> he said, Alendil, this is the grappling hook that felled Damrod, the, the orc. <laughs> he so shipped no, it with Alendil your can climb anything. I want you to have it. I, you, I want you to have this as a token of my esteem of you. He just, well, he just portals in and says, a king's place is where the need is greatest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, could hear, I could sense that you needed this grappling hook to get into it's a, Muriel's house. We get like a full-on POV episode where it's like horrifying because he just goes, vroom, vroom, he just pulled into another place. He's like, oh, I'm needed here. Who's in trouble? <laughs> I now, also like the idea of like um, later down the line, just Galadriel's like, and to you, Frodo Baggins, I leave you the grappling hook that defeated Gam. <laughs> and it's like as it's as big as Frodo is, and he has to carry it around everywhere he goes. This random grappling hook. Oh, it's Mr. such Frodo, a way to carry. Why don't you drop this grappling hook? We don't ever need it. He's like, no, Sam. The Lady Galadriel That's just what gave they, this to what you me. Think. It was a gift. <laughs> we must grapple this hook all the way to Mordor. <laughs> And then he uses it after he gets like pushed off the thing by Gollum. He uses Grapples it to hook himself back, back up. up. <laughs> <laughs> once, once Shelob is about to eat Frodo, he remembers. Now this is the grappling hook of Damrod's patrol's bane. Use it when all other grappling hooks don't. Oh, <laughs> when, I, got... I, I don't know. Right, the, the chat <laughs> That's says, what she I, says. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's a giant spider frodo i don't know what you're gonna do <laughs> you might you might be fucking dead bro <laughs> we, we also got for you sam i leave you the ladle of gluck in the second age this was used to saute the orcs <laughs> roast. use it when all other ladles Leak or something. <laughs> you brave, you never <laughs> Everyone's holding all these amazing weapons and tools, and he's just there with a ladle, like, okay, but I don't know. Okay, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Frodo, Frodo's carrying this massive grappling hook, and he's like, yo, Sam, do you want to trade? <laughs> this he's thing's like, I don't huge. Know. It's as big as me. <laughs> I gotta carry this and the ring. <laughs> okay. Um, Elendil. Oh. And Muriel are talking. This is serious. Wipe those, wipe those smiles off your faces. Uh, this is a good one. No, this is a good one. This is a good one. Okay. Right. Uh, so I trust you. Alindel tells Muriel that they need to go west because there are faithful there, and so is his son, Anarion. Which Muriel we'll says, seen. no, we haven't because he's out west. That's why we haven't seen him. No. Uh, Muriel says that she's not going 
Her place is here. She tells him to take the sword from the thing that we all know and love. She's like, I need you to take the sword. It's called uh, Narsil. Uh, How did she find it, though? She, she's blind. Like, did she, did she like, sniff it out? Like, how did she know which sword it was? Narsil has a distinct odor. Yeah. Oh. Millennial looks at it, and then they do the unsheathing, like, sh sound effect. No, you, know you, know you know what's well, that's, it's It's got a, a distinct odor to it. Narsil is actually the Sindarin word for nostril. Wow. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I was I was watching this with uh, Random and uh, Rags earlier today, and I completely forgot about the name of that sword. So for me, it's just like, why did he? Why did he just name the sword? What's going on? And then they reminded me, it's like, oh, but they do it so unceremoniously. Like it's just here's the sword with the name. <laughs> it's yes. like, oh, okay. It is and Narsil it before it gets broken. Yeah, well, before I guess it gets it's broken, and then oh, after it is no, no, reforged. No, no. It feels like it's a more apt thing to say. It is Narsil. That's it, because you don't yeah. know anything about this sword if you were taking this story as it is. Exactly, well, that's what I was trying to We've all seen the Lord of the Rings. Gonna the yeah. Lord of the Rings. This is just it, it's going gonna, gonna to get bigger in Lord of the Rings. That's what's yeah. going to happen. I take it that in the lore, there is, like, is there anything special about Narsil, or is it just a yes. sword that was handed oh, down and handed down? It, it was created by the dwarves in the First Age. And what I, what I'm getting at is more so, it's a problem with this show. The show oh, hasn't yeah, done of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. The show hasn't uh, told yeah, us anything spends, about this. Sword it spends over a minute being like, "Hey guys, look, it's a sword, and it's called Narsil. Hey, I get, yeah, best, I bet you like that. We're going to look at the camera it's, on it. It's if, yeah. um, it's if it's Tom Bombadil was got Gandalf to go to sleep, and he's like, "Here's your blanket," and then the editing he swells, <laughs> and music comes up, and he gets this blanket, and we're all like, "What? What?" Is, what? But the problem is, it's, then, it's, it's it's just like, yeah, you haven't done any of the work. Yeah. Well, yeah, and someone says, like, oh, if you, if you saw this other show, this other set of movies, this other books, it's like, you know that blanket's <laughs> real special. You're like, okay. Yeah, yeah but that's cool. not your story. Your story is here, and this is, I, as I understand, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first time that we have even seen or heard correct. Yes, correct. in this show. Yeah. So this it, is it's entirely so. meta. It comes out of nowhere. It's entirely meta, especially... It comes out of... At, yeah, it's so it's so much of a surprise. It takes a blind lady to point it out to us. <laughs> and then, of course, like having Elendil try like mirroring uh, Aragorn, um, like th the same shots, like the same movements is actually like unbelievable to me. It's it's, 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 it's insane yeah. to me that they actually believe that they've what what they've accomplished with Muriel. And Elendil is the same as what was accomplished with Aragorn and um, Elrond in Return it's of the King. It's super embarrassing. It's That's just unbelievable to yeah. me. Yeah. The, the shots are almost one for one. They're a bit. They are. Different, yeah. But yeah. They're, but like, there's none of like... the character. There's none of the history. Because of course, mm -hmm. in, in Return of the King, you know what the sword is because you saw yeah, it in yes. the prologue. You know what it represents. <clears throat> you know what it means that Elrond of all people is giving this sword to Aragorn. There's yes. so oh, yeah. much that's being declared by giving him this sword. It's mm -hmm. like I, I am have I, you have restored my faith in men. I have faith in you. Reclaim your, uh, mm -hmm. you know, re reclaim your destiny. Obviously, just logistically, this is going to help you win the battle. So you need mm. this. You need to save Middle Earth because that's how you're going to save Arwen, which is obviously very important to Elrond. You got yeah. all of that packed in, as well as the fact that it's like, well, he earned it because of all of the crazy things he's done in the whole trilogy. You know, Aragorn mm -hmm. earned it. He displayed why he was worthy of acquiring it. Um, it's it's actually crazy that they tried to mirror, like, yeah, we're the same. <laughs> Are you serious? Yep. They don't Someone even do like the minimum work where they, they Muriel could have said like that, you know, this sword belonged to my father and he used it to do a thingy and a thingy or something. It's literally anything, this, yeah. This is this is yeah. Narsil, it's yours now. Have get your destiny. That's it, that's it. It's have given some history and you know what? I sure hope it doesn't get shattered at some point to then get reforged <laughs> into a girl, everybody. Don't, don't step we, on we it too hard, yeah. Done. <laughs> <laughs> As someone in chat said, take up your mother's trident. Yes. <laughs> oh, better times. Oh, Narsil, Narsil comes out of nowhere in this show, and they had an opportunity what? to have it be around as maybe like yeah. a like a ceremonial sword that the ruler of Numenor has on them when they conduct official business. And we can see that it looks like Narsil. 
but they never point it out. It's just something that is only worn by either Muriel or Farazhan when they're in the palace doing their official duties. And then it's stolen, it's taken away from Farazhan when no one's looking, and then she's like, this is a symbol of, you know, the authority of Numenor and our people and stuff like that. He doesn't, you know, we've seen what he's done, he doesn't deserve it. Take this, and with it, the spirit of the, you know, Numenor is with you, or something like that. So at least there'd be some reason for it to not just show up out of nowhere, but this is why we have it, and this is what it means, and this is the sword that the ruler of Numenor is supposed to have on them. I'd say, like, even bearing in mind them trying to essentially emulate, like, there's none of the gravitas in the filmmaking, right, of, like, mm -hmm. they will answer to the King of Gondor and then whipping out Andor all slow motion, mm -hmm. like, a <laughs> clean view of the sword in a very dramatic way with a musical cue accentuating it, and then the same deal, right, when Aragorn unsheaths it. It's 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 one of the best scenes. Like it's it's, it's really good. excellent. It's excellent. Yeah. And I can't believe that they actually thought like that they were even in a position to try and echo or mirror that payoff. It's like, a cheap it's a copy. Character. It, it yeah. is. Um yeah, so she says, Reclaim your lordship and with this sword your destiny. <laughs> sure, so, if you say so. We don't so. know what that means because we seen the Lord of the Rings. But destiny is a cool fantasy word, so we put that in there. Destiny. Yeah, but, but destiny claim your like, dial of destiny. Claim your destiny <laughs> to get killed and have your sword broken so that your son can cut <laughs> off his fingers. Yeah. And, and then get fingers. shot in a river by arrows. <laughs> a river because he got corrupted by the ring. The sea yeah. is always right. <laughs> um. All right. Well. It's good to be back in Numenor, but we have to yeah. we have to leave. We got to go back Yay. to Aregion because mm. you know things are ha it's a happening place these days. Orcs are Jeez. running around the town. They're just sacking. They're pillaging. And then George Lucas's son, the uh, who is an elf now, boy, he tries his hardest. He's mm -hmm. shooting. He's running around. He's shooting arrows. He jumps off of a roof and he slides down and. He, and ultimately, nah, he gets hit by a random arrow and he dies. Why do you um, do that? He he's tries, a hero, dude. He he tries, man. He's trying. He's like the only fucking elf who's trying. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> it's a little um, like John Wicky like hero moment for him, where he just has like a good twenty seconds on like one single shot. It's this bit on the screen right now, and you get to actually see him, you know, pull some crazy elven bullshit. Like nowhere near on the level of like Legolas, but mm -hmm. this kind of shit should have been happening all the time. Yeah, that's that's he's he's from, down, though. Like, why? Why is he jumping down the street level? When uh, well, because yeah. he's he's going to a, some. He's we don't know. He's trying to get somewhere or do something. Maybe he's trying to pull back to a look. We don't know. The angle looks like well, it's impossible that he could have been shot where he was. Uh, well, well, yeah, but uh, that's that's we're, this is rings of power. <laughs> There's some yeah, yeah, it, 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 it comes, it comes from there. Uh, it's like why would there be? Yeah. Is there an orc in like a high tower? I mean, oh, it's, it's, I, I think the, the, it, it's basically entirely because they wanted to flex, like, see, look, we're doing a one take where he, like, jumps down yeah. to street level. That's impressive, right? We but then he cool dies straight away. So what's the point of yeah. that? Yeah, they yeah. couldn't give him at least two, two more kills. Die. Three, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is the kind and of thing that you would... It's almost like yeah. a mini set piece that you feel like if you know if this was Galadriel or Arendir, like this kind of stuff happening with Arendir, but then it would go on for a little bit longer and it would be... Mm. It would have more heroism. Yeah, it would be more cringe. Hero. It would be it'd definitely be more cringe. Whereas with this, it's short enough. It's just funny that it ends with him getting shot. <laughs> like if it ended yeah, with him really. escaping, then it'd be like, "Yay, go like little elf man!" But then go guy, like yeah. someone to root for, some nameless little guy out there doing his best, and you're like, "Yeah, you go guy, do do your best." You don't, you but don't, no. you're not a character, so I can root for you in this show. But I hope things work out for you. Also, mm. when, uh, when he falls down, it kind of looks like the actor like he tucks his foot in so that it doesn't trip anybody over. You should. Mm. It it, it kind of looks like because he falls over and then as all of the orcs run through, he he like kind of turns. Oh yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. He he does. Does. anybody over. <laughs> <laughs> it's very amusing. He's very he's very it's, considerate to the orcs. <laughs> it's too quick. It's too quick. You got to show it. It's funny. It <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't trip. Um, <laughs> don't want to trip the, my fellow actors. <laughs> Oh, that's fucking silly. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, but uh, we, we we see the orcs running around, uh, and Galadriel's here. Oh, hooray, and Galadriel's here. And the music as if she's a hero. She's very the heroic. She well, kills so many orcs. Saving civilians. Yeah, this is the first... Great. This is Angel the first time orcs just fucking disappear. Someone else, as far as I'm aware. Galadriel's here. She's stabbing orcs. She doesn't this twist her fault. gut, but boy, she stabs them. Oh, yeah, it's her fault, but at least, at least she's saving yeah, people. Yeah, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> but but um, what happened to all the orcs who were just there? Like, what, what... They left. Um, right. Actually, <laughs> uh, she's leading some civilians to safety, and it's just a bunch of women. And mm -hmm. um, one of the orcs, like clearly sees that it's Galadriel there with swords and stuff, but the orc, like, sees the oh, yeah. nearest elf woman and, like, threatens to cut her throat against a pillar. Yeah, this yeah. orc comes in from the right here. And he, Luckily, he, there's like, only one. Like, yeah, there's only one. They want he you just to... runs in. It's an impossible thing to try and make sense. It's like, so you want, me, you want me to think he just tunnel-visioned onto this lady and completely ignored mm -hmm. the only one there that's a threat to him. <laughs> so does Galadriel react to the explosion before it happens in this scene? Yeah, it looks a bit she weird. She throws her arms up quite robotically, and then it seems to explode. Um, kind of, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. A bit off the mark. Yeah. But she's generally quite janky throughout this entire episode. Like, you know, <laughs> when any fight scene's going to happen, oh, the yeah. camera's going to cut away because they'll get somebody competent in to do the stunts. But in, in this scene, like she's got a precisely one move, which isn't even the one move she described for us in season one. Like she's not even doing the stab gust <clears throat> gut twist thing. It's just I'm gonna vaguely stab at you and you're gonna die. And I'll do that repeatedly yeah. because that's what good choreography looks like. It's very also, good. This also, orc, by the way, on. he's only he gonna cut his own hand. Just... Look at the way he's done this. <laughs> oh yeah. Also, I'm gonna Gal cut Galadriel's your face move with her head. sword here is putting that civilian at risk. She's just run him through with his sword, with her sword, which is not short. Is, is that going to go into, you know, chop off his head or something? But no, she's skewered him. Yeah, look, look at the length of that sword. Yeah. That could easily have killed the girl. Yeah, oh. but I don't think it would go into her from the angle she stabs though. Yeah, it's close. It's, it's, it's risky as fuck. Um, Very risky. Maybe. She maybe. is Galadriel though, so you know. <laughs> She I mean, would have hit the she would have hit the body after it's fine. I mean, let's be honest. If she had killed her, she'd have been like, "Oh my god, the orc got her!" Damn. Oh, I can't believe the orcs done yeah. this. Yep. No, no, no. She would have killed all of the other civilians because there couldn't be no witnesses. <laughs> no witnesses. Exactly. I just couldn't handle the shame, but I'm better yeah. now. And she goes and gets a new group of civilians because she still has to be the good guy. This shot. Them out. Like showing us the state of Eregion. It's so funny because I'm just like, this fucked. tells me nothing. I have no idea what the fuck mm -hmm. this is. It's just everything's a mess. Yeah. yeah. Also, I think they're still That's... shooting fireballs at it, aren't they? Oh, why yeah, not? Yeah. There's just some guy over there just going pew, <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> That's my job, and I take it very seriously. Nobody's stopping me. I've fired a thousand of these. <laughs> <laughs> how much how much fucking ammunition did you bring? Like Jesus Christ. We got one other guy working with him who keeps getting all boulders and setting them on fire and he's like, This oh. is like this is this is hard, man. Yeah. The, they have entire fucking caravans of logistics bringing it all back to Mordor, like bringing up <laughs> shit for it up here. <laughs> Aren't there like like orcs in there? Is is Glug in there? <laughs> well, they got the dude who was sauteing the the meat or whatever. He's probably needed. Yeah, the, the meals. Yeah. And stuff. Oh, absolutely. He's the he's very important. It's a bit the of a shame. Is burning. That all got interrupted. There's there's so many mm. logistical things they need to tell us about, but they just refuse to because they're cowards. <laughs> That's what it is. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I'm sure glad Galadriel saved all these civvies here. Was... That's very cool. It's Yay. Just... Yeah, it's also funny though, because it's like, ah, oh, the secret tunnel that leads to nice happiness that all the orcs are like, oh, damn it, the, the orcs found it. <laughs> and also, yeah. this, this completely fucks the entirety of the last episode. I, I mean, it's yeah. fucked anyway. But, you know, the orcs knew about the fucking secret tunnel because they were waiting here. So, yeah. why the fuck did they not use it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, fuck so. What can you even say about this? It's like, let these innocents go. Why should I? Well, I'll give you some rings. It's like, we'll just kill you anyway. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll just kill you and take the it. rings. Thanks for telling me about it. And then, yeah, of the course, would not. she doesn't the like... would obviously not do that. No, it's, it's such an entirely stupid scenario in the first place. It's like, what the fuck have mm -hmm. we done to get here? And you know, it's funny how long they take as well to realize the situation, but it's just like, you know what? 
girls, go back in the hole. Just go. I'll I'll stay at the front. We'll walk backwards, and I'll just kill any orc as a yep. single file. They can't do shit. <laughs> it's also, I think, very funny that like Celebrimble was willing to lay down his life so that Galadriel could get these rings as yep. far the fuck away from Eregion as possible. First orc mm -hmm. she bumps into, she's like, "Hey, I got some rings. Take me to see your boss." Well, <laughs> you see, Celebrimble is actually right now with binoculars on the balcony. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Uh, Do you even know this. anything about the rings? Like, what no. does that mean to an orc? Like, I'll give you nine rings, and the orc said, "Well, I don't. I'm an orc. I don't, I don't wear bling." He's not even Just, a Sauron orc. You. He's a an no. orc. So you know, I don't know. So it should mean nothing to them, and they should just go and gut them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if they knew what the rings meant, they would still gut them and eat them. Like, <laughs> yeah, they eat the rings. No, no not tastes like horse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, crunchy. <laughs> well, that leads us to uh, the the pincushion scene. Yes. <laughs> Which it's, one? Uh, there's so many in this show, suddenly. Of this episode, last episode. I, I mean, don't know what it, it was just getting filled with arrows. This image is just amusing to me, I guess. I don't know, it's kind of mean, but like... Is, I know. <laughs> there is something about it. It's just really because know. he's been such a retard throughout the The way I see series. it is... It's just the, those arrows and the blood, it's all the writing. That's what that, all of that is. <laughs> yeah. There's Killer like, oh man. <laughs> you had no chance, buddy. Um, uh... Anatar is just, he's hes torturing Killer Brimbor by shooting him with arrows. <laughs> arrows at him. And then it's, another it's one very, happened, uh... like right at the beginning of the scene. As though, it, I don't know, there's something funny about this. It's, it's just like, what are you doing? It's, it's like, I don't know. It's fuck not you. very. It's not very creative with this torture, you know. No. It's, uh, it's very it's just something that like some rando with a bow would do. Yeah, well, that... I mean, I guess if... he's Sauron, so he's relying on being extremely accurate so that he doesn't. I mean, kill him too Sauron quickly. is the Lord of Darkness and has probably well, tortured like thousands <laughs> of people. Of... He would probably. <laughs> yeah, like, well, I mean, arrows. he could transform, he could appear as Medania and have her like kill herself on repeat for him to like just completely <laughs> fuck around with him mentally and, and destroy All kinds his... of illusions that could torture him, yeah. yeah. It would be, and, it, and it's an yeah. excuse to do interesting visuals and stuff, but no. He's like, I've got my ultimate weapon, picks up bow, picks up arrow, and then Kilgrimble's like, oh. <laughs> Whatever happened to be in the prop department. Yeah, it's like, we, that's what we, I have. <laughs> we use those all the time. And he's like, yes, but have you used them to shoot a person? And he's like, yeah, that's like the main thing yeah. we use it for. <laughs> <laughs> you won't know the pain oh. of this. He's like, I chopped my own thumb off, man. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's just <laughs> now, give me your rings. Oh. Yeah, he's oh, basically uh, he shoots him with rings, and then he's what? like, "Oh, you Brimbor, you, you, oh, shoots him with arrows, not rings." <laughs> Was he Sonic? <laughs> I, it's happening. No, this is. I told you this would happen. My brain's melting. Yeah. So we have to hurry before I just go, uh, go, go. I it's just melting. Become a new <laughs> character. Um. So he, Anatar leans down and he's like, "I'll oh, look what you've done to yourself." And I'm like, just "Stop! No one stop. believes you when you say <laughs> that." Brim board, stop stupid. hitting yourself. It's so dumb. <laughs> you shot me full of arrows, and you're like, "Oh, look what I did!" Shut up, you retard! You did this. You shot me. You were he's like, "Can here. we get past all that crap? Like, you talk to me like a normal person." Jeez. I mean, they do chat a bit. Essentially, uh, Kelly Brimbor says that the rings are out of his reach, and soon he will be too. He'll be fucking dead. There's nothing you can do about it about me then. Ha ha. Um, and he reminisces a bit about, oh, it used to be really nice around here. I hear the birds on the river, and it's a pity that you've silenced them, and you're just a big fucking jerk. Mm -hmm. uh, but Kelly Brimbor says, namely, that um, actually, Sauron, you are a prisoner to those rings. Uh, those rings are, like, controlling you. Um, you. You've sort of, like, deceived yourself in a way. And he calls Anatar the Shadow of Morgoth, mm. which obviously upsets Anatar Ooh. a lot, who fucking hates Morgoth mm. a lot. And he turns around, and he's like, ah, and he stabs Celebrimbor with a spear. Yeah, he says yeah. there are ways of keeping you alive. Do I have to teach you that uh, fucking craft as well or whatever? And then mm -hmm. proceeds to immediately fucking kill him. Well, he made him angry, so he didn't yeah, account for I that. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, it's <laughs> he, got he got big mad, fucking triggered, and they killed him immediately. <laughs> he doesn't really like even... being... What? It's like a really stupid move to not keep him yeah. alive. Like a, yeah. a, a, remarkably stupid. He made him angry. He called him Shadow of Morgoth. Pathetic. 
they're banking on yeah, him, yeah. baiting him into killing himself. And I'm trying that obviously has happened in other films. I'm I can't think of examples off the top of my head, but doing that with Sauron. Park? What yeah, we're saying South Park. I'm not... like, wait, what? <laughs> when does that happen? Sa- Sauron or? would not be fucking triggered and fall for this shit. Like, well, you wouldn't think so. Like, because we see him get emotional every now and then, but it not. He shouldn't really. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if it's that he's really dumb or that he's acting out of character. I think it's that he's really dumb. Wait, what was it, the, it's an, emo- both. It's an it? emotional retard is what it is. Yes. What was the Jurassic Park reference though? I can't remember, honestly. I was, tr- well, um, I, yeah, I don't know. Something about, I think it was something about a Velociraptor. Uh, the point is that what? Killer Brimbor, he's, he's going to die here. It's, uh, it's very, it's very sad. What a... Mm-hmm. People do also and... die in Jurassic Park, so that that might be the link. Oh, so, there we go. Yeah. We got it. <laughs> we locked the, unlocked the code or something. Very sad. I can't help but feel sad about this character, Celebrimbor, who's just been stupefied, as in made stupid. It's not really what that is. Means, I, I think I get you. Here. Um, it's like you, he you was know? created solely to be ruined, tortured, and then killed. And it's like okay, kind of, well, yeah. He yeah. never, he he never got that like redeeming quality. There was never that point of you just feel bad for his character. It's kind of like Mardania, Mardania, Miradania. Yeah, it's like it's meta feelings. Like, it's not the, the story they're telling. It's the story oh, yeah, of yeah, the story. It's, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think we most feel bad because the actor is quite good. The actor that is helped, that yeah. carrying yeah. the weight of yeah, the show yeah. in season two. Absolutely. Oh yeah. He he puts in the well, yeah, weight. I barely and he noticed really him in season one. It. But season two, he doesn't like, do oh. anything in season one. He he has one. Yeah. He doesn't get to do scene. anything. Yeah. I think he has literally one dramatic scene, which is where he like slams his hand on the table and says, "I almost had time" or, or something like that. That that's yeah, he's, it. he's a bit yeah. like insane in the last episode, I think. But, yeah, but yeah, it's it, that, it's a lot less dramatic than the yeah. all the stuff he's had to do in this season. So, yeah, uh, yeah he's well suited for the role, I guess. He's a very good actor. Yeah, very strange when he said there. you will be the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> <laughs> now, part of a DVD box set that you can <laughs> order from these fine retailers. It this could get worse from that, because canonically, after the, the, the sack of Eregion, the orcs actually parade his body around on a big standard while he's still like stuck full of arrows. It's just his corpse. So they could actually celebrate his, his brutal murder in the scene in season three. I don't know that they will go that far. Because they might consider it too graphic, but like, it's such a waste of a potentially brilliant character. Like you're right, it's a meta sadness you feel. It's like watching yeah. someone bully a handicapped person. It's not yeah, like a nice much. thing to see. No, that's me. I'm the bully. I bully handicapped people. <laughs> wow. I bully the Rings of Power writers. That is bullying a handicapped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those ones yeah, deserve it. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so. There we go. Celebrimbor has perished. Mm. What a fucking shame. Bye yeah. bye. And Sauron Once cl- cries done with like that a little story. Mm hmm. Yeah, Sauron was... cries like a bitch. Yeah. Now, yeah, Sauron starts crying. I will say, it's kind of nice for it to be over, though, the fucking Celebrimbor shit, you know? It's yeah. Like, yeah. Kind of. Thank fuck yeah. we're done with that. <laughs> it's one storyline done. Fucking <laughs> throw it in the trash and move on. Hopefully, the one we get is replaced, of... but it's slightly less cringe. But I mean, I'm oh, not man, I hope. It just makes you wonder who they're going to introduce in season oh. three. Like, well, Jesus he's going to Christ. He's going to go to Numenor. Surely that's what's happening next. Mm. I guess. Um, Maybe. So, um, get a bit of an Avengers Rimbor... moment here. Yeah, meeting of Sauron oh. and Glug. Do we want to <laughs> just briefly talk about Sauron crying? Like, why? Um, is, is there any re- is, is it to do, is it to do with Celebrimbor was legitimately skilled? Is that the idea? I, or like yeah. a friend? Is that what they're trying to get across? Like he actually I, I, really they had a I, don't I, I think, I think, I think it's uh, his, his like Celebrimbor's last words hits him. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, because yeah. he says the, which I don't like. I don't like how they do it in terms of like the whole fan service element, but the fact that they are reincorporating something from earlier in the season where he says, "Celebrimbor, you can be the Lord of the Rings." And then in this scene, I'm 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 trying not to laugh as I'm saying it because it is quite funny. <laughs> but um, then then in this scene, as Celebrimbor has just been stabbed and he's and he's dying, his last words are, um, "You you Sauron are are a slave to the Rings. You are Sauron, the Lord of the Rings." <laughs> so he has flipped it on its head, and, and Sauron is now. Crying, he's thinking of Waldrick, right. and he's say, he's thinking <laughs> he's like, "Oh shit, am I? Does he know that what Celebrimbor is saying has a hint of truth to it?" 
That's the only reason I can think for why he would why, be crying. Yeah, that's, here. that's my interpretation, but, but like, it's bullshit. Yeah, like it, it, he knows way more about the whole situation than Caleb Rimbaud does, and he would know that. As in, mm. like, mm -hmm. you yes. can say all your bullshit, but you don't actually know how just how much control and power I have. I do. You know, it's, it, it just doesn't feel like it would hit, to be honest with you. And it feels a little too shoehorny for me. Like, they control you. You're the lord of the rigs. It's like, yeah. no, that's that's the other thing. That's the alternative. It's, it's when kind of Bimbo goes one further and says, like, and I foresee just one will be your undoing. And like, it's like, uh, stop it. Like, that that's cringe. Anticipating yep. it that's so weird. much. But it's also, like, that's true, but Celebrimbo can't know it. Sauron can't mm -hmm. be a slave to the rings that have so far been made. You know what? That just can't be a thing. If Sauron is a slave to the Nine Rings, then he is a slave to his own slaves when the Nine Rings turn the men into the maybe, Nazgul. He's a slave maybe he's to his referring, ambition, maybe? Yeah, I think that's it's a reference to his ambition about but, them and how he's let his ambition for the rings, like, consume his existence. Not like an actual mm -hmm. magical... I don't think them. that would get to him at all, though. Like, no, no, it wouldn't. Like, I think that makes sense, but I don't see why that would prompt this kind of reaction. Yeah. Unless also, he once um, again has fucking plot reading powers and he also, knows that's what's gonna happen. Personally, not a huge fan, actually, of saying uh, it's gonna be one person that's gonna bring your downfall with the mm. that, that sort of stuff. It was like, I feel like Lord of the Rings... Oh. Wasn't he saying it was the one ring will bring I thought he was saying, saying would just one, one of would... the rings. No, I, one of the rings. Yeah, yeah. He was referencing the one ring. I yeah. thought he. I thought at one point he mentions that like it'll only even take one to take you down or whatever. One I think so, in... but that's in reference to uh, the yeah. rings of power that he's a slave yeah. to. So it's like you're a slave to these rings, and I foresee that just one will be your undoing or something like that. I mean, is that is that even true? Actually, though, uh, isn't it? Technically, technically yeah. speaking, all the rings play yeah. a role. He basically right? he basically Tec pours like uh, a big part of himself well, into yeah, but the one ring. That is also what when saves it gets him from death like, too. Well, yeah, but when the ring gets destroyed later, like, he can't really take physical form anymore after that, and he sort of, like, fades away into nothing. There's one way of looking at it, it would be, like, uh... okay, if he, if he hadn't done the, the one ring, then he would have survived getting his fingers cut off by Elendil, and he wouldn't have been turned into, like, well, but a, wait, but a without big it, monster. If they'd continued to stab him, and then they sucked up his blood with a hoover. <laughs> 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 I, yeah. Yeah, oh, for fuck's sake, hold on. How does that even work? Why does he need the One Ring to not die if Rings of Power has established that he turns into spaghetti? No, no, the oh, One yes. Ring just makes him more powerful. Right, but I thought that part of the point of the One Ring was that it had to be destroyed in order to actually kill Sauron. Well, that's because he poured a lot of himself into it, and the One Ring can be destroyed, but he can't really but, be destroyed. Yeah, he, he sure, won't no. die, it's just that he can never again take any kind of physical form. So it's, it's much yeah. the same thing yeah. happens when Saruman dies. They're sort of reduced to these vague wisps of wind that get blown around the so world he, forever. Yeah. He really should have done the, the Voldemort thing. He should have put himself into a whole bunch of stuff, so that if any one of them gets taken off him or destroyed, he's got plenty yeah. left, yeah. Yeah, Arms if that's the case, idiot. then that that means that going by Rings of Power's own rules, if Sauron goes on to pour a load of his spirit into the One Ring, then that means he's made the only thing that can kill him. Yeah. Which I'm guessing is... The idea is... meant to be that, like, Celebrimbor incepted that idea into his mind of, like... <laughs> and the, the thing is, like... The, the thing is, like, Sauron so, so is really... Idea. He's not really dead after the One Ring gets destroyed. He's just, like, severely weakened to the point he's, like, just missed, basically. Okay. But he's not, he's not completely dead. But like, the, Celebrimbor knowing about this ring, like he hasn't foreseen anything, because like Gilgalad has seen things, he's, he's referenced like, I've, I've foreseen yeah. X, Y, and Z, and Galadriel same thing because of her ring, but this is the first time we've had Celebrimbor say, I foresee something. Yeah, I, I don't it, know what, it's, why. It's, it's just it, the writers thinking the writers they're clever, they're, they're just yeah. anticipating what will happen later. They haven't actually yeah. thought through why Celebrimbor would think that or say that. It's just they yeah, think no. it's clever, I, so they'll do it. I do, I like Fringy's idea, though, that, that this is... Inception. Yes. Yeah, it's going to make Sauron go, one <laughs> ring, that's not a bad idea. Uh, one ring that has all your stuff together. in it, and if you destroy, yeah. destroys you. He's like, wow, great idea. <laughs> I think that's why he was crying, because he, he was like, oh shit, that's a really good idea. That's fantastic. <laughs> he really is gifted. This motherfucker was so much joking. cleverer than I thought he was. <laughs> I'm only half joking here. I kind of think that might be what they were doing. Oh, boy. No. Oh my god. Well, fuck, no, hold on. There might be, you might actually be right, um, unironically, because earlier in the season, when Galadriel had her mind vision of Celebrimbor doing the, the poem of the rings, she says, nine, seven, three, he does not say one. 
which mm -hmm. suggests that the plan for the one did not exist at that point in time. That's what. I, that's what, yeah. Hmm. 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 Are these not the seeds you planted? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's because, yeah, I had a whole other read when I first saw this. And I think it's because I wasn't paying enough attention. And I caught the line without, like, the rings part of it, I guess. When he says, uh, one, yeah. one will be your undoing. I was like, is he talking about Frodo? Why the fuck would he know that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think he is specifically talking about the one ring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the whole thing is just embarrassing. <laughs> like, he's just declaring <laughs> yes. one of the rings. It's just the entire show is stupid. They, well, I, it's, it's, I it's what say, right? Two he, midgets will D be your downfall. He doesn't, <laughs> yeah. he, Caleb Brimble doesn't get a win. I think this is the writers being like, see, he got his win. We're like, no, he didn't. No, what did he even do? He, he, he just I lost I don't win like this. I hope I lose. We did make sucks. Sauron cry because he's a retard, but you know. It's... Oh, uh, also, I mentioned it earlier briefly, but just to bring it up again, Sauron didn't need to torture Caleb Brimble. He could just jump into his mind and be like, oh, okay, so yep. Galadriel has the yep. win. Mm -hmm. Yep. Also, well, his and blood is in the nine rings. You'd think he'd have some way of telling where that Something was. That bothers the fuck out of me like is thing? that yeah, he popped your illusion one time. Now you can make a new one where everything yeah. looks the way it does now. But you say like, ah, oh, I'm gonna go fucking kill whoever. You walk out of the room, and then you have Galadriel rush in and go, oh god, yeah. kill Brimble, Let's get out of here while we can. Like he's gone. He's and then. You know, but we don't even try that. He's just like, nah. Mm. It's just we we lost. He he. He operates as though he can never trick Celebrimbor again. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so he, he just could... opts to shoot him with a bow a few times. Yeah, which is like, him... why? <laughs> <laughs> he could zap it's him so back dumb. to like the previous, like uh, a week ago, and be like, so everything that you just experienced was a big elaborate vision of the future of what will happen if you don't finish these fucking rings, which I need you to do right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or with Galadriel, she's like, the only way we can beat him is if we forge more rings. And then <laughs> Celebrimble's like, wait. <laughs> wait <a laughs> he second. pokes it. Are you sorry? Trust me, Elrond, there's no time. 20 rings mine. this time. Or wherever you are. 2003. Is that divisible? Yeah. Like 3,000 3, rings. Triple, 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 <laughs> triple. <laughs> <laughs> Tipple, 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 tipple. We'll give them to oh, the no. fish of the world. Trust me. <laughs> rings for fish. 417 <laughs> rings for the fish, who are a, more you know, than you all know, creatures. Sauron says no. that just to see what Caleb Rimble will say, and he's like, let's do it. And he's like, really? That's... You're gonna, okay, <laughs> yeah, sure. Unreal. Rings for fish. That comes across oh. like another like another Rick and Morty lies. Morty, Morty, we gotta make rings for fish, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> we save the this world, be... Morty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh oh, guys! Wait, my I my joy detector is is pinging. We gotta no, it's stop. Not. We have to talk about rings of power. Oh, okay. No oh, happiness man. allowed. Oh, no. oh, damn it! Actually, there's a little bit of happiness because we get a glug appearance. Isn't that yeah, yeah, exciting? Yeah, yeah. A glug bunch of a... once, uh, once, <laughs> once oh, Anatar God. murders uh, Celebrimbor, orcs come in and they ask if Anatar is Sauron, and a. Uh, Anatar says he has many names. And, and then Glug asks, slams the table Glug and says, Motherfucker, I didn't ask that. <laughs> Stop answering Even that Glug way. Glug gets you character assassinated. Like, every single time. He does. Because like, so the Glug's entire thing has been, uh, he doesn't really like seeing people suffer and die because he's the nice orc. And like Sauron will appeal to him because Sauron isn't Adar, and Sauron hasn't made all of his people go to war and die. Mm -hmm. But he's just walked in on Sauron, and the first thing he sees is him impaling a defenseless elf who he's also <laughs> shot through with arrows. And he thinks, yeah, he, he looks like he'll be nicer than Adar. I'll go with him instead. Sauron like, looks at Glug, looks at Caliburn like board, is like, that wasn't me. That was someone else. Was, he, he was like this when I got here. I, I told him here. he did this to himself. Yeah, 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 believe me. Himself. Himself. Yeah. I find it very amusing as well, the idea that like Glug has just been walking around Iregian, just asking every elf, hey, are you Sauron? <laughs> are you him? When they are say no, Sauron? he stabs and moves on. <laughs> hey, how many how many names do you have? <laughs> many. Oh, fuck. One yeah. day he's just gonna say, "Yeah, that's me." Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. That's that's me. Yeah. Pre All presumably, right. like everything he like, would know about Sauron would be like horrific, horrible shit. Like you know, Satan person. They could have gone the hot fuzz route. He walks in and says, "Did you do that?" I said, "No." He tripped and fell on his own spear. <laughs> like, that would have been like a way out. <laughs> and then they show the image of him being dead. You're like, um. He tripped. <laughs> what? <laughs> he impaled himself to that pillar. It was really crazy, but no, I, saw it, it all, I saw it happen. It was a spooky ghost. <laughs> it's like hey, speaking of spooky ghosts, Ooh. well, I don't, I don't Ooh. think I have a 
I don't think I have a uh, segue for this. But come. We are going back to Pilar Gear. We haven't been here for like four for a while oh. at this point. Yeah. yeah, it's been a while. Long uh, enough here, that you might have forgotten it was stage. a place. Yeah, last time we were here, we cuckoided Isildur quite heavily. It was very oh, cool. Aww. We've only, there was we've only be some... been in Pilar for two episodes. We, we, I thought you were going to say we've only nice. begun to cuck. <laughs> yeah, we're going to cuckoid him much more. It's also true. Let the cucking in commence. Hey, yeah, we're back at Pilar Gear, if you remember this plot line. Um, a oh, bunch yeah, of one... Numenorians have kind of shown up here on the river in one of their ships. Uh, Theo has gone to visit Isildur, who says that because his knife stabbed him before it will not stab him again <laughs> because that's how knives work and then, I then it puts just, it in a bag without any protection like a fucking and then he dog. just chucks it into a bag pointy side down so that'll <laughs> work out great uh, Theo asks Isildur how he lives with his uh, mother being dead and Isildur said he thought he dealt with it okay until he came here and now he says he lives with it poorly um he it, he offers Theo, yay, hey, Theo, come with me to Numenor. And Theo says, nah, I, I think being a low man suits me just fine. I'm going to be the Lord of Pilar gear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For some um, he's, if he's the Lord of Pilar gear, is he a low man? He's the highest low uh, man. Yeah. Highest low man. <laughs> Technically, like ev everyone highest who's not uh, Numenorian is a low man. Technically. He's... He's he's on a stool. I think that's how higher. it works, at least. Okay. Yeah, maybe. I wouldn't know. Uh, so after Theo leaves, Estrid comes in. Boo. You know Estrid, the bitch? Yeah, yep. she's here. Fuck that hoe. <laughs> no, no, not that bitch, the other one. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> so, yeah, we've we've talked about Estrid in the last, uh, last couple episodes or whatever. She sucks. I hate her. I hate Estrid. She's a piece yeah. of shit. Cunt. Um, now, uh, she comes in and says that uh, Hagen, you know, her fiancé lover guy, <laughs> he has started building their home for them the other day. And she says that uh, she thought that his kindness was what love felt like, but she felt ill when he said that. Um, she says that uh, he wants to, uh, as long as the house stands, their love will stand as well. So, I hope it doesn't burn down or anything. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the uh, Isildur kisses her, the music swells, these two fucking deserve each other. <laughs> um, I hate you both. I don't know, man. It's mm -hmm. pretty awful. I mean, it was just uh, funny because you can tell, it's like, what is there to even say about this? Yeah. yeah Who the fuck gives a shit? Shitty. I think it's funny um, because in my episode four review, I make a, 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 a what I thought was a joke at the time that she, she's going to cuck her husband and going to suck Isildur's balls. And then I watch episode eight. And it's like, oh, that was more like a prediction now. That's OK. <laughs> so Isildur says, hey, Astrid, you should come with me. And we'll see what happens to that later, which is exactly what as far as he should be aware, that's exactly what she was trying to do before. She was trying to use him to get to Numenor. Neat. Now, one of the Numenorians who has arrived here in Pelar Gear is Kemen. You remember Kemen? Yes, he's a, Kemen. He, he's a psycho bad guy. He Love killed, he, he murdered Valandil in the back, but we don't talk about Valandil anymore. <laughs> so he, uh, no. he shows up <laughs> and he wants to address the low men of Pilar Gear. He doesn't respect anyone's authority. He shrugs off Theo being the son of Bronwyn. Not that he should know who that is. <laughs> what the fuck yeah, does they that mean? mean? They say that yeah. twice. It's like the, the joke writes itself. Theo immediately yeah. says, hi, I'm Theo, son of Bronwyn. And Kemen just completely ignores him because obviously. And then Hagen says, oh, perhaps you didn't hear. This is Theo, son of Bronwyn. It's like, what? You're actually doubling down on how little sense this makes. Why would this guy care? He's just arrived and you're mm -hmm. saying, hello, I'm Theo, son of some random medic who died off screen. <laughs> Like even, so, even well, if it is no, what the fuck she? does that mean? Well, I think the, my my read of this was that because season one ends with Bronwyn being elevated to effectively the leader of Pelagia, and she does speak directly with the queen, 
Oh, um, right. that, that story would have filtered its way back. And so they expect the Numenorians to know who she is because they still think the queen is in charge of Numenor <clears throat> and the queen knows who she is. But that isn't <laughs> what's the case. So, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're probably right there. That's fair. <laughs> That's how I feel about the whole show. I, the episode yeah. from most, yeah, my face for most of the show, <laughs> in between the random bouts of hysterical laughter, is just this. <laughs> So, um, mm. yeah, I, I think it, I think the wild men are living with the Southlanders yep. now in Pelagir. They're just hanging out. They are. Which is um, not cool because the wild men are crazy psycho murderers. <laughs> and are. heavily implied that Hagen specifically and his chums were like devout worshippers of Adar. Yep. Um, but I guess they're just not now, or he was speaking in a vague manner because drama for episode four or three or whatever the fuck it was. I don't know. It, it was one of them. weird. Yeah, it was one of them. Get along. And no. when they're discussing, like, oh, what should we do in order to try and find Theo because he ran off and got lost or whatever, one of the guys in Pelago says they they've probably eaten him or something. It's like that they they think that the wild men are cannibals, but they're all now living together happily. That's not happening. I don't believe you. Yeah, that's uh, stupid. But they're just here. They're building little houses and get cucked by Estrid. It's really cool. I just <clears> like the auto villain shit of like we're gonna we're changing things destroy some houses if you need to you're like yeah. what <laughs> he's cartoon he's okay. he continues to be a cartoonishly evil person yeah 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 with no depth or Wait. nothing interesting happening way over the top yeah and he tries not being for just this one scene on screen at the moment it's like oh Isildo, yeah, yeah, yeah his sister'll be really happy you're alive but then he doesn't keep the lie going. No, he's he immediately shit. pivots back <laughs> to being cartoon man he's like oh yeah your father's an evil dick and we tried to kill him if you, you're not going to try and pretend at least yeah. for a few yeah, more like, seconds, Lawler, if you could possibly get the uh, the clip on screen and loop it because it's when he it's when Kemen first sees Isildur, and to me it just looks like all of the muscles in Kemen's face activate all at once. <laughs> like, mm. Almost. Also, by the way, why, yeah, here we why, go when he turns around here. Why does Hagen know about? <laughs> how long has Hagen and stuff and people been here? By the way, because he's like, hey, this is Theo, son of Bronwyn. It's like, wh why do you get to talk? You're an evil man. Uh, well, he was kind of buddies with Theo because they both got kidnapped by a tree. Oh, I guess they had very that's, important conversations off screen, and that's got the best we got. Friend yeah, yeah. I appreciate the question in chat. Is Homer still alive? Homer died. Uh, episode oh, seven yes. of last season, I the think. The Calgary Man, episode Treadwell. six. Yeah. yeah. Poor Homer. Treadwell he died. He, he, was, uh, he got shot by an arrow in the back. It's the only way you can take him out is a surprise attack with arrows. Otherwise, he could have he defended that fucking place forever, but no. Absolutely. <laughs> only treachery could bring down old Treadwell. Homer Treadwell. Um, but at least he died before he saw all of this madness come to pass. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh no, there he is. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Kemen, uh, he notices Isildur. Holy crap! Oh, oh wait, the uh, the Pelargians, uh, Pelargirians, the Pelagrites, they reference a deal made with Queen Muriel. Uh, don't know what deal this is. Do you guys know? It was I made don't... up for this. Yeah, yeah, no, there wasn't yeah. one. Happened off screen, like, I guess. The she talked to the the last way, yeah. They were talking about an army, but Bronwyn and Miriel, as far as we know, never talked about any kind of deal. They were just like, hey, Bronwyn, well, Bronwyn, you're really cool, and you're going to be a great leader, and then she dies of a stinky arrow. She said Numenor will return, but that's the extent of the deal, and the deal yeah. didn't encompass, for example, taking all the wounded villagers down to Pelagia on their way out of Middle-earth, which they could easily have done on their ships, because they'd lost <laughs> lots of soldiers, but they just left yeah. them to walk out of the mountains and get assailed by wild men. And Theo, I think, I think Theo says in this scene, like, what about the supplies and the food, which means that what, they, what the deal was involved supplies and food, which isn't something that ever happened. So they invented it to off screen. the character's dialogue for this scene. Off, I guess they invented it off screen just to make him evil, or uh, right to make uh, him uh, deny the deal. To make him alter the deal, pray I don't alter it any yeah. further. It's to make it's to set them up for shopping down the trees and shit, so yeah, we can have them be a boss. Yeah. yeah, what a crazy journey Kimon has been on as well. Just like going from <laughs> yeah, blowing up ships to try and stop the war to now like doing everything his dad wants and bullying low men for 
reasons. Just they, they're not the same character. Well, yeah. And I, I just find it insane how like every single thing that Kemen has done in both seasons has been a failure. He is he is a complete like scatterbrained clusterfuck of a person. And most recently, he caused his father supposedly pretty serious problems. Um, and now he's decided to send him here on another pretty serious mission. Like, if this was a punishment where it's like, fuck you, you idiot son, I'm going to send you to Pelagia. And he's like, oh, I don't want to be amongst all the grubby peasants. He's like, well, you should have thought of that before you murdered someone. Then it would be like, okay, this character views this as a punishment. And he obviously doesn't want to be there. But they don't. that doesn't happen. So it's just like, well, Kemen's off on another important mission. I, I don't know why. I don't know why Farazon keeps trusting him. Yeah, he shouldn't really. Um, um, it's been funny when watching it's... this with a friend, by the way. The the whole uh, Barrack saved me, or I wouldn't have been here if not for Barrack. When the camera shows the shot, <laughs> yeah. if someone yeah. if someone doesn't know, which the the, the uh, I was watching it with nuts, so she she had no idea that that was the horse's name. So <laughs> when you see this shot, right. <laughs> Oh, those guys is Beric. Yeah, it, she, she was like, "Who's Beric?" And I was like, "Oh, well, Beric's the horse that saved Isildur from Shelob." <laughs> <laughs> this makes sense, I swear. I, I was at one point just like, "I can't, I can't explain more than that." Just you kind of have to just take that, you know, move on. Shelob's down the road. Um, it's weird. She's just hanging out there. <laughs> yeah. But if you also, didn't know the horse's name is Beric, you'd be like, that guy? Be like, well, hello, Beric. And he's like, no, <laughs> yeah, no, it's no. him. <laughs> oh, I'm Beric. That's me. Yep. Fildo seems to think that Beric saved everyone because Kemen is like, oh, wow, there's lots of survivors. And he says, there wouldn't be if not for Beric. It's like, no. He saved one, well, two of you, because I guess he saved Estrid as well. He's a cool guy. That's a cool <sighs> horse. Hell yeah. yeah. All right, but yeah, long story short, Kemen's orders are essentially to turn this town into, like, not a, a settlement of Numenor, but, like, a military garrison of sorts, like a fort. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, if you want to stay here, you can, but you're going to have to give us a bunch of wood and timber and stuff, and then if you don't do that, you don't get the supplies you need to survive the winter. <laughs> also, I'm evil, uh, by the way. <laughs> also, I'm evil. So... Yep, that's that's that. It's okay. He also says, "No worries. It's they're just oh trees. They're only trees. <laughs> only yeah. trees. Why would you they're say that? Trees. Because right. and... you, you, you nearly missed the cuckery. Oh yeah, we got to talk about the cucking. Uh, so Hagen <laughs> isn't a character. No, uh, he yeah. um essentially is Newman uh is still there once Kemen to make room for one more person to go back to Numenor, being Estrid. Yeah. Estrid, and then <laughs> remember, has like a fiancé slash proto-husband. He's right Hagen, there. Proto -husband. Who's right there, yeah. right there in the hat, and he has his started his building their house. His, I love his reaction here. He just looks like, oh, sick, we're going to get to Numenor. That's awesome. He, I can't well, wait. He, <laughs> he just walks up to them and then just isn't allowed to say anything. It's like, what? You know, what Hagen you... is being actively cucked in an insane way here by Isildur, and <laughs> he he's doesn't... just not allowed to react to it or do anything about it in any way. Yeah. It is bizarre. I'm not even sure if he understands what's going on. He's like, well, when yeah, they, he looks, anything he looks happening? confused, like, am I going to? Like, <laughs> like, when dude. they had him walk over to Estrid, I was, I was really thinking, like, oh, sh are they actually going to have some conflict here? Is are they going to make him say, oh, it's okay, you go with the one, go with someone else who you mm. actually love more than me? I know it's okay. I thought they were going to do that, which would have been pathetic as shit. But what they yeah. do is even worse. He just doesn't. He seems to know that that's what's happening, but he doesn't say anything. Because <laughs> why else does he walk over there? Yeah. yeah, and he can like hear all the words, and he yeah. knows that Isildur's like, "No, she's coming with me to Numenor." It's like, "Bitch, I I started building our house yesterday." <laughs> we said, "We said as long as the this... house stands, our love will last." I guess the house doesn't exist, so no. I, it holds. But <laughs> like, I thought, like, what's going on? What the fuck? There's a lot of lines like that. The because you said like, "Oh, he's evil. He's evil." It's like I'm assuming the line you're referencing for that is when he was like, "I'll kill your horse." Just, oh, yeah, I'm like, sorry, yeah, what? And it's just like, yeah, I'll fucking here. kill your whole... As, as though that's just a hinged thing to say in the middle of the conversation. Like, what the hell? Well, he says, that comes after he says, like, um, uh, things have changed in Numenor. Like, Muriel is now, is no longer the queen. My father is the king, and your father is wanted for treason. But if I had my way, he'd be fucking dead. 
And then <laughs> Isildur like attacks him, and then he says, "Shall I have them kill the whores because the peasants look hungry?" That's what I'm like, saying. Like, it, it's, it's this is clown behavior. How how does it's, it's how does everyone here not be like, guys? I think this guy's bad. <laughs> I think he's a bad man. Weird. I don't like this. Um, bad man. Yeah, I don't either. Oh, All right. Um, oh, sorry, chat. I said horse, not whores. That he's not going to kill the whores. He threatened to kill his sealed Kill the whores. The people are hungry. <laughs> <laughs> My whores. The concubines are going to. Well, that would actually work because of the whole cannibalism angle that everyone's forgotten about. But yeah. Yes. Neat. Okay. <sighs> Let's go to Ooh. Adar's rock. Oh, oh, sick. His favorite rock. His favorite one. It is that. It is then. So Galadriel <laughs> is being. The eye to march. All right. That's, that's, that's what's happening. Also, right Dutch angles the, the scene. Part. Yes, many <laughs> Dutch angles. I'm just saying he should have looked at the calendar and realized shit. This is yeah. a uh, this is a day I should be wary of. I should go out somewhere on my own where there's nobody nobody around. <laughs> I just realized the whole go Dutch angle it. thing is they did this uh, the last time these two characters spoke to each other. That entire scene was the same thing. Ugh. That's probably why they're doing it again. There's so much oh. unease between these characters. You see, this is filmmaking. All right, so <laughs> Galadriel is brought to him. Remember, she has the nine rings of power with her, the nine men ring, man rings. Um, now, uh, Adar is moping at a rock, but not really moping. He's just hanging out awkwardly at this rock, and he has Morgoth's crown here. Now, Galadriel says that she accepts Adar's terms. Okay, she'll give what him terms? what he that needs. Makes, what he'll, well, that makes I guess, the second scene in a row where they're referencing a deal that didn't happen. She, well, she says she'll give him what he needs to kill Sauron if he calls off the attack. And we see that Adar is shown wearing her ring of power. <gasps> and when he turns around, Adar is hot now. Oh, oh no. no. Galadriel's going to fuck him. Guy, it, the only thing Galadriel can't resist. <laughs> or he's really any blonde now. elf I guess we've been shown it's very strange <clears throat> I do like as much as for the sake of stringing the scene out he begins with like when I was young I had a different name and she says what was that and he says it doesn't matter and then we just move <laughs> it on was Sauron. Like, yeah. what, what's the point why well, even he, bring it up he uh, says that um, he used to have a name and he, he was known by an old name, but Adar is the name that he earned. And he asks her to help him earn his old name. They all have back. too many names, Rex. Can He's, we stop? He says, he says a meaningless name, a name I was uh, given. Well, you mean like every other fucking name? Given yeah. the way the scene was going, I was expecting them to reveal that he was Caliborn. But obviously they didn't end up going that way. Yo, that'd be um, hilarious. It would Ooh. be so funny, but yeah. <laughs> that isn't uh, what ends you, up happening. Your old, your old husband, she's like, oh, oh, right, Kel teleporno. Well, because I, yeah. I thought that they were going to go for like where his appearance changes when he wears the ring. And she's like, fucking hell, it's you. It's been so long. But that, again, is not where they go with it. And it's even funnier than she's that. She's going to help, help me earn the name teleporno. <laughs> 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 Zip. All right. So, uh, he offers her the ring back. Yeah. By the way, he's he like looks like a normal elf now. Essentially, the ring has sort of like cured his urichiness, and but now he's back he to sort of off. being a real. Yeah. He doesn't look like a deep fake. Yeah. So he takes and, um, the ring off. Yeah. Go ahead. I will actually finish describing the yeah what happens. So he takes off the ring and he offers it to her. And as he takes off the ring, his more like his his more goofy looking face, his goober face starts to kind of come back. And then he asks her to help him vanquish Sauron, and then he will recall his orcs back to Mordor. She says that she's killed more orcs than anybody because she's <laughs> that incredible and awesome. Mm, but he, sure he says that he forgives her. Hold oh, on, that's so good. Because this, whole, create a this whole thing is very fucking strange. It's like they're trying yeah. to present yeah. Adar as a hero when he's the one who destroyed a Regeon. He it's did like it. smoke in the background. He's just yeah. killed supposedly thousands of people. He created and... Mordor as well, which also killed yep. a whole bunch of people. Uh, Waldrick. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 Rob Waldrick yeah. of his achievements. Under his command, but yes, Waldrick did that. But it's it is weird. It's like you you do realize Adar is like not even remotely close to being he's heroic. Super right? evil. No. 
They Ed think he's super they, evil. They think he's redeemed or redeemable here when he's not. He's just wiped out thousands of people and he wiped out thousands more fairly recently. Um but like the the deal that they were the terms that they were referencing just now is what was proposed in episode seven, where Adar says, "Galadriel, uh, you need to give me your ring, and I will use it to defeat Sauron, or we can team up and we can defeat Sauron." Um, Adar then Galadriel agreed to that. Is what happened. Adar then pulled the plug, and the reason why he pulled the plug is because he didn't trust that Gilgalad was going to let him just go back to Mordor and chill with the orcs. Because obviously, why would that happen? And what he's just said in this scene is after this is done, I will go back to Mordor and chill with the orcs. Like, you don't think that you can do that. And Galadriel yeah. has walked up to him and said, I accept the terms that I already accepted. <laughs> that, that's, what, that's what's happened in this scene. You're saying it makes too much sense. I'm saying it makes anti-sense. <laughs> Nonsense. Like the rest of the fucking show. True. Uh, so it fits in perfectly. Yes. Now, um, Galadriel puts on the ring. And orcs show up and bring, oh no, they bring an injured orc on a stretcher. Oh and the God. injured God. orc is Glug. No. Oh no. no. <laughs> Where is oh, Glug? My goodness. Is he safe? Oh, oh my goodness. Now, an orc says that Glug resisted Sauron's influence to betray Adar. Glug the uncorruptible. Glug the pure. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Glug, we made up some funny names for Glug while we were watching this. It was very good. Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Truly unbelievable. It is not believable. Unless you're Adar. Because you see Adar leans down and he's like, oh, Glug, sweet Glug. Glug says that it's too late. And Adar's like, no, no, it, it isn't too late. And Glug says, no, no, it really is too late. And he stabs Adar with a knife. Oh, no. Oh, oh my goodness. Adar no, says, et to Glug. Yeah. But then it's it's too late. They, they're getting him. It's yep. There's again. no use. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's like <laughs> poetry. It rhymes because it's, it's exactly yeah, the same the, shots that we had at the start of the too. season. That's right. When, Adar... when uh, one got seasoned, now no. Adar's getting seasoned. And now he's Gluck the Betrayer. Because I guess yep. Adar he thought he's that... the Betrayer, the Judas. <laughs> yeah, so, Glug. like, Glug, obviously Glug is not the Glug the Uncorruptible and Glug the Pure, because Glug did Damn. turn on Adar, because that was obviously where his character arc was going, and he was essentially <laughs> uh, convinced by Sauron. It's kind of a character arc. It's the best we're going to get. Well, <laughs> out to be a traitor. Yeah. yeah. Well, so he he does turn on Sauron, but well, uh, sorry, he, he does he turn on Adar. But save the Republic, is he? The Republic. He didn't want to <laughs> <glug link. laughs> You the bitch, turned the bitch, against you know, me. What did they say at the end? The uh, what what they say after Caesar got killed? Um, Take that, bitch. No, I don't think they said that. But <laughs> I'm just imagining it now, but it's Glug. <laughs> And I obviously, I don't have to. He did it. we see it in this in this show. And well, obviously, because uh, this Glug is our death to tyrants, but man. And obviously, because Glug is our proxy character for the orcs, the orcs are all on board. Yeah, yeah. And so all, <laughs> the, all of them are doing it. They're all they're all traitors. We'll say what a fucking yeah, downgrade know. compared to Rebel Moon, where you get the in-house orchestra. Oh yes! Oh, if only there were some orcs. Or like, yeah. I mean, so yeah. good if it abruptly cut to a string quartet of orcs just sitting off in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like instruments. Orcs. But they oh, just no, like kazoo's. Orchestra it should have been a full symphony orchestra. <laughs> Playing metal, <laughs> death metal. Yes, it should have been death <laughs> metal. It should have been fucking like Damrod on the growls. Oh, they all have really shitty string instruments and don't really play well at all. I don't know how to play. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how to read sheet music. Yeah. Just, <laughs> the whole thing was a really bad idea. Uh, as, as will turn out to be the case for Glug, this was just a grievous error. On his it's side. just so funny too. There's not uh, yeah. even like a transitional period of Sauron kind of implying this was a good choice. He's just like, yeah, just do what he said to do, but even more. <laughs> yeah, his, yeah whole, okay. his whole deal here was like he wasn't trusting Adar because he was like too many orcs are going to oh. die so what he should have done here is uh, listen to Sauron I guess and then go back and kill Adar he's like right I'm going home to see my wife but no he doesn't he says Sauron what, Lord Sauron what do you command he's yep. immediately just a, uh, in exactly the same situation that he was in before and like yep. you said the order immediately uh, is go and fuck that city up which is the whole thing he had a problem with 
A few yeah. people in chat have mentioned Orc Estra. I actually didn't think. Hey, oh my god. Winky uh, <clears throat> Dink. That was not planned, but now that I'm aware of it, that's a orchestra. Yes, with orcs playing <laughs> while Adar is getting seasoned by Glug Brutus. The <laughs> <laughs> that that has to be a fucking thing in 40k that sounds uh, like a thing are movie. any well are any of you guys familiar with a band called necro goblicon yes <laughs> no that sounds funny it sounds funny as fuck though <laughs> yeah so it, it's a it's a metal band where the frontman is a goblin i've just uh there you go uh, oh my that's God. hilarious I, I know about finn troll though but not, not he runs stuff. around on stage it's great yeah <laughs> I can't believe that they're like, ah, oh, yeah, poetry. Sauron got seasoned, and then Adar yeah. got seasoned. Rhymes. It's and they, great and writing. Them, their it failure rhyme so much as... the well-being of the orcs. <laughs> I mean, like, okay. I guess a word does rhyme with itself, technically. I I just find it funny oh, because boy. it's just like it doesn't matter how we get there. That's that's all that is reflected in 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 this as a payoff, right? Who we don't care how we get there, just as long as we get there and getting there and having it be the same as what happened at the beginning. That makes it good. Yeah, you it's can tell they on writing when they were writing season two. They they clearly designed the the first scene to have an inversion at the end. <laughs> um, and then I guess they decided to try and connect the dots and just didn't yeah, really. I'm... I mean, Galadriel's just standing watching. Yeah, she just waits. Not she doesn't try to save him. She doesn't fucking mm. run off because this insanity is just going on right in front of her and she's just there waiting for her next line of dialogue. Oh, she is on yeah. pause. She cannot True. escape that pause menu. Holy fuck. Yep. Well, yeah, because it's particularly she's probably you see it in the wide shot where, uh, where they're all stabbing him and she's just sort of standing there just watching in the distance. <laughs> Uh. Um. Yeah. So. Oh, and then Sauron's here. He just shows Sauron, up. Yeah. Yeah. Anathar is here. That He's shot, around. by the way, of like, how sad is it that Adar is now dead? I was just like, nah, he was a dick. Uh, he's evil. Yeah, was, <laughs> like, he was a he real. He just killed thousands of he's people. An evil yeah. bastard. He hated so... his children, and he killed thousands of people. He's a dick. Bill yeah, stabs what a his jerk. Adar is stabbed well. to death. Glove Glug gets the the kill shot kill stab and Sauron's looking down and he's like ha ha um yeah Galadriel says that uh Sauron planned all of this from the beginning and he says that she yeah. thinks too much of him uh, I find I, that line very funny <laughs> because they're throwing that in just to just to be like no this this does make a little bit of sense it's like no he doesn't have to have planned everything but um I went through all of the steps of Sauron's evil plan um, I'm not going to read it all because it's quite long, but there's 20 steps. Two of them are things that he that he just kind of winged it just to see what would happen. The rest of it is, is either just insanity happening that he couldn't have accounted for or him <laughs> meticulously planning things. So the idea that he's just an opportunist who just kind of let things happen is just not true at all. Oh yeah, the writers would say this yeah. is all absolutely planned beautifully by him. Yeah. She she also looks in complete shock when he's like behind her and says her name, but she was staring right at him like a few seconds ago. <laughs> I think it's funny that she was looking at this the whole time. It's like, what is happening? Why are they all stabbing yeah, at the <laughs> <laughs> she just run away? She could have outrun yeah. him. Mm -hmm. If she just started running now, she would have gotten away. No, he'll she's be like Mysterio power. and give her visuals of corners that don't exist, Fucking and she'll eventually be turned all the way back to him. <laughs> <laughs> Gladriel does try to kill him, though, while he's kneeling over um, Adar's body, mm. and he blocks the sword with Morgoth's crown. Oh, it's so epic, mm. dude. He they says he they wants... So cool oh, that. yeah, this is really cool. Um, he wants her ring, and he wants the nine, and they have a shitty sword fight, which is odd because he can, like, use telekinesis and controls people's minds and stuff, so uh, he should just He can that. just get them right now. Yeah, let me control you really quick and let me give you the, the stuff and then I'll leave. But we yeah, forgot about those powers, so shut up. Maybe if they're trying to imply that, I don't even, I don't even know. I don't know. So yeah. back uh, at a regular ring protector, maybe, but they haven't led anything to. Like yeah. he tries to and he well, can't. Yeah, the way you do or... that is you have him grab her arm and then imply that he's doing magic and then it the show the ring and then make it clear visually that the ring is countering him. Yeah, like something he looks like at that it or feels it something. Yeah. 
And especially because nope. he's like, wait, this is my ring. I made this. And she's like, and you, I, hmm. So, <laughs> back at Eregion. It's been a long day. And we still Yay. have more to go. Really bad day. Elrond and Gilgalad have been captured. Oh. Um, Gilgalad slips off Bummer. his ring um, a bit. So he slips I, off the ring. I don't know why they're alive. Because, like, Sauron did say just now, keep the orc leaders alive let's keep the elf leaders alive and bring them yeah. to me but why? at the end of season one uh, sorry at the end of episode seven season one was uh, quite a lot longer ago mm -hmm. at the end of the previous episode adar said kill them all <laughs> and they were all there outside the city but not really because they didn't kill them all so they're well, still alive to be fair uh they're in stuff later so you can't kill them I would gladly yeah. be happy about being ordered to continue with the fight when it was the fight in the first place and the casualties that made him so mad. Yeah, yeah. he shouldn't yeah. be. Uh... And but also, he's like, like, oh, all he's hell, he's Sauron. Yep, he's yeah. Team Sauron now. He's and team one Sauron. of the orcs, yeah. one of the orcs here says, like, uh, no, don't kill them. Lord Sauron wants the um, wants us to bring the leaders back to them. And you know, all the orcs are just they... immediately on board. None of them are like, wait, what? We're here to kill Sauron because the yeah, uh, that's Adar the whole reason why the army is here. They also yeah. know about Sauron everything. Here they kill. were watching. So whenever there's a scene with any characters that aren't in that scene, the other characters from the whole show are watching that scene with yeah. us. You know, so they're yeah. up to date they're on the whole Adar situation. Yeah. How did I put this earlier? When you're watching this, they have like all little orc pagers, and they just all got a beep. <laughs> Your like, ruler oh, is Sauron no. now. They're like, cool, 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 cool. Uh, all right. Do we get to and go home? No. Oh, okay. No. Oh, fine. It is funny that they betrayed Adar like on the literal moment. That they got what they wanted from him. Like, Glug, you know, would have been like, oh, sweet. I can't get. Because mm -hmm. this is way worse now. Sauron's going to be mean. Sauron's going to be like, we're going yeah. to be going to war a lot, Glug. It's it's all tragic and thematic. And yeah, I feel great. real bad for Glug. Remember those yeah. three orcs that went away because they didn't want to fight and then got killed by a Rondir? If only they didn't see that <laughs> random elf and they just had to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is that? An unkilled elf? Well, this is my time to shine. <laughs> that, that does mean that basically one of the most consequential events in the entire history of all Middle Earth features a guy called Glug. There is that. Like, hmm. without Glug, you would have no War of the Ring. You would have none of the death <laughs> in all of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> all of it would be fine and safe, and the world would be happy and harmonious. But fucking Glug Fuck is a turncoat you. traitor. So, hey, fuck man. you, Glug. It's the little people, you know, it's the it's the everyday deeds of normal folk that keep the light at bay. <laughs> Don't forget Waldreg, I mean, man. Waldreg, yeah, yeah Waldreg yeah, made Waldreg. Mordor. Lowly, yeah. humble Waldreg. He rose the ranks, he, he made Mordor, and here we have Glug, you know? The mild-mannered family man orc, and he is out here just, <laughs> you know? He's stabbing, he's he's making shit happen. Let's be honest, time, he's they... turning it. What they should have done is Glug should have probably betrayed Adar at some point because he's had enough of his shit. Yeah, because they show like 17 scenes of him yeah. going like, oh, Adar, I don't like that. But mm -hmm. he should have then replaced Adar and be like, guys, we're going home. Let's make Mordor into like a nice magical happy land. And then Sauron comes in like, hey, guys, I'm going to take over now. And then they have to fight back. So have Glug replace, have Glug replace Adar rather than just become a thrall to Sauron. The Glug mm. Pyre strikes back. On the note of um, <laughs> called the Glug Wars. Return in season three, that was a black solo in uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, look at him. Oh, that actually does kind of looks, looks like Waldrig. Waldrig the White. Sort of. Waldrig the <laughs> Bleak. Waldrig the I'm gonna fuck you up, Sauron. I will kill you. Oh. <laughs> Sauron, you conspire against me. Well, back it, yeah, we're at a Regan. Elrond Gilgalad captured. Uh, we see the orcs burning down a lot of scrolls of knowledge. Oh, not my uh, knowledge. The sacred texts! Said, the sacred texts are being burned. <laughs> There's a we'll scuffle. Yeah? Just a bad move to be like, don't burn those. We would hate it if you burned those, and they are Kellen <laughs> oh, personal scrolls. You say that to an orc? Yeah, we'd mm -hmm. rather die. It's like, oh, you tell yeah, me you it. hate when I burn those and you want to die? You just That's... picture the orcs be like, mm. oh, no, knowledge! <laughs> oh <my laughs> oh. Yeah, like, why the fuck would the orcs care? And you would know the orcs wouldn't care. <laughs> yeah, we inexplicably won this battle somehow, so we don't need knowledge. We, we got hate it. knowledge. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so there's a little scuffle. Elrond punches some guys. He lights one on fire. That's, That's kind of weird. Funny. That's funny. Yeah, I have no idea how he just like hit. He's just him covered in just... gasoline. I when guess. someone like aims a torch toward you, you don't instinctively like move away. You instead douse yourself in gasoline <laughs> and <laughs> step right in. Oh it's no, like... it sure would be bad if you touched me with that torch. Oh no, here sheet. I go. Oh, I'm on fire. No. Oh, muy caliente. Just reading the um the dialogue because I, I don't think I was paying attention by this point in the show, but like. This is the scene, isn't it, where they are, they're only really including, like, book-burning orcs in order to explain why nobody will ever make any more Rings of Power ever again. Because yeah, that's, so, like, yeah. the dialogue there, right? Like, that's the complete record of all Calibrimbor's knowledge. It's everything mm. that's ever been worked on here. If you burn that, we can't do any more. And that's the show's version of, yeah, this is, mm -hmm. this is why no more Rings. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I <laughs> guess well, so, yeah. Arondir it's, it's is quite here as weird. well. Yeah, why Why is Aaron... Because they should kill him. I mean, he should be dead, but yep. they should kill yeah. him. They, they were he should also to, be just dead in general. Kill him more? <laughs> he was kill already, him more. Yeah, he should already be dead, dead. yeah. Nope, Stab he's fine. Again. Arondir is fine. He is he actually wasn't... fine. He was dying on the floor last time we saw Dude, him. What happened? Nope. No, yeah. this is one of My this is one of the most um, I'm here to guys moments in anything ever. Yeah. Like, I'm also here and I'm playing with Did the orcs guys. heal him? Like, what the fuck happened? Well, it's like, hey, I asked you to. Sauron's just going to be like, hey, I, no, I asked you to bring me all of the leaders, not all of the named characters. Mm -hmm. yeah, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> yeah. Well, the that trio is there in Oregion. They've been captured. Mm -hmm. uh, Nigladriel and Sauron are still fighting with swords. Lame ass uh, boss he, fight. Yep, he <laughs> says she must know. Uh, that he tells her that she must know that if you want to find the light, you first have to touch the darkness. That's what's wrong. Oh my god! god. Oh my That's it's what a callback to Finn, stuff. Finn Rumbo said to her. Finn Rumbo. <laughs> so, for, just for context, Sauron's objective here is to convince Galadriel to give him the rings because he doesn't want to kill her and he doesn't want to hurt her. And he chooses to say, he chooses to basically pervert her memory of her brother which is something that you would do if you were going to mock her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not very convincing. It would make me angry. Yeah, exactly, which is exactly what happens. Like, Sauron is, is useless manipulating. Yeah, I don't cooperate with angry people much. Especially because, again, Sauron killed Finrod. He's, he's appealing to a memory of something that would make her very, very pissed off with him specifically. The, 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 I was about to say one, two. More like one, two, three punch of funny when she hits him off the thing and he goes, Whoa, and yeah. rolls all the way down. <laughs> and she jumps down after, but she does this pose. Oh, it which, looks awful when oof. she jumps down. I'm, I don't know what it is about this actress. Every time she pulls her face, they're always very embarrassing. Yeah. 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 She's an embarrassing actress. I don't that. know. Maybe she's good in other stuff. And then if it wasn't funny enough, it just cuts to this. And I was like, oh, God. Doing the first <laughs> song. No, no, no. Damn it, he's hot again. Oh no, I can't kill him. Oh no, oh, no. he's oh, no. sexy. I'm a blonde elf. I can't resist a hot evil guy. Apply the simp debuff on Galadriel. It's I actually bookmarked it's this. The, the explanation yeah, from Charlotte Brandstrom, who I think wrote this scene. Uh, the explanation is Galadriel obviously was in love with Halbrand. She was very what? attracted to him. Um, so when Sauron changes shape, he completely destabilizes her because that oh. was her weakness. She had mm. very strong feelings for the king, for Halbrand, obviously, in the first season. Holy so yeah, that, that is the actual reason. She fancies him, and so wow. he survives. That is, that is a piss take. Mm. That is just... Man, it's, it's a complete it's mystery why people don't like this show. I just can't imagine. That's how these people fucking think. They're retarded. <laughs> so this, this, this whole fucking fight annoyed me very much because my whole thing from the beginning was like, hey, wouldn't it be interesting if he used his transformation powers to like make his way through all of Eregion and do something interesting? And they do it in this fight really quickly. It's like, oh, you can just do this immediately all the time as much as you want. And you never use you? this. Just never yeah. used it. I don't know, man. Because we were speculating about this. We were wondering earlier, like, can't he? He can change forms and stuff. He, he turns into Anatar and everything. I think like, it's, now, uh, they, now they confirm you know that he can. I think that this is adjacent to nanotech helmets, uh, <laughs> and you know, John Halo taking off his helmet all the time, which is that the actor wants Jimmy the actors would prefer to have screen. Yeah, whatever. Or Master Cheeks. I'll, you know. Ooh, I'm, I won't, that's a good, ooh, I like I, that I, one. I won't yeah, hold a, a monopoly on, on these uh, names. You can I, pick whatever you want. Um, oh, I love Jimmy Riggs. 
what, Jimmy Rings is funny. Anyway, Jimmy but uh, is, yeah. what what um it, it feels adjacent to that in the sense that it's like, yeah, but any time that it's not the same actor who's played like Sauron the whole time, yeah. uh, that diminishes his screen time. So you yeah. don't want to do that. That's probably um, honestly the answer, yeah. Um, because I, I think, it's, I think it, it costs them fucking nothing to move some of the actors from other scenes they may even be filming at the same time into the scene, and it's like yep. the cheapest form of fun illusion because you could just have them. You know, they do some of it in this, walk past a thing, and then you get the other actor to yeah, walk exactly. past the thing, and then you just, in editing, cut them. And th the idea that you couldn't, like, make a shit ton of meaningful scenes out of it, it's just like, yeah, why didn't you do it? Uh, the, the, the answer's got to be cynical at this point, because it's insane. Yep. I think so. I think so. I think it's that. It's um, any... If you had a bunch of other actors playing the role, because there's no reason why Anatar should look like Halbrand. There's no, no, there's yep. no good yep. reason why that's the case. The only reason... Is it's the same actor, um, but but again, it's it's yeah, like I don't know. The reality is that whoever's playing Sauron probably should be a revolving door of different actors yeah. rather than just yeah. one person consistently. Because this guy will be playing him till the end. That's what it'll be. Yeah, um, is it like a, a glimmer of hope him in the flashback? when the... With, should he look like he did in the flashback of the beginning yeah, of the yeah. season? Mm -hmm. So I think that was supposed to be like his previous form that I guess he looked yep. at throughout all of the first age. Then when he regenerated, he looked like Halbrand, which is why this uh, Anatar looks. It has the same. It has Charlie. Charlie Vickers. Is yeah, but face. the thing is, is that there, he turns there into Galadriel. No, there, there should be so no face, matter. right? It, no, yeah, exactly. yeah, that's true. There should that's be no true. Face. Yeah, the face is whoever. He does yeah. want to argue to Caleb Brimble when he turns into Anatar that he was sent and that all of his role as, as Halbrand was Anatar as well, right? Yeah, but that's still not the reason why you would look the same, though, right? No, it's not a reason why like, you have to look said, the same. I'm but... Halbrand, but I'm Anatar. Also, I'm a lady. Like, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> he looks... Like, yeah. the, you know what I mean? It's just like, there's, there's, there's just no reason other than because you want to keep the actor. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's also two other reasons for why to do this, and that one is that they're not creative enough to do that shit, and the other one is that they think it would be confusing to the audience if they changed actors all the time. <laughs> they, they do not trust the audience with even the most basic yeah. shit, so yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, there's that too, right? It's like, well, wait, that, he doesn't look like him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's not the it, same person. It, oh, it's, yeah. it, it's really like this show is written for people to half watch while they're doing something else. And if yeah. you have the same character portrayed in different scenes by different actors, that's going to be confusing, and you've, Amazon's watch time is going to go down. Yep. Hmm. Anyway, shitty boss fight. Sucks balls. Mm. Very much yep. so. She does, like, oh. ring power jumps or force uh, jumps well, or whatever. It's just... Ugh. Speaking of the shape-shifting, just quickly, after he does all the uh, flim-flam between all the different characters, he then turns back into Anatar, when surely it would make sense for him to turn back into Halbrand. Yeah. Because he wants to fuck Halbrand. Alarming. Yeah, exactly. We exactly. Are... Being Anatar is not a benefit at all, so... We are strictly at brain melty time, so maybe mine mm -hmm. is, but... Is that prop correct? I thought that the triangle was uh, if slid into the circle of the spikes. Oh, like Where... You see what I'm saying? What? Oh, what? But yeah, it's like a third, a third, a third. Whereas here, they're all facing them towards the front end. Was well, it not a triangle? I, like thought, it, I'm not sure. I thought it was a perfect triangle, not a like like an even one. I didn't realize there were there was edge toward the front. I've got episode one here. Because I th yeah, because I thought when he stabbed him, they were equal. But maybe I'm I'm misremembering. Um... I don't know. Looks mm. right to me, but I mean. Because that's the front. That's the crown front on. Well, I'll yeah, be honest with you, that's the like the, the, the worst the shot to tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whoops. Uh, my brain is fried, okay? You know when he looks up it at the crown, have we got that shot? Yeah. yeah, yeah, here we go. Uh, <clears throat> they take their fucking time with it. Okay, yeah, I've got the shot, and it, it is consistent. Um, okay. But I'll share it anyway. There you go. So there is a, you got one at the front, one on each side, oh, and nothing okay. at the back. Gotcha. Yeah. So that was you just having a flump, Molo. Apologize. How dare you. No, I already <laughs> accounted for that, because I'm a genius. Apologize to Morgoth's crown. Uh, yeah. you did and pray to Glug. Yes. I did. Pray to Glug. I recommend <laughs> everybody, right. whenever you start any claim yeah. you're not sure about, you mention that you're not sure about it. 
Yes. Makes no reason at all. There's just no reason. Morgoth's crown. Non-committal assertments. That's what they want to do. Um. Yeah. So they're they're having a sword fight. Uh, Galadriel and Sauron, they're having a sword fight and, and he's turning into different people. He turns into Halbran, he turns into Anatar, he turns into Galadriel, he turns into Kelebrimbor, he turns yeah. back into Anatar. He's just being a goofy prankster. Weird how he never turns forms. into Finrond or something. Are these not the seeds you plan? Nah, that actor, he's fucking done, man. Yeah, he's he's gone. done with this shit. He's, hey. he's off doing whatever. <laughs> he could have turned into um, Bronwyn. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Oh, no, she's it. gone too. Could have turned into Valandil. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm here. Yeah, hey, someone remembered me. <laughs> um, but he, when uh, when he turns into Celebrimbor, he even says, "Oh, these not the seeds you planted." <laughs> and yeah. I was like, "Ah, yeah. ah that's He's that's like, shut the fuck up. Be funny funny part of the episode. <laughs> this is just a complete retread of the last fucking time these characters spoke to each other, which was yeah. which was the end of season one. It was the whole idea that Galadriel had inadvertently caused Sauron to become Sauron because she wanted to." suck him off or whatever it is um and now they're just doing the exact same thing again where uh, sauron is saying like hey well you kind of made me you, you created sauron because you planted them seeds didn't you it's, it's the exact same conversation but in the middle of a fight scene yep. they it are is, it is really funny though because yep. also he tries to like he, he extends the offer again of like you can be my queen again if you like the offer's still open god yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's, it's the same the thing queen. Yeah. He's so he's such a loser. He, really says, it, he says it he's after he, he says it after he says it after he says he can well. read her mouth and I guess she kinda wants that. I, I just read after like after he stabbed her, which you, you feel like that would be a deal breaker on and that he would be wise enough to understand that, but I guess not. Yeah. They're both isn't it, they're both isn't, it be isn't it before he stabs her? I think it's before, but it's like, because what happens, the bit that I think is probably the most pathetic for Sauron, more than the crying that we talked about earlier, because <laughs> th there is a way that you can explain that, whereas this is just pathetic. Um, she, he offers, it, like, can you be my queen? And then she says, no thanks. And then the he continues he attacking her, and he ba he kind of, like, rees at her and goes like, ah! Yeah. It's like, yeah. He, he like starts wailing around with his sword and like uh, hitting it's the rocks. After, he gets very it's angry. After, it's after she gets stabbed with the uh, with the crown that he starts saying this. Mm. Mm. No, it is not. And we then, would have ruled together. Then he oh, mentions it twice. He, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, now I'm just confused. He's All a right. bit. He's a bit rambly. Now you have to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fringy, no, I, I want you to. I got one. I got apologize to Stonehenge. Yeah. Where yeah. they're fighting. Kiss the Glock <laughs> statue <laughs> and apologize. <laughs> no, was, um... wait. No, no, wait. Now I'm really <laughs> confused. Sorry. I... He, might, he might say it afterwards as well, but he does say it before. Cause, cause, yeah, I, I'll like, make it, the world bow to you or whatever. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. No, I've I... got it. I've got it here. So uh, he says, um, I know your mind. The door is still open. And then Galadriel says, The door is shut. And then she boots him in the face. He, he reads. And then later he stabs her. Mm -hmm. And then he says, that I, "I would have made you a queen." So that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I meant. Well, he yeah. says it. He, he yeah, he's appealing to it twice because when he says the the door is still open, he he literally says like the way is open. Yeah. So he's so saying he's... after after the stab, which is what, what? I was saying he... was crazy. That they're both he's saying it both, both before moving. and after. Then ah, I see. So we're both correct then. Yes. <laughs> well, win. no, no. Hold on, hold on. Because when he Everyone when he stabs her, he then says, "I would have placed a crown upon your head." So he's saying the deal. You know, the deal's off now. I've stabbed you. I would have done this, but I'm not going to anymore. <laughs> no, I think I think if she said, "No, no, no," that's chill. He would have accepted. He would have said, <laughs> "Wow, <"Well>, really?" <laughs> There's like a yes, puddle of blood around her. She's like, you know what? Me. I've reconsidered. <laughs> <Forever> <laughs> I would like to be your the... queen. He stabs her with the AIDS crown that gives her like the evil, the evil black stuff yeah. that's going to kill her. So like, it would be a bit late if she changed her mind after getting stabbed. No, he can like... heal it because of Sauron. Oh, but he's got the ring, right? The, the ring is there, so she'd be chill, right? Yeah. Except when she took it off, which will happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he is too <the> evil <laughs> to get healing powers. I think you need hey. all three rings to heal, don't you? Oh, Isn't that thing that happens well, later? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he'll take yeah. the nine from her, right? That's, Those that's are two years the nine nine evil. Men, evil men. <laughs> they, that's okay. They, they, it'll they corrupt don't her, have, but it'll save her life. They don't have all three, though. They only have two of them. Yeah, the, the idea that you need multiple rings to heal, mm. what we've oh, seen that's is... True. They didn't you have need, three, yeah. You need well, all so, three to heal the tree. You need one to heal the map guy who got shot. And you need two for her. 
two to heal Galadriel. Yeah, yeah or it's sense. just like the ring Galadriel sense. has specifically who has the healing powers. Like, or it could. Uh, this, that's true. It could be. Well, no, 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 no. It can't be because Gilgalad tries to heal with his ring. No, uh, he he says like by the power of the Elder Kings. Well, I mean, the outcome he was gu gunning for there was to heal her, though, right? Like, mm -hmm. sure. But it says, "I'm the High King, fucking make her whole again." Shit. <laughs> Okay. I don't. What? I mean, yeah, it, I I, it, it, it could be. It could I'll be either because the show right just hasn't <laughs> explained what each ring does. Confused. We have no idea. We'll get the only that. reason why, when Galadriel's on the ground, why wouldn't she just? Uh, in fact, while the fight's happening, why wouldn't she just run to the cliff and throw the rings off the cliff? I That's don't know. I don't know why anything happens in this uh, like, fucking scene. Because them, if I was in this situation, why would I'd you ever? We can't hurt him. I. Yeah, this is what I mean. I presume that that's your best option. Like. Why would you... I don't even know why we'd assume he could find them if they're not being worn. You know what you should like, do? You just start throwing away. Is uh, episode one style sort of jump off, not like jump off, but fall off in such a way that she can stab her sword in the mountain halfway down. You know, so, like she did with the ice <laughs> oh, mountain. Oh, like, uh, mm. like oh, pickaxe, well, yeah. Nah, hold on. You know what she needs? She needs the uh, grappling hook that brought down Damrod. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, with the grapple... Yes, we should... We need to rewrite the, the scene. The scene. And have so that's the case. But yeah, point being is that this fight is pointless. She can't do anything against him. No. Yeah. Well, she... Yeah, how does she expect to kill him? She knows that, or she believes at this point, that she can kill him if she gets the crown. So I can maybe understand her wanting to do that, but it should have been become very obvious very quickly. That she absolutely cannot defeat him. Can she? Or the even... fight is built around her trying to get the crown from him in the yeah, fight. Yeah, which, which she does not try once. That happens. doesn't happen at all. Yep. He's so locking it up anyway. I don't know. It just, I just this fight was boring too because I was just like, she's not gonna die. Yeah. Obviously, well, like she she's can't. She's not gonna die. Yeah. Obviously, Sauron's not, not gonna, gonna, gonna die, die. So this yeah, is like it's like, yeah. Who cares? <sighs> yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, they fight, they fight, oh my goodness, how exciting and tense, unbelievable. Um, uh, they get and to a the point where... Show up. That's they do. true, yeah, after, yeah, after she jumps off the cliff. No, bef the before. The oh, before, like they're looking? The yeah, there, there's a yeah. couch. Yeah, the oh, okay. dwarf show up, like, right when... Because basically she's just being defeated, and then... Like Sauron looks down, and it's like, oh, dwarves, and then they're just in Eregion. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, right. The dwarves teleport into the center <laughs> immediately. Here, yeah. the dwarves, sorry, the dwarves are Do not the rings just, here. just they are fall here, out of her here. jacket. Yeah, she, they just fall out. Yeah. Christ, like, oh, I didn't, sick. I didn't realize that. Oh my god, that's so stupid. No, 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 because you see, they were made with his blood, and they have a mind of their own. What are they, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Do they, like, wiggle Dude, out of the, Yeah, they're, they're doing a little crawl, like, like, a, like a, a worm crawl toward him. <laughs> Slow oh shuffle. God. <laughs> Lame. Now, I'm just thinking uh, that because they were made with his blood, they're just, like, damp Cheerios. <laughs> just Ew. soggy, like Ew. yeah. They're soggy, and they're, like, they're, like, uncooked pasta, or cooked pasta. They're just yes. floopy. <laughs> He's like, be gentle with those. Oh, also, the power. arrival of the dwarves is, is just before that. That the greatest expression oh, given wild. by Gilgalad. Yeah, ever. that's. Oh yeah. The only thing I remember about that scene there. is how fucking weird he looks. But he looks what weird the hell? Like, <laughs> why does he? Why? <laughs> he's he's so <laughs> excited. He's yeah, so he's so into excited this. to see the dwarves. <laughs> His you delivery as well is just weird as dwarves. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. It, just look, it looks like the actors just having fun. Like they thought, well, the, the idiot audience who are playing on their phones aren't going to understand that these little people running around with crossbows, that's the dwarven <laughs> army that's shown up. So, Celebrimbor, can you just kind of, uh, sorry, Gilgalad, mm. can you just kind of say dwarves? We need like, to remind them, yeah. How, how do I do it? Should I just go dwarves? Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> that is, that uh... emoji, the, the red dude in the YouTube emoji, that's a pretty good representation, actually, of. Uh... Yeah. His face. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> dwarves. What if this orc was just like, oh dwarves. shit, dwarves, I better slit your throat so that I can deal with them. Yep. He's like, oh, lame. But I want to see the dwarves. But like, what, so cool. what is. What, what are we meant to get from what Gilgalad thinks when he says this? He's not saying dwarves as in, like, yes, they're finally here. The dwarves have arrived. Elbon was right. And he's not like, dwarves, oh, now you should be sorry. He's like, 
What emotion is that? I don't know. No, it's just Thinking excitement. If we don't it's say just... it, the audience won't know who they are, so we have to say it. It, it is. Yeah. That's all it is. Maybe it's concerns like, shit, we have to fight orcs and uh, dwarves now too? Oh, no. As a no, director, just, how, how do just, you look at that face. and say... It's just they're going to be so upset when they so see their the, forge. Is this is that the hybrid? Dwarks? Dwarks. Yeah. Dwarks. That's gross. Do you I don't want to ask for about. a second take of this scene, yeah. though. Given given how shit it looks, you look at that. It looks obviously funny. Do you not ask him to try it again? <laughs> no. Oh. I love this. The fucking ninja dwarves. They just they disappear here. everywhere. Yeah. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> what up? We're here now too. Yep, yeah, we're gonna fuck Time shit up. To... And then they just win. But it, the orcs well, are done. no, they don't because it it they Wait, show what? up and it's almost like. Well, yeah, yay, we've won now. We're going to take back the city. But then later they're like, nah, Regian's gone. So it didn't. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't understand. I what happened to the dwarves? the dwarves? are in the city. They're I mean, I... like ambushing the orcs in it's the city. It's insane how much they are in the city. Like, they yeah. are so yeah, many orcs. all over the they place. Dwarves. <laughs> they are That's present. That's the power of dwarves, dude. They're fucking amazing. Like, I guess what we're meant to think is what happened is that the dwarven army all came down the secret, secret dwarven tunnel. Mm -hmm. And then killed a bunch of orcs so that the rest of the elves could escape, and then they all left the city because it was burning to the ground. Yeah, they, they teleported out again. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Dude, Arondia just casually kills five orcs in two seconds. Oh, yeah. He's very epic. <laughs> Why didn't you do that before, you fuck? Well, he wasn't stabbed before, so he's... Uh, he's oh, he's like, like supercharged now that he's been stabbed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm really yeah angry. He, has the, he has the Dark Souls ring where you get more attack when you have only 10% health. I forgot the name. <sighs> that was a very funny joke. Please move on. <laughs> Fair enough. It's more of a reference, but... I know. Um, My so, brain hurts. <laughs> uh, Narvi... I, it's Narvi, right? I don't yeah. think the... that's Narvi, no. Is, is it, it not? Is I thought it was. It, well, I it's it it, it, Durin. Elrond no, thinks that it's Durin. It is. It is I'm pretty sure it is. The voice didn't yeah. sound like Navi to me, but it, I might be wrong. I I'd know that was. nose anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a schnoz. No, I will it, say, I will. Well, yeah. So the, well, the, the reason oh, why I'm thinking it might not be Navi as well, even forgetting the voice, is that every time we cut back to Khazad Doom, which happens twice during this episode, Navi is there talking with Durin. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're right. Uh, he just teleported back. Well, maybe, yeah, the, the, it could be that, or it could be that this is some other command. Because Navi takes two is minutes. not a military commander. He's he's a mining guy. He's he's. I thought that they were all guy. sort of Elrond. good to go. Yeah, Elrond's military. a politician, but maybe so, he's had uh, thousands uh, of years <clears throat> to learn how to sword fight as well on the side. Uh, maybe I don't know. So with, with what he said there, Durin is uh, the, or the prince is currently mourning. So did he? Are we? Do we have to assume he sent the army and went back inside, or did he go back inside, dealt with his father, and then then sent the army alone, he which he should have done from the get go? Yeah, because the original the plan sent the army. Yeah, the original plan was for the knife guy to lead them there the previous day in episode seven. So the dwarves are late, which means he dealt yeah. with the Balrog and his father, and yeah. then was like, "Okay, now I'm in now charge. You, go. You, guy, you can go." Yeah, so uh, that, you should have like, done that immediately. Yeah. The <laughs> army should have been like, well, I don't know why we waited, but fine. Yeah. Because we didn't do anything. Also, or, why uh, the, the army should also be like, why. why are you sending us into our doom? Why aren't you coming? And I think the answer, I'm too sad to fight, probably <laughs> might not <laughs> wash. Yeah. <laughs> not, a, not a great first impression as the new king. Uh, I think... That screenshot that you just posted, Goga, confirms it. I think that is definitely yeah. Navi. You, the see, you see the, the braid thing. Yeah. It's the same. So how that lines up with him teleporting around, I don't know. What do you mean? They yeah, teleport it's from... It's Rings of Power! <laughs> well, no, specifically, to be so fair. No, 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 it no, is no, Rings of Power, but also specifically a Region to Khazad Doom. People have been teleporting back and forth between yeah. them. Like, that, that, no, that's I, the I biggest teleport spot in the whole show. I'm just... I'm going to try and map it all out and find out how Good much luck. sense it doesn't make. It's... Oh, it's there's no point. <laughs> Spare your point. It'll be very funny. That's the point. The point is Dude, that shouldn't I Durin like be like helmets. fucking thrilled to go here and fight some orcs? Like, nice and maybe morning. get maybe get Sauron killed. Like, shouldn't this be like really cool for him? Very epic because this might Sauron's be, fault. Might be building up contention for season three between the elves and the dwarves. Yeah. Because Elrond's going to be big, big mad that Durin didn't come. How is I mean, yeah, but it's not, like... no, nothing to do with uh, what, what I was trying to say. And I know what you mean, but like Durin should be here. It would be the same thing if he would be here. It would still be yeah. late. 
But I'm just saying Durin should be like, oh shit, I get to maybe get to Sauron, who de uh, was the reason for all of this. So I definitely want to fight. Yeah, and I get to help my friend, but you know, fuck that. Oh, I no, I get to like not talk to each other at all, though. For that, for that tension building thing to work, mm -hmm. it's a simple conversation to have to dispel any suggestion of betrayal. Elrond says, "Why weren't you there?" Jiren says, "I was a bit busy because you know my dad was jumping at a Balrog, and you know that that's bad for Moria." That's a fairly good excuse for not turning up. So yeah, I think it's totally fine for Durin to not be here because he is mourning his father, and they just had a big. I mean, he, he very thing, clearly loves his father a lot. So specifically, yeah. what's so interesting is that if if he knew every detail, Elrond, he might be able to be like, "What the fuck?" But if the broad story, mm -hmm. we dealt with a giant under demon shadow fire monster. <laughs> be like, "Oh," and my dad died. He'd be like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, okay." But then they, those two do have a habit of just not explaining things to each other. No, uh, I don't no. actually know if we mentioned this earlier, but when they have their conversation in episode seven, um, his dad being uh, removed and him, him, him overthrowing his dad and Celebrimbor, those, those two topics come up in conversation. And at no point does Durin mention anything about evil magical rings. And he doesn't mention anything about Anatar, who he is incredibly suspicious of and who had some insane story about Elrond being busy doing busy off screen. Um, he absolutely should have, that should have been at the top of his list of things to ask Elrond. Like, who the fuck is this Anatar guy? Mm -hmm. And why has he turned my dad into an idiot? Yeah. yeah. But he doesn't, because they, the writers didn't want that reveal to happen then. Yeah. Uh, because Elrond doesn't actually learn about Anatar and, I guess, Sauron in this episode either, which, yeah, when that will happen, who knows. Mm -hmm. We're almost at the best line. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, oh okay. Oh, fuck no, no. Oh, no. this one. <laughs> 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 yes, this is. Um, I cackled when I heard this one. Oh, it's so good. I cringed. I just fucking I, cringed. I, I actually was cackling. I uh, this one got me. My brain can't remember, so I'm excited. Yeah, I'm not well, sure I, which I'm, line you're referring to here. You, yeah. Oh, I'm you curious. Not, okay, so whoa, it's it's uh, Galadriel. Takes off the ring. Oh, really? You hear she yourself? takes off the ring and then very, very, very slowly starts to hand it to <laughs> um, Sauron. Which at this point you'd be like, well, okay, so if you were going to give it to him, this is what you would do. But if you weren't going to, mm. why yeah, take it just off? Grabs it. She <laughs> really <laughs> risks it here. Risks the yeah. hell out of the ring. Yeah. Yeah, he can he can just grab it real quick, you know. The way it's framed then is she... Sauron thinks that this is mind control because he speaks to her in his mind. He doesn't like move his mouth. He says, "Give me the ring telepathically," and then she gets the ring out like a zombie. So mm. she's pretending that she's being mind controlled here. I I think. I, I guess. But surely he would recognize and know that that's it, not well true. exactly. Well, and exactly. also, what he if he did grab it from it because he was like, "Here, I'll help well, you, yeah, zombie." Exactly. Well, yeah. <laughs> But then she oh, says, <laughs> she says, you wish to heal Middle Earth, heal yourself, and then falls off yeah. the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm not kidding. Like, the reason why I found this so funny is it came across as, um, we, you know what? I recently, semi recently, and, and, uh, Fringy and Metal will be able to understand this reference. Watch The Sixth Day. It's a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it regards cloning. And at mm -hmm. one point in the movie, you could tell they wanted to set up a one liner, and it's a little clunky, but you're like, hey. he says, uh, <laughs> you know, why why don't you go clone yourself so that you could fuck yourself? Fuck yourself. And it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 like, it yeah, bumps, like, but you're like, yeah, 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 I'll take it. But this one actually is possibly one of the worst if it's intended that way, because that's how it came across to me. It's like, you want to heal the whole world? Why don't you go heal yourself? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, oh, heal yourself. What? And, and, then, and then she says this and then falls off a cliff to her death. <laughs> well. Yes. Well. Well. She, she <laughs> should is. absolutely 100% be fucking dead. Nah, she's yes. fine. We uh, we see the height and like someone mentioned earlier, we know how far Medania fell and she was yep. not in a good way. <laughs> and I Easily close to this but what you what you fail to understand this is that was already velocity for uh for elves so even further it's just the same impact impact well the worries. trees broke a fold that's why they're showing well, they, sure, 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 yeah. yeah. i thought it was really <laughs> funny too that uh arondir and gilgalad both see this happen and it's like <laughs> yeah, what in the yeah. middle of fucking fighting that army of look orcs at, you yeah. just happened to look see at that this. height look, look at, at galadriel that time now you think that's a fucking bird you wouldn't think <laughs> 
like, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is like one of the few times where the show has actually given us a nice wide establishing so shot so that we can yeah. clearly see what happens. I'm wondering if this is meant to reference Denethor in um, Pelennor Field. Because mm. um, it's a similar kind of shot, I guess, maybe. But like the fact that they've shown this and then they're like, ah, she's fine. It's absurd. And no, they you can't say that the ring is there because she's not wearing the ring. She's holding it. She's not wearing it. They absolutely oh, they want you to be better than wearing yeah. it. The uh, the trees broke it fall somewhat. Do you see the way that it's like Fuck animated? No. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They kind of brush Fuck against. Yeah, the they, they all go like boom, 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 as, as if like, it's like Fuck you. <laughs> absolutely fucking not. Look how high that oh. is. Yeah, you, even you, if she even if she landed in water, she would be fucking dead. Yeah, every kind of dead. I don't. I, how many feet is that? I I, I don't even know what to guess. All many all feet. feet. A Quentin like, Tarantino like, level of feet at this point. Oh my god. Two to three hundred? <laughs> Possibly. Hard to say. Yeah, I don't, it's I don't very know. high indeed. It's taller than a horse. <laughs> even Barrack. Possibly Damn. even two horses, yeah. Maybe. Okay, you're you stretching it. Right, two barracks. You stack them just right. Stop, stop stretching the horses. All right. What a, oh, what a, well, what a wonderful okay, so, scene. She's dead. What a wonderful scene. Oh, She's dead yeah. because there's no, there is, there is no way that you could survive this. However, let us also recount that there's no way you could survive a volcano to the face. Oh, that's true. And then, so Galadriel then, is alive no. on the ground. Um, but let's, let's do, we have to do the sad part first. I don't think I'm ready. It's too late. You know, it's, get this. We're, it's, we're, it's, Okay, yeah. we got off it. the bandage. Okay. Let's get it done. We can't... Oh, fine. Okay. So, Glug and some orcs. Uh, they Glug goes up and tells Saren that they are overwhelmed that the dwarves are covering the elves' retreat, and that if they pursue, many uruks, and then Sauron stabs Glug, murders and Glug in cold murders, blood, slays him like the villain he Bells is. him. Honey, Glog will never Glog. see his family oh, and his spawn again. Not like he's a fucking idiot, you know. Like, <laughs> this. <laughs> God damn! Holy shit! How dare he's you? Cold. I can't believe you. you just, cold. He just died. The man just died. <laughs> he's a moron. Like he. The, the <laughs> God damn free. Damn. Hard the last free. You have some. Have some. Have some fucking. We saw thoughts. his family fringy. Just have yeah, some. He has some a little sword. baby orc a and a wife. Just to be clear. He just Fringy, wanted did you not, to chill and mourn. Did you not see that scene where when Glug was on the <laughs> ground right before he dies, he pulls out, he reaches in around his neck and he pulls out the locket and he opens it up and it's got little pictures of his wife <laughs> and his little <laughs> work baby. Yeah, it was and then probably he dies. a bad idea to uh, betray Adar then, huh? Just like he was gonna, he was gonna recall the army. But Adar was making his children suffer. <laughs> I, I love how, like, only one week till retirement, and I'm gonna bring the gluglings out on a nice lake <laughs> to do some fishing. <laughs> I'm three days away from retirement, and I just <laughs> quit the boat to live forever. Yeah, <laughs> live forever. It's gonna be a living Bane movie. <laughs> yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. everything's like gonna the, be um... just in a tower and whips out and kind of start shooting him. <laughs> I like the other old gets jump scared. He's like, whoa! He's like, yeah. Oh, shit! <laughs> We're supposed to be the scary one. Thing for me. Get just Sauron! I can't believe you like a tab. Sauron! And now the great is going to go get Sauron. I can't avenge Glug's death with this pea shooter. I don't want to hear it, McVeigh. That Canada yours is against regulation. In this department, we go by the book. Gotta let him finish. Yeah. By book. There you go, that's the end. McVeigh shoots the book. It's It's great. I love oh my it. goodness! I'm just uh, wondering if, like, a month ago, like last month, when we were watching episodes one and two, if we ever thought that we'd be discussing whether or not they character assassinated Glug. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what the show has sunk to. Yeah, we're like, well, I is mean, is Glug okay? Is Glug all right? I guess he got corrupted was, by Sauron or whatever. He's really know. not. They've ruined him. Um, he's pretty much at the bottom from the start. Let's be honest. What it. What, what a was shame. the only bit I cared about, and episode eight has ruined him. <laughs> I just <God. laughs> so, Sauron, Lord like I hope he has the same attitude we do about all this bullshit with the orcs to the point where they're <laughs> like, you gotta say something to the wife, and he walks up to her and he's like, Glug was a Glug. Nah, fuck you, and just stabs <laughs> her as well. Stabs <laughs> her. <laughs> Where's that baby? Stab that baby. <laughs> 
Yeah, the only thing that this oh. episode was missing for the emotional manipulation is like after this scene to just go back to Mordor and just see Glugwife and Glugling just like hugging each other in the yeah. Cold. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have put it past really the show, honestly. Yeah, I mean they would. That's the only <laughs> reason why they exist. We pick up season oh, three oh. with a time skip, and we actually join the son who's slightly older, like Glugling, <laughs> son of Glug, <laughs> and the, it's his origin story, and he goes on a revenge Glugling. mission. Yeah, he actually joins Sarah. the heroes, and is a nicer person than Galadriel. That's not difficult. <laughs> I mean, that's not I hard to do. Much every orc is nicer than Galadriel. I really want to see that now. It'll hey, like speaking Bill of Bill Galadriel, like... <gasps> Galadriel is dead because she fell off like hundreds Yay! of feet worth Yay! of cliff. Right? Blood like, everywhere. Like, there's no possible Woo! way. However, it seems as if the show is very insistent that Galadriel is not dead from that fall, and that mm -hmm. she's actually alive. And they don't have to worry about all the broken bones and the splintered fragments of her body that have been torn asunder the from the impact. And stabbed still. by an evil crown as well. Well, yeah. it's, it seems yeah. to be only the evil crown stab wound is what they have to worry about. Yeah. Yeah, like the rest of this was totally normal, but we have to deal with the evil wound. But, you know, the, the falling off the cliff, that just she's fine from that. Yogalad has ran all mm -hmm. the way from the, I mean, the, the courtyard... And Arandir as well. They've, but they've run all the way to to Galadriel because she fell off that cliff, and they all just like randomly noticed that this happened. Luckily, um, yeah. yeah. So Gilgalad tries a magic chant to heal her spooky evil wound, but it just doesn't work. But then Elrond shows up, and he puts on the ring to save her. And I fell asleep in terms of just, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 Elrond was like, oh, I don't like rings, I don't like rings, I don't like rings, I don't like rings, oh, I'll use the ring to save my girl. I mean, that's basically being all this season. Yeah. Well, that, was even, his, that was his arc this season. Yep. Even right. though he started trusting the fucking ring, it, honestly, like, he, he fully trusted the ring by the end of episode four, which was half the season ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he now he's putting it right. on himself. But I don't know why he would care about that distinction. No. If he, knows, if he doesn't believe that the ring is evil and he believes that the ring can do things like save lives and give visions of the future and that Sauron is not involved in them, his continued refusal to embrace the power of the rings um, is just him being like, yeah, well, I kind of, you know, principally said that I don't like them, so I can't ever like them. I mean, is that what they believed at the end of season, episode four, rather? He saw Galadriel use it to heal Map Guy, and then he ran back to Linden mm -hmm. and immediately told Gilgalad that Galadriel was right. Yeah. Which means that he right. uh, basically is on board with what she says the rings are. Mm. So why he doesn't use it at that point, I can't, I don't know. Could be referring to Sauron being in the region or some shit like that. I fucking don't know, I'm too tired. If if that's true, I'm also very tired. But like, if mm -hmm. that's true, then she, that information is reliant on the power of the ring being accurate. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go to Rune. No. no, no, we have to. Let's, let's not. <laughs> no, we have to. I'm sick of a region. It's a. I've place. been here for so long, and it's just so dour and grim, <laughs> and Glug's <laughs> dead, and I don't want to think about it. I need to get a change of scenery. Bullshit. So we go back to Rune, the Stour village from the beginning of the episode. Remember, it is in ruins from all of the boulders. Uh, oh no! Gundabale should be super furious with Nori because Nori has brought the destruction of her home, which, as she said mm -hmm. before. A home is very, very important, and she wants to be buried here under the tree where her husband was, and a home is a place, yep. and it's wonderful. But no, she's not upset at Nori at all for bringing destruction to her house, or her home. So that's, uh, okay. Yeah. I guess Nori gets off, uh, with that. Dude, so what the fuck we get is our... the point of Nori? Like, just go away. Let's I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, well, they... you'll, you'll be in luck here soon, Mahler. <laughs> no, I um, won't. Not... She'll be back. Oh no, she's done forever. She's gone, just like Poppy Let's was. Hope so. Hey, Let's speaking of Poppy, was... Poppy gives us our our little our not quite our our what what is it the the quint mm. penultimate her our, our our penultimate ending speech sort of scene. Aberration. She tries to thematically tie everything together. She try and the reason she does it is because it's what Sam did in the two towers. It, yeah, yeah, yeah let it's, me... it's the Sam speech, but in reverse. It's just like, give up, you fucking weak. There's nothing <laughs> no, to do to fix yeah. anything. 
go, no, she didn't fuck say off that. and go try something I mean, else. Yeah, that's basically I, what she said. No, it here. also has nothing to do with the visuals, like the, the content <laughs> of the speech. They try and tie it together across the different stories, but the words she's saying only applies to like half of what we're seeing. So Poppy says that uh, Mr. Uh, Burroughs, what's his name? Uh, Sadok. Sadok. Sadok Burroughs said when Poppy's family got. I don't know, like when fell died in a mudslide or whatever, he <laughs> said to her, listen, some things can't be fixed. Some things lost are lost forever. No matter how hard we fight, how much it hurts, or how much our hearts yearn to put them back together. Because this world's so much bigger than any of us, and the winds blowing against us are just too strong. When we Those snap to your mother's just... neck, some things just can't be fixed. It's oh broken goodness. forever. It's true. Glug but will she never come back. Really oh, great sausages. So that's why. But it doesn't. It doesn't even apply in the situation they're currently standing in. Because of all the places nope. we get the little montage cut over, you'd think the store home is pretty fixable. Fixable. Just yeah. Some rubble. Just rubble. Just fucking get rid of it. And their yeah. whole characterization okay, like, was like they, the they've been in place for thousands of years or whatever it is. Like the one gives the speech about burying people. Drop more boulders on more. Stores. He did just kind of fuck <laughs> off after nothing. Like, anyway, you know, she. Bobby anything. says, "What's broke is broke, and all anyone can do is try and build something new." Yeah, just give so, up, fuck off, try something new. You're too weak. I don't know if that's the message they're really trying to say here. <laughs> that's what they said, though. I don't think it's no, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it, it literally isn't. I think it is. No, I just read it. Okay. I disagree. All the stores leave the village to go west, I guess? Uh, they're going to go to the Shire. Oh, yes. yeah, that's right. They set up the idea that the Shire appeared as like a dream or something to so... set up for us, his ancestor. <laughs> they're and now go... they're going to go west and find the Shire. Well, they're going to, I think they're almost certainly going to like tie back in with the other Harfoots and then all go to find the Shire, but it'll take two seasons for them to do because. Obviously, it's rings of power. So, well, as be long as they do it off screen, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> well, I don't want to um, see any more Harfoots. We've got Poppy goes off with um. Oh, what's his name? What's Mary Mac. Name? Mary, Mary Mac. Mac. Not nobody. Because yeah, they're they're <laughs> they love each other now, and they're gonna have disgusting, nasty Harfoot sex. Ugh. <laughs> um, and they'll Ew. probably like their kid will be someone important or whatever. They'll be the brandy blondes or the or the uh, Sackville Bagginses or some Sackville name Baggins. that you recognize. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be some name that we recognize, and then we'll wonder yeah, how come you know, in age all the hobbits are white. What happened? You know what? Don't tell me. Never mind. <laughs> Mary Mary's full um, name is Maryadic, isn't it? Like Mary Mac and yeah. Maryadic sound kind of eerily similar. His last name is Brandy Buck. Well, we don't know Merrimack's surname. They're probably going to whip that out on us in episode no. eight of season three and be like, he's my, surname is, is, he's he's say, gonna... my surname is Took or something. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be, slowly. It's gonna be a Took <laughs> because it's a reshot. Shit on Tolkien's lore. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, over it. Stop laughing. Okay, this sorry. is very serious and sorry. somber because they're leaving. <laughs> There's no... Stop, Fringy, please, you're ruining the mood. Please stop. <laughs> can't do this. This oh, is yeah. sad and we're very sad. Yeah, that, exactly. What Mahler said. Yeah, it's got to be like that. Exactly. Uh, it's the you cringe see, to come. Poppy and Nori are going to leave with all of the other oh. uh, stores. Right, and... you, you didn't mention the best part. But... I'm getting there. I'm no, getting no, no, no. No, no, no. The bit in Pelagir. What? The bit in Pelagir? Yeah, when when the cuck. When oh, the Hagen cuck, gets cucked. Too. Oh yeah. yeah. He, oh, in one of the little flash. The little yeah, little as she's speaking, we see a whole the... load of little images, and one of them is that Hagen is like, "Hey, so can we kind of be friends? Can we like go back to building our house? I love you." While she's there thinking about Isildur's wet cock, like staring off at what he's a sea person. It will be wet after she's done. They just have naturally slimy cocks. The sea is always right. It just has a just like I need this to be over. All of our brains melting. It will be. It will be wet after she is done with it. Again. With a sea wet cock. We're so uh, close wet to the cock. end. The penis is dry, but it has been re-slimed. No, <laughs> re-slimed. 
<laughs> Pour some hot cream. We're the on thing. the cusp of some hyper cringe. We've we got to get through it. We are. We are. So, um, oh. all the stores leave. Poppy goes with the retarded boyfriend, and Nori's like, you know what? Well, whatever. Gundabale calls not Gandalf, Grandelf. Mm. And we all die inside. Uh, I yeah. died inside. Oh, wait. No, I'm already dead. I'm a walking corpse. I'm a living zombie. I am undeath because of this show. I'll never be able to rest. I am like the ghost in the mountain in The Return of the King. Um, the way is shut to quality. Um, but yeah, hmm. Gundabale is how Gandalf got his name. That they fucker. They don't know what elves are. They've never met one before. They yeah. say that in this scene. So why yeah. are they calling him Large Elf? Because grand elf. shut up. Whatever. He's because grand. they said, is he an Grande. elf? It's like, no, he's bigger than an elf. And they're like, oh, he's a grand elf. It's pathetic. But if you've never met an elf before, how big do you think they well, normally he's... are? Maybe he's a normal sized be... elf. Maybe yeah. he's grand like he's really cool and amazing. Like a grand guy. Not necessarily like a, big physically. A grand wizard, well, no, in saying? terms of... Yeah, yeah like he's a really grand wizard. <laughs> I'm more kind of interested in what they think the audience's reaction is supposed to be to that, given that everyone has known it's Gandalf for more than one entire season of the show has pretended we didn't know. Except the yeah. actor, he didn't know. Said it, but now they <laughs> said it. They everyone just wasted so much knew. time just like drip feeding us little cock teases. Yeah. Like the, the... Just this reminds me of Ray, where you spend so much time on a thing that doesn't fucking matter, that we haven't got anything yeah. else. What was it? Always follow your nose. That was the, the most um, overt one in season one, if I'm recalling correctly. Probably. And that was right at the end. It was Might the one they built up to at the end. Yeah. Might have been that, yeah. Yeah, Ugh. so they've been like properly teasing this for over over a season at this point, and I don't yeah. I don't know why. Just have him be Gandalf. Like, what's the... Why? And Not now they're going to awesome. do the same thing with Saruman. Oh yeah, because that's all, of that's all they know uh, to write is just a bunch of fucking mystery boxes. It'll yeah. get to the end of episode eight, season three, and it'll be like he eats some berries and says, "Hmm, these are sour," and they say, "Sour, <laughs> sour man, sour man." <laughs> one. That was such a sour man we met back there. Yeah. Um. Uh. So Nori, Nori, and Gandalf are gonna part ways. They're gonna say goodbye. They'll never meet oh. each other again. Nori's finally totally some good gone. news. Nori says that they're they're. Uh, oh, Gan not Gandalf, who's Grandelf. Grandelf says, you know, we're kind of not the same really at all, you and I. And Nori says, you know, maybe we're not so different. And then she leaves. Mm -hmm. right. And maybe we'll see her again. Who knows? Maybe not. Hopefully I, not. I don't know. Uh, in the wreckage of the ruined village amongst the boulders and the rocks and the pebbles that have been just scattered about in this terrible scene. There's squished sewers everywhere. <laughs> it's an awful scene. Um, it smells horrible. There's like, uh, there's like uh, stew and jab everywhere. <laughs> Whatever. Just like <laughs> random arms and legs sticking out from underneath the rock piles. Yeah. Um, but he ignores that grisly scene mm -hmm. because lying there on the ground, he finds his gand, his he finds staff. His stick. It is just laying there. Yeah, it was just the test all along. If you look at the beginning correctly. of this whole scene, it shows Nori throwing it to the ground as though like she's yep. she made it so that he it got in his way, so to speak. Which I just Does hate. It really? Yeah, she's fucking it's in like a montage or whatever, she's fucking with something. And she clearly yeah, it's picks a, it's it up. The, fir the first scene of this area, she just like pushes it away from some rubble. Yeah, there it is. Penetration. Because you, you can tell it's the same fucking one, and she's just like, yeah. "Yep, her it's doing that shitty, makes it so that really he." It's a really shitty stick. It is uh, shitty, yeah. and he uh, steps we're on it. Put this down here because of that. Oh, it's, that's it's, so fucking. It's always stupid. The, like this. It's like you know, it's our shit. That's why you, the shit you like happened. This is, shut up. Uh, can't claim that, fuckers. Um. <sighs> So Gandalf picks up the stick, which is his gand. He just knows it calls to him. It speaks to him. It whispers in his ear. Who knows? Um, now he walks off through the desert with his new staff, and he goes all the way back to uh, Thomas Nook's house. No, sorry. Thomas <laughs> Bombadil. Sorry, Everyone's I'm doing favorite character. <laughs> I'm frazzled and bedazzled. Uh -huh. Hey, 
guess what? Yes, obviously it was a test from Tom to go save his friends, not pursue power. So but he like yeah. he like properly explains it. It's like, wow, so like when you said that I should totally let my friends die, that was that wasn't real. That was like a I shouldn't he, have done that. Yeah, like he fully he fully there. explains it. He should have just walked through the door and said nothing. True. I just I prefer the yeah. version where he says, I was supposed to help them, and I ended up with the thing and then Tom's just like, uh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You did yes. really good, son. <laughs> Tom yeah. says that uh you didn't find the staff. The staff found you. Just as like you'll that. find uh, your so name. The one chooses not... the wizard, Harry. That's how it yeah, works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, not Gandalf says Gandalf. Whoa. We did it. It only yeah. took two seasons, we, but we, we, we did got it. There. We yeah. did it. We can now What's... officially call not Gandalf Gandalf, which is good because it's easier to type. Now they start to sing a song together, and it pans out of the house, the, and it goes It's a song over. about Tom Bombadil. Yeah, it's yeah, actually... It? Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah, little the narcissist. <laughs> they just sit down, it's like, well, 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 well done on your quest. Well done on your quest. Now let's sit down and sing a song about me. <laughs> you know, you know the words, right? It's of the song that do. describes yeah. him, but it doesn't actually match his in-universe descriptions. Old Tom Bombadil was a merry fellow. Bright blue his jacket was, and his boots were yellow. Neither his jacket is blue, nor his boots are yellow, so he's kind Whoa. of lying. Well, thank Where'd God his coat from? wasn't orange, or else the song would not be able to function. Um, all right, now, the as they sing their little song... Oh boy, this was probably in a book somewhere. Then it pans out from the window of the house's door all the way to Rasputin in his dark fortress of evil looking out the window. Oh boy, he's planning something. Ooh. Who knows what the Rings of Power this. season next will be with him. I got these vibes from that last bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. I like what? that picture. I don't understand what... <laughs> oh goodness gracious! This is some. This is a, this is really esoteric, complicated yeah. stuff. It's Dark Wizard is pondering his evilness. It's quite, it's quite hard to understand this. Uh, the this is a rough new one. Some this uh, this picture. That's Gandalf and Bedombadil all happy, <laughs> and then that's Rasputin being like, "I don't like that they're happy." I hate I that they're happy. <laughs> Gandalf will totally change his mind and join me and be evil. He won't enjoy Thomas's company. Yeah. That Almost guy's a the freak, evil and he is, he's actually a, a huge prick all the time. Yep. But at least I'm on it. At least I'm not a prick. I just kill people and murder people. I'm not annoying. I'm not an, I'm annoying. And I'm not an annoying asshole about it. You know, there's an earnestness to my evil that I feel like he will appreciate one day. Yeah, and he'll come to my house and, and we'll be friends. Jab and tastes great. Xbox. <laughs> I love Stewart Jam. I put it on my. I, I, I scrape it over too much bread. Yeah. Hey, guess uh, what? Galadriel uh, wakes up next to Kill Khaled. No, oh, wait. Man. There was a Durin scene, though. What about the dwarves? Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. It, it's it's it, all it, just hooks for the next season. It's really yeah, funny it's because the, 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 the yeah. Durin is like, hey, we should tell the elves that we helped them again because we're homies now. And then Disa's like, no, we have other problems. And you immediately yeah, thinking is, you immediately thinking is, the uh, thought is, oh, hey, the, yeah, the Balrog, right? like, no, there's a political vacuum now oh, yeah, that your king yeah, is yeah, dead. It's like, yeah, wait, what? Right. They have, that's I your his brother who we've never heard of or seen or mentioned <laughs> yeah. before. He's going to vibe the crown. So I don't mm -hmm. want to see dwarf Game of Thrones. Fuck off. Well, they <laughs> they paused the Balrog again. Those losers. Yep. Yep. They, Not mentioned they all... it again out of sight of the opening scene. They also said that the dwarves of the Blue Mountains have been paying heavy tribute and are demanding payment. Like that's not how tribute works. Yeah. No, they they're here. They want to collect. Their <laughs> oh yeah, they want to collect. Yeah, because we yeah. the rings are here. We see the the plate that has all seven of the rings, which that there is confirmation that they did get the king's yeah. ring out. And also, yeah, this means that all of the other dwarven kingdoms have been paying half of their mines to the king. Yeah. But he hasn't because given them the, the rings yet. Because of the promise of a magic ring. No, no the rings are oh, still God. here. We see them in this in the shot. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. why have they so been? So they're demanding him? to collect the rings. Then is what they're saying. 
Yeah, yeah, that that's what they're saying. And now Durin's like, oh, should I do that because it turned my dad into a greedy retard? Obviously so not. They left that part <laughs> Obviously out. Not. Obviously, we'll we'll give you your money back. Yeah, give him the money <laughs> back. That's the, that's the only answer. Yeah. Like what, drama yeah. complete. <laughs> It'll take him a season to do it, but drama complete. Yeah. It was an insane amount of money. It is a nuts amount of money that they're just yeah. Like, yeah, yeah we'll give you money. we'll give you half of the riches of our mountain. You'll give us that. <laughs> you, you mentioned a magic ring or something. We get that yeah. right. You'll give that to us. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Um. So that happens, and then Galadriel wakes up next to Gil Galad. They are in a sanctuary protected by the Elven Rings, says Elrond, who gives her Just, the ring back. I wanted you to wake up and be like, "Take me to a fucking hospital, you idiot!" <laughs> <laughs> no, she's been healed with magic. She's like, "No, it's That's a nice, happy yeah. fantasy hospital. place where you heal." She's like, "No, I want to give me a." Place with doctors. I need they're, drugs. They're in a they're in a dell by the river, you know. I fucking hated this. Yeah, this is <laughs> very this geographically. This is going to become Rivendell. Of course. Um, of course. Because yeah. the, but again, again, given the Gandalf rules, it's going to be like, well, there's a river here, and people kind of dwell here. So you know. It's <laughs> oh, they're at Riverdwell. I love yeah, Riverdwell. Is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we'll call it because I don't. I refuse to call it what it is from the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> It'll be called Riverdwell. <laughs> Um, oh, some, someone so, says, "Is this meant to be Lothlorien?" I'm pretty sure this would be Rivendell geographically. I mean, you Lothlorien know what? Is... Rivendell's it's on the both. sorry, at the Lorien's on the other time. side yeah. of the mountains. No, no, other Whichever way around. Lorien's on first. this side of the mountain, so Lorien would be closer. Rivendell's on the other side of the mountain, the same side as. Oh no, wait a minute! I've got my geography wrong. Fuck it. No, yes, never you mind. do. <laughs> yeah, hey. Rivendell is here. Lothlorien is on the other side, next yes. to Moria. I'm sure that whichever way they decide Moria. to do it, it'll be terrible. That's what's important. <laughs> But they're now, just like, the, the orcs can't get us because we have a deflector shield or something. That's right. Yeah, that would have been useful to have earlier. It hey, is like, mentioned to be like a sanctuary in the lore. Somehow. I love it. Uh, I like that Gilgalad has some banter with Galadriel. Everyone gives her the ring, gives Galadriel the ring back. Arondir is here. Arondir arrives <laughs> as he does. He just yeah, shows for... up. Again, well, he's doing the thing arrive. again, the I'm here also thing. Here and it's too. like, yeah. he, 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 he comes in and nods and then doesn't say anything. And why is Gilgalad <laughs> cracking jokes? Like, one, he's a character that doesn't crack jokes. He's yeah. going to bower the entire time. Same as Arendir has done it once. Elrond could probably do it. But also, they've just suffered a catastrophic defeat. Thousands of people are dead and he's lost Eregion. And yep. he's yeah. cracking jokes at someone that he hates. Correct. That keeps the PTSD <laughs> away. A staggering Speaking loss where Sauron has everything they don't want him to have pretty much almost mm -hmm. it's amazing that they lost in the first place but uh, here it we makes are. it is nonsensical i don't yeah. i don't understand <laughs> yeah. especially it. after the dwarves the took the whole the city apparently but i guess that dog did make it yeah dog made it yep it the single dog of Oregon. all right so <laughs> gil galad he gets up on the little ledge and he's looking out at all the elves who are here gathered and he says uh, Sauron's army's wandering around out there, so we have to decide to attack or prepare our defenses. And Galadriel recalls Celebrimbor's words to her. That it's light that keeps <laughs> the darkness away, not strength. Yeah, whatever that means. They don't uh, need yeah. to be strong, they need to be really bright. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 so someone says the sun yet shines, I forget who, and I don't care. And then all of the random elves cheer and hold up Woo! their weapons. Even though they totally like, wouldn't yeah. right now. No Woo! way. We lost. Right, this, is like, yeah. this is right after a devastating defeat. Yeah. One, one that just is incomparable for a lot of these elves. Like the, the This was horrifying. And so many yeah. friends and family are dead. Well, this is... Um, I don't know if this is accurate for the law, but from the show, this would be the worst thing that has happened to the elves since the battle, the, the war against Morgoth, right? Yeah. Yeah, what else could there have been? <laughs> also, that, that face is amazing. <laughs> yeah. He's, so, he's, like, he's yeah. a good actor. He's a really good actor. He's really, he's really nice man. leaning into that joy that he, you know, that, that, yeah, don't, yeah, he's ready to go. Don't let his acting take away from his lady friend who's trying to upstage him. Right there. <laughs> yeah. He's also pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to get in there himself. 
man. They, you know, they told these guys the same thing. That's why they're both doing this. It's like you got to look fucking mm. into this, okay? Your whole family oh, you was just not killed. Be here for season three. Yeah. If you don't give us the best Warface, <laughs> then you will not show up for season three. Your characters will just not even exist. The one Are above they... her just looks mildly confused, and then the one to the top left just <laughs> hasn't got the memo at all. She's looking at the camera. <laughs> Everyone's Is... having a great time cheering. Are they cheering at Gilgalad or are they cheering at the sun? I can't tell. Um, because the, the how high up they're looking. That guy looks really high. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this lady is. He's on. Enjoy. He's on something. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah we, we both were like, yeah, that dude. He's just some fucking hippie who happened to be. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, well, yeah. Either that. Either that, or he's like literally my entire like extended family is just is dead. Like mm. I'm not cheering. <laughs> I love it. There's a lot of there's a lot of really cool, fun, happy elves. They're excited. No. Everyone is happy. Uh, we don't end on a somber note. <clears throat> this is this is good stuff. God, hey, what a team guess shot what? That's running. the end. Look at that end shot. Though. Rings of Power <laughs> season two. Yeah, <laughs> like. What, Arondia, what are you doing there? <laughs> what, <laughs> that's what I mean. Arondia is just not fucking here. He's there. soldier. He's just here now. He, did, he ran across <laughs> the continent and now he's he here. He is actually <laughs> leftovers from a plot line that's been deleted and he <laughs> fell onto this one. Yeah. It's great. You're a relic from a deleted timeline. <laughs> it's so Good stuff. silly, but yes, I'm glad it to wiggle say his way it. into the plot. Fucking... <laughs> Done. Dead. Gone. Kill it. Never yeah, speak we don't have again. to think about it for another two years. Uh, oh, thank God. If it even gets renewed. But which, yes, that hasn't been confirmed yet. Which uh, that is, is hilarious. That is weird. I, like, they they weird said though, it's almost you... been con really almost confirmed. Almost <laughs> confirmed. Almost <laughs> what does that mean? Like, <laughs> so it's not almost not. winning is losing. Oh, I can imagine they're having meetings right now. Five. We're like, we gave him a fucking Balrog, we gave him that big fight. What more do these fucking idiots want? Yeah, Gandalf mm -hmm. said Gandalf. What yeah, he has his Gandalf stick. What do we have to do? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I oh, hope that this is not the last time be... we're talking about Rings of Power. I... I don't think it will be. Listen, they're, they're I'm, yeah, I'm it happy so they can get nice publicity from announcing its renewal. I'm happy yeah. to take a fucking break. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, 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 a break is needed, but I, I, I would like to be doing this again in two years' time. Because mm -hmm. it, is, it is very fun. Oh, my God, we'll be different people It, in it is fun, years. yeah. Yeah. We'll I mean, be older I'm, and wiser. I will say, like I want to see if they have Galadriel be the one to try and prevent Isildur from... Or to, to encourage him to throw the ring into Mount Doom. <laughs> I, I really want to know if they'll make that change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a... What an adventure. I, I will assume it will get renewed. It's just crazy that it hasn't been confirmed for renewal yet. It's yeah. done. <laughs> it's finished. It must, it must be that they're having the conversation of like, so this is just a pointless thing we're doing, huh? And it's like, well, mm -hmm. it's not going to make you mm -hmm. money, we gonna... but we wouldn't want anyone to think we're failing, would we? <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> going to be thing, really right? embarrassing if we don't. Because <laughs> they can it's surely... Improved easily. Just summon the focus group. The focus group will yeah. fix all of it. Super fans mm -hmm. will be the answer. They can Do we have enough this, money right? to like... launder next year? Yeah, like... like, at they... this point, if they... Because what they could do is they could say, right, we're not... The higher-ups could say, we're not wasting any more fucking money on this. You've got one more season, and that's it. Yeah. Um, if they were to try and cram in all of the rest of it into next season, it'll be hilarious. I, that will be even funnier. That will be. I'm with you on that. Yeah. I, the they'll thing have about to it is... skip the whole Numenor flooding thing. They'll have to just mm -hmm. make that happen, and they'll have to just speed run <laughs> Elendil and Isildur, like if, uniting everyone to fight against Sauron. Dude, cost... imagine all the shit that's going to happen off off screen when they only have yeah. one more season. They're like, oh, this happened, this it's happened, this happened. It's like a Five generational time passed. jump every episode. Just go yeah. <laughs> but uh, oh fuck. He... The cost and the most optimistic fucking benefit of money that you could ever get from this was still dwarfed immensely by the money Amazon mm -hmm. have in general, right? Like, this doesn't even... Oh, yeah. That's mm -hmm. true, but at the same time, like, it's so much fucking money. Yeah, because yeah. I was going to say, still, still with that in mind... they money on this project. Yeah, like, with that in mind, really... it wouldn't be contextualized by any reasonable person that way in the company. They would be like, this is an insane yeah. amount of money to be losing for no reason at all. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's a company basically. doesn't want to lose money. Obviously, you know, there's no reason well, for them to do that. Really, the question is at this point, it's it's less because they're now two seasons deep and a billion dollars each, plus however much they've saved by being able to advertise their own product. Fallacy-ness. It's it well, it's sunk cost fallacy in that they're halfway in, but also if they back out now, the reputational damage is going to be immense. So, how much That's money right. is that going to lose them? If they can't handle rings of power, if they cancel rings I, I of think, power, dude, imagine I think the article. People would respect though. them more if they actually, like, you know, come out and say that, yeah, this was a fucking mistake. Yeah, they won't do I mean, that though. Really... They'll say the angry, know, but... angry, rude fans yeah. like destroyed yeah. any engagement with this show. I don't know. It just it just keeps happening, but like, you can't just keep doing this. Where like, you want to save face by spending hundreds of millions of dollars on projects <laughs> that have no deal. Mm-hmm. It's That'll actual show insanity. It is insane. Well, it's crazy that like that's seriously being entertained here when this show needs to be the biggest thing in the world to justify its existence, and it's not even close to being that. Oh fuck no! Like this, I want them to keep going. Just spend hundreds of more millions of dollars. (laughs) Spend ten billion on the next season. Let's see it. It, Let's see a copy of Balrog. I want to see Damrod's extended family. I want to see. Yeah. I want to see. Son of Glug. We can make the, the, the Waldrick yeah. Waldrick origin show. We can do that. Glug Junior. Who's oh god no? Well now that Adar is gone, who's going to have the insane geological plans for like season three? Sauron now, right? I yeah, guess. Well, I mean, I guess so. He's got, well, season three's ending will be the One Ring will be made. Surely. You think? Uh, yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Well, because season he three is, is going to have to see, defeat... Season three is probably going to be him being captured by Numenor, being brought there, and Numenor's downfall. The thing is... It's going to be ring at the end. Whatever prediction... Like, I feel like... Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought everything that we've said when it'll happen, it usually happens earlier. Like, that's been the it, common yes, truth. Yeah. yeah. So, like, season... Because if, if we say that they're going to go for three more seasons, season five is going to end, or at least deal with the last alliance. It's going to end with yeah. Sauron being defeated. Um yeah. Between now and then, you've obviously got to forge the One Ring, and then you've got to have Sauron use it to do a bunch of evil bullshit. Mm. Um, you've also got to resolve the Numenor stuff, which means that I guess the rings have to be spread to some people in Numenor plus Sauron. That could happen um, between Sar- seasons, though. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Like we Maybe. might start season three with all the rings being sped up. I wonder if Numenor falls in season three rather than. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah, because yeah. it would then restrict the the geography. Yeah, I wouldn't you know, put you it get past them. Plotline essentially, yeah. To uh, either in one episode or between seasons, sort out the rings of men, and then full of Numenor, we get around episode maybe five, six ish, like fully done the big spectacle of it all, and then episode eight's ending is the one ring being completed. Mm-hmm. Well. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like honestly, the way the, how quickly they did things in season two, it just throws all of our guesses off because, yeah, uh, by episode three of season two, it's like okay, let's make dwarf dwarf rings, and then by episode four, it's like okay, we should probably start making rings for men. It's unbelievably quick. Well, and remember, they're going to want to speed run as fast as possible, getting the ring race in here for iconography. They're going to love to have them in the market, and that that has to. I mean, I say this as if this show makes any fucking sense, but like. The ring race have to come after the one ring, or is that is that <laughs> no. just... they can do whatever the fuck? No, I, don't... I honestly like I'm, it's, it's amazing to me that we actually because of how how like pathetic a lot of this is. They must be mm-hmm. desperate for the ring race at this point. Oh fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah. Imagine, think of just how much you can milk them. Like you can make them mm-hmm. one episode bad guys in all different areas with all different like adventures, but... having to deal with them and stuff. They haven't even set up who's going to be the ring race. Like, I was about to say, yeah, we don't even <laughs> know. <laughs> seen any of the I love the idea. Of men like, yet. You say that to one of the writers, and they're like, "Why would that? What is that? What do you mean?" <laughs> it doesn't matter. The ring race. You don't, don't worry about it. Yeah, who cares? They're just the ring yeah. race. Like uh, that, that's don't all they like care about is just reminding people of the Lord of the Rings. They don't give a shit about actually telling a story. Yeah, yeah you it's love ring race. You have to do the Witch King of Angmar before you get around to the to the ring race as well. And we haven't met the Witch King unless they want to change the Witch King into being somebody like Faris. In, um, which I could uh, see them doing for I condensing them it, doing but that, yeah, uh, I, I kind of think they'd probably want to save Angmar as a big evil faction, and I, yeah, yeah it's hard to say. Was was the Witch King from like the region of Angmar or Rudar uh, originally, or did he come from somewhere else? I think he was yeah. from around there. He was from yeah. the north. It was a colder yeah. place, I believe. It should be a man a of Rudar, chilly. like the yeah, yeah. Oh, we got to see so him build he... uh, Baradur as well. Uh, yep. Oh, that's true. Yeah, 
It's going to happen with, at some point. With all the orcs that still exist. That's going to be a big old thing. Be like, oh, how cool is that? Oh my god. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, I'm gonna guessing that jitter. everyone agrees that season two is worse than season oh, one. Yes. Oh, oh I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. After these last two episodes? No. Yep. There's, a, there's not a single character yeah. I can fucking root for now. It's done. No, I just want the multi <laughs> Navi, 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 all, Navi yeah. is the only one. Navi is the only one that I don't hate. I mean, yeah, he's fine. He's a minor character, but yeah, he's he's fine. I don't I don't think he's good because I think that he he has the ha same he does the same thing that every character in Rings of Power does when he speaks in like flowery, vague language because dramatic uh -huh. buildup. But mm -hmm. apart from that, he's fine. He hasn't really done anything yeah. really fucking dumb yet. He's more of a neutral. All right, sort of person. we'll all, yeah, he's, we'll he's all root for him in yeah. season three. I guarantee you, he fucking <laughs> That's dies. That's we got. <laughs> well, he'll either die. Well, no. The thing is, if he dies, then he'll be the best character in Rings of Power. Well, whoever they won't ruin have him. you noticed? Whoever we like dies. Yep. Damn it. Pretty much. Uh, either I'm dies or gets like assassinated. Galadriel. Galadriel's a fantastic <laughs> character. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gosh, she's can so open great. Season three with her funeral. That would be really good. Might be the worst protagonist of all time. Oh, she's she's up there. She's got to be one of the most miscast characters of all time. But, I mean, there's that, but there's also the just completely at odds with the show's opinion of her. So, yeah, you get that in a lot of stuff, but this one's really bad. The yeah, yeah that the just insistence on avoiding having her actually acknowledge what she did wrong is. I have not come across that in anything else that I've ever watched, like to that degree. I mean, it's just so. The show does not understand what their characters are. And you see it again to like smaller degrees with characters like Adar. They think that he cares about the orcs, but he demonstrably does not care about the orcs. And his, um, I guess, redemption in the last five minutes relies on him caring for the orcs. But he, he doesn't, because if he did, then he wouldn't do what he did. So it's just a complete mess. I mean, you could make the argument from him that he's the only one who's obviously old enough to remember what Sauron was like. So for him seeing Sauron returning, and that is the thing he has to stop because he knows what Sauron would do to his oh. children in a way that his children don't know because they weren't around when Sauron was busy doing it, even though he didn't have time to do it because season two, episode one proves that he died way before he should have done. So I, I don't necessarily think Adar is that broken. I think it's it's a bit messy, but it's not completely fucked. It's just pretty much everybody else who is. It's the the issues with Adar is that in episode three he doesn't give a shit that he, you know he's talking to Glug and we have Glugway from Glugling and then immediately well Damrod's killed an orc and he just doesn't give a shit and then in episode seven he's slamming all of the orcs you know infinitely into the walls yeah like the, his 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 strategy that he uses during the battle can only mean that he doesn't care about the orcs. I don't. Is, Necessarily, in general, because like, you have to go to war. Like a war will lose you your children, and like if his mind is one hundred percent set on stopping Sauron at all costs, because Sauron is the worst thing that can possibly occur. Oh, yeah. then it makes a degree of sense. I think it's it's a meta problem with the show that it doesn't follow through with its characterization of the orcs. Like it begins, it, it does take the trouble to humanize them, and then it plays it for laughs when they get thrown into catapults and launched at walls and shit. Like that's well, not an even, Adar thing. That's a show it's... thing. Even it's Sauron good. in this episode uh, is like, oh, when he when they attacked this once, I forgot the name of the city, they've been ravaging and pillaging for weeks. And it's like, wait, I thought we were supposed to be a little bit with the orcs because they're sad, just want to hang out. But yeah, they're just being yeah. thrown to the wolves all the time. It's just yeah. Also, it's more yeah. like a specifically with his battle tactics rather than him going to war specifically. That's Well, that's what I mean, is that like his... Um, the, the, the dialogue that we get is supposed to and clearly i think does indicate that he loves the orcs like the script says that adar loves the orcs what yeah. we see tells a different story yeah. uh because partly because of the, the the bit with damrod that i mentioned but also the writers don't know how to write a battle which means yeah. that it necessitates that um adar is very very callous with the lives of his soldiers mm -hmm. even though the script says that he isn't and i'm sure that the writers would say that he isn't so yeah, I mean, he he basically comes across like he doesn't care about his children because they don't know how to write a battle. He he should be way more careful with them, like how he uh, uses them in battle, and like maybe a bit too cautious, like and that costs him. He could potentially mm -hmm. be over cautious, or I mean, well, because yeah. what you, what you're saying, platoon, if I understand, is that he should absolutely do what he does. It's just that they could have depicted it in a way that doesn't require that he literally 
and Gabungas his orcs into the walls for days. <laughs> Pretty um, much, yeah. I think I think you need to much more clearly show that his obsession with stopping Sauron is the thing that is leading his children into danger. But the danger is an extension of going to war. There is no way you can do what he thinks he needs to do without killing his own children or having them die stupidly. Um, yeah. But the show needs to stop playing that for comedic effect in order for that really to come through. Yeah, because they have the whole, like you say, catapult bed, and then you have the tragedy of like the orcs burning on the pyre where Adar cries over them. It doesn't, it, it's trying to do both things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, six out of 10? I suppose that wraps up <laughs> our adventure with season two of Rings of Power. What a disastrous oh, mess. Man. Pretty bad. Um, it's over. I don't believe it's once over. again the general audiences are going to take to this show. Uh, it's gonna fail even further. We already know it is. Like ratings wise, mm -hmm. it's just less than season one. It can't rely on like a fan base it has built with season one. It instead has to kind of treat the se season one as an albatross because it's like, oh, season two of that show, as opposed to a new show, which might even do better or right. whatever. But. Uh, no, this season's not fixing shit, and, um, <laughs> well, you well, know, like... They say it was going to have, like, more action scenes or whatever, and it, it d does not... No, it really doesn't. Well, not, not in a really. way that I noticed. <laughs> it's, it's pretty awful. Like, like nothing, nothing really end. changed that much. I, I thought they would learn, like, one thing or two, it, like, they would improve slightly, but fucking nothing. Yeah, it really is more of the same, like, all of the problems yeah. are present and worse. Yeah. Yep. Um, I guess the only... Maybe not the only, but the clear improvement for me is Celebrimbor. As an actor, not as a not as a character. <laughs> not as a character, certainly <laughs> not. No. Um, yeah. He didn't that, really that is, get to do that much in I would say it's a yeah. complete downgrade in the writing department for him, but at least oh, the actor yeah. got to do some yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of that got better in season two. Like, is there anything else? Baldrick. Well, <laughs> no, well, well, he got better in season one. Oh no, but he was God. really. I oh love the God. the armor upgrade and the the standing. Like he was a lieutenant. Yeah. That was great. He got to be a greeter. Yeah. The Mordor greeter Bronwyn, thing was great. Bronwyn yeah. died. Yeah. That was funny. Bronwyn died funny. to Mordor. We, we, we found out she was dead more than she died. <laughs> yeah, we found out that she was dead. We oh. discovered her death. How did she die? A stinky <laughs> arrow. Kind of, like, oh. Yeah, he kind of forgot about the orc arrow having poison and shit. And then he leaves. All the memories do not dim. Except when they do. <laughs> but they do. <laughs> Fucking disappear when they die. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, I am... Uh, yeah, way worse than first season. Well, uh, well, way worse? It is worse. Is it way yeah. worse? It is one step down. <laughs> not it feels way worse. With yourself for a second. Two yeah. three. <laughs> like, it, it's quite, I'd say it's quite a bit worse, because at least season one has... Quite extended redeeming scenes. Almost all of them are with the dwarves, and the dwarves have now been assassinated along with everybody else. Yeah. Like there were entire mini arcs where you could look at and say, "Actually, that's okay." There's nothing like that in season two, and its its lowest point is, I think, probably far lower than anything in season one, with the arguable exception of Mount Doom being switched on by a key. So, <laughs> like, yeah. I think it's quite a bit worse. Yeah, There's, there was quite a bit of retardation though. Uh... Like oh, the, yeah. a bunch of, a bunch of small, yeah. a bunch of small things like everywhere in season one. It's just like broadly speaking, like the way that they've structured the story in season two is is way more infuriating than how they did it in season one because you had a handful of plot lines that were connected by Galadriel, um, and it was it was a story about Galadriel, yeah. and then you had the Harfords doing their own thing because of course they were. Season two, you have like eight or nine different plots, and none of them are really connected with each other. You've got the the Eregian plot, the Linden plot, and the Khazad Doom plot. I guess are connected because rings. Everything else is totally separate. Hmm. So it just feels like you know we're going to go spend twenty minutes in Pelago. It's like who the fuck cares? Can we, oh well, we're going to spend half an episode in Rune. Okay, can we get the story about Galadriel and the rings and Sauron and Celebrimbor is very clearly the story that they want to tell. But they feel obligated to spend time with Gandalf and Isildur and fucking Estrid. Yeah. They should have just scrapped all that bullshit. It's yeah. Just a waste of time. Or accomplished it in, you know, like one episode or something. Yeah. Well, um. I feel deflated and tired. <laughs> and I think I'm yep. ready to be done talking about the Rings of Power season two. And Sounds we'll just like leave this here. 
as a little testament to our long, long journey together and all that we've learned. Hmm. And we will be back in hope. Uh, hopefully we'll be back in a couple years or however long it takes for them to make the third season, which I assume will happen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But you never know. You never know. But I assume it will happen. And instead, we can focus our efforts on other things. In the meantime. Oh. Well, before we go, why doesn't everyone tell us what they're up to? Starting with Mr. Little Platoon. How you doing there? What's, what's up? What's, what are you making? What's coming out? Uh, I am finishing off season one of Rings of Power, <laughs> and then I am starting season two of oh Rings of Power. God. Once I've shaken whatever is left of the cold that Rings of Power gave me. So, um, Boy, I'm sure that, glad I'm done. Yeah, that <laughs> alongside whatever else comes out. I don't even know what's coming up. Fucking Skeleton Crew, is that a thing? I think that's a thing. Yep. Eventually. Hmm. Hey, Arcade season two. Woo! Oh, yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yay! Let's go. Please, be great, hopefully. yeah, Please. boy. <laughs> yeah, if that's bad, it's just gonna it, it's just gonna kill my interest in life. <laughs> I'm gonna stab this year if it's bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 2024 is gonna be like get a coffee and I'm just behind it with a knife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, random. What are you doing? What are you up to? I'm uh, I'm 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 still doing Rings of Power. Sorry. Um, <laughs> We said we were done. There. No, I'm not done. I've still <laughs> got to do it. I'm not done. Damn it! I've got it. I've got. I've got two more videos that I need to do on Rings of Power. Um, apart from that, I've got an arcane video that is going to come out, and then after that, Return of the King. And I've, after that, I don't know because we're getting too many months away. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, basically finish Rings of Power, and then I'm going to do nothing for about a month, and then I'll mm -hmm. and then I'll be back doing stuff. And obviously, we got uh, Arcane to watch in the meantime, which will hopefully be fun. Yay! 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 Yay. Mel, what about you? I am also still doing Rings of Power God because damn I, it. Um, <laughs> I, I only released episode four yesterday. Uh, go check that out. Uh, took a lot of work and stuff, and there's more work to do. And I wish I had more time at the days, but you know, wage slave and all, you gotta. <sighs> do stuff to get money and you know living you know that's, that's great other than that we're doing joker 2 tomorrow uh on the forge so i wish i could say that's gonna be nice a uh, detox but joker 2 wasn't good so that's not gonna be super fun spooky games uh happening uh the i get uh oh, silent hill 2 remake comes out on th tuesday uh, I might play that, but I'm also playing Darkwood. I'm not sure if I put Silent Hill between that. I'm not sure yet, but Spooky Games happening. I, I'm trying to do two a week. So, lots of stuff's happening. Also, <laughs> having a stroke and uh, reaching, <laughs> getting closer to the 10k sub. So, thanks well, for the support so far. It's awesome stuff. And uh, yeah, go watch the videos. They're great. Yeah. Um, Gogur, is there anything you wanted to mention? Yeah, I'm also doing rings up. Nah, I'm, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Sudden 100-hour video for both seasons. Just yeah. Time to analyze. Yeah. Heavily edited. It's gonna take me a while. Mm -hmm. uh, Rags, for anything you guys wanted to say? Yeah, um, I've got a video that is very close to completion. I've just had a horrific sleeping schedule lately, and I've just mm. not had energy. Uh, but I've got, like, uh, not much left to do on it, and it'll be done. So hopefully, um, I'm, I've got, like, family visiting the next day or two, and everyone's kind of in town. So that'll probably take up a bunch of my uh, attention. And then I can get this video wrapped up, and it will be out pretty soon. Probably within the next... I want to say several days. I said it before, but I just was in a, ugh, like I was just, I was not in the zone with the, with the sleeping and doing all a bunch of other stuff. But I, I do hope that it, it will be out in the, probably several days. And I do plan to do a stream of Amnesia the Bunker later this spooky Tober. Nice. Yeah. So, um, probably near the end of the month as we get closer to Spooky Ween, uh, that'll happen. And uh, we'll see what happens with that. Yay.
the other guy. Hooray. Fringold. Uh, I mean, I hope it's more of, uh, make his Alien Romulus video. Um, but now it's just back to other things. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Back to the dungeon. Yes. Uh, Fringy edited race of the dungeon. pretty much every visual in that video. And so you might be like, well, wait, what were you doing while that was happening? And that's the thing. I'm hoping that another video is being created. It's just taking an immense amount of time. So I can't really say anything other than that. He but, was pooping um, farting. Ew. It's like, it's, I've, I, I mentioned it in the Discord. I'm working on four major projects at once. Um, different times get to add to different ones. It's, it's all very annoying, but... Um, It'll all make sense once enough time has passed and you guys see them. <laughs> That's all I can say, because you never know what'll happen. Ooh. But, uh, yes, uh, Alien Romulus, an unbridled parasite video is out. I was, uh, I was, I was very happy with how it turned out. I thought me and Fringy did a, did a fun little, uh, decent job there talking about why that film is poopy. And yeah, you should see it. And, uh, did a little bit of an experimental opener with that one that I think... Yes. Out real fun. Mumbo news. Guys enjoyed. <laughs> and of course, we've got the Nightmare on Elm Street arc is well underway. We've completed the first film and the second film, the gay one, as it's come to be known <laughs> in the world. Uh, third one is on its way. They've all been listed for their dates on the uh, the trailer. Um, and I'm going to stream... Oh, well, yeah, it's today, isn't it? <laughs> My birthday today. It happened while we were streaming. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Gonna... Oh fuck, it is the six. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> stream. And you got to celebrate with Rings of Power. Happy <laughs> birth. <Ugh>. Outlast <laughs> That's 2. Great. Later tonight when I'm had sleep. We'll do that. It'll be fun. <laughs> awesome. And then uh, I think Thursday because Open Bar will be off because Drinker is uh, out on walkies. That we'll be we'll be doing the Joker fap then, uh, and then I believe uh, if if I've got this right, that Saturday is the Agatha. the Agatha E fap. So yeah, the halfway point. <laughs> like this this show. was a bit cruel, you know, universe. But <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess. You know, but hey, silver lining. Look at these beautiful plushies. <laughs> yes, yeah. look at them. Uh, look they, at them look they look great. They look really good. It's Halloween right now. They're available for Halloween. Get them. For Halloween. Oh, spooky, spooky, spooky. spooky. You should get them. If you don't, we will haunt you. And I mean, uh, there's no repercussions if you don't. Yeah, you know the deal. Limited time offer. Mm hmm. That's right. Once they're gone, they are. They're actually hey, gone. Uh, they will never ever reappear. Mm hmm. Well. On that note, I suppose, we shall say goodbye, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, obviously, just it's it's never going to be forgotten, but me, Frankie, and Rags will get on to creating as many recordings as we can, as quickly as we can, for Super yeah. Chat Catch-Up as well. Yeah. It's just, mm -hmm. um, it, like, if, 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 if it helps be, to understand... It hasn't become apparent. <laughs> uh, the, the output lately has been insane for all of us, so we've been trying to mm -hmm. get yeah. every, on top of everything. Um, Halloween-y month it's is always is crazy. Pack. Wayne, but yes, we very much appreciate the messages and we will get to them. Absolutely. They're all taken down and saved, so don't you worry. But for now, we're going to say good night, goodbye, have a good whatever it is you're having, and we'll see you next time. Good Bye, everybody! Goodbye, everyone.